Chapter 361 Light of Hope Winter City? The purple-haired woman blinked her special green eyes. She had never heard of this place. But judging from the surrounding environment, she seemed to be far away from the place where she had been before. Looking around, he saw people coming and going on the street. He had not seen such a peaceful and lively scene for a long time. In other words, since the disaster occurred, such a scene has never been seen on the earth again. So what exactly is this place? Before she asked, David on the opposite side had already told a lot of things in one breath, leaving her stunned. It took a while for her to regain her composure and realize what the other person's words meant. Winter City? Principality of Winter? Continent of Brunia? It sounds incredible, but this makes many unreasonable things reasonable. You mean this is not the Earth? No. Why do you know about Earth? David had no choice but to continue introducing the situation in Winter City. After hearing that he was not the first, let alone the only person to come here from the Earth, the purple-haired woman gradually began to believe David's words. Sounds magical. The purple-haired woman looked at David curiously, remembering that the young man said that he was the lord of the city. My name is Clarice Ferguson. You can also call me Twinkle. David nodded. He had long recognized that the person in front of him was Flicker from the X-Men. After all, his appearance was very recognizable. But the name Clarice Ferguson made him feel even more unfamiliar. I am David Glamorgan. You can call me David. Unfortunately, I don't have a nickname or nickname. Clark coughed slightly, as if he wanted to say something, but he held it back. He was not Tony Stark. He didn't have to say it every time he thought of something to complain about. So he introduced his name to Clarice. Clark Kent. After greeting Clarice, Clark said goodbye directly, saying that he would not delay David's introduction to Winter City to the new arrivals, and that he would go back and wait for General Zod. Zod shouldn't be here so soon. Right. I have to go back and sort out some information. I promised Tony to sort out some Kryptonian technology. After Tony and David's education, Clark was not ready to hide the Kryptonian technology. He was ready to make good use of these technologies, to see if he could benefit Winter City and the Earth in his own world. Make a contribution. Although he thought it was inappropriate before. After careful consideration, Clark felt that it was a very good plan to establish a company to slowly integrate these high-tech technologies into the lives of people on Earth. After waving his hands and saying goodbye, Clark walked towards the distance and gradually disappeared. Clarice, who watched this scene throughout, her suspicions were reduced by more than half. This person named Clark also comes from another world. Yes, he comes from another world. Earth. But he is not from Earth. Alien? Clarice was shocked. She didn't realize that the man was actually an alien. Compared with the other man, she seemed to look more like an alien. But aliens? Clark? Why does it feel strangely familiar? Yes, he is Superman. Have you ever seen Superman comics? Animations? Or movies? Clarice looked at David suspecting that this man was joking. It was too outrageous for a lord from another world to give him a popular science Superman. For a moment, Clarice began to suspect that she had not actually come to another world, but had fallen into some kind of illusion, or that she had actually fainted and was having a ridiculous dream. Thinking about the worst, maybe he didn't escape the pursuit. In fact, he was seriously injured and was on the verge of death. That's why he saw such an outrageous scene and was escaping the reality of his impending death. David didn't expect that in just the blink of an eye. The other person would already have so many things in his mind. And he was even questioning in his heart whether he was a real person. Just when David was about to ask Clarice if there was anything he wanted to know, another shadow suddenly appeared next to him. Compared to the portal when Clarice appeared, this scene was much more familiar to David. Is this the same when I show up? Clarice remembered the scene she saw when Clark left just now. So when he appeared, it was also like this kind of phantom that appeared first slowly becoming clearer, until you become a real person? No. The circumstances when you appeared were rather special. When Clarice appeared, a portal appeared directly. This was the first time David had seen this. Is it probably related to the other party's teleportation ability? The specific situation may need to be studied slowly. But everyone else who comes to Winter City appears like this. David also explained the way he appeared, how he left, and how to travel between the two worlds because he introduced it in the most concise language. He only said a few sentences in total. As soon as he finished speaking, the phantom in front of him turned into a real person. It's not that people from other worlds came to Winter City again. This time it was Gwen. But she also brought another person with her, 
Dr. Octopus Otto Octavius. David? What a coincidence! Gwen looked up and saw David standing in front of her, exclaiming that the timing of her arrival was such a coincidence. She didn't know if David had just come back or was about to go out. Then Gwen noticed the stranger standing next to David. Because of his unique appearance, it was impossible for anyone to forget him after seeing him once. So Gwen was certain that there had never been such a person in Winter City before. With David standing next to her, it was already obvious that this was a newcomer, and David should be introducing her to various situations in Winter City. After sizing the other person up a few times, Gwen did not forget the business and introduced Otto Octavius to David. In fact, the two met before, but that time David only introduced his name and expressed his willingness to support Dr. Otto Octavius's research. But at that time, Dr. Octavius had financial support from the Osborne group and did not take David, a young man who seemed to have nothing and was more like a liar, to his heart. When they met again, he realized that the other person was actually a duke who ruled a vast area and had the magical ability to connect multiple worlds. Welcome to Winterfell, Dr. Octavius. David had a tacit understanding and did not mention the situation during the last meeting, although Dr. Octavius was a little embarrassed. Of course, he would not mention the meeting that was not worth remembering if the other party did not mention it. It was just that this time he was polite. A lot of people said, Just call me Otto. Both of you have just arrived in Winter City. So let's visit this city together. Of course Otto Octavius agreed. He was willing to come to Winter City with Gwen to visit, and he was already inclined to accept it from the bottom of his heart, although it was hard to believe what Gwen said to him at first. After it was confirmed that there really was a different world and that he could go there, the various things he had introduced before began to deeply attract the scientist. Arc reactors, powerful energy battery technology, nanotechnology, and anti-gravity engines all sounded to him like black technologies in science fiction novels. In reality, it would take many years to build them. However, these things can all be seen in Winter City, and compared to their own imperfect reactor technology, they are nothing at all. After going around in a circle, he began to doubt whether Winter City really needed him. Of course, talents like you just lack a suitable environment. I believe that you can show greater potential in Winter City. Not everyone can rub a reactor with their hands. Not to mention that what Dr. Octopus built was a fusion reactor. His talent is just limited by the world. If Dr. Octopus lived in Tony Stark's universe, his achievements would not necessarily be worse than those of the Starks, because the Marvel Universe has a broader technological limit. After visiting the Winter Alchemy Workshop and Power Station, Clarice also expressed her desire to see the military power of Winter City. So everyone went to the Winter Military Camp. Here, the two newcomers saw the main weapons and equipment of the Winter Army, Blizzard Power Armor and Piccolo Assault Rifle. These powerful weapons also left a deep impression on him. Because these two people don't know what era the world is in. And they don't know what these weapons mean in this world. But compared with the army of his own world, the combat effectiveness displayed by the Winter Army is undoubtedly very amazing. The entire city of Winter City seems to be a relatively backward ancient city. But it has complete and advanced infrastructure and these advanced weapons. Giving the two people an illusion. Winter City is a very advanced city. And this world should be a civilization much more advanced than Earth. Therefore, the two people have slightly different ideas. Dr. Otto Octavius feels that he can learn more advanced knowledge here. Clarice Ferguson is seriously thinking about whether the military power of Winter City can deal with the Sentinel robots that almost completely wiped out their own world. It should be no problem. Clarice's eyes turn to the Transformers not far away. These Cybertronians look very strong. Plus the Knights who use power armor and Piccolo assault rifles. Not to mention, there are many powerful people from other worlds in this magical city. For example, the Superman I saw before. At this time, Clarice already knew that the Clark Kent she had met before was the Superman she knew. If this is the case, those sentry robots may not be enough for this person to fight alone. Can my world be saved? Clarice, who originally didn't have much hope for the future, found that a flame called hope ignited in front of her, making her eager to hold it tightly in her hands. Chapter 362 Your door is always open. Clarice saw the opportunity to save her own world. And after consulting David for some advice, she hurried back to her own world. Through a few conversations with Clarice, David already knew about the mutant codename Flicker. And he was currently in the timeline of the film X-Men, Days of Future Past. It should be slightly earlier than the plot, but not much earlier. In that world, because of the sentry robots, the entire world has entered the end of the world. 
the weapons originally manufactured to target mutants ended up becoming a nightmare for people all over the world. Not only were mutants about to become extinct, but humans were also almost dead. Now that Clarice has come to Winter City, she has the ability to travel between the two worlds. Winter City also possesses powerful military force. Clarice will definitely want to use the power of Winter City to save her compatriots. I just don't know if she will meet the professor and others who are preparing to use their time travel ability to overwrite the timeline to save the world after she goes back? Or maybe her fellow mutants simply don't believe what Clarice said? This is easy to solve. Just come to Winter City. This is why Clarice and David chatted for a while. She had to first figure out David's attitude towards this kind of thing. What if the Lord of Winter City didn't welcome mutants? Fortunately for her, David, the Lord of Winter City, did not object to her bringing his companions to visit. After confirming this, Clarice hurried back to her own world. As for another visiting guest, Otto Octavius, he decided on the spot to join Winter City and continue his research work. He has no future in New York, and he cannot attract investment for his projects. This not only brings his career to an end, but also makes it impossible to guarantee his basic life in order to support his family and ensure that his wife would not suffer along with him. He decided to move to Winter City because David had promised that as long as he joined Winter City, Dr. Otto Octavius could start calculating from now on. Salary. At the same time, once he develops useful technologies or products, he will receive additional bonuses and long-term dividend income. For example, if he develops a new type of equipment and uses it in the blizzard power armor, then every time a blizzard power armor is produced in the future, the corresponding price will be calculated based on the production cost and paid to Otto Octavius as a share. Generally speaking, the treatment in Winter City is very good, much better than many investors who only give bonuses but completely take away all the patents. He was confident in his talents and abilities. When he learned that Winter City was currently seriously short of scientific researchers, he felt that this was the most important opportunity in his life. Although after coming to Winter City, he needs to spend some time to learn a lot of advanced knowledge, and it will be difficult to produce results in a short time. But for him, being able to learn those advanced knowledge is more valuable than making money to a certain extent. Things that attract him. So what else does he have to hesitate about? Go back and call your wife immediately and prepare to move. Watching the two newcomers leap one after another, Data began to prepare for what was coming next. Are you ready to go out? Yes. Once David starts to sort out the weapons and equipment in his storage bracelet, it means that he is going out, and there is a high probability that he will fight someone. Where are you going this time? Clark, General Zod should be coming. Oh. After living in Winter City for a long time, everyone will learn this kind of related knowledge. Even if they are not interested in these things originally, they will definitely look up the information when I show up. So everyone knows Clark's identity. And naturally, they also know what the title General Zod means. Will there be any danger? No. Don't you know my strength yet? Even Clark can't defeat me. Today's Superman Clark is just a rookie. Although he is much stronger than in the original plot, he is still far from reaching his peak. After all, Superman's upper limit is too high. As for David, he doesn't even know how strong he is now. But the holy light in his body is getting bigger day by day. He could only be sure that even if he used the baptism of holy light, then it destroyed the orc city again. It would not lead to a state where the holy light was almost exhausted and would require a period of rest to recover. The holy light energy became larger and more solid. In addition, his physical fitness is also constantly improving, which he is even more sure of. After all, there are people testing his physical fitness every now and then. He becomes more and more comfortable when facing opponents and gradually develops the mentality of Master Yi. If they continue to become stronger like this, Gwen, Laura, Helen, Eva and other women will soon form an alliance and shout. There is no need to talk about morals with this evil heretic. Of course, these are definitely not their original words. But this is what they mean when translated. I know you're powerful. Gwen rolled her eyes. She kind of hoped that David's strength wouldn't continue to improve. She was really worried that she would become weird if this continued. However, she knew in her heart that the enemy David faced was very powerful and David must continue to become stronger. In addition to becoming a real superhero during this time, Gwen began to think seriously that she should become stronger, so that even if she couldn't help David, at least she wouldn't hold him back. Gwen slowly got over the initial state of as long as she can be with David and enjoy a happy love life. That's fine and began to think about longer-term things. Are you going by yourself? 
Why don't you find a few people to help? I am indeed going to find a few people to help. David is going to go to the Marvel world to call a few people to help. And Tony should be happy to join in the fun. However, Tony has been spending most of his time in the Marvel Universe recently, traveling back and forth between Earth and Sovereign. So if David wants to go there, he has to wait for Tony or Steve to come over. Thinking of this, David suddenly frowned, as if he had thought of something. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm going to test something. Oh! Gwen watched David put all the counted weapons and equipment back into the bracelet, then hurriedly walked outside Glamorgan Castle and followed him out of curiosity. All the way to the gate of Glamorgan Castle, David looked into the distance. When he was about to walk forward, he glanced at Gwen next to him. So he stretched out his hand. Hold my hand! Stretching out her hand to hold David's hand, Gwen began to look forward to what was going to happen next. She was a very smart person and had already guessed what David was going to test. Sure enough, after following David a few steps forward, Gwen saw a sudden change in the surrounding environment. This familiar sense of sudden dislocation let her know that David's test was successful. Are you free to travel to other worlds? It shouldn't be free to go. David looked around. This is Karma Taj in the Marvel Universe. He returned to Winter City from here last time. So he came directly here this time. After Goldfinger was upgraded again, he had the ability to travel to worlds closely related to Winter City. Instead of being able to go to any world he wanted. But even so, his ability has been greatly improved. In the future, when he goes to these worlds, he will not need someone to guide him there. Which makes it much more convenient. I was testing the new functions after the Goldfinger upgrade. And finally tested them out. David, who felt secretly happy in his heart, looked at the stunned mages around him. And then saw Steve appearing in front of him with a surprised look on his face. David? It's me! Oh, this is so bad. When the Supreme Mage realized what was going on, he immediately put on a sad look on his face. A dimensional demon could actually enter the earth freely. Does this mean that he, the Supreme Mage, had seriously neglected his duty? It seems that I have to hand over this position to a more qualified person as soon as possible. Fortunately, the destined Supreme Mage has already embarked on his scheduled journey and will arrive at Kama Taj soon. Has your ability been upgraded again? Obviously. Yes. Congratulations. After congratulating Steve, he asked David what his next plans were. He shouldn't have come to this world just to test his abilities. Right? Clark is about to face a strong enemy. I'm here to ask Tony if he wants to go over and help or something. General Zod? Yes. After seeing Steve's expression, David thought he was interested. You want to join in the fun? I do have this idea. But it's a pity that the timing of this person's arrival is a bit too coincidental. Steve sighed helplessly. He would do his best to train Stephen Strange. And he would definitely not be able to help Superman deal with Zoro. General Duh. Moreover, he felt that Tony would not go either. Tony came to me not long ago and said that he would stay on Sovereign for a while. He is not on Earth at all now. I originally wanted to tell you when I went to Winter City in a few days. Of. That's it. Theoretically. Tony can go to Winter City at any time. And whether he is on Earth or not does not affect him from going to other worlds. But he went to Sovereign specifically to study various technologies on Temple 2. And he would definitely not leave at this time. If you really want to find someone for help, I can call Thor for you. Thor? I'm not very familiar with him. It doesn't matter. Thor is a very enthusiastic person. And his guardians themselves like and enjoy fighting. If you ask him for help with this kind of thing, he will not be troubled but will be very happy. Steve took out his hand. I took out my phone and sent Thor a text message. Besides, Thor lives on Earth recently, so it's easy to find him. A few seconds after the text message was sent, Thor called over. He heard that there was a fight. Thor was very enthusiastic and wanted to fly to Kama Taj immediately. Chapter 363 Odin Where is the enemy? The blonde man walked through the portal opened by Steve, holding a warhammer in his hand. The raging fighting spirit seemed to be visible to the naked eye. If it was Thor who had awakened the power of thunder, he might also be accompanied by lightning. Thunder and marmots. Like ah. In another world. Steve gestured to Thor to sit down. Only then did the Thor from Asgard realize that he was not on the battlefield, but on Karma Taj. It was also at this time that he noticed David and Gwen sitting aside. Oh. Hi long time no see. How is your winter city? Winter City has become very beautiful now. If you have time, you and Jane are welcome to go there as guests. 
That's a really good suggestion. I'm sure Jane will be very interested in it too. Thor knew that Jane was interested in these magical things. And maybe he could arrange a surprise trip for him. After thinking about his girlfriend for a while, Thor also realized that the battle to be fought this time was probably related to David. Is there any trouble in Winter City? Oh, it's not that Winter City has encountered an enemy. It's a friend. And his world is about to usher in a powerful enemy. Thor understood what was going on. It should be someone like Steve, who could travel back and forth to Winter City. He would face powerful enemies in his own world. In the past, he only focused on the Earth and the Nine Kingdoms. But he forgot that there were many worlds connected to Winter City. It seems that when he wants to fight in the future, he can go to David? He will definitely be able to find a suitable world for himself. Are you leaving now? No. The enemy has not yet reached Earth. Another world on Earth. Thor nodded. In that case, there was no need for him to be anxious. In an instant, he changed from the Asgardian Thor whose will to fight exploded to a golden-haired fool. Putting Mjolnir aside, he drank a large glass of beer and chatted with David about his happy life on Earth during this period. Thor, a person who is familiar with David, will not feel unfamiliar with David at all. In his eyes, everyone is a comrade in the Avengers, and there is nothing he cannot talk about. David didn't dislike people with such a personality. And after meeting Thor, he also thought of another group of Asgardians who had lost their hometown as refugees. At present, it seems that Loki still successfully used illusions to impersonate Odin. And it seems inevitable that Asgard will be destroyed by Surtur. Thinking of this, David found that this did not seem inevitable. As long as Thor could defeat Hela, then there would be no need for him to use the eternal fire to resurrect Surtur and make Surtur extremely powerful. Destroying Asgard. Complete destruction. As for how Thor can defeat Hela, even if he can't do it himself, doesn't he still have a lot of comrades? After all, the Avengers in this world are not the same as the original plot. Thor and the Hulk are not the highest combat powers in the Avengers. Supreme Mage Steve and himself, the Duke of Winter City, also have great strength. There is also Tony Stark, who has obtained a lot of alien black technology and Cybertronian technology. And he is still a cheating guy. His combat power is also many times stronger than in the original plot. Even though Hela has an aura that makes her stronger the longer she stays in Asgard, can she withstand so many people coming together? What if David calls Clark here again? Or, with a little guidance from David, let Thor awaken his thunder power in advance, and then build the storm tomahawk in advance? In that case, Thor alone would be enough to suppress Hela. Right? Coupled with a group of people assisting in the punch. The scene must be very tragic. It is estimated that Superman Clark will stop everyone. I hope everyone will stop bullying a woman. What's on your mind? Maybe it was the professional talent of the Supreme Mage. Or maybe it was because Steve was getting to know David better and better now. When he saw David Days beside him, he immediately guessed something. If the Eye of Agamotto hadn't been worn on his body, he would have used the Time Stone to peek into the future to see if there were any strange changes. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about Asgard's future. Steve rolled his eyes, knowing he was right. Thor, who drank another large glass of beer, had a question mark on his face when he heard this. What's going on with the future of Asgard? He knew that after Steve became the Supreme Mage, he could see the future through the artifact Eye of Agmato. But he had never asked Steve about the future of Asgard or his own future. Deep in Thor's heart, he firmly believes that Asgard is extremely powerful and his father Odin is invincible. Under his father's wise leadership, Asgard will have no problems at all and will surely remain strong forever. In the original plot, if the birth of Ultron had not caused Thor to accidentally peek into the twilight of the gods, he would not have run back to investigate the situation and then discovered that Loki was pretending to be the God King. Now that Ultron has not been born, Hydra is quiet and does not cause trouble. The Earth is peaceful and peaceful, and the Avengers do not have many opportunities to take action. If it hadn't been so peaceful, Thor wouldn't have rushed over as soon as he heard there was a fight, for fear that he would miss it. So he didn't check the future to learn about Ragnarok nor did he run back to Asgard to expose Loki's disguise. If this pace continues, Loki's true identity will still be exposed. Because once Odin dies, he will no longer be able to maintain his seal. After Hela, who had been imprisoned for who knows how many years, broke out, many things would still happen. But one thing that may become Thor's lifelong regret is that he may not even be able to see his father for the last time. Thinking of this, David thought it would be better to give some proper spoilers. It's just that he didn't know. 
or ignored and missed it. Now that he has bumped into it, and he still thinks about it, if he still pretends not to know anything, he is too inhumane. Although David is no longer a human being in the strict sense. Ahem. As soon as Steve saw David's posture, he knew what was going to happen. He drank tea quietly, pretending that he didn't know anything. Is your throat uncomfortable? Thor's cordial greeting caused David to hold back what he had prepared. He rejected Thor's suggestion to come and have a glass of beer to relax and put on a serious expression. What happens next? I'm sorry for you. Scarred and you are important. Is it about fighting? No. It's about you. After Thor noticed David's expression, he glanced at Steve. The old comrade nodded slightly to himself. And he also realized the seriousness of the matter. Putting away his silly smile, Asgard's god of thunder went to work again. Your father, the god king Odin, is on earth at this time. This is impossible. It is impossible for my father to come to earth. There is no need. Odin will not leave Asgard at all, let alone run to this remote Midgard. But did David need to lie to him? Thor's face began to darken as he vaguely realized something. Do you know where my father is now? David did not answer, but looked at Steve aside. As a supreme mage, you need to know a lot of spells. Even if Steve is just a temporary transitional supreme mage, he still has to learn all the knowledge he needs to learn. Give me a piece of your hair. No one can touch my hair. Don't you want to find your father? The tangled Thor still carefully grabbed a strand of hair and handed it to Steve in front of him. He watched Steve make a series of spellcasting movements with his hands. After a moment of entanglement in his hands, the golden magic finally followed. His waving arms turned into a portal. Your father, God King Odin, is on the other side of the door. Thor stood up, put down his wine glass, and picked up Mjolnir. Thor's hammer, ready to go and see for himself. If possible, he would also like to find out why his father came to Earth without saying anything. David also stood up, ready to go over and take a look at the excitement. He is very curious. In which direction will things develop with his participation? Thor did not refuse. And together with Gwen who followed David, the three of them walked through the portal together. Opposite the portal was a nursing home, which made Thor fall into a moment of sluggishness. Fortunately, he didn't need to come in through the gate and look for his father without any clue. When he stepped through the portal and came here, he saw Odin sitting by the window basking in the sun. Father, you're here. Odin seemed a little surprised. He looked at Thor curiously and then looked at David next to him. You're here much earlier than I expected. It was obvious that Odin in front of him had long since escaped Loki's spell, but he did not return to Asgard to expose Loki's conspiracy. Instead, he quietly enjoyed his last moments here, waiting for that moment to arrive. But his plan seems to have been disrupted. The reason should be the guy next to him. What the H, L is this? Odin found that he could not see through this young man who looked human at all. This young man felt to him as if he was an extremely large, holy, and blazing ball of light. In just a blink of an eye, the old man lazing in the sun disappeared and was replaced by the leader of Asgard, the god King Odin who dominated the universe, had few opponents, and conquered a large territory. Who is this? I'm David, Thor's friend. Oh! Odin looked at his son in surprise. He didn't know that his son actually had such an outrageous friend. Where did this guy come from? Father, this is David Glamorgan, Lord of Winterfell. Winterfell is located in another world. Oh! Odin immediately understood after hearing Thor's introduction. He turned out to be a dimension lord. Chapter 364 David's Powerful Healing Technique How did Thor meet the dimension lords? How did another dimension lord come to Earth? Could it be a clone? Odin didn't know the specific situation. But since the supreme mage in charge of this matter didn't say anything, he certainly wouldn't meddle. In a way, it is a good thing that his son can make such friends putting away his aura and turning back into a gentle old man. Odin greeted David with a smile. Just like many parents who greet their children's friends and classmates, David didn't talk much to Odin. He mostly watched Thor chatting with Odin. The conversation between father and son was not that easy to understand. What Odin said didn't sound special on the surface. But there was something hidden inside. There are many metaphors. Gwen listened for a while and felt that every word Odin said had a special meaning but she didn't know the specific situation. So she didn't know what Odin was referring to. Thor also half understood what he meant. Odin didn't expect Thor to understand what he meant immediately. As long as he could figure it out when he needed to understand. That would be enough. Only David present understood the full meaning. 
listening to what this god king meant. He seemed to believe that Ragnarok was an irreversible event. If it were a comic book universe, this would not be difficult to understand. Because Ragnarok in the comic universe involves a higher level of existence. It is the oppression of the Asgardian Protoss by a group of higher level gods. The birth of Thor is also related to Odin's plan to resist these gods. He hopes that a descendant strong enough can break the cage that has oppressed the Asgardian Protoss for who knows how long. But this is a movie universe. So there shouldn't be such a setting. Right? After all, the origins of Thor in the movie universe and Thor in the comic universe are different. In the comic universe, Thor is the child of Gaia. While in the movie universe, he is the son of Frigga. David is not sure either. After all, he did not live to see the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and went to the continent of Brunia to report. Who knows if there will be other settings later. He was in a daze. And over there Thor was persuading his old father to return to Asgard. And he would give a severe lesson to his brother who had lied to him. Then what? Then? Yes. My body can't hold on much longer. What will Asgard do then? This. Odin looked at his son and always hoped that he would grow into an excellent heir. Although Thor has been making progress. In his opinion, Thor's growth rate is still too slow. Sometimes Odin even feels that he protects his son so well that he cannot even use his true power. Odin chose to spend the last days of his life on Earth. Also to take care of his son. If you end your life in Asgard, Hela will break out of Asgard directly. And Hela's power in Asgard will return to its peak in the shortest time. When Thor faces Hela, I'm afraid he will be beaten to death on the spot. On Earth, Hela's power is not at its peak. And even if Thor can't defeat his sister, he won't lose his life. Suffering a disastrous defeat may allow Thor to grow faster. Just when Odin was thinking this, Thor made an unexpected move. David, can you cure my father's health? Odin looked at Thor in surprise, not understanding what his son wanted to do. Then he looked at David with even more surprise. David was also sizing up Odin at this time. He had always thought that Odin was dying. So he had not considered the option of treatment. After Thor asked for help, he began to think about the feasibility. And then he found that it was not incurable. To put it bluntly, dying of life meant that the body's functions were aging and were about to expire. As long as the body's functions are restored, life will naturally be extended. The question is, can David restore Odin's powerful body functions to normal? It might work! After thinking carefully for a few seconds, David felt that it was not impossible. It was just consuming more holy light. To restore the body of a strong man like Odin to its normal state would definitely consume more energy than treating an ordinary person. With David's current strength, he could already do this kind of thing. And he doesn't even need to go to Azeroth. Really? That would be great. Please. You're really welcome. However, although Thor did not say anything about repaying David's kindness by doing things in the future, we can know from Thor's character and his expression at this time that if David healed Odin's body, whatever help David asks him for in the future, he will agree without hesitation, even if it may cost him his life. When facing this kind of person, there is no need to play any tricks. If you treat him sincerely, he will treat you sincerely in return. Here? I'm afraid it's not appropriate. David looked around. They suddenly appeared. Thor was still wearing armor and carrying Mjolnir. The image was very eye-catching. But no one in the surrounding group was surprised. It was obviously Odin who secretly released the spell. If David releases the holy light to treat Odin at this time, the noise will be too great. Not only will the people around him notice, but the whole of North America will see the strange phenomenon. Yes, let's get out of here first. Thor actually didn't know what David's strength was. He asked David because Steve once said that he learned the holy light from David. And he knew the magic of the holy light in healing. We saw it during the Great War in New York. In his opinion, Steve's holy light is already very powerful. And David, who taught him the holy light, must be even more powerful. Taking out his phone and calling Steve. Thor asked Steve to open a portal to take them all back to Kamataj. So several people returned here not long after leaving Kamataj. Your Majesty the God King. Can you have some tea? Just tea. Odin, who was wearing pajamas and slippers, was dragged to Kamataj by his son in a daze. He smiled and took a cup of tea from Steve. Are you the current Supreme Mage? Only a temporary part-time job. Steve would formally state that he was the current Supreme Mage at first. But after a while, he began to say that this position should be handed over to a more suitable person. Until recently, no matter who asked him, he would simply answer that he was just a temporary worker. 
it can be seen that the job of the supreme mage is indeed not a job for humans. As long as anyone takes over this position, it will not be long before they just want to quickly hand over the job to the next one. Several people sat back down in their respective positions. But David and Odin stood in the middle of the field. The two people stood opposite each other. And David looked at the god king in front of him seriously. Odin calmly allowed David on the opposite side to look at him without any protection. He was also curious about what the dimension lord in front of him was capable of. Thanks to Odin's cooperation, David quickly got a clear and accurate result. He can do this job. Very good! Hearing David's affirmative answer, Thor smiled like a 1.5-year-old child and immediately began to urge David to get treatment quickly. I'm starting! While speaking, David specifically reminded Steve. Upon seeing this, Steve immediately used the mirror space and sent everyone present in, lest David make too much noise and attract the attention of people from all over the world. Focus on. After doing this, Steve also paid attention to the two people on the court with a curious expression. Especially David. He was also curious about the extent of David's strength. Your Majesty the God King. Please do not resist the power I release. I am ready. Just when Odin nodded to indicate that he could start at any time, he immediately felt the aura of the young man opposite him change drastically. This aura reminded him of those powerful beings born from the planet. Before he could express his surprise, a surging warm light full of vitality enveloped him. Odin clearly felt that under the illumination of this warm light, his body, that was on the verge of collapse, actually began to recover. It's incredible! This warm and powerful light! While sighing in his heart, Odin also understood why the current supreme mage actually ignored the arrival of such a dimensional lord on earth. Obviously, Karma Taj has found a new food and clothing parent. The current supreme mage Steve Rogers, who should be making a living under this holy light lord. As for whether the original boss behind the scenes, Emperor Weishan, would cause trouble for these mages. Odin didn't know. He is now enjoying the comfortable process of his body gradually recovering. Slowly, he finds that not only has he regained his health, but he is even gradually returning to his peak condition. Helping him recover and helping Odin return to the top are completely different difficulties. Of course Odin himself knew the huge difference. Although he had looked up to the young man in front of him as much as possible, he found that he was still underestimated. When David released the holy light with all his strength, Odin vaguely saw many things, and he found that his previous feelings seemed to be correct. Compared to Odin, Steve and Thor couldn't see so many things. In their eyes, there was nothing in front of them at this moment. Only the golden divine light. The powerful holy light filled almost every inch of space. And Steve felt that the holy light in his body was constantly increasing. For next to him. Because he was exposed to the huge holy light. Unconsciously activated the thunder power hidden in his body. However, the extremely powerful thunder power can only barely resist the holy light. Preventing it from invading Thor's body and casting it into light. As for Gwen who was closer to an ordinary person. She didn't feel anything strange at all. She only felt a warm light wrapping around her. This feeling was similar to the feeling she usually felt huddled in David's arms. Warm, comfortable and reassuring. Just when one was enjoying the improvement in strength, one was enjoying the familiar warm embrace. And one was trying his best to barely avoid being cast by light. The powerful holy light finally began to dissipate. And they were able to look at their surroundings again. Chapter 365 A Small Spell That Can Transform at Any Time Odin stood there, still dressed in pajamas and slippers. But the energy he revealed at this time was even more amazing than when he was alert to David before. Vaguely, Thor seemed to see his father when he was a child again. In his days, he even forgot about the thunder power surging in his body just now. Odin did not restrain his momentum. He lowered his head and looked at himself. Looked at his left hand and then his right hand and then lightly clenched his fist. He hadn't felt this powerful feeling for a long, long time, since his body began to decline. He had to go into hibernation from time to time, firstly to ensure that he had enough strength to cope with various emergencies, and also to wait for Thor to grow. Now he realizes that he no longer needs to wait for Thor to grow up. That silly boy can do whatever he wants. I can definitely lead Asgard to glory for tens of thousands more years. Odin, who had seen strong winds and waves, quickly regained his composure and expressed his gratitude to David. The words were very polite, because the power David showed just now was no worse than Odin at his peak, and was even better, coupled with the facts that were accidentally discovered previously. Odin, who is well informed and has a rich knowledge reserve, already has several guesses about David's true identity. Faced with such a powerful existence, 
even if the god king of Asgard must also maintain due courtesy. David smiled and nodded, happily accepting Odin's thanks. He felt that he was qualified to bear this after having put in so much effort. Until this time, several people watching around also understood that the treatment was over. David had really cured Odin? With Odin's strength, he can live for a long time after returning to his peak. This shouldn't be a bad thing for the earth. After all, Odin's existence can keep the Nine Kingdoms stable for a long time. And the earth is the most inconspicuous place among the Nine Kingdoms. Odin and Asgard usually treat the earth. It's absolutely free-range and basically doesn't care much about it. Basically, as long as the earth does not make a clear statement that it will rebel against Asgard. Odin will not point his troops at the earth. Congratulations to His Majesty the God King! After Steve congratulated Odin, he released everyone from the mirror space. The Ancient One made the right choice. Odin looked at Steve, then glanced at David next to him. He could now understand why Ancient One made Steve the Supreme Mage. After regaining his peak strength, he naturally saw something very important. Thing, when Steve casts spells based on the energy of the Holy Light, he pays next to nothing. It's just that there is a price to pay when using spells. And Steve can repair these costs through the magic of the Holy Light, which allows Steve to use spells relatively at will. In other words, as long as Steve does not use specific spells that are extremely costly and cannot be repaired by this method, he can cast spells as he pleases. To use the Holy Light, it seems that there is no need to pay anything for the Holy Light Lord. I wonder if the Asgardians can use this power, not to mention other abilities. The healing effect of Holy Light is so amazing. For the Asgardians who are addicted to fighting, it is very attractive. Even the god King Odin is a little tempted, but he would not let himself learn the Holy Light, nor would he let his heir learn this power. He did not want Asgard to become a subordinate force of some existence. Even if he knew that the other party was in existence standing at the top of the universe. That's not okay. Thinking of this, he was very satisfied with Thor's performance just now. Although his silly son was confused and careless about many things, he still knew the importance of key things and did not lose himself in the huge holy light. To be honest, he was a little worried at the time, fearing that Thor might not be able to control himself and be imbued with the holy light, and then become the god of light. So far so good. In addition, after his strength is restored, Hela's seal will not be lifted. I should carefully consider whether to release this daughter and teach her to guide her back to the right path, or should it remain closed? In his current state, can he directly imprison Hela until the day he dies? Odin has to think carefully about how to choose. But now, he has another thing to deal with. Loki has been playing in Asgard for a long time. And it's time to stop. Father! Thor was still very angry. His brother actually lied to him again. Not only did he pretend to be dead, but he also pretended to be his father and occupied the position of God King. He also cast a spell and threw his real father into a nursing home on Earth. But when Odin returned to normal and returned to his peak condition under David's treatment, Thor began to worry that his stupid brother had angered his father and might be in bad luck. He didn't expect his father to pardon Loki's sins. He only hoped that the punishment would be lighter, such as being imprisoned for a hundred and eighty years to prevent him from getting into trouble. That should be enough. I know what you want to say. But Loki must pay the price for his actions and learn a lesson. Thor was a little worried when Odin said the first half of his sentence. But by the end, he was no longer worried. He knew that Loki would be punished at most and would not be in any big danger. So he agreed with his father's decision. David didn't interrupt these household matters and waited quietly for the father and son to finish their discussion before saying H, Lo to Thor. Leave your contact information. I'll come back to you when Clark's enemies show up. In his opinion, Thor should return to Asgard with Odin next. But it turned out that Thor didn't think so at all. He knew that Odin would definitely deal with Loki severely when he returned. And with his father in charge, he no longer had to worry about Asgard's affairs. And he could continue to enjoy a happy life on Earth. Or, Jane and I will go to Winter City to spend some time. Thor quickly made a decision to take Jane to Winter City for vacation and relaxation. When David needed help, he would just walk away for a while and he could continue to enjoy relaxation with Jane when he returned to Winter City. Happy time. Of course David would not refuse. So Thor asked Steve to open a portal. He went to find Jane, packed his luggage with his girlfriend, and came back, watching Odin calling Heimdall back to Asgard and Thor going back to find Jane Foster through the portal. David, Steve, and Gwen sat back in their original positions, waiting quietly. Thor returns. I thought about it, 
and decided to send Tony a message. Tell him the situation. It's up to him whether he wants to come over or not. Steve nodded and did not mind the trouble. He took out his phone and quickly entered a series of messages before sending them directly. When David looked at Steve's skillful operation, it was hard to imagine that he was a World War II hero. Steve in the original plot has a more traditional lifestyle and likes to use pen and paper and old-fashioned mobile phones. He seems to be living in the past. There is no way. There are too many things to deal with. And we have to contact all kinds of people. We must learn to use these things. In addition to defending dimensional invasion and teaching other mages at Kamataj, Steve is also commanding Giotto. He had to master various snake jobs and various high-tech equipment even if he didn't want to. As he was talking, Tony's reply had been sent. After taking a few glances, Steve told David, Tony asked you and Clark not to destroy the Kryptonian spacecraft. He is also interested in Kryptonian technology. A intact spacecraft can make his research work easier. Easier. So, he won't come back? Well, I'm not coming back. Tony still prefers to do research. And just leave the fighting to others. Anyway, he has no shortage of his own combat power in fighting the Kryptonians. If David feels that the fighting power is not enough, wouldn't it be better to bring a few Decepticons there? That's good advice. David decided to call RC at that time. I wonder if RC's new flying vehicle mode is ready. Just in time to ask. Right. David thought of something and happened to see Steve. So he could ask. Do you know the magic of instant costume change? The spell to change clothes? It's just a small spell. I do understand it. David has long wanted to learn some small spells to make his life more convenient. Such as cleaning his whole body instantly. Changing clothes instantly. And so on. He remembered that many people in the Marvel Universe knew the spell among which the Asgardians used it the most. Originally, he wanted to ask Thor. But now that Steve, the Supreme Mage, is sitting in front of him, it seems to be no different. Strange also used similar spells later. Therefore, it is normal for Steve, the current Supreme Mage, to know this kind of spell. What's more, according to Steve, this is just a little trick. Anyone who knows some mysterious power can quickly learn this little trick. After explaining the tricks and key points, David quickly learned it. It's really not difficult. The most important reason why he learned this was so that he could change into the Lightbringer suit at any time. Otherwise, he would have to find a dressing room to change his armor in advance before each battle. And all his skills would be lost. Now it's good. Just snap your fingers or wave your hand. And the armor will automatically be on your body. No matter how the fight goes. Just looking at the way he appears, he looks very powerful. I learned it too. Surprisingly. Not only David has learned this trick, but Gwen next to him has also learned this trick. She can also put on her Black Poison Queen suit anytime and anywhere. Seeing that Gwen was so talented, Steve's expression suddenly condensed and he put on a standard master's face. I didn't expect you to be so talented in magic. Gwen, what do you think? Do you want to stay in Kamataj and learn more secrets? Technique? Become the most powerful master of occult arts and take over the glorious position of Supreme Mage. No. I don't think I can shoulder such an important responsibility. Chapter 366 Kryptonian Invasion Returning to Winter City with Gwen, Thor, Jane Foster, Jane's assistant Daisy Louise, and Dr. Eric Selvig. The sudden increase in the number of people was a small accident. As scientists, Jane Foster and Dr. Eric Selvig wanted to go to Winter City to conduct some research. But there were not many such opportunities. After confirming that Lord David didn't mind, these guys came to Winter City with a bunch of instruments. Thanks to Thor. A powerful free labor force around them. Otherwise, they really wouldn't be able to move so many instruments at once. Come over. Wow. Jane's assistant, Daisy Louise, who was not bankrupt, held some equipment and looked at the surrounding environment curiously. What a beautiful city. It was both her and Selvig's first time coming to Winter City. And Jane had been here once before. However, during that winter festival, David was busy running around and only said H, low to Jane. That time Jane just came here in a hurry, took a brief look and then left. This time she could stay in Winter City for a while longer. Let's go. I'll take you to the hotel first. These few people just came to Winter City for vacation and did research work. They did not need to arrange separate accommodation. It was convenient for everyone to stay in the Winter Hotel because the location where they appeared was the main entrance of Winter Fortress which was not far from the entrance of Winter Hotel and could be reached within a few steps. 
by the way. They can also better visit the majestic high walls of the fortress. The wide surrounding streets, the increasingly dense houses across the road, and the holy light cathedral in the other direction. Compared to the past few months, Winter City, which has seen a huge increase in population, no longer seems so deserted. People can be seen coming and going on the streets at any time. It's become a lot more lively here. Yes, the population has increased a hundred times since the last time you came here. Hearing this number, several people were surprised. And even Thor asked curiously, So many more people? The royal capital of Thailand was attacked by the temple. And the entire city was destroyed. The people here are basically residents of the original royal capital of Thailand. The whole city was destroyed? Thor can be considered a battle-experienced warrior. He has experienced countless battles, large and small. But he has never really experienced such a thing that directly destroyed an entire city. After, it sounds like that temple is a very evil organization. This is indeed the case for the people of Thailand Kingdom. After arriving at the Winter Hotel and arranging accommodation for several people, David separated from them. From now on, whether Thor is spending time with Jane or helping Jane and Dr. Selvig conduct some research and sampling work, David does not need to follow him. As long as he can find Thor when he needs him, David specially gives Thor a communicator dedicated to Winter City. He then went to find R.C., and made sure that R.C. had solved all the problems. After completing the F-27 Lucifer's transformation mode, he also included her in the next team list. It feels like preparing a dungeon and recruiting specific teammates. David feels that Gwen's feeling is normal, because these things are indeed the dungeon. If he can successfully clear the Kryptonian invasion dungeon, he can obtain rewards such as Kryptonian men and Kryptonian technology. Continue to grow their own winter city. After arranging the preparations, the next step is to wait for news from Clark. However, there was always no movement from Clark's side. If Clark hadn't occasionally come over to say H, low to him, he even wondered if there was something wrong with the plot. Clark had been killed by General Zod. During this period, the Winter Alchemy Workshop tinkered with the design drawings of the new power armor and built a basic framework. It is said that Howard runs to the Cybertron area every day in order to solve some of the technical details of the vehicle deformation which was just named the Super Heavy Cavalry System. Once he solves those problems, the design drawings and basic framework of the Super Heavy Cavalry System will also be finalized. And then the prototype will be built. At this rate, perhaps the Tyrann Knights have not yet completed the training course planned by Sylvanas. These new armors specially made for the Tyrann Knights have already been manufactured. I wonder if the Tyrann Knights can only be considered semi-finished products. How much combat effectiveness of this set of equipment can be exerted? watching Howard tinkering with the prototype enthusiastically and enthusiastically. Dr. Otto Octavius, who had just joined Winter City not long ago, was also learning humbly and giving some suggestions from time to time. David began to hope that this new set of the armor can be built sooner. At this time, Clarice, who had previously said she would go back to discuss things with her friends, came back. She looked very excited, and although she was trying her best to control herself, her expression still betrayed her true thoughts. I told my friends what happened in Winter City. They didn't believe it at first. But after I tried my best to persuade them, they were finally willing to believe what I said. In fact, Clarice's friends just said, if Clarice can take them to see the so-called Winter City with their own eyes, they will believe her outrageous words. Clarice came here to ask for David's permission. Oh, it's not a big deal. Of course you can bring your friends over to visit. Thanks watching Clarice leave happily again. David felt that he had vaguely mastered some kind of ability. It seems that the rewards given by Clarice are similar to Clark's. They both have some kind of ability to teleport. Right. Clarice's codename flashes. And her mutant superpower is space teleportation. According to the comic settings, Clarice's maximum teleportation distance is from the Earth to the Moon. In addition, when Clarice develops her abilities to the extreme, she can open a portal to a parallel universe. However, the flicker in front of him obviously does not have that strong ability. According to the memory in his mind, the teleportation distance of this flicker is not that far, and even the closing of the portal cannot be controlled at will. He has only initially mastered his ability. To that extent, how far can I use it? To a certain extent, David already has the ability to travel to other worlds. Will he be strengthened to some extent if he gets flashing superpowers this time? As a result, he experimented for a while and found that he like Flicker, could open a golden door of light. At the same time, 
He could condense this space energy into the shape of a dart or a spear and throw it out. In addition to being able to open a portal far away from him like Blink, he can also attack with darts and spears. This kind of darts and spears with space power are extremely lethal and can easily cut off or even mince most objects. Forehead. David looked at the golden energy with space power in his hand. And he found that he seemed to be able to pretend that a certain one-eyed man was half open. Holding his hand. The golden energy dissipated directly. He didn't feel any changes in the energy in his body. The energy source of this ability seemed to be the universe itself. Not himself. I remember that many mutants' energy comes from the universe itself or a certain energy plane. For example, the red energy released by Cyclops and his brothers does not originate from themselves. They just extract energy from the surroundings and then release this energy through themselves. If I can use this ability to extract energy from the universe to strengthen myself, will I become more powerful? David couldn't hold back his imagination as soon as it opened up. Fortunately, Clarice showed up in time with her companions. Otherwise, David himself wouldn't know how far his imagination would grow and expand. This is Bobby Drake. You can also call him Iceman. Clarice saw David standing in front of her and immediately introduced her companions to the Lord in front of her. First, he introduced the bearded man next to him and then introduced David to the female companion next to him. This is Katie Pride. Anything else? What? Doesn't this person have a special title like you and Iceman? David knew who the person in front of him was. So he just made a casual joke to lighten the atmosphere. After all, Little Brother Phantom Cat was quite famous in his previous life. Phantom Cat. But just call me Katie. This is the Lord of Winter City. Duke David Glamorgan. After introducing both parties, David welcomed the two guests and prepared to show them around in person. However, just as he was about to introduce his Fort Glamorgan to a few people, Clark arrived. General Zod is here. As soon as Clark opened his mouth, David realized that taking these mutants to visit Winter City would have to be left to others. At the same time, he took out his communicator and contacted Thor and R.C., asking them to gather at the main entrance of the Winter Fortress. I'm sorry. It seems I can't take you to visit Winter City in person. We can just walk around by ourselves. Clarice didn't know what David was going to do. But looking at this posture, it should be something very important. Right? Just as he was thinking this, a big man wearing armor and holding a short-handled war hammer suddenly fell from the sky startling several mutants. Where is the enemy? We're about to go there. Wait a minute. RC is coming soon. Before David could finish speaking, he saw a pink VF-27 Lucifer rushing towards several people from the sky. Several mutants thought it was an enemy attack. Fortunately, David reacted quickly and explained in time that it was his companions. And several mutants, who did not know the truth, stopped in time. But when they saw a huge fighter plane, it suddenly turned into a robot when it was about to land before they could see clearly what the robot looked like. It turned into a female human standing in front of a few people, falling into a state of sluggishness. Iceman and Phantom Cat both raised the same question. What kind of world have we come to? Chapter 367 The actors are in place, watching Clark, whom he had met earlier, slowly disappear before his eyes, along with the newly met Thor and Transformer RC, as well as David, the Lord of Winter City, Clarice, Iceman Bobby and Phantom Cat Kitty still haven't completely calmed down. Like Bobby the Iceman and Kitty the Phantom Cat, they both began to realize that what Clarice had described to them not long ago did not seem to be an exaggeration. The real situation in this winter city is even more outrageous than what Clarice originally described. I suddenly started to look forward to it. Katie calmed down for a while and finally regained her composure. She began to be curious about this city and didn't know what new things she could see in this place. Me too. Iceman Bobby was the same and couldn't wait to start visiting the city. The next two people asked Clarice, Where do we start visiting? This, Let me show you around. Gwen appeared in front of Clarice at the right time and proposed that she and her two companions should be shown around. When Clarice came to Winter City earlier, she happened to catch up with Gwen bringing Dr. Otto Octavius to Winter City. And they had a simple visit together. So Clarice and Gwen are considered acquaintances. And as a young woman, Gwen naturally makes people lower their guard. In addition, Gwen's personality and affinity also made it easy for her to win the favor of strangers. So neither Bobby nor Katie objected. After introducing themselves to each other, they followed Gwen to visit Winter City. At the same time, David, R.C. and Thor followed Clark to the DC movie universe. After Goldfinger upgraded, David has gained the ability to freely come to this world. But with Clark taking him, 
he can reach the right place accurately. Otherwise, he himself doesn't know where he will land. It would be okay if he was on Earth. But it would be embarrassing if he traveled to an alien planet. Here, he couldn't summon Steve to help him open the portal. And the ability he just gained from Blink couldn't teleport so far for the time being. Distance. Where is this? My hometown. Clark brought several people to his hometown in Kansas. This kind of rural place has always been unattractive. In addition, the place is spacious enough to entertain his friends from other worlds. Who is this? This is Thor from Asgard. The son of Odin. He is here specifically to help this time. Clark Kent. Just call me Clark. Thank you very much for your enthusiastic help. You are welcome. Clark knew that Thor came to help for David's sake. In fact, he already knew Thor's identity when he met him. The last time he went to the Marvel Universe, he had read the information about the relevant members of the Avengers. But this was the first official meeting between the two. So he said a few polite words in a routine manner. As for R.C., Thor, who had lived in Winter City for a while, knew R.C., and Clark knew that R.C. was a Cybertronian. But there was no contact between the two. They just exchanged greetings when they met. And then nothing happened. The situation below. Do you want anything to drink from this? Beer! Thor didn't know what politeness meant. So Clark asked him, and answered truthfully. David said it was casual, and it was okay not to drink. As for R.C., there's gasoline and diesel over there in the garage. No need to bother. I have plenty of energy now. Since she came to Winter City, she has never worried about energy issues. Whether it is the Holy Light or the special crystal mine of Winter City, it can keep the Cybertronians full of energy. Nowadays, with the development and improvement of various technologies in Winter City, the crystal ore is no longer used in all aspects as it was originally. It is used purely as renewable energy and special materials. In addition, the production has been increasing. Making Cybertron Man has completely gotten rid of the energy crisis and has begun to restore and redevelop scientific research work that has been stagnant for who knows how many years. In this environment, R.C. really didn't need to rely on gasoline or diesel to replenish energy. In addition, due to her physical condition, she gradually no longer likes to be covered in oil and smell, preferring to replenish her consumption through pollution-free pure energy. Although R.C. said so, Clark's mother still brought beer and ice water over to greet a few people. Looking at these son's friends who suddenly appeared, the famous Martha's face was full of curiosity. David didn't mind either, letting the other party look at him while discussing with Clark what to do next. General Zod has issued an ultimatum through the public signal of the invasion of Earth. If Earth does not hand me over, an attack will be launched against Earth. Clark went to find David when General Zod issued an ultimatum. From now on, Clark had 24 hours to prepare. We have plenty of time. We can even rest one night and wait until dawn before we go to trouble that guy. David took a sip of ice water and comforted Martha, who looked worried. Don't worry. General Zod won't want harm to your son. And to the planet. That's good. Although she is an adoptive mother, Martha, who raised Clark from childhood to adulthood, sees no difference between this son and her biological son. As a mother, she doesn't think so complicated, as long as her son is safe. Although I don't know where these people in front of me come from. Who is he? But as long as he comes to help his son. He is a good person. Should we go directly to Zod? Now? Yes. No. David shook his head. It would have been a good plan before Zod issued an ultimatum and notified everyone on the Earth. But now that your existence has been known to the people on the Earth, it is best that the next thing is also known to the people on the Earth. People on Earth know. It is best to expose Zod's true thoughts in a global live broadcast so that Superman can stand on the side of justice. Otherwise, it would be a big fight if they just charged up. Even if they just dropped some garbage and smashed some flowers and plants. There would be people who would keep jumping out to accuse Clark. In addition, David also wants to expose the fact that the complexity of this world is far beyond human imagination. At that time, they will find out how happy it is that Superman will stand firmly on the side of mankind. Wait until daytime tomorrow. And put on a big show in front of all mankind. Although I know you did this for my own good. I'm still a little worried. Don't worry. Tony won't come this time. Clark was speechless, but felt that what David said made sense. Clark, who had been together for a while, knew what kind of character Tony was. If Tony came over, he would definitely make more noise than David. And he might even reveal his true identity. No matter what, Clark, who knew what to do next, was not confused at all. 
and quietly waited for the arrival of daylight the next day. Then, as David said, he would first show up in front of the U.S. military, contact General Zod, and request face-to-face -face negotiations with him. To do this, the first thing is to draw General Zod out of the spacecraft, and the other is to establish the military base in relatively desolate deserts and Gobi areas, where fighting will not cause damage to the city, let alone injure civilians. As for how to broadcast the conversation between General Zod and Superman for the world to see, just leave this task to our sea. As a transformer, but also fused with the abilities of the Hermit Warrior. RC is not as able to break through the firewall and steal secret intelligence information as easily as Chaos. But it would be no difficulty for her to just hack into public signals. As for the perspective, RC, remember to take pictures of me looking cool tomorrow. No problem. Your Majesty. Just as David and RC kept discussing camera positions, lenses, filters, angles, and postures, while Thor drank the third box of beer that Clark had specially brought back. The sun finally rose. I don't know why. But the moment the sun emerged, Clark had a strange feeling. He was finally free. After hugging his mother Martha and telling her not to worry, Clark took off and headed straight to a nearby military base. David also stood up and raised his hand to make a simple spellcasting gesture. As a ray of light flowed from his neck to the soles of his feet, his casual clothes turned into a lightbringer suit. In addition to the crown-shaped helmet, he also wore an extra-large cape to make himself look more majestic. In addition, Thor was always wearing his own armor, and the red cloak on his body was equally conspicuous. Martha looked at the two of them and suddenly smiled. You also have a cloak. Yeah. So Clark and I are very good friends. David, Martha, Thor, and R.C. were chatting and waiting, always paying attention to the conversation coming from the earphones. Clark has been in contact with the U.S. military, and the other party has shown restraint, and has agreed to help Clark arrange a face-to-face -face conversation with General Zod. Maybe the U.S. military also wanted to have close contact with this group of aliens, and it might be a little tentative, but David didn't care. After confirming that things were developing according to his plan and estimating that the time was almost up, it was time for him to set off. Are you coming with me? Or are you waiting for my signal? Of course we'll go together. Thor is not someone who hides in the dark and waits for the right time. He prefers to fight face to face in a clear formation. In fact, he has restrained himself a lot. According to his past personality, he had already killed himself on General Zod's spaceship last night. The two flew high into the sky together. The difference was that David relied on the energy field to fly, while Thor still had not gotten rid of his dependence on Mjolnir, relying entirely on his hammer to drag him flying. I wonder if a fight with a Kryptonian can unleash Thor's potential. Chapter 368 It's H. L ahead. I am General Zod. As per your request, I will come to negotiate with you personally. General Zod landed on the Earth in a small spaceship. Opposite him was Kal-El, the son of Jor-El, whom he was looking for. As for the group of Earth soldiers behind Kal-El, he didn't pay attention at all. At a glance, you can see the technological level of the Earth at this time. Backward technology backward weapons, and poor physical fitness. This is still a very primitive planet, and civilization is in its infancy. As Krypton's top military talent, he didn't take Earthling seriously at all. These creatures were not worthy of being his enemies. So with just one glance, General Zod stopped paying attention to those people on Earth, and just stared at Kal-El, hoping to ask him about the whereabouts of the central book and find the hope of rebuilding Krypton. As for Clark, after a brief negotiation with the military, he directly stated that General Zod was not trustworthy. It was foolish to think that if he handed him over, the other party would let the Earth go. Then he said that he would confront Zod face to face and let him reveal his true intentions. During this period, he only needed the military to help him contact General Zod. There is no need for the military to refuse such a request. And they are indeed very afraid of General Zod, an alien visitor. When Clark and General Zod were facing each other face to face, Many people were watching overtly or covertly, including officials who were ready to launch nuclear bombs at any time. At this time, General Calvin Swanwick, who was on the front line, was mentally prepared to sacrifice at any time and was watching the situation not far away. Next to him stood Dr. Emil Hamilton, a consultant invited by the military, and Mississippi Lois Lane, who was just invited and is said to know Superman's true identity, coupled with countless armed soldiers, tanks, and helicopters, they felt that they had made all the preparations they could. 
just as they were quietly waiting for the outcome of the negotiation between Superman Clark and General Zod. Another unknown object suddenly flew from the sky. General, there are two unknown objects approaching quickly. It was not that the radar detected an unknown object, but that a soldier saw an object flying at high speed. In just a few words of turning around and reporting, everyone had already clearly seen that the two people were flying towards them. Calvin Swanwick suddenly felt a very bad feeling. He immediately looked at the two consultants beside him. What's going on with these two people? This, Emil Hamilton didn't know how to answer. But Lois Lane remembered what Clark had said to herself. Superman said that the Earth is not as simple as everyone thinks. There are many secrets that ordinary people don't know. Maybe. General Calvin Swanwick had a constipated expression on his face as he watched two men in gorgeous armor land not far ahead. Next to Superman. The sudden visit of the two uninvited guests made General Zod stunned for a moment. Especially because the way these two appeared was so special that he couldn't ignore it even if he wanted to. The experienced General Zod could see that the two men in front of him were different from the Earthlings in the distance. They were very powerful. Who are you? Zord. It's General Zod. General Zod's loyal adjutant immediately expressed her dissatisfaction. Although she could see that the two men were very powerful, she still couldn't stand the other's disrespect. If my information is correct, you have all been dismissed. Now you are just a group of exiled Kryptonian criminals. And you can barely add the identity of Kryptonian refugees. David's words made it impossible for General Zod and his adjutant Fiora to refute. They were surprised that they could meet someone who knew their situation on Earth. Could it be that Kal-El told the other party? As for how Kal-El knew, it's not surprising that there is some Kryptonian information on the spacecraft. Putting the question aside for the time being, no matter how the other party knew it, General Zod didn't care. He was more concerned about the purpose of these two people. You appear here to prevent me from taking away this fellow Kryptonian? Zod was not lying at this time. He did regard Clark as his compatriot and hoped that Clark could rebuild Krypton with him. The big fight between the two men broke out after Clark made it clear that he refused. No! I suddenly appeared to determine your true purpose. David raised his head and glanced at the sky. At this time, the VF-27 Lucifer fighter jet RC transformed into had already started filming, and all the footage and dialogue were made public. The signal is broadcast to the entire Earth. You know, your reputation among many advanced civilizations in the universe is not very good. Who are you? General Zod realized something was wrong. He suspected that the two people in front of him were not Earthlings at all. But why do people from other planets come to interfere with our own affairs? I am Damon Glamorgan, who belongs to the Avengers. The Avengers are the organization responsible for guarding the peace of the universe. And the Earth is my jurisdiction. Zod, please declare your intention immediately. Otherwise, I will assume that you intend to invade and occupy an inferior civilized planet protected by cosmic law. Zod. Clark. General Calvin Swanwick. David didn't deliberately lower his voice when speaking, and even showed off his excellent voice. Even though they didn't see him yelling at the top of his lungs, everyone present could clearly hear every word he said. So, when the Earth soldiers heard that David came from an organization called the Avengers, they were still thinking about what kind of organization it was. Then I heard that it was responsible for guarding the peace of the universe. It felt a bit strange. Could this be the legendary cosmic police? Then I heard the other party describe the Earth as a low-level civilized planet that must be protected. And I felt a little dissatisfied. But considering that the other party can fly, and was so tough in the face of General Zod, who is capable of interstellar navigation, the Earth is really not that good in comparison. Advanced? That's ridiculous. I've never heard of any Avengers. I have lived for 1500 years. And I have never heard of Krypton. Thor stood aside quietly. Those who didn't know thought that this was a pure thug. But when he opened his mouth, he surprised everyone again. Startled. This guy has lived for 1500 years? Are you bragging? You must think that my companion is bragging. David looked at Zod and secretly observed the soldiers behind him. This fully exposes your ignorance and recklessness. General Zod was ridiculed inexplicably. And a burst of anger rushed to his head. The adjutant Fiora next to her was even more ready to take action. But was stopped by Zod. He stared coldly at the guy named David in front of him. Wanting to see what he was going to say next. You didn't even understand the specific situation of the target planet. And you prepared to launch a military invasion. Isn't that reckless enough? You mean there are many powers hidden on this backward planet that I don't know about? Oh, are you willing to admit that you want to occupy the Earth? General Zod is a very arrogant soldier. His previous hiding could be interpreted as waiting for the right time. 
so his true intentions are not revealed. But after his actual thoughts were exposed, he didn't bother to lie and deny it. Although what this man named David said made him a little concerned. He really didn't think that such a backward planet could hide any powerful power. Perhaps the biggest obstacle to his own occupation of the earth is the two people in front of him. By this time, both sides have almost made their plans clear. General Zod no longer conceals his true purpose of seizing the earth, while David, the other Avengers, and Superman should be preparing to protect the earth. The matter has been made very clear, and there seems to be no need to continue talking. But after Zod realized that the Avenger named David in front of him seemed to be a chatterbox, he resisted the urge to take action immediately. He was ready to ask questions before starting a fight. Didn't the other party mock him for being reckless? He wanted this young man to understand how wrong he was. I do want to occupy this planet. This planet is great, the right temperature. A lot of liquid water, a variety of minerals, and a stable magnetic field. It is a huge waste for such a good planet to be occupied by such a weak group of life forms. General Zod never concealed his ideas. He never believed that there was anything wrong with his ideas. Such an excellent planet should be owned by a better race. The superior race is the Kryptonians? That's right. General Zod clenched his fists, and he was ready to take action, whether it's the Avengers or anyone else. There is only one result that stands in front of me. Then let me tell you, besides the Avengers, who else will stand in front of you? David's words made Zod lower his fist again. He really wanted to know what else was hidden here on Earth. What enemy are you looking at? It's not too late to find out first before taking action. He didn't know that the rhythm of the field had been completely controlled by David. Not only General Zod was waiting for the follow-up, but a group of American soldiers next to him were also staring at David like the crowd, waiting for him. Below, even a group of leaders far away are waiting for David to continue speaking, not to mention the billions of people around the world who are watching the live broadcast. The Amazons from Paradise Island, including Diana, the daughter of Zeus, the king of Olympus, may be on her way here, the underwater kingdom of Atlantis. Although they live in the sea, but you want to occupy it, they will not agree to transform the earth into a new Krypton, the Martians, who are powerful and possess a variety of superpowers, and the Green Lantern Corps, a former Kryptonian general, who is responsible for maintaining law and order in the universe. Don't tell me you don't even know about the Green Lantern Corps. At the end of the sentence, David pointed to Thor beside him. There is also Thor, the god of thunder from Asgard. He is the son of god King Odin. Are you sure you understand that these people are classified as enemies? Does it mean anything? Chapter 369 continued to cheat. David kept talking nonstop, while General Zod's face across from him was as gloomy as the bottom of a pot. General Calvin Swanwick, who was not far away, also had an ugly expression on his face. He stared at the young man named David Glamorgan, wondering what exactly this guy knew. That's right. The Martian who David mentioned is strong and possesses multiple superpowers is this guy. As a Martian refugee and almost the only remaining Martian, one, he just wants to live quietly in a place where no one knows him or recognizes him. Originally, I had disguised myself as an earthling and started a new life. Who would have thought that another alien would lead to this situation? It doesn't matter if a Kryptonian comes looking for another Kryptonian. At least on the surface, they are just looking for a fellow Kryptonian. Maybe they pick up that fellow Kryptonian and turn around and leave the Earth. But what is this Avenger who appears out of nowhere? He has never heard of such things as maintaining peace in the universe and protecting lower civilizations in accordance with the laws of the universe. Why didn't you see any Avengers protect yourself and your tribe? What about Zeus, Diana, and Atlantis? These words are all made up. Right. Aren't these all legends on Earth? The last introduction is even more ridiculous. Thor? The one from Norse mythology? Although this big man does look like that. Is it really okay to deceive aliens like this? It was not just General Swanwick who labeled David a big liar in his heart, but also the two advisors beside him, Dr. Emil Hamilton and Louise Lane. General Zod did not regard David as a big liar. He simply believed that the group of people David mentioned could not pose a threat to him. I don't know any of the people you mentioned. He had heard of the Green Lantern Corps, but he didn't take those guys to heart. In his opinion, even if the Green Lantern Corps was really unhappy with his behavior, it would not threaten the powerful Kryptonians. As for the so-called Avenger in front of him, he didn't even care. If those people you mentioned really appear in front of me, I will destroy them all. General Zod raised his fist as he spoke. Start with you. General Zod, who wears a Kryptonian armor and is a powerful military talent himself, 
has considerable strength and rich combat experience. After identifying the enemy, he will launch an attack simply and neatly without any hesitation. Personal relationships will not even affect his fighting. This is his advantage as a Kryptonian warrior. Every Kryptonian warrior is an elite trained from the embryonic stage. In a true sense, the fighting instinct is engraved into the human body. Inside the genes, David had expected that Zod would take action. But he was not worried that the other party could hurt him at all. The Kryptonian general would have never imagined that his opponent would have been determined before he even arrived on Earth. Superman Clark Kent will personally defeat Zod and try his best to convince General Zod to lead the remaining Kryptonians to another place to start a new life. Kryptonians can use another method to continue. Boom! Zod's heavy punch was firmly caught in Clark's hand. This situation made General Zod frown. Realizing that the situation might be more troublesome than he expected. He didn't expect jor son to be so powerful. The experienced General Zod only had one contact with his opponent and already had a relatively accurate judgment on the opponent's strength. He did not even see clearly how the opponent moved in front of him and stopped him. Are you really going to betray Krypton? Ah, uh, just a quick interjection. Before Clark could reply, David's voice reached Zod's ears again. Legally speaking, Superman Kal-El is the orthodox heir of Krypton. And you guys are the traitors. General Zod felt an evil fire rising from his belly to the top of his head. As a Kryptonian general, he had never been so humiliated before. What he wanted to do most now was to get rid of Kal-El's entanglement and fill his mouth with this beat the guy who talks nonsense to death. It's a pity that he can't do it. Kal-El will always stop in front of him. He is very fast and powerful. Several punches in succession are easily resolved by the opponent. Realizing that he had no way of defeating Kal-El quickly, General Zod pinned his hopes on his men. Although he cannot defeat Kal-El quickly, Kal-El will also be restrained by him here. At this time, his men can complete the planned deployment. General Zod is very confident in his men. He does not think that those weak earthlings can stop the attack of his men. The only variable is David who talks nonsense. Turning his head slightly, he found that David was actually standing there with his arms around his shoulders. And the big man who claimed to have lived for 1500 years and was called the son of the god king of Asgard by David was waving the inconspicuous weapon. With his small hammer, he knocked over his men one by one. This was nothing. He was mentally prepared for the fact that these two people had good fighting power. But what was the thunder and lightning that sputtered out with the swing of the hammer? The weapon was damaged, and there was a leakage of electricity. The next second, General Zod would no longer think so. Because he saw with his own eyes the big man named Thor raising the short-handled warhammer above his head. The surrounding area was shrouded in dark clouds in the blink of an eye. And then an extremely thick thunder and lightning fell from the sky. Boom! This not only frightened General Zod and the Kryptonian warriors he led, but also stunned the American troops who were watching the show. If David had just introduced the big man as Thor, the god of thunder from Asgard, and they had taken it as a joke, then the terrifying thunder that suddenly fell was like a heavy hammer, knocking all three of them off. Guan knocked it to pieces. Calvin Swanwick and Dr. Hamilton next to him looked at each other. Although the two of them did not speak, they both guessed what the other was thinking at this time. What the guy named David said is so special. Are they all true? If this big man is really the legendary Nordic god of thunder, then the other things he mentioned, such as God King Zeus, Zeus's daughter Diana, the Amazons on Paradise Island, the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, etc., all really exist on Earth. Forces or characters? There are so many terrible existences hidden on the Earth? Is the world we live in so dangerous? It wasn't just the people on the scene who were affected. Because our sea had remained invisible for filming. And even released a drone for multi-camera filming. Billions of people on the Earth were in a state of confusion at this moment. In a forced state. I firmly believe that this is all fake. Special effects. And a new Hollywood blockbuster. More people are shaping new outlooks. Such as Mr. President. Who is also paying attention to this area. In addition. Many people are beginning to wonder about David's true identity. Since this man knows about the Olympian god King Zeus and his daughter. And also stands with the Nordic god of thunder. What is his origin? In other words. Which pantheon is it from? Judging from the clothes and appearance of the other party. He should come from a certain European mythology system. Right? More importantly. David previously claimed that the earth was his jurisdiction. Which made many people particularly concerned. How much do you know about David Glamorgan? I have absolutely no idea what's going on with this guy. Facing the questions from the two people beside her, Lois Lane could only shake her head helplessly and said 
that this was the first time she had seen this person. She didn't even know how Clark, a Kryptonian, could be related to myths and legends like Thor, is related to the existence of. Unable to get useful information from Louise, General Calvin Swanwick and Dr. Emil Hamilton could only use their own eyes to observe. However, Dr. Hamilton's eyes were full of curiosity and full of expectations for what would happen next, while General Swanwick was observing. He was constantly thinking, can the Earth survive? Because their eyes were always focused on David. And because David did not move as fast as Superman and General Zod, several people could clearly see all of David's movements. At this time, they noticed that it was not that David had done nothing. It was just that the scene was too chaotic and noisy. The battle between General Zod and Superman was very fierce. With loud noises constantly erupting, the God of Thunder had all kinds of sparks. Lightning and thunder. Adding lightning is simply a double torture for hearing and vision. In such an environment, it is not surprising that ordinary people would ignore that inconspicuous light. It seems that he can release a golden energy to attack from a long distance? Just what a few people wanted to observe carefully and confirm their speculations. They were surprised to find that the Kryptonian female adjutant suddenly turned around and rushed towards David. Adjutant Fiora Earl discovered that David never really joined the battle. He only stood on the periphery and released energy from time to time for long-distance attacks. She suspected that he was not actually very strong. So she wanted to take down this enemy first. At the same time, it is also a test of the true situation of the opponent if this David is really not strong. Taking this guy down can also be used to blackmail the big man named Thor. If he is strong, then Fiora is prepared to use all her strength to delay her opponent and give General Zod a chance to retreat. As long as David's strength is similar to Thor, the Kryptonian plan to occupy the Earth will be impossible to succeed. Her natural fighting instinct allows her to make calm judgments and take timely action in chaotic battlefields. The next moment, everyone who was paying attention to David saw a scene that horrified them. Fiora, who was running at high speed, suddenly stopped because a golden spear accurately touched her heart. At the same time as the picture was frozen, huge pure white wings glowing with golden light appeared behind David. The gloomy sky seemed to be torn apart, and the holy light poured straight down, covering David and countless flying feathers. Chapter 370 Forming a Group to Fool Since there was going to be some big noise, David didn't mind if things got bigger. The wings behind him are made big and beautiful, and every feather on them is the same as a real feather, and the golden brilliance is constantly flowing highlighting a luxurious, beautiful and shocking figure, with a beam of light shining straight down, a handsome face, and a golden spear held in his right hand. With my current look, many people must not be able to sleep tonight. This is completely different from the Olympian gods and the Nordic gods. As one of the most influential religions on earth, David's appearance has an amazing impact on the people of the earth. After today, if David announces that he will lead mankind into a new era, it will be easy to establish a new country or power on the earth. In addition, the fact that David has given himself such an identity will also make politicians in this world extremely fearful. Mr. President dares to launch a nuclear bomb at Superman. An alien. But what would happen if he ordered a nuclear bomb to be launched at David? It must be interesting. Looking at the reactions of the soldiers behind them, we can see that many of the soldiers who were holding their weapons tightly and looking wary had already knelt down in large numbers. Many of them kept crossing themselves on their chests and muttering something to each other, even though he was not that religious before. After witnessing such a scene, he immediately became the most devout believer. Similar scenes are happening everywhere in the world. With such status blessing, those politicians don't dare to discuss themselves easily. Right? I hope the god of the DC universe doesn't mind that he probably has no time to deal with this aborted movie universe. There is a lot more fun in the comic universe than here. Because of the momentary distraction, Fiora, who was staring at David, thought this was an opportunity. However, when she used her fastest speed to avoid sideways and rush forward to control the opponent, she was horrified to find that the opponents moved faster. Boom! A simple and powerful loud noise was accompanied by Fiora's fall to the ground. The strong Kryptonian armor protected the female adjutant from any harm. But Fiora vaguely realized that the other party didn't seem to want to kill her. Is it because of the Avengers? The other party just wants to capture you. Not kill him on the spot. She would never have imagined that David wanted to catch all the Kryptonians and drag them all to Winter City. So when the God of Thunder Thor was fighting with the Kryptonian warriors just now, he not only did not take action, but even watched from the side, fearing that Thor would get too excited and beat the unlucky Kryptonian to death with a hammer. 
fortunately, Thor was very measured in his actions. So for the time being, there was no strange situation where Thor went on a killing spree and David, his teammate, crazily added blood to the enemy. After looking at Thor's efficiency in handling the miscellaneous soldiers, he estimated that he would be able to bring down all these Kryptonian warriors in a while. Even though these Kryptonian warriors have good physical fitness and armor protection and can withstand Thor's fists and feet, there is no good way to deal with artifacts like Mjolnir and the thunder it releases. Either resist and continue fighting, or be stunned. In addition, David can be sure that even if Thor relies solely on hand-to-hand -hand combat at this time, this group of Kryptonian soldiers cannot handle it. If he wants to stop the Asgardian God of Thunder, Zod will probably have to take action himself. Zod's condition was not good at this time. His armor was damaged by Superman, and the helmet formed by the energy field completely dissipated. After directly receiving the energy of the Yellow Sun, Zod also began to awaken various superpowers. Clark did not take the opportunity to knock Zod down, but instead reminded him how to control his abilities. It's not that Clark suddenly transformed into a Scion and wanted to fight a stronger opponent. This was originally part of their plan. Kryptonians awakened various abilities under the irradiation of the Yellow Sun. There was no way to hide this. Instead of waiting for the Kryptonians to know about it in Winter City and triggering a new conflict, it is better to let Zod and others understand in advance that even if you awaken your superpowers, you are still no match for us. Do you need help? At this time, Thor, who had already dealt with the soldiers, also came over. After glancing at the large wings condensed with holy light behind David, he set his sights on Zod. He didn't have much fun fighting. Maybe a fight with this Zod would be more enjoyable. No, I can handle it. This Superman is not the rookie in the original plot who just learned how to fly. Clark already knew his identity and abilities when he was in the Marvel Universe and underwent some targeted training. In addition to regularly basking in the sun, he also systematically learned how to fight. With Superman's super brain and physical fitness, he can learn fighting skills and everything in one go. After his experience in the Marvel Universe, he also has no shortage of practical experience. Both Monster and David can serve as Clark's sparring partner. Therefore, Superman at this time is very powerful in combat. And as he spends more time in the sun, his combat effectiveness is still improving. In this state, he has no worries about General Zod's awakening ability. Even if the opponent is a professional soldier with fighting instincts engraved in his genes, it is impossible to defeat him. The actual situation is no different from Superman Clark's judgment. Zod, who has awakened his superpowers, originally ridiculed Kal-El, thinking that a descendant of a scientist who came to Earth and was adopted and taught by farmers would be impossible to defeat. A professional soldier like myself. As a result, he was slapped hard in the face by reality. This is impossible! Compared with the original plot, the development of events after being disturbed by David had a greater impact on General Zod. He believed in his bones that the model of cultivating professional talents through the central book to ensure the operation of various industries on Krypton the concept that is the perfect and correct model has suffered a huge impact. General Zod, whose eyes were dull, glanced at his men. Fiora was standing next to the man named David. David had made a lot of noise just now. And he also saw the scene where David unfolded his wings. Fiora was no match for this man. The other men were more or less injured. But none of them were killed. General Zod realized that the other party was showing mercy. Although he didn't know what the other party wanted to do with him and others. He probably wouldn't directly drive them out of the earth. The scene suddenly fell into an eerie calm. Which was in huge contrast to the terrifying scene just now of darkness. Lightning and thunder. Two Kryptonians flying around in the sky. Heat rays sweeping around. A punch piercing the sky. And a foot crushing the earth. David knew it was time to step out on his own. As a result, he had just lifted his feet and had not yet stepped out. General Swanwick, who had been watching the excitement for a long time, suddenly came over and said, This is Mr. David Glamorgan. Is something wrong? Mr. President would like to speak with you. Wait until I finish the business first. David waved his hand not paying attention to Mr. President's invitation. His main purpose of coming here this time was this group of Kryptonians. At least, he had to abduct all the Kryptonians before he would be in the mood to do it. Something else. General Swanwick didn't think there was anything wrong. After all, David made it clear when he appeared. The Avengers are here to deal with this group of Kryptonian invaders who want to occupy the Earth. Although I am not very familiar with the so-called Avengers. After today, People on Earth should firmly remember the name of this organization. Just as Swanwick was thinking this, 
he suddenly saw that David Glamorgan suddenly stopped in his steps and looked at him again. Interested in joining the Avengers? Me? Swanwick was shocked. Could this organization also recruit ordinary humans to join? Immediately, he thought that his true identity seemed to have been discovered by this person. But he kept comforting himself in his heart that it was impossible, and that his disguise was perfect. Yes, as a powerful Martian. You mean our recruitment criteria very well. David suddenly felt that it would be interesting to develop the Avengers into a powerful organization with representatives and offices in the multiverse. Things. Think about it carefully. Joining the Avengers is not a bad thing for you. When David invited the Martian Manhunter, he lowered his voice so that only the two of them and Fiora and Thor could hear it. Humans in the distance could not hear what they said. In the eyes of other soldiers, his general went up and exchanged a few words with the angel. And then the angel walked towards the Kryptonian general, who was defeated by Superman. Zord! This time no one specifically emphasized the title General Zod. Not to mention that David knew their true identities very well. So, what are the Avengers going to do with us? Imprisonment? Execution? Since you have not caused irreversible damage to the Earth or caused any casualties, I will not execute you and your men. David's original plan was to defeat the Kryptonians first, and then absorb these Kryptonians into Winter City on the grounds of providing a new home for the remaining Kryptonians. The current situation was somewhat different from the original plan. David found that his group was too powerful, especially Superman Clark. After several combinations of punches, even Zod's unwavering faith was shaken. In this case, combined with Kal-El's status as the legitimate heir of Krypton, he could have General Zod serve him in a simpler and more straightforward way. But the necessary punishment must still be meted out. You and your men will be imprisoned in my territory. First, he was sent to Winter City as a prisoner in prisoner, and David used his service in exchange for a reduced sentence. If necessary, Zod could be released to Zod on the condition that the Avengers and Winter City helped Zod build a new Krypton. The general worked for himself for a long time. The original plan to slowly integrate the Kryptonians into Winter City can still be used, even if these Kryptonians decide to leave decades later. By that time, there should be many local Kryptonians in Winter City. Chapter 371 Avengers of the Multiverse In just a few words, the future of the Kryptonians was decided. David then raised his hand in the air to reveal the invisible RC. When countless people saw a pink fighter plane appear out of thin air, they realized that David and Thor were not the only Avengers here. There were actually others hiding in the dark. While countless soldiers were curiously looking at this plane that looked very similar to an Earth fighter plane, the pink fighter plane suddenly made a strange sound after briefly circling and descending, and turned into a huge robot. This is RC! From Cybertron! With David's introduction, everyone realized that this tall robot was also an alien. But the Cybertronian machine life arm can shapeshift and is called RC? Is this all a coincidence? Even if it's not a coincidence, it doesn't matter. Most people's three views are still being reshaped at this time. Nordic Thors and Angels have already appeared. And the emergence of Transformers is not something worth making a fuss about. RC's appearance also means the end of the live broadcast. David has achieved his goal and there is no need to continue the show. In this world, he has established himself as a protector of higher civilizations against lower civilizations, in order to reduce the probability of being troubled by politicians as much as possible. He has also put on an angel's vest, with multiple identities around him. No one should bother him under normal circumstances. Of course, there are a lot of abnormal people in this world. But at that time he was famous. And even Superman Clark had no reason to stop him from fighting back. Take us to your ship! Zod came to Earth to talk face to face with Superman but he did not bring all his men down. And some of them remained on the spacecraft. Of course, David couldn't ignore these people. Now that Zod had surrendered, those people had naturally become his prisoners. General Zod was not prepared to continue resisting when he was sure that David would not execute his men. Superman didn't use his full strength. And the man named David next to him also didn't use his full strength. Plus, that Thor, the god of thunder, if he continued to resist, his end would not be to kill the enemy in a desperate situation, but to really offend the Avenger, causing him to his men fell into death. When he was unable to win and achieve the set strategic goals, General Zod began to think about his subordinates. Now that there are only so many Kryptonians left, the life of every Kryptonian is extremely precious. He really wanted to negotiate with the other party, such as taking all the blame himself and letting his men leave. Before General Zod opened his mouth, he noticed one thing 
Data didn't seem willing to talk to himself about this kind of thing here. After thinking about it, it seems to make sense. No matter what. In the end, it is all a dialogue between advanced civilizations. And there is no need for this group of lower creatures on Earth to know about it. As for what the people on Earth think, Zod doesn't care anyway. Under the leadership of Zod, several people boarded the Kryptonian spacecraft together. The people who were previously defeated by Thor had already recovered their ability to move. In other words, in the blink of an eye, the Kryptonian invaders, Superman, and several Avengers, who suddenly appeared and claimed to be responsible for protecting the Earth disappeared. Only a group of soldiers led by General Swanwick and two advisors were left on the scene, staring at each other. If there weren't still traces of the battle around them, they would suspect that everything that just happened was just an illusion. After all, it was all too unreal. Of course, General Swanwick will not regard it as an illusion. What he is worried about now is how to deal with the various problems of Mr. President. Is this the end of my career as a general? And what does that guy called David Glamorgan mean? Did he sincerely invite himself to join the Avengers? In addition, does today's incident mean that there will no longer be peace on Earth? Compared to a lot of people on Earth who are having headaches. David, who caused all this, is looking at the inside of the Kryptonian spacecraft with curiosity on his face. Krypton's technology is still very advanced. After all, the entire universe was explored 20,000 years ago. But later it developed more and more biased. And he locked himself in a cage. After starting to use the central book to cultivate professional talents, the current Kryptonians are not so much Kryptonians as they are slaves of the central book. If you had said these words to Zod and the others a few hours earlier, they would have scoffed, saying that you, an alien scumbag who came from who knows which planet, don't know anything about Krypton. Now if David says these words again, Zod and others will never refute them. The reason is simple. They can't beat David. Arriving at the mothership, this spaceship was pieced together by this group of Kryptonian soldiers using all the materials they could collect. The main body was even a prison where these traitors were imprisoned and exiled. So this is not a real Kryptonian spaceship, let alone a Kryptonian battleship. General Zod came to Earth not only to find the central book, but also to find an intact Kryptonian research ship, because it has complete training equipment that can be used to cultivate new Kryptonians. In the original plot, the breeding chamber of the Kryptonian scientific research ship was completely destroyed by Clark with heat rays, which directly triggered Zod's anger. Now Zod doesn't even have a chance to see what's going on with the scientific research ship on Earth. It's a little rough, with obvious traces of splicing. RC took a quick glance and had an almost complete understanding of the structure and situation of the entire spacecraft. Zod has no explanation for this. He has no talent in this area at all. He can piece together a spacecraft that can fly normally and make long-distance space jumps. So far, there has been no failure. This is already very good. He didn't know that David focused on the key point of splicing. Since it is a piece together spacecraft, it means that this spacecraft is not a particularly integrated structure which means that it is easier to dismantle without damaging the original functions of the facilities above. Although the size of the spacecraft is not small. With superhuman abilities, it shouldn't take much time to dismantle the spacecraft and transport it to Winter City. As if he had guessed what David was thinking. Clark, who was looking around, saw David's expression and directly said a number. If you are in a hurry, one month, if you do it slowly, half a year is enough. I'm not in a hurry. Let's find a suitable workplace first. This spacecraft certainly cannot hover in the Earth's orbit all the time. In order to facilitate Clark's dismantling and transportation work, it cannot stop too far away. The far side of the moon is a good choice, due to tidal locking. One side of the moon is always facing the Earth, which makes it impossible for people on Earth to observe what is happening on the far side of the moon unless a spacecraft sends astronauts or a lunar rover to land on it. With Earth's current technology, maybe Earth officials haven't finished building the spaceship yet. Clark has already dismantled the spacecraft and sent it all to Winter City. Set a course, and with the speed of this craft, they'll be landing on the far side of the moon in no time. During this period, David also informed General Zod of the Avengers settlement plan for this group of prisoners. You will be placed in my territory, Winter City, and will not be allowed to leave at will for a hundred years. Zod frowned. He vaguely felt that there was something strange in this. What does it mean to be placed in Winter City for a hundred years? and not be able to leave at will. Sure enough, as David spoke the next few words, Zod immediately realized that this man named David Glamorgan wanted to take their group of Kryptonians as his subordinates. He frowned. His loyalty to Krypton made him not want to commit 
such an act of betrayal. But before he could speak, David had already predicted his actions in advance and raised his hand to stop him. If you perform well enough, it will not be difficult to regain your freedom early. When David said this, he looked at General Zod specifically. If you perform particularly well, Winter City and the Avengers will not rule out the possibility of helping you build a new Krypton. General Zod's brows jumped. He suspected that the other party was deceiving him. You don't have to worry that I'm lying to you. The Avengers are a very large organization. So large that it's beyond your imagination. It's not difficult to find a suitable new home for you. How huge? Does it cover the entire universe? The entire universe? David smiled and gave an answer that made General Zod completely unbelievable. The Avengers are an organization covering the multiverse. Our people are not limited to a single universe. Multiverse? The multiverse theory is nothing new. But it has never been proven. Now, someone says that his organization is a force that covers multiple universes. This sounds like bragging. David is really not talking nonsense this time. After all, his winter city is not in this world. Yes, the multiverse. In fact, my territory, Winter City, is not in this world. Zod originally thought that Winter City was located on a certain planet, or the name of some large-scale cosmic facility, but he didn't expect that it was actually located in another universe. Zod felt a little indigestion after being exposed to too much information at once. Fortunately, there were no important things for him to deal with next, and Zod's men also had very good discipline, so there were no additional accidents. After a moment of vibration, the spacecraft had stopped firmly on the back side of the moon. The next step is to take this group of Kryptonians to Winter City. By the way, what are you going to do about the meeting with Mr. President? Just deal with it for a while. David didn't plan to have too much involvement with the politicians in the world. The various actions he had done before were just to obtain a relatively aloof status. Not only himself. Clark's Superman identity will also benefit from this, because Superman joins the Avengers. He will be the Avengers representative on this world and Earth. Chapter 372 The Future of Krypton In the next time, David was very busy because he had to keep running back and forth between several worlds. It is not difficult for the Kryptonians to move collectively to Winter City. Counting Zod. The number of remaining Kryptonians is quite small. After searching every corner of the spacecraft, not even 50 Kryptonians were found. Such a small number of people is really inconspicuous to today's Winter City. Considering the special physique of the Kryptonians, David still gives some extra care to these people so that the Kryptonians can better cope with the situation. Go through this uncomfortable period of superpower awakening. Clark began to come to Winterfell frequently to visit his compatriots. At this time, General Zod already knew that the central book that they valued so much actually existed in the body of Kal-El. Or Clark Kent. What David said before. The true heir of Krypton. Was unexpectedly true. General Zod's eyes changed when he looked at Clark. And he regarded it as the hope of rebuilding Krypton. As for capturing Winter City? Transform this place into new Krypton? This idea had come up before. But it was quickly abandoned by General Zod. The reason is simple. It's too difficult. Clark will not support himself. David himself is very powerful, and there are Avengers all over the universe. Even if he had so few Kryptonians and could briefly occupy Winter City while the opponent was unprepared, he would not be able to withstand the counterattack of so many strong men rather than placing hope on such an unrealistic plan. Why not seriously think about how to get the Avengers to help build new Krypton? If General Zod doesn't cause trouble, his men won't. The people of Krypton took off their armor and protective equipment, bathed in the yellow sunlight that was almost the same as that of Earth, and felt various changes in themselves. Generally speaking, General Zod's strength has improved the fastest, but it is still not comparable to Clark. The female adjutant Fiora showed a good speed of progress but it soon slowed down significantly, not to mention the rest of the Kryptonians. They soon touched their upper limit. No matter how much they basked in the sun, they could only slowly increase their energy. If it were in the past, Zod would think this situation was normal. After all, he is a Kryptonian general and the others are just Kryptonian warriors. The gap in status, class, and talent has long been determined, and it is impossible for them to become stronger than themselves. But Clark's existence broke his established concepts time and time again. Everything he believed in in his heart seemed to be overturned by Clark. Why is it that a Kryptonian, who was born through natural childbirth to scientist parents without any directed breeding was able to become more powerful than his own Kryptonian general in a short period of time after being raised and taught by a farmer couple on Earth? Could it be that what Jor-El 
and David Glamorgan said were not nonsense? Is the central book the real culprit behind the destruction of Krypton? Therefore, many things are afraid of comparison. Reality and belief continue to collide, and General Zod locks himself in a temporary residence arranged for him in Winter City. Hoping to come up with a clear answer, he wanted to discuss it with others, but he found that his subordinates could not discuss these matters with him at all. In fact, both Clark and David can discuss it with him, but Zod doesn't want to discuss it with these two people now. As if his long-held concept will completely collapse. David was well aware of this and did not rush to find Zod. When he was done with the confusion, he would naturally come to him. When the time comes, I will draw a pie for Zod, and he will be happy to eat it. The effect will definitely be much better than if I force it on him now. Put aside the Kryptonian matter for the time being and let Van Cleef and his men continue to keep an eye on the situation. David made several trips back and forth to the DC Cinematic Universe, doing some small things along the way. The Avengers branch in the DC Cinematic Universe is officially established. In principle, the Avengers are an organization that exists to protect weak civilizations in the universe and will not directly rule the area. Therefore, the Avengers will only take action when the Earth faces a crisis from the universe that it cannot handle on its own. Of course, as a new member of the Avengers, Superman usually likes to do good things. As long as he does not violate the laws of the Earth, the Avengers will not care. That is his personal behavior and has nothing to do with the Avengers themselves. But, after all, Superman is the representative of the Avengers. If someone provokes, slanders, attacks, or slanders Superman, the Avengers will naturally fight back. As for the way to fight back, although David didn't say it clearly, the other side was very worried that this angel would point his spear in his hand and stage a big drama of the Crusaders marching westward. In short, after several meetings, Although the other party understood the ideas of the Avengers and David, he was not happy at all. Especially the group of people known as the Lighthouse suddenly found that a brighter light appeared on their lighthouse. It was like a sun, suppressing them and unable to emit any light. He felt unhappy, but he had no choice. And he didn't even dare to be too rude in front of David. This gesture also convinced David that his plan was working well. And he didn't have to worry about these politicians. They didn't have the courage to cooperate with him. People are fighting to the death. And if someone really makes a mess, these people will be the first to jump out and blame it. On the other hand, a lunatic like Lex Luthor is more likely to jump out and cause trouble. However, without the Kryptonian spaceship, Kryptonian corpses and Kryptonian technical support, Luthor, who could not create the Doomsday, would not be able to make too big a storm. Deceive Batman to deal with Superman? I wonder if Mr. Bruce Wayne can still get Kryptonite. The kryptonite in the movie universe was found in the wreckage of the Kryptonian spaceship, and now the spacecraft has been packed and dismantled. Instead of fooling Batman, it would be better to fool Wonder Woman. Maybe the chance of winning is higher. What's more? For Luther, who is a human? Whether they are aliens or demigods, they are all his targets. Anyway, Wonder Woman Diana is no longer a mysterious figure. I just wonder how Luther will deceive Wonder Woman. Speaking of which, you didn't see Wonder Woman this time? I saw it! Because I mentioned Diana in the global live broadcast. And Diana has left many clues over the years. The existence of Wonder Woman has been confirmed. This was completely contrary to Diana's idea. So the daughter of Zeus found David with full dissatisfaction. The two didn't fight. They just exchanged a few words, and then went back to their respective homes. Although the contact time was not long, David could clearly feel that Wonder Woman Diana disliked him very much. Not just because he revealed her identity but more like he didn't like her the first time he saw her. David had only encountered this situation once before. And that was when he met Gwen's father. He had seen a similar reaction on Gwen's father's face. When he told Laura about the meeting with Wonder Woman, Laura immediately laughed out loud. It seems that she saw through your essence at a glance. What is my essence? The holy light? Wonder Woman hates the holy light? Never heard of this setting? You are not light. But the elementary particles that make up light. David opened his mouth and was about to refute, but was interrupted by the communicator on the table before he could speak. Eva asked David if he was free. Zed wants to talk to David. Invite him to the drawing room. David has been waiting for Zod all this time. And it seems he finally has what he wants. As long as the next conversation goes smoothly, he will be able to obtain the powerful combat power of Kryptonians. I just don't know which army the Kryptonians should be placed in. Knights of Winter? The Knights of Tyran? Or should we form a separate special operations team and dispatch them according to the situation and needs? 
with the follow-up arrangements in his mind. David was not worried about the impact of this conversation at all. Ultimately, the situations on both sides are not equal. Zod and his Kryptonians are still prisoners of war. And Zod believes in the strong. So he can only listen obediently to what David, who is more powerful than him, says, walking to the reception room. Zod was standing there looking out the window. Although he was only wearing ordinary clothes in Winter City, it was difficult to conceal his military aura. Upon noticing David's entrance, Zod took the lead in, saluting. He put his right fist on his chest and bowed slightly, nodding. It hasn't been long since he came to Winter City. And the first thing Zod learned was the military etiquette of Winter City. Although he was a little surprised by the backwardness of Winter City, his mind was so messed up at that time that he didn't think about much at all. Only military-related things could slightly attract his attention. David nodded in return, and then invited Zod to sit down and chat. I thought it would take a while before you would come to me. Do you think I will accept your terms? Because I can't think of a reason why you would refuse. As long as he is sure about rebuilding Krypton, it will be difficult for Zod to refuse. As for how to correctly rebuild Krypton, you don't have to make a decision immediately. What Zod is struggling with is not whether to rebuild Krypton, but how to rebuild Krypton. His original ideas were impacted, and he began to think about whether the natural childbirth method of the jor couple was the real future of Krypton? But this contradicted his nature and made him extremely painful. You have enough time to observe Clark's growth and changes up close. Maybe it won't be long before you have a clear answer in your mind. When he heard this, Zod knew that David supported natural childbirth. The Winter Lord looked down on Krypton's cultivation method. And from David's words, we can know that Kal-El, also known as Clark, is far from reaching his limit. Zod, who has gradually adapted to his superpowers, is very aware of how powerful he has become. Now David is telling himself that Kal-El, who can easily defeat him, has not reached his peak yet? How powerful would Carl be at his peak? Chapter 373 The Target Turns to Mutants How powerful is Superman at his peak? David didn't tell Zod and let him observe slowly by himself. After he saw with his own eyes how Clark quickly became stronger, the entanglement in his heart also had a clear answer. Zod will die at the hands of Superman in the plot. The biggest reason is that he comes at the wrong time. If he had come earlier, the Earth would not have been able to stop the Kryptonian invasion. If he had come later, Superman would not have been killed even though he was already very strong. After all, he was a survivor of Krypton. The last few remaining compatriots, Coupled with Superman's mentality of having everything under control after becoming stronger, Clark had enough confidence to let these compatriots go. He can even help General Zod find a new planet and let them rebuild their home on that planet. But Zod arrived not long after Clark had just awakened his abilities. This resulted in Superman's combat power not yet growing up. When facing these Kryptonian warriors, he did not have the absolute strength to solve the crisis. In the end, he only he was able to kill the last compatriot with cruel hands. In addition, if Zod sees Superman become so powerful, no matter how stubborn his thoughts are, he will have to seriously think about the real future of the Kryptonians. Because of David's intervention, Zod got the opportunity to even witness up close and slowly how Clark became stronger. Thinking of this, David suddenly came up with a strange idea. If Zod has a flash of inspiration and is ready to give birth to an offspring naturally, then he will definitely choose an excellent mother, and then the female adjutant Fiora will become the only option. Right? Or encourage more births among Kryptonians. That scene. David immediately stopped his thoughts and felt that Zod was not so outrageous and was at least one of the upper class of Krypton. Anyway, the Kryptonian matter is finally over. By successfully smuggling the Kryptonian refugees to Winter City, David has completed a branch task he set for himself. There are still a few small tasks waiting for you next. For example, the mutant refugees in Clarice's world, and the handover of the Supreme Mage. The former can introduce more special talents to Winter City, while the latter is just for yourself to have fun and pass the time. Everything in Winter City is progressing steadily. The industrial system is gradually improving. Military equipment is also being produced. And several export sales agreements have even been reached. The establishment of various factories and shops has also provided a large number of job opportunities for the residents of Winter City they do not have to worry about finding a job at all. The current unemployment rate in Winter City is very, very low. Only a small number of nobles who are addicted to pleasure are not working. These people are not necessarily addicted to pleasure. They may be waiting for the emergence of better job opportunities and positions. With the development of Winter City, 
Duke David Glamorgan needs more and more people. In this world where knowledge and power are all controlled by the aristocracy, only the aristocrats can complete those tasks well. There is nothing we can do about this situation for the time being. This kind of thing cannot be changed in three or two years. Even if Winter Academy can provide a group of young talents within a few years, it will take longer to truly replace the role of these nobles. So, you have to continue to use what is useful. At present, Winter City's order not to issue enfeoffments has not caused much ripples among the nobles. I guess these nobles want to see what the Duke of Winter wants to do next. The appointment of the Earl of Sutton Stewart as the deputy master of the Tehran Knights should be able to have some effect in this regard. Speaking of which, just looking at the Kryptonians lately, I wonder how Sutton's training with the Knights is going. I called Eva back to the office and asked directly about the current situation of the Thailand Knights. Sylvanas officially took over the training of the Tehran Knights not long ago. Her current official position is the teaching knight of the Tehran Knights of the Principality of Winter. She is responsible for the final stage of the reorganization work of the Tehran Knights. The regiment is trained into an enhanced version of the Ranger Force. Some of the requirements are directly aligned with the Knights of Winter after this five-year long-term reorganization and training. Any knight who fails to truly become a Ranger, Hunter, or Master Arcane Energy will be kicked out of the Knights of Tehran. Even though those who were originally knights would not be deprived of their knighthood and could still serve as officers in other armies, no one wanted to lose face. In addition, the requirements given by Sylvanas are very consistent with the thoughts of this group of knights. We are originally the most elite knights in the kingdom of Tehran. In the future, they should also become one of the most elite knights in the Principality of Winter. Even if you have seen the terror of the Knights of Winter, you will never be able to join the Knights of Thailand if you are not competitive. Even if you cannot become the strongest, you cannot be stepped on by the Knights of Winter without even being able to see your back. Therefore, when Sylvanas's standards were raised, no one expressed any objection or protest. Everyone shouted as if they were on stimulants, Lord Windrunner. Don't pity us. Please do your best to spur. Discipline. And ravage us. Bar. Are these the exact words of those in the Tehran Knights? The wording is slightly different. But that's basically what it means. David nodded. He could rest assured about the situation of the Tyran Knights. No matter whether he could meet Sylvanas's requirements in the end, he would be the one who would make the most profit in the end. By then, with the two ace knights of the Knights of Winter and the Knights of Tehran in hand, these countries on the Brayan continent can basically be pushed aside by themselves, provided that the gods do not come up with some new tricks. Where is the equipment development progress of the Tehran Knights? Howard has submitted a complete design drawing and is currently waiting for review by the chief consultant of the Principality of Winter. Eva reminded David a little. Your chief consultant hasn't been here much recently. So I asked Steve to help transfer the information. Said over. Yeah. He was just about to go to the Marvel Universe and ask Tony for his specific comments on the light and heavy cavalry systems of the Tyrant Knights. Didn't Steve say anything when he came over? He said Stephen had found Karma Taj. And you missed that scene. What a pity. Eva looked at the regretful David with a smile. And then took out a storage disc from her shirt. But Steve recorded the scene. And he asked me to hand it over to you. Sure enough. He is my good brother. David happily took the storage disc over. Instead of rushing to appreciate Stephen Strange's wonderful experience in Kamataj, David walked over to him and took the memory disc. Eva, who handed the storage disc to her, was pulled into her arms. Besides, you are indeed my secretary. It's just a secretary named Clerk. Right. Eva shook her waist slightly, and sensing something was wrong, Eva immediately became honest and sat obediently on David's lap, not daring to move. Although she enjoys the fun brought by this role, she doesn't want to leave early too often. Ahem. Gwen may come over soon. Then let's hurry up. Gwen arrived earlier than Eva expected. During this time, David didn't have much time to pay attention to the situation on the mutant side, leaving Gwen and Clarice with more time to interact. Clarice learned about Winter City through Gwen and Gwen learned about the various sufferings suffered by mutants through Clarice, facing a strong enemy head-on and unable to defeat them. And with no other external assistance, the mutants had nowhere to vent their sufferings. It was simply extremely miserable. After hearing this, Gwen expressed great sympathy for Clarice's experience, and the relationship between the two became better and better. Now they have become good friends. Gwen patted her chest and promised to persuade David to help the mutants as soon as possible. After telling the tragic story of the mutants, Gwen sniffed and reminded David to help those poor mutants as soon as possible. Help Clarice and the others. Moreover, the mutants joining Winter City will also have a negative impact on Winter City. 
Is it beneficial? Don't worry. I have already considered this matter. David, who put his hands on the desk and rested his thumb on his chin, was thinking seriously about how to complete this plan side task. Direct help and take over all the mutants. He could even be more thorough and bring all the few remaining earthlings in that world to Winter City. Anyway, there aren't many living people left. That world can be left to the Sentinel robots to cause harm at will. And I can occasionally go there to fight monsters and add some practical experience to my men. When the cleanup is almost complete, the world will be a new reserve resource world. Under normal circumstances, this is the most reasonable plan. But reversing the world of the future won't work. Because this group of mutants will come up with another way to save the world. Use the ability of the Phantom Cat to send Wolverine's consciousness back to the past. And then turn the existing man who was harmed by the Sentinels into a pattern. World wipe. Completely override it with a new world line. I didn't come up with this plan by myself. I guess it wasn't that long before Professor X and Magneto came up with the plan. Or they might have even thought of it. Mutants may not agree to move collectively if they can save their own world. Involved in the mutants' plans? So how can you get greater benefits for yourself? The New World Online is one of the countless parallel worlds in Marvel's universe. The only special thing is this group of mutants. What's even worse is that he doesn't even know if these mutants will remember Winter City in the New World Line. Especially Clarice. She won't just forget this experience. Right? After thinking for a moment, David decided to meet with the leader of the mutants first and have a chat in person before making a decision. Clarice is in town now? Well, she, a strong man named Logan, and an old man named Eric are visiting the training of the Thailand Knights. Magneto is here? It just so happens that I want to see him too. David moved his seat back a little and stood up. He took Gwen with him and left the office and went straight to the winter military camp. Chapter 374 The Multiple Choice Questions Faced by Mutants Without calling the driver alone, David selected an open-top off-road vehicle from the garage, started it, and drove Gwen towards the winter military camp. This car was produced in Winter City and used a crystal or engine. However, all subsequent cars and aircraft will be replaced with new engines. And this design of directly installing crystal minerals into the engines will no longer be used. But no matter how it is improved, as David is a lord, he will have various types of prototype cars here. Even if they are not used on a daily basis, they can still be placed in a large enough garage as a display, which can be regarded as recording the development of Winter City. However, David chose this car mainly because it was open top and could accommodate multiple people. If it's just you and Gwen, the Mustang sports car you carry with you is actually more suitable. Who will get under the table next? Sophia? Helen? Laura? As soon as the car drove out of the garage, Gwen suddenly asked a question. Do you need my help? David looked at Gwen speechlessly. Could it be that Gwen was jealous? But when he saw Gwen's eyes that seemed to be shining, he realized that he had guessed wrong. Could it be that because she was the first? After seeing others suffering, she wanted to drag more people into the water? I'm worried that Laura will push you under the table when the time comes. Gwen thought of something and felt excited all over, and decisively gave up this dangerous idea. She couldn't defeat Laura, and Helen didn't need her help at all. As for Sophia, such a cute little sister, she couldn't do it. But thinking that such a good little girl was harmed by the beasts around her, Gwen reminded David. Speaking of which, don't bully Sophia. She is still young. David wanted to complain about how young she was, but he held back his words. However, the people around him did not fight fight, poison, or plot against each other. They actually had a good relationship with each other. This really made him breathe a sigh of relief. Driving into the winter military camp, after a little inquiry, I found out where the Thailand Knights camp was. As more and more soldiers joined the winter army, the establishment of the winter army gradually increased. And the winter army camp also began to divide exclusive areas for each unit. For example, the winter knights, the aces of the winter principality, and the absolute confidence of the Duke of Winter can naturally give priority to the division of territory. Subsequently, the Spartan Heavy Infantry Regiment, which followed Winter City and made many military exploits, had already determined its own camp. Although the Tehran Knights are the trump card of the Tehran Kingdom, they have just joined Winter City and have not made any military exploits. In addition, they are still being reorganized and trained, so they only receive the assigned barracks and garrison. However, there is no shortage of land in Winter City. When the Winter Military Camp was first built, a large area of land was enclosed. Therefore, the Thailand Knights Camp is not small. 
but the location is slightly off. Some training equipment needs to be temporarily constructed. After such a long time, the Tyran Knights had already completed the required facilities and equipment. But after Sylvanas took over the training work, they ordered a batch of new equipment. At the same time, she moved the Thailand Knights camp further into the forest. Therefore, the Thailand Knights are currently located in the deepest part of the winter military camp, next to the winter forest. To a certain extent, the Tyran Knights can be regarded as the outermost defense line of Winter City, although normally no enemies will appear in this direction. When David arrived, he found that it was not just Clarice and her Wolverine Logan and Magneto Eric Lynchair who came to visit the training of the Tyran Knights. Sophia and Sutton Stewart, the two captains and deputy masters of the Tillan Knights, were both there. Is your training over? No, I have the day off. When Sutton saw David arriving, he greeted him enthusiastically. After all, he would have to work and eat under him in the future. Even so, there were some habits that he still couldn't get rid of. Or maybe he didn't want to change them at all. What race is that girl named Clarice? Is she an elf? David glanced at Clarice, who was not far away and was introducing something to Magneto. This mutant with the codename Flicker had very unique features. So it was normal to be misunderstood as not being a human. She is human only because of the mutant gene. The reason is that it looks rather unique. Oh, Sutton nodded to show that he understood. And then he asked a question that surprised David a little. Can she join the Tyran Knights? Oh? I heard that you are planning to train the Tyran Knights into the strongest ground mobile force in Winter City. So? The ability of this person named Clarice is very suitable for the Tyran Knights. He learned that Clarice has the ability to teleport through Sophia. The development direction of the Tyran Knights is no longer a secret at this time and the fact that the Winter Alchemy Workshop is designing new armor tailored for them has spread throughout the army. The Duke has already shown the importance he attaches to the Tyran Knights. And now it depends on what kind of performance the members of the Tyran Knights can perform in return. The entire Winter City is staring at the Tyran Knights. Under this situation, even a big-hearted person like Sutton feels the pressure. The purpose of recruiting special talents into the Tyran Knights is to perform even more brilliantly in the future. In principle, I don't object to your idea. But Clarice is not from Winter City yet. On this point, I'm still very optimistic about you. Earl Sutton Stewart didn't know where the Cybertronians and High Elves came from, as well as the guy who just came to Winter City recently and called himself a Kryptonian. But David was able to win over so many races to join Winter City, which shows that he is very good at this aspect. He is not prepared to participate, and he does not even want to inquire about the true origins of these people. Anyway, he will know when he needs to know. No one tells him now. Which means that he does not need to know those situations. After saying H. Lo, Sutton walked aside and continued chatting with his niece. The content of the conversation between the two was also about the situation of the Thailand Knights. Although Sophia was only the nominal leader, she thought how could a leader not even understand his subordinates. In addition, Her Royal Highness the Princess watched in person, which indeed inspired the training enthusiasm of the Thailand Knights. So no one resented Sophia's frequent visits to the training ground. David also said H, low to Sophia. Maybe it was to maintain the dignity of the leader and the princess. Or maybe it was because he had eaten too much yesterday. Sophia acted very calmly and just said H, low with a reserved smile. After finishing this, David came to Clarice and the others. Gwen was already standing here, attracting the attention of the two guests, giving David a little free time to greet them. After Gwen and the others chatted for a while, David appeared just in time. As guests, they would not feel ignored, and would understand even if they saw through. This is the Lord of Winter City, Duke David Glamorgan. This is Eric Lenshear. This is James Howlett. You can call him Logan. Clarice introduced the two parties to each other, and David did not joke to lighten the atmosphere like when he met the Phantom Cat before. Both parties knew that what was going to be discussed next was a major issue related to whether mutants and the people on Earth in that world could continue to survive. It would be better to use less jokes when talking about such a serious topic. I heard Clarice mention you too. Among the mutants currently surviving, Magneto Eric Lynchair and Wolverine Logan are both extremely senior mutants who have the status of leaders and mentors. When these two came to Winter City, to a certain extent, they came on behalf of all mutants. Your Majesty the Duke. Because they were old enough and well informed. Although it felt magical to go to another world, the two of them quickly accepted everything and maintained enough respect for David's identity as a feudal lord. Welcome both of you to Winter City. I am also very grateful to the Duke for his warm invitation. 
after you two visited the city. What do you think of Winter City? Faced with such a direct question, Eric and Logan looked at each other, and Logan answered David's question. It's a beautiful city, and there are many magical things and people. While speaking, Logan glanced to the side. There was a Cybertronian sitting there, acting as the Tyrant Knights training imaginary enemies. He had seen a lot of this kind of giant metal robot in Winter City. Through Clarice's introduction, he knew that this kind of giant robot was actually a special race of life called Cybertronians, coupled with the High Elf Priests, who walked by the military camp from time to time. Logan had fully realized that Winter City was a city where multiple races coexisted. Here, the mutants don't seem like anything special, especially for a mutant like Clarice, who has obvious changes in appearance. The love she shows for this city can be seen, even if you are not blind. Logan knew why. He had seen too many fellow mutants rejected by humans because of their differences in appearance. That is to say, the Sentinels later caused a greater crisis. Otherwise, countless mutant children would have grown up or died under all kinds of strange eyes. But here in Winter City, Clarice had never felt the kind of sight full of disgust. At most, someone would look at her curiously, and there was no negative emotion in that kind of sight that made her uncomfortable. For a moment, Logan felt that Winter City was a good choice, if the other party was willing to accept all mutants and other survivors on the Earth. Turning to look at Magneto next to him, Logan knew that it didn't matter what he thought, because Magneto and Professor X had thought of a way to save their own world. Coming to Winter City to see it in person today is actually as an alternative plan at the same time. This is also a chance for the remaining mutants to make a choice. Because according to Magneto and Professor X's plan, even if it succeeds, these surviving mutants will no longer exist. In other words, these people in the new world online are no longer who they are now. Chapter 375 Don't Reverse Want the Future A New World New Stories New Experiences Without those hardships and experiences, you will naturally become a different person. Professor X and Magneto's plan is essentially to sacrifice everyone in exchange for a better world. If they weren't too desperate and couldn't see any hope of defeating the Sentinels and saving the world, no one would want to implement this plan. Just like now, Clarice's accidental travel to a different world gave mutants new hope of survival. How could they be willing to die if they had the chance to live? This is the survival instinct of life. Therefore, when Professor David gradually learned about these things while talking with Magneto and Wolverine, Clarice also expressed some of the mutants' thoughts and wanted to ask David, the Duke who can connect multiple different worlds, if he could come up with any ideas? There is no good solution. Store everyone's memories in a specific tool, and then wait until a new world line covers the world, and then let these people retrieve their memories? Even so, it only allows others to possess own memories, and it does not mean that these people have been resurrected. Unless, like Professor, putting aside whether these mutants have that ability, this kind of behavior is unacceptable to them. Right? The only thing that is certain now is that if they are going to send Wolverine Logan back in time to warn his past self, and then avoid the appearance of the Sentinels and create a new world, David can provide some appropriate protection to ensure that they complete this task before being discovered and killed by sentries. Why are you so enthusiastic about helping us? After chatting for a while, Logan and Magneto followed David and slowly left the winter military camp, sitting on the jeep and slowly visiting other places in Winter City. After driving the car to the bank of the vast Winter River and stopping, Logan, who was sitting in the passenger seat, suddenly asked the most important question. Even if Clarice came to your territory for some special reason, it seems that you don't need to be so concerned about us mutants. Right. Logan, who has lived long enough, has seen too many things. He does not believe that David wants to save mutants for no reason. After a conversation, David does not behave like those so-called saints. The reason that made Logan less vigilant was that David didn't pretend to be like a saint. He acted very normal. That's why Logan asked directly instead of directly labeling David as an untrustworthy object in his heart. Because I want Winter City to develop very powerfully. I need to continuously increase the city's population and obtain various resources. And mutants are a group of people with special abilities. You should understand what this means. Mutants are not weapons. Weapons themselves are neither good nor evil. Right or wrong. David used the other party's situation as an example. You and your companions use mutant abilities to fight the sentries and protect your companions and the remaining ordinary people. Is this also wrong? Of course Logan understands this truth. But everyone will say that when Stryker first caught mutants for experiments, his fair and above-board rhetoric was more beautiful. 
But what was the result? It doesn't matter how beautiful the slogans are. What defines a person is always his actual actions. For now, David is at least honest enough. Logan felt a headache. He really didn't want to come and get involved in these things. He was not good at these things. He took out a cigar and lit it irritably. And then looked directly at Magneto Eric, who had been silent. His meaning is very obvious. The next step is left to you. I have nothing to say. Magneto didn't take Wolverine's strike seriously. He had known this guy's character for so many years. He would come with Wolverine this time. Mainly because Wolverine's immortality could ensure the safety of several people. When things go wrong, Wolverine can hold off the enemy. Giving Clarice and Eric time to escape. Wolverine will not die. So there is no need to worry about him being sacrificed. You can find opportunities to rescue him later. So from the beginning, Wolverine came here to be a bodyguard. And Eric was originally responsible for things like talking. Before Eric didn't speak, Logan took the initiative to start the conversation. Now they have started talking. So please start your performance. Magneto. Eric did not talk about those meaningless topics. He directly asked David if mutants moved to Winter City and became residents of Winter City. How would David prepare to resettle these mutants? In Eric's opinion, David will most likely place mutants in specific communities alone, so as to avoid conflicts between mutants and ordinary people. Unexpectedly, David was not prepared to do that at all, except for the Cybertronians due to their size. He always treats the various races that come to Winter City as normal. As long as you are willing to join Winter City and become a resident of Winter City, then you can enjoy all the benefits of Winter City, no different from anyone else. There won't be any differential treatment. Lou was not ready to speak at all. But after hearing this, he couldn't help but speak. Eric was surprised and thought that David, the Duke of Winter, had no idea what being a mutant meant. Mutants will be rejected and even hated by many ordinary people. And not only some mutants will have changes in appearance. A very important reason is that when mutants awaken their abilities, there is a certain risk of losing control. It can be said that the biggest contradiction between mutants and ordinary people is this. Everything else is illusory. Only this point is the most critical. Because it will actually threaten the personal safety of ordinary people. Because no one would like to come home happily one day. Only to find that their house has been bombed into rubble due to the naughty kid next door awakening his superpower. What would be even worse is that there are still people at home at the time. This kind of thing is not unique in the world of mutants. Now that David wants to bring mutants to Winter City, how is he going to solve this hidden danger? Even if the surviving mutants can control their superpowers well, and will not lose control and accidentally injure ordinary people. What about the new generation of mutants that will be born after the mutants multiply? This is actually not difficult to solve. To a certain extent, mutants suddenly acquire certain superpowers due to the awakening of their own with an extra arm or leg. There will definitely be some discomfort for a while. However, when acquiring this ability, there are no signs at all. The ability given to the host by the X gene also requires energy. In many cases, it directly extracts cosmic energy, which means it can be detected in advance. Not to mention that David's Winter City can easily produce similar equipment. One of the most critical abilities of the Sentinel is to detect the X gene. And even the hidden X gene can be discovered by it after it has evolved. So, as long as it is confirmed that the child has the X gene, then installing a small detection and restriction device on the child can very well prevent bad things from happening. According to David, this restriction device does not deprive mutants of their abilities, but weakens them. For mutants like Cyclops who directly use energy, using this device can significantly reduce their output power. If some mutants have just awakened their abilities and are suppressed by such a device, they may not be able to use their abilities and will naturally not pose a threat to ordinary people around them. Even if it is a powerful ability, it will not cause too much harm if it is suppressed. This suppression range can be continuously adjusted. It is also a device for mutants to learn how to use and control their abilities correctly. Sounds good. Can Winter City produce such a device? Not difficult. Winter City has gathered a lot of cosmic civilization technology, Cybertronian technology, a lot of alchemy and magic knowledge in the Marvel Universe, plus all kinds of weird materials. It is not difficult to make such a thing. After continuing to talk for a while, David realized that Magneto was gradually leaning towards coming to Winterfell. After all, the plan he and Professor, especially when I learned that Winter City's technological reserves are not as medieval as they appear on the surface. They possess a large number of advanced technologies at the level of cosmic civilizations, which even include genetic adjustment and optimization technologies. 
which can not only make mutants better mastering superpowers can also eliminate some of the side effects, and even make mutants more powerful. This is obviously a brighter future. So bright, that even Magneto has his own thoughts. However, he knew keenly that he was no match for the Duke of Winter, and the pressure coming from the other party frightened him. After realizing the huge strength gap between the two sides, Magneto decisively gave up that dangerous idea, and began to pay more attention to how to lead the mutants onto this new bright road. Being able to help your compatriots choose the right path forward can be regarded as a contribution to the mutant people. Now, the biggest question for Magneto is how to convince his old friends to give up the plan they made earlier, come to Winterfell together, and work hard to build a real future for the surviving mutants. I might need some time to talk to my old friend. Chapter 376 Tony holds his waist and clenches his fist. Before meeting Magneto, David never thought that things would go so smoothly. Looking at Magneto Eric's attitude, David felt that even if he couldn't convince everyone to give up the plan to change the world line, he could still bring a group of surviving mutants to Winter City. Even if he only brings in a few people, David will still make money. The results were astounding. Magneto actually convinced all the surviving mutants, and all the survivors, including Professor X, decided to move to Winter City. As for the world that was devastated by the Sentinels, they did not give up directly. The X-Men, led by Professor Human Survivors, take them to Winter City. In fact, the population of Winter City has been growing during the time David went to the DC Universe to recruit Kryptonians. Although it is not like the sudden increase like before, people continue to come to the Northern Plains, and it has only been in the past two months that the total population of Winter City has exceeded 100,000. Much faster than I expected. Other parts of Thailand Kingdom are even more chaotic than previously expected. According to intelligence collected from multiple channels, the Kingdom of Thailand has been reduced to chaos. Except for the Northern Plains, almost all areas of the kingdom have fallen into war. What's even more frightening is that not all of these wars are caused by the temple. The temple focuses on the southern region of the Kingdom of Thailand. In these areas, there are a large number of lords who raise rebel flags and declared their separation from the Kingdom of Thailand. They started a war with the lords who chose to be loyal to the royal family of Thailand. Then came some careerists who wanted to take advantage of the situation. Turning the western part of the kingdom that was not affected by the temple into a mess. These people ran to the north under the influence of the royal family, and the surrounding lords got into trouble. They worked hard to annex every inch of the surrounding land without taking care of themselves. There are also many rebellious lords in the eastern part of the Thailand kingdom. But these lords did not join the temple or the Sotaruma empire, but declared themselves an independent kingdom. These kingdoms did not conquer each other, nor did they take action against surrounding forces. However, the surrounding forces did not miss such a legal opportunity to take action and launched a counterinsurgency war. Even though the Thailand royal family did not issue a similar order at all, coupled with the important northern town of Iron Tree Castle, which was at war with the elves, the kingdom of Thailand ushered in real chaos. Compared with the three regions of southeast and west, the situation in the north is relatively stable. At least the elves have not broken Iron Tree Fort. The fortresses outside Iron Tree Fort still firmly guard the human territory ensuring that the passage to the north is always normal. Therefore, many people who wanted to escape the war began to move towards the northern plains, where there is the Tehran royal family and the winter city. It is currently the only peaceful pure land in the Tehran kingdom. Countless people packed their bags and embarked on the road north with their families, including even a small number of nobles. The population of winter city will continue to increase. The more chaos there is in the south, the faster the population will increase. Even people from Iron Tree Fort are beginning to run to the Northern Plains and choose to become citizens of Winter City. What David has to do is to eat all the meat that is brought to his mouth, and at the same time continue to transform this energy into power that is entirely his own, a more prosperous city, and a more powerful army. After looking at the report in his hand, he found that Winter City had previously connected Frost Post and Snowfield Castle through the construction of roads. Strictly speaking, those two places are still isolated military stations. But as more and more people join Winter City, especially many new people coming from the south, some of them feel that building a new home directly here in Snowfield Castle is also a good choice. This has gradually accumulated a large population in Snowfield Castle, and Weatherby Swan has applied to recruit a new group of grassroots employees to handle various affairs of Snowfield Castle. According to the original plan, Snowfield Castle and Winter City would eventually be integrated and become part of Winter City. But at the beginning, he wanted to use Winter City as the core 
and slowly radiate outward. The current situation is more like Winter City and Snowfield Castle working together and finally converging. It doesn't matter. As long as the construction specifications of Snowfield Castle meet the standards of Winter City. What David wants to sign is an order document for mobilizing the diggers to build more infrastructure in Snowfield Castle, including important facilities such as the Arc Reactor. So it must be signed by the Lord himself. After signing, sealing, and completing his work, David continued to dream about a better tomorrow. The Cretonians gradually adapted to their abilities and to life in Winter City. The design plans for the new armor of the Tyrone Knights, namely the Light Cavalry System, Heavy Cavalry System, and Super Heavy Cavalry System, have been finalized and prototype production has begun. After Tony Stark took some time to read it, he made some optimizations and improvements, and then sent the drawings and some of his subsequent upgrade suggestions back to Winter City. Originally, he wanted to go back and continue to study various advanced scientific knowledge on Temple 2. But David caught him red-handed and asked him to help make monitoring and restriction devices for mutants. You are not in a hurry to see the finished product, but you need to have complete design drawings and samples. This thing is very simple. Just add a module to the personal terminal I just made. Personal terminal? Are you studying this recently? Tony directly showed his watch. It has been made. You know, I don't know much about watch brands. He had heard of many famous brand watches, but he only knew the names, and he couldn't recognize the real ones in front of him. Tony sighed helplessly, wanting to give David some knowledge in this area, but also felt that these luxuries on Earth, for a great lord who can travel to multiple universes and has gained knowledge of cosmic level civilization, it really doesn't make any sense. So he gave up what he originally wanted to say and went straight to the topic, introducing the device in his hand to David. Didn't you mention a multifunctional portable personal terminal tool? A personal terminal that integrates multiple functions such as a mobile phone, a personal computer, and an identity account. David has always believed that this thing will become the standard equipment for everyone in Winter City in the future. He glanced at Tony in surprise, and knew the answer from the affirmative expression on the other person's face. You made it so quickly? It's not that complicated in the first place. Even with the technology one originally mastered, it would take me a while to create it let alone now. This is a portable personal computer. Tony has long mastered technologies such as holographic imaging and light sensing operations. After obtaining the high-level cosmic civilization technology stored in Temple 2, making this kind of thing is as easy as putting together a new armor. It is not difficult to produce this thing. You can choose bracelets, watches, rings, etc. in appearance. It can definitely meet everyone's requirements. It is a pity that cross-dimensional communication is still not possible. Otherwise, it will be more convenient to contact each other in the future. David didn't complain that Tony was being whimsical. After all, this guy is a genius who specializes in cheating. No one knows Tony's limit. There is no guarantee that he will succeed with just a slap on the forehead. No matter what, make a batch first and give priority to important people in Winter City. With this thing, the phone like communicator originally used can be given up and this personal terminal can be a perfect replacement. David himself asked for a ring-shaped one, which when worn on the finger can form a holographic image on the hand where it is worn. You can hold it in the palm of your hand or present it on the outside of your forearm. The methods of use include mental fluctuations, voice or even direct touch by reaching out. In fact, the complete multifunctional personal terminal also has combat capabilities, such as directly releasing energy to form a shield to protect itself or condensing it into an energy blade to attack the enemy. Taking into account security factors, these functions will be removed from the civilian version released in the future. Oh, by the way, I heard that mutants have joined Winter City. Yes, so I added an extra module on top. What module? Psychic intrusion detection and alarm device. Tony pointed to his watch. I have added additional defense functions to this one, but I don't think you need this function. Extraordinary strong men who can use mysterious power have good mental power and are quite resistant to mental invasion. Although Professor Tony had to do this, and he had begun to seriously think about how to strengthen himself, because he found that there were more and more non-human beings in Winter City, and he would become weaker and weaker if this continued. He didn't care if his fighting ability was compared. After all, what he was most proud of was never fighting. What Tony couldn't accept was that he was always regarded as a lower civilized creature especially since he frequently went to Sovereign during this period and was looked at with those looks for a long time. It was inevitable that he would have some thoughts. So, if there is any urgent work recently, please tell me quickly. 
I will concentrate on research in this area in the next period of time. Have you not considered learning some kind of mysterious power? This can also achieve the effect of strengthening yourself. Tony Stark has the qualifications and talents to become the Supreme Mage. And there is definitely no problem in learning magic. And Tony's answer was very consistent with his usual character. Learn! There is no conflict between the two. First use strengthening technology to adjust and strengthen his body. And then learn mysterious knowledge to master some extraordinary power. If there is no surprise, he will 90% choose to learn how to use arcane energy and become a mage. The remaining 10% depends on whether any strange people will appear in David during this time. Chapter 377 Elf Village As summer passes and autumn arrives, summer on the northern plains is cool and pleasant most of the time except for a few days. But when autumn comes, the coolness gradually turns into cool, cool, and a bit cold. short sleeve t-shirts have gradually turned into coats and jackets. And a jacket made of genuine leather has become a popular casual wear in Winter City this year. David was wearing a brown leather jacket made by Penny Hua Hua Fashion Store. It was said that the material used was very rare and was hunted from very remote places. Petunia Blossom Fashion Shop doesn't know. But the raw material dealer who transports the materials from Frost Point to Winter City may know something inside. And David knows more. The material used in this jacket was actually purchased from the orcs. Since the great clearance of the Northern Plains, David's Winter Intelligence Unit has discovered traces of the orcs again. But unlike the last time, the orcs discovered this time had no intention of attacking humans. They lived in the barren and cold mountain forests in the northeast of the Northern Plains, relying on the small amount of wild fruits and vegetables produced by the barren land and hunting. Born. Because the harsh living environment limited the number of each of their groups. These orcs were forced to live scattered in this area. It is not an easy task to completely clean up these orcs and David has not issued an order to sweep the northeastern mountain forest area. Through the information and some photos brought back by the intelligence department, David recognized these orcs as the group of orcs that had been purified by the holy light when he bombed the main orc city. He even saw a few familiar faces among them. These orcs got rid of the control of evil energy and seemed to have no intention of rejoining the original orcs. They just found a quiet corner to live their lives. After all, David is not a devil, and he doesn't mind giving these orcs a chance. As Winter City continues to develop and expand, there will be more and more opportunities for Winter City to come into contact with these orcs. And it will depend on how they choose. The Winter Knights are still working hard to convert all members into paladins. The Thailand Knights have begun ranger training and have taken over the prototypes of the light cavalry system and the heavy cavalry system. On the one hand, they are testing the prototypes. And on the other hand, the Thailand Knights have Lawn Knight learns how to use this equipment. David, Sophia, and Sutton took a special look and found that this set of armor is quite mature. If there are no accidents, mass production will begin this winter, and the entire Tyrone Knights will be equipped with new equipment next year. As for the whole group becoming rangers and hunters, who can master arcane energy, it probably won't be completed within a few years. After the armor problem of the Tyrone Knights was determined, a new problem came to the fore. Sylvanas hopes to provide the whole group with a more accurate long-range weapon although she personally prefers to use bows and arrows. She does not reject it. Replace the firearms for the group of men you trained. The design and manufacturing plan of the flute multifunctional rifle was officially put on the agenda. At the same time, the design of a new version of the portable mechanical bow has also been put on the schedule. In theory, the new mechanical bow must have the same power as the flute multifunctional rifle so that the knights of the Thailand knights can choose the accurate long-range type according to their preferences and expertise. Range weapons. As for melee weapons, it goes without saying that the melee cold weapons in Winter City have been optimized and upgraded. The firepower density and heavy firepower are left to the heavy cavalry system and the super heavy cavalry system. The fully armed Tyrant knights are also a terrifying legion armed to the teeth. In addition, the mechanical babies and pet systems that Howard mentioned earlier have also taken shape. A smaller version of the ghost drone used by RC will become the battle pet of Night Thailand. Since this drone requires mental control, it is estimated that only a small number of Tyrant knights with relevant talents will be able to use it at first. Although there are still many problems waiting to be solved, at least the direction forward has been determined. And the future can be seen to be quite bright. Sophia, the current leader of the Tyrone Knights, also looks forward to the day when she can lead the knights to sweep across the Brennian continent and completely eliminate the temple to avenge her two brothers. Excited? Sophia came up with the idea of working hard to become stronger and become a real Tyrone knight. 
Recently, she began to work hard to learn various combat knowledge and ran into the dungeon. Sophia went to the dungeon again? Her Royal Highness the Princess will leave after breakfast. Belfast brought a pot of hot tea to David. Belfast, who was already familiar with David's taste, could always prepare the most perfect tea and snacks for David. This is tea newly cultivated in the motherland of Her Highness Helen. The kingdom of Sparta is now not only the main source of tea in Winter City. Helen has also taught herself a lot of relevant knowledge, allowing the kingdom of Sparta to cultivate and produce various new types. Once new results are produced, they will be sent to Winter City first. David picked up the teacup and smelled it. This newly cultivated tea smelled a bit like teaguanian, but it didn't need to be washed. Putting the still hot tea aside, David continued to read the information. By the way, I chatted with Belfast without saying a word. Belfast, who has already secured his position as steward of Fort Glamorgan, can quickly answer all the questions raised by David. Seeing this, David felt that it seemed a bit wasteful for Belfast to just be a housekeeper. Have you ever considered joining the Navy like Hood? After adapting to life in Winter City, Hood has officially joined the Winter Navy and served as the deputy commander of the Winter Navy. A few days ago, he and James Norrington completed the preliminary repairs while driving with the Navy soldiers. The Missouri set off and headed west along the Winter River, starting the first voyage of the Winter Navy. I already have a position in the Navy, and I will also be on the water during battles. After all, Belfast is a battleship. Strictly speaking, being a housekeeper is her side job. What she is best at is always galloping and fighting on the sea. Oh, what's your position? Flagship of the second cruiser formation of the Winter Navy. There are only two cruisers in Winter City. One is transformed from Skyfire. Now that it is sailing in Missouri, Skyfire continues to guard the home. The other is the Belfast in front of them. The two of them occupy a fleet establishment. Right? Thinking of this, David remembered that he still had a Rubik's Cube that was useless. Should we summon another humanoid battleship? After all, there is no other use for storing the Rubik's Cube, and it will not multiply by itself to produce smaller Rubik's Cubes. Who to choose? David's difficulty in choosing suddenly broke out. There were so many choices that he didn't know how to decide for a while. I held the Rubik's Cube in my hand and pondered for a long time. But in the end, I couldn't come up with a clue. To say that it is convenient, fast and easy to find, it must be those meritorious ships that have been converted into museums. Among them, the Essex-class Yorktown and Hornet are very easy to find. Heading into the world of the Walking Dead doesn't even cause a ruckus. Of course, it's not like some battleships that have sunk to the bottom of the sea cannot be summoned. Didn't Hood come here after being sinked in battle? If you think about it, the Rubik's Cube might be able to give those sunken ships new life. Going to the bottom of the sea is not too much trouble for David now. Prince Eugen? Saratoga? Bismarck? It is a pity that such meritorious battleships as Enterprise and Warspite were dismantled after the war. And nothing is left. If you want to summon them, you can only wait for the right world. Why don't you keep the Rubik's Cube and wait? David suddenly thought that he seemed to be able to travel to the appropriate time point in the parallel world through the quantum realm of the Marvel Universe to summon the target he wanted. Sure enough, there are always more solutions than difficulties. Put away the Rubik's Cube again, so that he won't be in a hurry and continue to wait for the quantum travel device. At first, he was thinking about this technology because he wanted to get the Soul Stone. But then he remembered that he could also go to her world through Peggy Carter and then contact the Observer. It is possible to get the Soul Stone from the Six Gem Ultron. If he wasn't worried that he couldn't defeat the Six Gem Ultron, David would definitely rank this method as the best option. To be on the safe side, it's better to bully Thanos, who hasn't collected all the gems or has been seriously injured. After reading the rest of the information, David was ready to take a tour of the Marvel Universe. Since he could travel relatively freely to these worlds that were connected to Winter City, he would go out for a walk every now and then. It's not that I want to get anything. I just want to go and have a look. Among them, Kamataj is the place he goes to most often. Just to appreciate up close how Steve trains Doctor Strange. Due to David's bad taste, Stephen Strange currently does not know David's true identity and only regards him as a very ordinary Kama Taj mage. It's just a little bit unprofessional, while other masters of Karma Taj are working hard to study and practice. David often wanders around, and I have never seen him studying or practicing. David was about to go there as usual to watch the excitement. But as soon as he got up, before he could leave the office, Gareth Stanton came to find him. Elves? Yes. South of Winter City? To be precise, 
It's the west bank of the Taishui River. Looking at Gareth Stanton, who hurriedly came to report, David asked carefully about the specific situation. After not missing any details, he figured out the specific situation. Winter City engaged in extensive development and expanded its territory to the west bank of the Cold Winter River, and then gradually expanded to the west bank of the Taishui River. Winter City has only established some infrastructure along the river, and has not yet penetrated too deeply into this area. Just to ensure the security of the territory, Gareth Stanton increased the scope of daily patrols, and sent fighter planes and helicopters to conduct more careful reconnaissance. As a result, the reconnaissance plane discovered the Elf's Village. Chapter 378 Orcs Come Back Elf Village David looked at the holographic photo in his hand carefully. It could be seen from the photo that the village built by the elves was perfectly hidden by trees. This was one of the reasons why it was difficult to spot it in the air or from a distance. Is it very close to Winter City? It's not really that close. The distance from the Iron River flowing out of the Iron Tree Forest to the north to join the Winter River is not short. And the village is relatively southwest and is not within the previous warning range of Winter City at all. If Winter City had not built several bridges and developed the city's facilities to the west, Winter City's air force would not have flown so far away for reconnaissance. Even if the reconnaissance focused on the closer plains, it would be difficult to discover an elven village perfectly protected by the forest. Are these also the elves in the Iron Tree Forest? This, Gareth couldn't give an answer. He didn't know what was going on with the elves in the Iron Tree Forest. After all, he was not from Iron Tree Fort. In addition, Winter City's previous strategic focus has always been on the orcs and the temple. And it really didn't pay much attention to the elves. Just as Gareth was thinking about how to answer this question, David had already seen some clues from those photos. These elves may not be the same force as the elves fighting in Iron Tree Fort. David saw doubts on the faces of the elves in the photo. As if they were looking at some unknown object. The elves fighting against Iron Tree Fort have seen airplanes many times. They know that this giant metal bird is a weapon belonging to humans and they will not react like this when they see an airplane. Speaking of which, the Iron Tree Forest is really vast. The Iron Tree Forest borders the Thailand Mountains to the east, and the Lost Land to the west. No one can tell how many elves there are in the huge primeval forest. The humans in Iron Tree Fort thought that there were not many elves. And David originally thought so too. It seems that humans have only come into contact with some of them at the beginning. And there are more elves living a life of peace and harmony in the depths of the Iron Tree Forest. Call Lyadrin and Sylvanas over. David thought for a while and decided to let Lyadrin, the Holy Light Bishop, have some contact with these elves. Even if he could not find out the detailed information about the elves, he could it's okay to ask for some superficial information. Choosing these two people, one of whom is an elf, may make this group of elves less wary. Moreover, the strength of these two people is guaranteed. If an emergency occurs, there is no need to worry about the safety of these two people. They are definitely capable of holding on until support arrives. And they may directly kill the opponent. When it's time to take action, these two will never be vague. Nor will they hold back just because they are facing elves. After all, in the eyes of these two, they are high elves from Azeroth. They are not the same race as the indigenous elves in this world. The two elves arrived at David's office soon. After briefly explaining the situation to them, they understood why David called them. I'm ready to go at any time. I need to get back to church to make some arrangements. As a ranger general, Sylvanas has always been resolute, even though she still has the job of training the Thailand Knights. The training plan has already been arranged, and it won't affect anything if she goes out for a few days. Lyadra needed to hand over the work at hand to other priests before she could leave, but it didn't take long. Gareth will have a small team of winter knights and two priests on standby in the Quinjet. The Quinjet will place the two elves near the elf village and then wait there leaving the job of contacting the elves entirely to the two in front of them. After the two elves who had been ordered to set off left, David and Gareth discussed how to establish a defensive post in this direction. With the expansion of Winter City, the garrison problem has become more and more complex. As if he felt that David had been living too easy recently and must cause him some trouble. As soon as Gareth left to prepare a new defense plan, new news was sent to David. The orcs are back? Yes. And all the orcs this time are green? David looked at the orc soldiers in the photo, which was stored in a micro device and played holographic images. There were obvious changes from the orc army that he had repelled. The orcs in the photo are taller and stronger, with ferocious muscles all over their bodies. And even some of the orcs have terrifying bone spikes on their bodies. 
What's even more outrageous is that the ships these orcs are riding on are ferocious orc-style ironclad battleships driven by some unknown power, most likely evil energy, with several turrets on them. Good guy. When they were beaten away last year, they were still a backward race using trebuchets. In the blink of an eye, they switched to battleships and cannons. This isn't called cheating. Is this really cheating? Even if these orcs were given relevant knowledge through cheating by the gods, where did these orcs obtain the resources? How did they make a battleship cannon from scratch? David had the urge to throw the imaging equipment to the ground. Are these gods unable to afford it? Are you starting to feel shameless? The good news is that there aren't many orcs showing up this time. Compared to David, Van Cleve seemed very calm and even left enough time for the Duke to complain a few times before continuing to report the intelligence information in hand. Moreover, after these orcs landed on the eastern coast, they did not immediately rush towards Snowfield Castle. Instead, they got into the hilly mountains in the northeast. That area, David immediately understood what these orcs were going to do. Are they rescuing their compatriots? I'm afraid not. My lord. At Van Cleef's reminder, David called up the last part of the photos, which showed countless brown and yellow-skinned orcs being shackled and walking toward the coast under the escort of green-skinned orcs. More like a capture. After looking at these photos, David leaned on his office chair and frowned and thought for a few seconds. Have you found out the whereabouts of these orcs? Based on the current situation, the orcs transported all these prisoners to the south. South? Yes. Heading south along the coast. Before the investigators withdrew, we saw no intention of turning. David suddenly understood why there was no movement in the Sotoroma Empire after inciting several lords of the Kingdom of Thailand to rebel. Something was wrong in their own back garden. So, the orcs built these warships with resources collected from the Siduramar Empire? As for where the knowledge came from, David was no longer confused. Based on the information he currently had, he inferred that the emergence of the orcs was a new round of purges on the Brunia continent. Every time there is a purge, the new races that appear are the chosen ones, and they can do anything under the care of the gods. I just don't know if the god behind the orcs will come up with something even more outrageous and give it to the orcs after discovering that he still cannot destroy Winter City. Are these aloof gods worried about being counterattacked by their chess pieces? It's a very interesting question. David really wants to know the answer. But it's difficult to see clear results in a short time. It's better to deal with the problem at hand now. The Knights of Winter can't stay at home all the time. When appropriate, they should go out and gain some practical experience. David's meaning was very clear. The Northern Plains were his own territory. These orcs docked their warships in his Duke of Winter's territory without permission, which was already an act of war. Winterfell must fight back and let the orcs understand who is the true ruler of the Northern Plains. In addition, we can also test the strength of this group of orcs who have mutated again. This is also an important reason why he sent the strongest Winter Knights at present instead of several other troops. The order was issued, and the Winter Knights quickly took action. Dress up, assemble, and go. After a long period of training, the Winter Knights lived up to their title as the Ace Legion. Everything performed perfectly, and they completed the transformation from chaos to order in the shortest time. Only after several Quinjet mass-produced Decepticons took off and flew away did others in the military camp realize what had happened. All members of the Knights of Winter are dispatched. Is something serious going on? You left a team before. Did you get into trouble? Different directions. I wonder who my opponent is. It can be seen that the Duke attaches great importance to this enemy. What a pity. This battle should have nothing to do with our Tyrann Knights. You Thailand Knights haven't even finished equipping you with weapons and equipment. So what's the point of regret? Didn't the Spartan heavy infantry receive orders? Maybe it's because the enemy is too far away. Various discussions in the military camp quickly subsided. And all the soldiers in the winter military camp were summoned and went to their respective combat conference rooms to watch the battle between the winter knights and the orcs. Even David and important officials in Winter City were sitting in the conference room watching the live broadcast of the battle. As eight Quinjet mass-produced Decepticons crossed the entire northern plains and arrived at the eastern coast through the cameras carried on the Quinjet Decepticon. Everyone clearly saw the orcs and battleships below. These orcs have become uglier. Aren't these green-skinned orcs the same group as the other orcs? I don't know. Maybe it's an orc from another tribe? The soldiers focused on various things. And in the conference room of Fort Glamorgan, Tony, Howard and others were carefully observing the orc warships. It looks rough. Should there be no need to worry too much? Just as a few people were saying this, the orcs also discovered the Quinjet fighter in the air and launched an attack first. 
green energy rays were continuously fired into the air from the orc warships. The black and thick main cannon slowly raised after adjusting its direction. Firing more terrifying energy sh. ls. Seeing this scene, the originally lively conference room gradually became quiet. Chapter 379 The Orcs Become More Fierce Green Energy SH LS streaked across the sky, constantly passing by the Quinjet. Fortunately, the mass-produced Quinjet Decepticons have good flying skills, and no SH. LS have been able to hit them yet. But this chaotic situation has also caused some trouble for airborne landings. Raise the height! Garrett did not personally lead the team. Floyd is currently responsible for forming Iron Tree Castle's first gunner unit in Iron Tree Castle and he is not in Winter City either. In this battle, the frontline commander of the Winter Knights is Maddox Hawk. The former commander of Snowfield Castle has been training in the Knights of Winter after defecting to David's command, looking for opportunities to establish more meritorious deeds. Today he finally got a chance, but his opponent didn't seem to be as easy to deal with as he thought. Fortunately, his rich battlefield experience and hard study during this period allowed him to make the correct response immediately. After the Quinjet increased its flight altitude, it did well to avoid the anti-aircraft firepower from the orcs. But this also means that the airborne process will become longer. High-speed airborne! At the same time as the cabin door opened, Maddox used the piety aura, giving teammates around him stronger defense. There are knights on several other Quinjets doing the same thing. As the training continues, several paladins have appeared in the winter nights. In addition to the most basic use of holy light, the aura of piety is also a skill that these paladins must master. In this way, in addition to the energy shield provided by the blizzard power armor itself, it also has the additional defensive blessing of the holy light, allowing them to completely ignore attacks and land safely on the predetermined battlefield. Winter is coming! Following slogans, the winter knights jumped off the quinjet one after another, and everyone adjusted their posture immediately so that they could fall to the ground as quickly as possible. Whoosh! 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 Although Maddox was the first to jump out of the cabin, his men adjusted their posture first and then passed by him at an alarming speed. Only then did Maddox adjust his posture and follow his men down at high speed. It wasn't that he was slow in his movements, but that the Winter Knight's airborne combat manual clearly required that the commander must be behind when faced with a forced airborne landing by the enemy's anti-aircraft fire. To put it bluntly, when faced with this situation, his subordinates must act as human shields for the commander to ensure that the commander can land on the battlefield in better condition. The so-called better state is a state where the energy shield is more intact and is almost not consumed. At the same time, it is also to avoid unexpected situations. What if the enemy suddenly comes up with some powerful weapon that has never been seen before and kills the airborne unit at the front? It doesn't matter if you kill a soldier instantly, but if you directly kill the frontline commander, no matter how quick the successor reacts, the morale of the entire unit will be affected. Like now, Maddox could clearly see more and more green light and cannonballs passing by, and occasionally green halos would explode on the bodies of his men in front. Adjust your attitude and start slowing down! After the altitude dropped to a certain level, Maddox controlled his power armor to complete the posture change, from a vertical downward high-speed descent to a normal airborne posture. The main thruster on the power armor started, and the descent speed was quickly reduced to a safe range. Almost a few seconds after the speed dropped to a safe range, the Winter Knights landed. Safe landing! Sir! Fire! Kill these damn orcs! Maddox felt the vibrations coming from his feet. This down-to-earth feeling was like a command. The instinctive reaction gained from hard training made him shout. While firing, he immediately pointed the muzzle of the assault rifle at the green-skinned orc in front of him and pulled the trigger. Facing the orcs, Maddox will not have any mercy. After all, he and the orcs have old grudges. Even though the invasion of the orcs indirectly prompted him to join the Knights of Winter, start a new life, and even learn the magical power of the Holy Light, he would not be halfway grateful to the orcs, and would only transfer these to him. Guy as an ugly aggressor. Boom boom boom. Choo 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 choo. Boom. The dull sound of powered armor falling to the ground. The continuous gunfire from assault rifles. And the roar of missile explosions filled the entire battlefield. Some Winter Knights specifically adjusted their landing direction and landed on the Orc warship. They immediately blew the bridge into pieces and then began to attack the turrets on the warship. The entire coast has become a battlefield. The Winter Knights' combat method emphasizes blooming. Almost every place is a battlefield. And each Winter Knight is equipped with powerful firepower 
that can clear a safe area alone. Even if the opponent is an orc who has mutated again, nothing has changed. However, compared to being unilaterally slaughtered in the past, the orcs still showed some threats this time. The assault rifles could still kill the orcs. But as long as they did not directly hit the head, heart and other vital organs, these orcs could ignore the pain and continue fighting. The weapons they wield are also accompanied by a green glow. After these weapons hit the blizzard power armor, they will always cause violent surges in the energy shield. If they are attacked continuously in a short period of time, the energy shield will briefly collapse. Gather and form a combat team! After Maddox discovered this situation, he immediately ordered the Winter Knights to assemble nearby. After three to four Winter Knights conduct group operations, accidents can be better avoided. As soon as he gave the order, an orc with green skin suddenly rushed out from the front. He was thicker than the surrounding orcs, had sharp bone spurs on his body, and was holding a giant hammer. Boom! The heavy hammer hit the ground in front of Maddox, and a burst of green ripples erupted. Just being swept by the ripples, his power armor sounded an alarm. Warn! Energy shield collapsed. Varied. Maddox was shocked and noticed that the opponent's attack was not over yet. Under the cover of the smoke and dust, a heavy hammer was hitting him from the side. Instinctively, he raised his assault rifle to parry. And the next second, there was a huge force. Maddox, wearing power armor, stood and slid to the side more than 10 meters away. And the assault rifle in his hand had turned into a piece of scrap metal. There was a sudden stabbing pain in his side. He knew that this was the armor automatically injecting medicine into him. His arms that had lost feeling quickly regained consciousness. And he took out his melee weapon, the same two-handed heavy weapon, hammer. After joining the Knights of Winter and undergoing rigorous training to continuously improve his own quality, Maddox chose the heavy hammer as his melee weapon, mobilizing the holy light all over his body. The heavy hammer in his hand faintly exuded some divine brilliance. While observing the orc in front of him, who was roaring up to the sky, Maddox also glanced at the surrounding situation. His comrades have gathered one after another. Ordinary orcs cannot stop the terrifying firepower of the Winter Knights. The person in front of him should be the top combat force among the orcs. And he is probably the commander of this orc group. Looks like I'm lucky. After a while, the energy shield of the power armor has been reactivated. Maddox swung the hammer and fought with the orc. Looking at the scene in front of them, almost everyone turned their attention to the orc who was dueling with Maddox. After David carefully observed it, he found that the orc's strength was certainly good, but the heavy hammer in the opponent's hand was the key point. Especially as the battle progressed, the orcs had a clear upper hand at the beginning. Slowly, Maddox stabilized the situation and gradually began to suppress the orcs and beat them violently. The orc's strength was visibly declining, and the green light on the heavy hammer was also fading until it disappeared. At this time, the originally strong and terrifying orc had shrunk a lot and the muscles on his body had shrunk significantly. He looked weak and weak, and it seemed that it was difficult to even stand there. In fact, Maddox could have ended the battle long ago. But after gaining the upper hand, he received a direct order from the Duke. He had to fight the orc for a while longer, and he wanted to observe the orc situation. So Maddox didn't stop until the orcs were completely unable to fight, and were barely standing there with their war hammers and breathing heavily. Destroy him! Also, don't touch the war hammer directly. Yes, sir. A heavy blow killed the orc warrior. And Maddox looked around. While he was fighting with this orc, the fighting around him had ended. Under various firepower saturated attacks, this group of orcs could not hold out for too long. With the skillful cooperation of the winter knights, the orcs still could not kill any of the winter knights. It was difficult to injure a few knights. But under the double protection of the paladin and the healing potion, they successfully survived the most dangerous period. Therefore, this battle was still a great victory without any casualties. All the green-skinned orcs were killed, and not a single one escaped. One is that there is nowhere to escape. Even if the battleship is activated, under the pursuit and bombing of the Quinjet Decepticons, they cannot escape very far. The other point is that these green-skinned orcs have no intention of escaping, even if they are at an absolute disadvantage. Still roaring and charging. Strong. Brave battleship cannons, and terrifying evil energy. The orc seemed to have found another way to obtain evil energy. He noticed that some orcs used the weapons in their hands to kill the captured orcs. And then, the weapons the green light became more intense. Killing orcs can increase evil power. So can killing humans also do the same? Aren't the orcs getting stronger as they fight? Facing such a powerful orc army, how long can the Sidurimar Empire sustain? 
Chapter 380. Stop pretending and show off your cards. The continent of Brunia is about to change. The orcs seem destined to occupy a place on the continent of Brenia. Perhaps when the army of Winter City moves south, they will no longer face the armies of other human kingdoms. But these green-skinned orcs, after watching the live broadcast of the battle, David looked at the others. Everyone present was the senior management of Winter City, including Chief Advisor Tony Stark, who was also sitting here. He frowned and seemed to be thinking about something. Tony! Um, what's on your mind? I'm thinking there's a second edition of the Piccolo Assault Rifle. Judging from the live broadcast, the threat of the Piccolo Assault Rifle to the Orcs has been reduced. He does not want the weapon he developed to become obsolete so quickly. Considering that I have a lot of mature technology now, it shouldn't be a problem. He has recruited more and more talents and has stored enough advanced technologies. In the future, he will continue to turn these technologies into physical objects, which will be enough for the Winter Army to use them until the Interstellar Era. Compared to weapons, he now wants to know how Tony's research on strengthening technology is going because of the same goal. Cordell has recently joined Tony's research work, using all his lifelong research experience and knowledge. He couldn't do otherwise, because after seeing the enhancement technologies from various powers in the universe that Tony had in his hands, he found that his research was not really a result at all. At most, the research angle was quite special. We have several different plans and are making preliminary comparisons. If everything goes well, I will start preparatory work when winter comes here. After the preliminary preparations comes the formal strengthening. As long as everything goes well, Tony will become an advanced intelligent life form with a powerful body and a longer lifespan next spring. Then let's see who will still look at me like a scumbag. David heard that Tony's human enhancement project was going well and stopped asking further. According to his idea, the residents of Winter City will definitely receive reinforcements in the future. But the priority will definitely be given to the army at the beginning. Self-strengthening. Holy light. Arcane magic. Various advanced weapons. And space battleships are the complete Winter Army in David's mind. According to his original idea, he would quietly master all these ultimate moves in the Northern Plains. And then start sweeping the world. Now it seems that this idea is difficult to implement. He can continue to develop with peace of mind. But by the time he sweeps south, the entire continent has been reduced to ruins by the orcs using evil energy. So what's the point? In the next period of time, the development speed of Winter City needs to be accelerated again. In addition to building new towns and various naval facilities on the eastern coast as soon as possible, there is also the need to push the power of Winter City southward. Iron Tree Fort can no longer remain in the hands of Marquis Morgan. In addition, someone should be sent to the Sotorama Empire to inquire about the situation there. Send a notice to all the lords of the Kingdom of Tilan. After David made the decision, there was no need to delay some things. His Majesty the King of the Kingdom of Tilan officially passed the title of King to the Duke of Winter. And the Kingdom of Tilan will be renamed the Kingdom of Winter. David paused for two seconds and thought about the appropriate time before continuing. After receiving the notice, all lords must arrive at Winter City before next autumn to pay allegiance to the new king. Anyone who fails to arrive at Winter City in time lord will be considered a rebellion. Finally, he emphasized to ceremonial officer Elias that this notice must be sent to all lords of the Thailand Kingdom, including those who were instigated by the Temple or the Sotoruma Empire some time ago and chose to join Holy Gaunt. Kingdoms or those who have become independent small kingdoms. Elias did not ask what if these people ignore the notice. That's not his job. What's more? From the Duke's tone. He already knew his next plan. The Duke obviously wanted to use force to take all the territory into his hands. Not only those lords who have rebelled, but also the lords who are still loyal to the Kingdom of Thailand, but do not necessarily care about the Duke of Winter, will also not get any good results. Perhaps only those who come to Winter City in time to express their loyalty will have a good result. So the question is, how many lords will be willing to be loyal to David Glamorgan? A remote border lord who has only risen to power a few years ago and relied on his shit luck to get into the lap of Her Royal Highness the Princess. Although there are many rumors about the Duke of Winter and the Knights of Winter circulating in the Kingdom of Thailand, most people don't believe it. If the Knights of Winter are really so powerful, why doesn't His Majesty the King send the Knights of Winter South to deal with the Temple? Nowadays, many parts of the Kingdom of Thailand are in chaos, and even civil wars between the Lords of the Kingdom of Thailand have broken out frequently. And the Duke, who is in charge of all affairs of the kingdom, has not been seen to mediate. So in the eyes of most people, those rumors are just rumors. With no family background, 
no connections or family connections, and not even much prestige. David's reputation was entirely supported by a few announcements from the Tehran kingdom and a few rumors. In this case, the possibility of the lords choosing to be loyal to them is infinitely close to zero. No one present objected to David's order. Tony and Laura had long known that such a day would come. Although it was earlier than expected, it was nothing special. People like Weatherby Swan, Elias, and Gareth have been looking forward to this day for a long time. As David's most trusted important subordinates, their status will become more prominent as David becomes king. As for whether it would be embarrassing for the new king to have no one to pledge his allegiance? No one here thought so. They will only firmly believe that those lords, who did not arrive in time will be unlucky, and come to pay their allegiance earlier. The newly enthroned King David may still have a headache on how to reasonably take back the lands of these lords. After getting along with each other for so long, everyone has figured out the character of the duke. He is not the kind of ruler who would do evil things to his own people. Therefore, the fact that those lords did not come to Winter City was a great help. In a year and a half, a military port was built on the eastern coast, connecting the east and west of the northern plains, and at the same time opening up a passage to the south. This is the focus of the next work, as long as it can be completed successfully. The next spring will be the time for Winter City to go south to recover the old soil. The time is set for the year after next because the Thailand Knights have only completed the preliminary reorganization work and have not even equipped themselves with equipment. This will have to wait until next year at least. After the adaptive training is over, it will be almost winter or even already winter. In addition, you have to consider various consumption and make various preparations in advance which all takes time. If you want to win a war, even if it's a crushing game, you can't win it by just slapping your forehead and saying, let's fight. As for the key number of soldiers and the lack of management talents, David left it alone for the time being. According to his original idea, he would occupy a place as soon as he conquered it. Now that the situation has changed, he has given up on this development plan and focused on destroying the main enemy forces, chasing the orcs and the temple troops. For the common people, the common people of the Holy Kingdom of Gunter. The main task is to migrate, and the towns are directly abandoned. Anyway, for David, the cities on the Brania continent have backward facilities and are not worth occupying at all. Once occupied, it will take time and resources to renovate and rebuild. In this case, just take away the useful population of Winter City, and that's it. In this way, the internal affairs of Winter City will continue to be run at the current pace allowing Winter City to continue to expand its scope of control. The military is a military force that hunts down enemies everywhere. With Winter City's technical strength, Winter's army does not have to worry about not being able to keep up with logistical supplies. David didn't know if his idea would work, but if his men had enough time to deduce and improve the idea, maybe a talent would suddenly appear and complete the originally unworkable battle plan. When you are a subordinate, you must have the awareness to face this kind of situation. If that doesn't work, there are Cretonians, mutants, the former supreme mage, etc. coming to the rescue. With so many trump cards, even if the plan has problems, it should be able to successfully achieve the plan goals. Right? David can enjoy the addiction of being the boss, doing the least work and getting the most credit. After giving the instructions, David went to check out the various equipment of the Tyrone Knights and finally went to the Cybertron Research Center. How is the quality of your aerial surveillance and combat platform? The main reason he came here was to find Megatron. He still remembered Megatron's previous decision to build an aerial device. If everything goes well, this external component of Megatron will be of great help to the next thing. After precise calculations, it is now unrealistic to directly build a large space carrier. With the introduction of Shockwave, David realized that it wasn't that they couldn't build such powerful external components, but that Megatron's current fire strength was not enough to support him using such a powerful body. There is no problem in forcibly building it. In that case, Megatron himself would have to stay on the battleship and hardly go anywhere. It would be equivalent to Megatron himself staying in the air, responsible for aerial surveillance and high-altitude fire support tasks. That's it. Actually, it doesn't matter. There is nothing important going on in Winter City. I can stay on the aircraft carrier to practice the holy light and strive to make the fire strong enough as soon as possible. David thought about it and felt that what Megatron said made sense. As for changing Transformers to do this job? Leaving aside the fact that there are currently very few Cybertronians who have mastered the Holy Light, are powerful enough, and can continue to make the fire stronger. 
Megatron's loyalty to him was an important factor in David's courage to let Megatron float above his head in such a deadly weapon. David is even more reassured about Megatron than Optimus Prime. Then let's do it this way. How long will it take to build this aircraft carrier? Next spring. Chapter 381 Strengthening the Intelligence Department Tylan Knight's equipment won't be available until next year. Megatron's external components won't be available until next year. Either. Coupled with the development of the Eastern Coast. Transportation connection projects in several important areas. And the continuous construction of new factories. Winter City's various plans are already full. And a large number of projects are slowly progressing. If he is playing a game, David can also click fast forward or something to directly skip the waiting time. Now he can only wait for the project to gradually move forward. And at the same time keep in touch with important people in the territory to deepen his relationship. Like the Kryptonians? A few months after arriving in Winter City, their strength improved quickly by shining on the sun. David was a little worried that the rapid improvement in strength would give the Kryptonians headed by General Zod some ideas. So in the past few months, David was not in a hurry to arrange any jobs or positions for the Kryptonians headed by General Zod. Focus on observing the reactions of these people. By this time, he had determined that the Kryptonians led by General Zod would be able to do nothing. Although General Zod found that his strength had become very strong, he still observed his previous agreement and was willing to continue to abide by the agreement he had made with David. It's not that General Zod has a noble character, but that after careful observation and calculation, General Zod found that even if their strength was greatly improved, there was still no chance of winning, and they could successfully seize Winter City from David. David and Superman are enough to suppress Zod and Fiora. But even if the remaining Kryptonian warriors become stronger, there is still no guarantee that they can suppress other combatants in Winter City. Ultimately, there are too few Kryptonians. In addition, after David proved that Winter City is really connected to many universes, General Zod recognized David's ability to find a suitable home for Krypton. As long as David keeps his promise and can get a new planet to build a new Krypton, what big deal is it to work for Winter City for decades? So why would he have to go against David? Zod is willing to serve Winter City with peace of mind, and his men will naturally have no objections. The Kryptonians began to work hard to learn all kinds of knowledge in Winter City. They had already mastered the common language of Brynia. However, the Kryptonians were in a special situation. This resulted in this group of soldiers being used to living in groups and lacking the common sense needed to live alone. Zod wanted to gather the Kryptonians alone and live in a camp in the winter military camp. If there was a mission, he would go on a mission. And if there was no mission, he would stay in the military camp. But David disagreed with Zod's idea. He also expected the Kryptonian genes to stay in Winter City. If this group of Kryptonians had no daily life at all, this goal would not be possible. You can't just find Fiora and have dozens of babies. Right? This approach is so evil that even the big guys who were blackmailed in American movies would not do this after catching Kara. Therefore, after David made sure that the Kryptonians were able to master and control their own power well, he assigned them to ordinary residences one by one. They are surrounded by many warm and friendly neighbors. And they can feel a relatively ordinary life here in Winter City although they would gather regularly for training and carry out tasks assigned by David. Apart from these times, they had enough free time to do their own things. Even Kryptonians are professionals who have been trained since childhood. And some ideas are deeply imprinted in their genes. But human beings, even Kryptonians, are prone to make some mistakes once they start thinking. Especially the thoughts and ideas of Krypton that are engraved into genes are not so strong that they cannot be changed. Dimension provides the basis. If it were a particularly powerful and unchangeable thought stamp, then David would definitely not want to change the minds of the Kryptonians. In that case, he will find a way to get rid of Zod. Even if the men left behind by Zod are recruited by him, they will only be used as tools by him. And then, he will focus on cultivating the next generation, which is a hybrid of Winter and Kryptonians. Now that he didn't have to use such extreme measures, he was secretly relieved. Every time when this happens, he would secretly laugh at himself. You really don't have the temperament to achieve great things. However, David never thought about correcting himself. And after roughly dealing with the Kryptonian matter, he began to care about the mutants again. Unlike the Kryptonians, the mutants integrated into Winter City very quickly. And they also liked Winter City very much. Although compared to the Kryptonians who were deliberately dispersed by David, the mutants lived in relatively concentrated places. But Daiwei was not worried that this group of mutants would create a separate mutant community in Winter City. Because mutants are more willing to interact with other people than Kryptonians. 
They are happy to make new friends as long as the people in Winterfell don't hate them. Even because of the special nature of Winter City, these mutants would take the initiative to get to know specific people. For example, I have been harassed a lot for no reason recently. So I came here to hide from the two men. The purchasing business is about to die. Ethan took a sip of tea. The strong tea aroma and bitter taste made him a little uncomfortable. But after calming down for a while, he took a second sip. This is new variety? It tastes different from the ones I drank at your place before. The newly developed variety from the Kingdom of Sparta has a stronger flavor. David liked this new variety very much. How is your business doing recently? My purchasing agent business is about to run out of business. As Winter City began to build various factories, many nobles also saw business opportunities and opened large and small factories, targeting various needs in Winter City. For example, Ethan can no longer do the work of purchasing paper, pens, ink, desk lamps, etc. on behalf of others. Winter City has now begun to produce these humble daily necessities on its own. As for some of the rare things that Winter City has not started producing yet, because the demand is too little. They are basically saturated. The ones you want have been bought from Ethan. And the rest don't want that kind of thing. No. I will ask Ethan to purchase on my behalf. Therefore, Ethan's purchasing business has basically come to an end. Fortunately, he has completed his original plan, buying a house in Winter City. He mainly lives in his own world. So it doesn't matter if his business can't continue. If possible, I still want to find something to do. Otherwise, I won't even have money to pay the water and electricity bills in the future. Is Ethan considering renting out his house? Or are you talking about opening a store or something? He doesn't have to make a lot of money. But it is still necessary to ensure that there is enough liquidity in Winter City. This is a habit brought about by his many years of career. And he doesn't see any harm in doing so. You can consider working part-time as an instructor in Winter City. Instructor? Me? What can I teach? Ethan thought David was joking and looked at who the instructors in Winter City were. A high elf priest from the Holy Light. Paladins from the Order of the Silver Hand. A mage from Dalaran. High elf ranger general from Quelthalas. Compared to these monsters, I am just an ordinary person. Winter City also has an intelligence department. Are those intelligence officers who can use the power of shadow to make themselves invisible? I don't think I can teach these people. Of course you can. You just haven't learned that knowledge. In fact, I think if you learn it, you will definitely learn it faster than most people. The Winter Intelligence Department has been expanding its manpower. And the price of rapid expansion is that the quality of this group of intelligence personnel is uneven. As the supervisor, Edwin Van Cleef didn't have a good solution to this problem. As the stalls in Winter City grew bigger and bigger, he had to take on more and more tasks. And even his daughter Fanisha is always busy and can't see anyone all day long. Under such circumstances, there was no time to properly train these newly recruited subordinates, relying on the old to lead the newcomers. In fact, the original old man himself was only half experienced. In Van Cleef's eyes, these people themselves had not yet graduated. Now I have to be the mentor of newcomers. You could only imagine what level the newcomers are. The intelligence department of Winter City can ensure that no situation occurs in the city. The main reason is due to geographical factors. But it will definitely not work if it continues like this. David knew this situation well. Even if Ethan didn't come to him today, he would still go find Ethan. But the other party came to his door on his own initiative. If you accept this position, from now on you will be the deputy director of the Winter Intelligence Department, responsible for the training and ability review of intelligence personnel. In fact, in David's opinion, Ethan is more suitable to be the director of the Intelligence Department than Van Cleef. Although Van Cleef has good personal abilities, his leadership and organizational skills are too obvious. Of course, Ethan is not an excellent head of the intelligence department. After all, he is tough in gambling. But there are only two choices at the moment. Among them, Ethan still has a lot of concerns in his own world. He can win over Ling Dong first. The city's chariots are already in very good condition. In fact, David would like Soundwave to serve as the Minister of Intelligence. But it will take some time. I only need to be responsible for training new people? Yes. It doesn't sound too troublesome. Ethan didn't think for too long and quickly agreed. After all, such a risk-free job perfectly met his needs. I accepted. Welcome. David raised his teacup to pay tribute to Ethan, and then turned to look at the man who had been sitting quietly in another seat. What about Clark? Are you not planning to take a position in Winter City? Clark shook his head decisively. 
he did not want to serve as an official in Winter City. In fact, he was content to be a leisurely farmer in Winter City. If there hadn't been a lot of people coming to watch him recently, he would have preferred to stay in his farmland and work, even though he could finish that work in a short time. But if you need help with anything, you know where to find me. Chapter 382 Famous People in the Multiverse Clark enjoys his current ordinary life. In addition, he continues to be Superman in his own world. Although he inexplicably became the representative of the Avengers on Earth, he found that after adding such a strange identity, he did have a lot less trouble. The reporters who only wanted to find trouble in the past became much more polite when speaking in the media. Politicians there are all kinds of smiling faces. For example, after he saved someone in the past, someone would always talk about nationality, financial losses, etc. But now these news seem to have disappeared. Occasionally, when I mention it, I will be mercilessly ridiculed by many people, as if I am helping myself to scold a person who stirred up trouble. This situation allowed him to focus more on the matter of helping others. There were more and more smiles on his face, and his whole person was shining like the sun. Of course, Clark will continue to attract people to watch, not because he is so handsome. After many people knew that the Kryptonians had arrived in Winter City, they realized that Superman had also arrived in Winter City. As a representative figure of superheroes, Superman's name resounds throughout the multiverse. Even the mutants next door know his name. Many people can even say that they grew up watching Superman's various works. Therefore, people who came to Winter City from the world of the Walking Dead, the world of X-Men, and even the world of Resident Evil, after learning that Superman was coming, almost regarded Clark's newly opened Kent Farm as a famous tourist attraction. There was a tour guide holding a small flag and a loudspeaker. This situation made Clark very embarrassed, and he didn't know how to persuade them to leave. Say you made a mistake? Am I not the so-called Superman? Clark was worried that the other person would just pull out a comic, point at the person on it, and say to himself, Stop pretending. We all know your disguised identity, or something like that. In the end, he had no choice but to hide directly in David's Glamorgan castle, and then bumped into Ethan Hunt, who had also been frequently watched recently. Regarding the experience of these two people, David could only comfort him. It will get better after a while. It's just a momentary curiosity. And with the development of Winter City, and all kinds of weird things happening everywhere. Everyone will no longer have such a big reaction. As for latecomers, they will be surprised. But when they see the people around them looking normal, they will not act too much. Because most people don't want to become aliens in the eyes of their fellow citizens. In comparison, David was more curious about what Ethan thought after realizing his true identity. It seems like Ethan doesn't care about these things. Actually, I have noticed it a long time ago. Ethan is a professional intelligence officer after all. Even though he lives in a relatively early world and cannot collect relevant clues in his own world. But as long as you pay attention, you can find enough information in Winter City, especially when Ethan works as a purchasing agent. He has contact with almost most people in Winter City. And the other party is not wary of him. In the case of, Look, this is an important reason why I asked you to be the instructor of the intelligence personnel. After chatting for a while, Ethan took the lead to say goodbye and leave. Now that you have accepted this job, you must do your best. Ethan is not the kind of character who takes money and then messes around. At the same time, he also believes that this is the biggest opportunity in his life. He is also curious about what kind of new life he will have from now on. He will definitely not repeat the original trajectory of his life. From the moment he stepped into Winter City, his future has been changed. He is very sure of this. Ethan chose to accept David's recruitment because he wanted to break the established future. Clark didn't think much about it. He was enjoying the happiest and least trouble-free time in his life. There is no sorrow in life. I can freely use my power as a Superman to help those in need. I have also become much closer to Lois Lane. And I am just one layer away from confirming the relationship. For Clark, the only problem is how to keep the secret of Winter City from Lee's. After all, this secret involves not only himself, but a large group of people. He cannot make decisions on his own. Lois' identity as a reporter is too sensitive. And she originally pursued herself to reveal Superman's true identity. I tried asking David. But what I got was, If you believe her, then I believe her too. Lois Lane in the movie universe is a relatively sober person. And will not ignore it just because she Must make big news. Whether it was Clark or her boss Morpheus. After saying something, Louise could immediately realize the seriousness of the problem and decisively give up the report. For such a clear-headed person, 
David was not worried that she would get into irreparable trouble. By the way, didn't that smart man who always thinks humans are no worse than other people and always wants to prove something do something against you? You mean Lex Luthor? Or someone else? The other one should still be making plans. He won't take action until you actually do something that threatens the Earth. In the original plot, Batman kept targeting Superman, which was secretly instigated by Lex Luthor. There are also some personal vendettas mixed in. Nowadays, Superman and Zod are not fighting on Earth. And they have not caused so much damage in front of Batman. Batman's view of Superman is relatively neutral. In particular, it also involves David, the Avenger member responsible for the jurisdiction of the Earth, which directly involves the high-level civilized forces in the universe. Batman will not act recklessly directly, but will continue to lurk in the dark. On the other hand, Lex Luthor, no matter which version he is, will always make trouble for Superman. Lex Luthor seems to be planning something secretly. But there shouldn't be any threat. Clark not only dismantled the spacecraft Zod, and the others were traveling in and transported it to Winter City in batches. He even drove his own spacecraft to the back of the moon, with the technological level of the Earth in that world. It would be very difficult to reach the far side of the moon, without various Kryptonian technologies and kryptonite aimed at him. Lex Luthor is few, if any, ways to pose a threat to himself. Provoke other superheroes against yourself? That is not an easy task especially since he is now the guardian of the earth. That's good. David reminded Clark to go and get more sunshine when he had time. After all, his world would face threats from Steppenwolf and Darkseid. And this battle was unavoidable. Even if Superman is not dead, as long as the mother box is still on the earth, a war will happen sooner or later. Correct. What? Do you have any information about your cousin? You mean Kara? Clark shook his head. After knowing his identity and various settings, he also searched for relevant information and asked his father, who had become an artificial intelligence. But the answer he got was, he does have a man named Carla's cousin. But is Kara alive or dead? Where he is is unclear. He even asked Zod about this. And Zod said that he had been searching the universe for a while. And the only Kryptonian he found was Clark. In other words, the Kara of his universe most likely turned into dust in the universe together with Krypton. David secretly sighed that it was a pity that if Clark's universe also had Kara, his cousin would be more likely to be left in Winter City for a long time than he himself. Now if you want to poach this Supergirl, you can only do it by traveling to other parallel universes. Seeing that it was getting late, Clark also said goodbye and left. David sat in the garden for a while longer, watching the sun gradually set, then stood up and returned to Glamorgan Castle, eating, chatting, handling official duties practicing, and single-handedly sparring with Sophia. Helen, Eva, Laura, Gwen and others became David's daily routine during this period. Occasionally, I would give guidance to Anjuin and Wanda, and when I was bored, I would go to Karma Taj to see how Steve taught Doctor Strange. As time passed by in a hurry, David was also waiting for the end of the progress of the plans that were constantly advancing. During this period, he also chatted with Abelson, King Tyrann, who knew the date of his abdication in advance without knowing it, did not show any dissatisfaction with his abdication. On the contrary, he was more David had been looking forward to that day even earlier. His Majesty, the current King of Thailand Kingdom, has realized that many interesting things will happen after that day, including the highlight that he most hopes to see, Winter City's counterattack against the Temple, or the Holy Kingdom of Gaunt. Although he still has to wait for more than a year, it doesn't matter, he will definitely see the destruction of the temple in his lifetime. And that is enough. After taking care of all aspects, David once again entered a regular and stable daily state, so stable that he could not even notice the passage of time. If Mark Wadney hadn't suddenly appeared, he wouldn't have even realized that so much time had passed. Ha ha ha. I'm back. Standing on the busy street with his hands spread out, Mark Wadney laughed to the sky for three seconds, and then he began to feel a little embarrassed in the eyes of countless people around him, who looked at him as a fool. After looking around, he made sure that the outer wall of Glamorgan Castle was next to him. And not far away was the familiar Cathedral of Holy Light. He should have traveled to the wrong world. But why are there so many people on the street? Looking from a distance, countless houses have been built in the city, and almost no vacant homesteads can be seen, looking to the east and south. It is also difficult to see the empty plains. I've only been away for about a year. Right? Winter City is developing so fast. If I come back a few months later, 
Will I not be able to find the way to Fort Glamorgan? Chapter 383 The Most Familiar Strange City David was also very happy looking at Mark Wadney, who suddenly appeared in front of him. After all, he was one of the first people to come to Winter City. Like Laura and Fording, he played a great role in promoting the development of Winter City. Welcome back. He stood up and walked around the desk and hugged Mark Wadney. David did not go to find a seat. He stood here and chatted with Mark, asking Mark about his experience this year. You know, just take a spaceship and fly to the Earth. In addition to exercising every day, you also check your body. Before Mark boarded the return spacecraft, he deliberately used drugs to make his body very thin, so as to be in line with the severe malnutrition caused by eating a ration of potatoes to survive on Mars. So after boarding the spacecraft, Mark Watney was arranged to undergo a series of checks to ensure that there would be no hidden dangers to his body, to avoid spending a lot of effort and money. The astronaut was finally rescued. The tragic thing happened when he boarded the spaceship to go home, but died suddenly on the way. After being examined and determined to have no serious health problems, Mark Watney began a hard rehabilitation life. He must supplement food and various nutritional medicines on time and in a quantitative manner and perform appropriate rehabilitation exercises under the supervision of professionals. Don't think this is an interesting experience. Because Mark Watney has to maintain a state of not eating enough for a long time. Poor nutritional status. Severe weight loss. Muscle atrophy. Etc. He can only eat a small amount every day. Don't eat or exercise too much to avoid hurting your body. This made Mark. Who was actually not in any serious condition at all. Very uncomfortable. He wanted to immediately use water spells to remove all the abnormal conditions from his body and directly declare that he had recovered. It sounds like you've had a rough year. That was quite painful. After more than 10 months of space flight, we finally returned to Earth. What followed was a series of inspections and follow-up observations. Make sure Mark Whitney doesn't suffer any side effects. Even now, I have to go for comprehensive physical examinations regularly. Mark now looks much thinner than when he was in Winter City. But at that time, Mark Watney exercised every day, gained knowledge from the shaman, and was recognized by the elemental spirits. The power of the elements strengthened his body to a certain extent. And in addition, he used David's holy light to perform limit-breaking exercises. Mark was actually very strong at that time. Now Mark is almost the same as when he first came to Winter City. He is a little thinner and has basically returned to his normal state. But I'm finally relieved, according to NASA's arrangements for him. The intervals between physical examinations will gradually become longer, and he will no longer need to be under official supervision every day and will gradually return to normal life. However, as the only astronaut and botanist who can live alone on Mars for so long and successfully grow potatoes on Mars, he will have a lot of social and social work to do next. If you are an ordinary person, you can even consider taking advantage of this opportunity to make a lot of money. After getting all the fame and money, you can start enjoying your retirement life early. But Mark is not an ordinary person. He doesn't care about or struggle with money and fame in his own world. He wants to return to Winter City, learn more mysterious knowledge, and become an extraordinary being. You said so much about me. Let's talk about Winter City. After telling his situation, Mark curiously asked about the development and changes in Winter City this year. I saw Winter City the number of residents has increased a lot, and houses have been built everywhere. A lot of things must have happened. Right. There's definitely a lot going on. David did not continue to stand here and chat with Mark endlessly. While introducing the situation, David took Mark to the tea room and briefly introduced Mark to Mark what happened during the year. Listening to David's introduction, Mark lamented that a lot of things had happened in the year since he left. Why does it feel so much more exciting than when I stayed here? Mark was a little speechless. He felt that after he left, all kinds of wonderful things in Winter City continued to unfold, and he missed them all. It was a pity that he could not witness the moment when Winter City became the Principality of Winter. Don't worry. The best part hasn't been missed yet. David himself will inherit the throne of the Kingdom of Tillan, and the matter of turning the Kingdom of Tillan into the Kingdom of Winter is also not hidden from Mark. The succession ceremony is scheduled for next fall, which is a great opportunity for David and the entire Winter City. The most important moment. Hey. So you have not only become the Duke of Winter, but you will also become His Majesty the King of the Winter Kingdom in more than half a year? Uh-huh. Taking a sip of tea, David did not feel that he had become superior to others. When he chatted with Mark, his tone and attitude were no different from the past. 
This also made Mark secretly relieved. It seemed that the change in status did not change the character of this friend. Then he asked again, Who came to Winter City during the time he left? When he heard Ethan Hunt, Mark was directly scalded by the hot tea. When he heard Sansa Stark, he was stunned for a few seconds and looked at David with an expression of watching the fun. As for who missed it, he had a question mark on his face, completely unable to understand what kind of existence a humanoid battleship was. At this time, he had not realized that the Belfast, who was pouring tea next to him, was also a battleship. When David mentioned Clark Kent and Clarice Ferguson, Mark's expression suddenly changed. Wait, did you just say Clark Kent? Right. The Clark Kent I know? I don't know if he is the same as Clark in your impression. But if you want to ask if he is Superman, I can definitely answer you. Yes. He is the Superman from Krypton. Thank you for your generous gift. After holding the cup and sighing loudly, and from the bottom of his heart, Mark realized something else. What powers did you get from Superman? Biological force field. Mark put on a gun, with a question mark face. When David nodded, he smiled and patted him on the shoulder. Keep working hard. The rewards David receives will lead to upgrades, evolutions, or other abilities. Mark, who has been in contact with him for a long time, already knows these things. Although he only got the biological force field and not all the abilities of Kryptonians, it doesn't mean that David will never get those abilities. What the future holds depends on what David does next. After taking another sip of tea, Mark suddenly wanted to go out and take a look. Staying here and listening to David's story can no longer satisfy his curiosity. He not only wants to see the current situation in Winter City, but also wants to meet Clark. I'm afraid it's hard to see Clark. Too many people have come to watch him recently. In addition, it's winter now, and he doesn't need to run to the fields very often. So he will stay in his own world most of the time and just come over often to look. Look. Although the number of people watching Superman has decreased, it still remains. Some Brynia locals even started to come to watch, because Superman is very handsome. It is said that someone just started asking if Clark is married? If not, I would be happy to help Clark introduce an excellent girl. Among them were some nobles from the royal capital of Thailand. You might as well go see the mutants. Superman can't see it, but mutants can. Right? Wolverine. Professor. According to David's description, the world of mutants is already in a doomsday state. Currently, Clarice, nicknamed Flicker, often takes her fellow mutants back and forth between the two worlds, constantly saving ordinary people in that world. These bring people to Winter City. I am also not certain. The mutants have indeed settled in Winter City, but frequent travel between the two worlds has made David unable to determine which mutant is at home today and which is not. Speaking of which, mutants can travel between the two worlds relatively freely, thanks to Blink's superpowers. When mutants come to Winter City, they don't need to touch a specific object and have it walk to Winter City like other people. Instead, Blink opened a portal directly to Winter City, which made it a relatively simple task for mutants to quickly transfer a large number of ordinary people. Unfortunately, Blink's ability is only for his own world. David doesn't know whether the teleportation ability he got from Blink will evolve into this in the future. In that case, it will be much more convenient to take multiple people to and from the multiverse in the future. A portal opens, and an army follows him to another world. What a shocking scene it is. Just as he was thinking this, David was about to take Mark to the garage, and then to the neighborhood where mutants lived. Suddenly, as if he remembered something, he turned around and took Mark to the warehouse first. Almost forgot. What? This is for you. When he arrived at the warehouse, David took out a watch and handed it to Mark. If you don't like the style of the watch, there are also rings and other shapes for you to choose from. What's this? A new device that integrates functions such as communication equipment, microcomputers, and storage devices. After seeing Mark put the watch on his wrist, David began to introduce Mark in detail to the function and use of this multifunctional tool. Method. By the way, fill out this form and give it to Eva. What is this? Mark was still marveling that Winter City had actually created such a sci-fi product tool when he turned around and saw a form involving personal information. Personal Identity Information Registration Form? So that I can make an identity document for you. You are still a gangster in Winter City. Chapter 384 Minister of Environmental Sanitation The gangster Mark Wadney filled in his personal information obediently. According to David, he will be able to get his own ID in a few days. He will have to carry this with him in the future. After all, 
There are more and more people in Winter City. Well, without proof of identity, something may not happen in the future. Why not store personal information in this tool? This thing is currently only used in a small area. It will take more time to spread it to the entire Winter City. After quickly filling in their personal information, the two handed the registration form to Eva before leaving, and then left Fort Glamorgan in the car driven by David. Originally, I wanted to pick a golden apple for Mark to eat, but Mark still had several rounds of physical examinations to undergo. At least, he had to wait until he had fooled the people at the NASA before he could truly return to normal with confidence. Let's go! Let's go see the mutants first. Mark is not very lucky. Neither Professor X nor Magneto nor Wolverine are at home today. Because of his special abilities, Professor X must follow him every time he goes to rescue. Magneto and Wolverine were worried that something unexpected might happen to the old professor. So they also went with them. This resulted in the mutants almost always acting in a group, only taking turns to rest or staying in Winter City to recuperate according to the situation. The person staying in Winter City today is Roberto da Costa, codenamed Sunspot. His mutant ability is good. He can absorb solar energy and release it to attack the enemy. He stayed in Winter City today just to bask in the sun to replenish the excessive loss of power. Mark Watney doesn't have much interest in Sunspot, who is important in the comic book universe but is just a sidekick in the movie universe. When David was chatting with Robert DaCosta, he simply greeted him and got to know him without talking too much about mutants and superpowers and then left with David. What a shame. I thought I'd see Storm. Is this your real purpose? Huh? Aren't you interested in Storm? Mark sat in the passenger seat, his head turning around, looking at the city that had changed so much that he felt unfamiliar. The year I left time. Have you gained many more close friends? How can it be? He? Mark didn't think it was strange that he was just a playboy. After all, David had the capital to be playboy. Sitting in the car, we chatted wordlessly. After driving on the main streets for a while, the car also drove into many lively neighborhoods. Looking at this increasingly lively scene, Mark couldn't help but sigh. It's hard to imagine that just a few years ago, this was a wasteland. At that time, you had to walk a long way to get water from the river. Later, it was only thanks to Laura, Fording, Steve, and others that the first tap water system was built. That pipeline has long been dug out and abandoned. Now Winter City's tap water system is quite complete. But new water plants are still being built by the river. This is to meet the ever-expanding city size and ensure the supply of frost. Cold Watch and Snowfield Castle. Well, just as he was sighing, Mark seemed to see something incredible. Am I dazzled? Is that an orc? David slowed down the car, glanced in that direction, and saw a brown orc standing there. He didn't show any surprise. Yes, orc. The fundamental reason why the orcs appear in Winterfell is due to the prisoners rescued from the green-skinned orcs by the Knights of Winter during the battle on the eastern coast. Maddox led the Knights of Winter to a beautiful victory, and the post-war handling work was done without any problems. The battlefield was properly sealed off, and the battleships or battleship wreckage used by the orcs were protected from people directly access the weapons used by the orcs. Collect those weapons with protection, etc. The only thing that gave him a headache was how to deal with these orc prisoners. David's order was to release them on the spot. Since these orcs were peaceful orcs who were willing to live a peaceful life, there was no need to cause killing and hatred for no reason. And turn these orcs, who had separated from the hostile group, into enemies again. After understanding what the Duke meant, Maddox released all the orcs, seeing that the metal men did not embarrass, torture or even kill themselves. These brown and yellow-skinned orcs were slightly relieved and left the eastern coast one after another. So far, things seemed to be no different from before. But as the construction team of Winter City arrived on the eastern coast and began to build port towns here, these orcs slowly began to appear again, because they were saved by the metal man. This group of orcs realized that if they didn't trouble these people, they would not go on a killing spree. So the orcs became more bold in contacting the metal men. For example, hunting prey is used to exchange for needed food, farm tools, etc. Until an orc saw the metal man building a town and asked if he could exchange labor for food. The contact between humans and orcs suddenly became frequent, and became close because the orcs were strong and powerful, and the rewards for their hard work were low, as long as they were given food. The official responsible for the construction on the East Coast found that only some food could speed up the project significantly, and he had no reason to refuse. As a result, 
a large number of orcs began to gather in the eastern seaport towns. This temporarily unnamed port city became a key link between humans and orcs. And as the construction work continued, some orcs also came to Winter City on Winter City's transport planes. This is why Mark was able to see the orcs in Winter City. Weren't you fighting the orcs before? Now the situation has changed. Our targets are no longer these brown and yellow-skinned orcs, but the green-skinned orcs who use evil energy. Those guys are the real enemies. The orcs contaminated by evil energy are the enemies of all life on the continent of Brunia. Unfortunately, except for the people in Winter City, other forces do not know this yet. It seems I still have a lot to learn. After listening to David's introduction for a long time, he took a car and walked around Winter City for a long time. As a result, he found that there were still many things that he was unclear about. Mark knew that he would have to study hard for a while. In addition to the changes in the city, we also need to understand the changes in the forces surrounding Winter City, the upgrades of various technologies in Winter City, the changes in the racial composition within Winter City, etc. Afterwards, Mark went to the Winter Military Camp to see the latest light cavalry and heavy cavalry systems. He watched the trained Thailand knights skillfully drive their technologically explosive motorcycles through various obstacles. The next second the motorcycle transformed into an anti-gravity flying skateboard and then turned into heavy armor to cover the rider's body. It was quite shocking. Cool! Mark couldn't help but applaud. Give me a set too. These are still prototypes and test samples. Used for training and collecting various data. Basically, everything that should be collected has been collected. The official model has been finalized. And formal production will begin next. Whoever likes it can get one. Go back. But I haven't chosen a name yet. Do you have any suitable suggestions? Let me think about it. Mark thought seriously for a few seconds. And then solemnly gave his suggestion. The members of the Cybertronians responsible for military combat missions form the Decepticons. And this new equipment is used when it comes to transformation technology especially the super heavy cavalry you mentioned. From the description, it's almost the same as Transformers. Why not just call it Tyrant Wolf? David nodded while listening to all the previous analyses. When the final name came out, he felt that his forehead must be covered with black lines. Think of a name carefully. I'm not in a hurry. If it were really called this name and Flicker joined the Thailand Knights, the scene would be so beautiful that David wouldn't dare to look at it, feeling like he would lose 800 million knights at any time. What's wrong with this name? Isn't the representative emblem of Winter City a wolf? Really? Think again. Mark was confused and decided to go back to his own world to search for the tyrant wolf. Full of questions, the two drove back to Fort Glamorgan. This time Mark finally met Princess Sophia, whom he had heard of several times before and was the only new friend that David acknowledged. It's an honor to meet you. Your Highness Princess. Hello, Mr. Watney. I often hear David talking about you. And every time he says, it would be great if Mark came back soon. Oh, really? Of course. David will always talk about the lack of sanitation talents in Winter City. What does sanitation mean? Ahem. Realizing that she had said the wrong thing, Sophia stuck out her tongue, turned her head and ran away, leading David and Mark smiling awkwardly at each other. I'm a botanist. Isn't this corresponding to your major? I am the Minister of Environmental Health. I'm a shaman, not a druid. More or less, the earth spirits of the northern plains will be happy to have someone who can understand their appeals and be responsible for managing the environment of this land. I still want to go out and see the world. You didn't know that you couldn't leave the confines of winter, but you suppressed me to death. Don't worry. This job doesn't prevent you from wandering around. In fact, after taking over this position, you have to go out frequently to check the environmental conditions in the territory of the Winter Kingdom. Oh. Sounds good? The special plane will be equipped and all expenses will be paid for by Winter City. I'm excited to be offered this position. After a few playful conversations and shaking hands, David no longer has to worry about the environmental issues in his territory. Mark is definitely more professional than him in how to ensure the environment. But it will take some time before I can take office. I know. Mark has to wait until he gets rid of all the mundane things before he can concentrate on living in Winter City. David knows this. He is not in a hurry for a month or two. Maybe he can take advantage of this period to eliminate the hidden danger in the Marvel Universe? Chapter 385 Black Widow takes the initiative to surrender. David didn't rush to the Marvel Universe to start his journey of collecting Infinity Stones. In fact, he didn't need to rush. Originally, 
He wanted Tony to spare enough free time to slowly tinker with the quantum space positioning device. But Tony was always busy and would immediately start a new project before one project was completely completed. He didn't know how long it would take when Tony was free. So David decided to cheat. Let Steve use the time stone to take Tony to see what the quantum positioning device is about. And then copy it directly. Then go to various parallel universes through quantum space to collect infinite gems. Entering the quantum space requires cooperation with Ant-Man. Which is not a bad thing for the old Ant-Man. After all, his wife is still trapped there. And he has always wanted to rescue her. Tony cannot be allowed to negotiate with the old Ant-Man. Because the old Ant-Man has always believed that the Stark family wants to steal his technology and has a strong prejudice against the Stark family. With Tony's temper, he and old Ant-Man could start a fight on the spot after just a few words. Therefore, this job has to be left to Steve. After all, he is still the commander of the Avengers. And this operation is strictly a righteous move to protect the world. It is Captain America's job to be responsible for negotiating between all parties. Thinking of this, David realized one thing. His original plan was to go to the parallel universe and snatch the soul gem from Thanos. The other gems didn't matter. But thinking about it carefully, it seems that other gems can be obtained from other parallel universes. There is no need for him to go all over the universe to get the infinity gems of this world. He even thought of the best period of the infinity stones to collect in an instant. And there were no consequences. The moment Thanos snapped his fingers and arrived at the retirement planet, he directly killed Thanos in a sneak attack. And all six stones were collected at once. Isn't it beautiful to have it? Otherwise, he would have to go to Asgard to get the Cosmic Cube. Go to Xander to get the Cosmic Spirit Ball. And go to the Land of Nothingness to find the Collector for Ether Particles. He has no friendship with Xander's Nova Corps. And it might lead to misunderstandings. The Collector in the Land of Nothingness is not easy to mess with either. Thanos can get the Ether Particles from the Collector. And there may be some conspiracy behind it. In this case, he won't ruin the plans of some powerful people and be resented. Thinking about it this way. It seems even more inappropriate to take the initiative to deliver it to your door. Decisively abandon the original plan and adopt a new plan. Simple, direct and efficient. David only needed to tell Steve the plan. And then he just had to wait for Tony and Hank Pym to make all the preparations. In order to prevent himself from forgetting. David immediately went to the Marvel Universe to find Steve and explained his new arrangement. After listening to David's plan, Steve was quite speechless. Was he using the time stone as a cheating device? If we do this, the timeline will be fragmented. Right? However, Steve believed that the timeline he was in should have been turned into rubbish long ago. So he did not express any objection and simply agreed. Anyway, I can no longer work as the Supreme Mage. Once Strange has grown up, I can smoothly take over. If he's lucky, he won't even have to worry about Dormammu's invasion. And he will naturally have Stephen Strange, the greatest and most outstanding Mage Supreme, to deal with it. Speaking of which, I heard from Thor that the last time you went to Clark's world, you claimed to be a member of the Avengers of the Multiverse? Are you planning to develop the Avengers into other worlds? That was in Clark's universe. And here I am the representative of the Justice League of the Multiverse to Earth in this universe. David gave Steve a speechless look. What's going on if others don't know, and you don't know? I'm just wearing a vest to fool those politicians. But the point of Steve raising this topic was not to complain but that David's approach gave him an inspiration. He is about to step down as the Supreme Mage, but he still shoulders the responsibilities of being the commander of the Avengers and one of the leaders of Hydra. Leaving aside the Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D. has not collapsed today, and the Avengers are living a relatively healthy life. Tony, who is the most capable of causing trouble, is kept busy by David's various scientific research work and has no time to cause trouble. Therefore, the people of this world all admire and praise the Avengers without much dissatisfaction. And because S.H.I.E.L.D. has not collapsed, the Avengers are still an official team, and there are no politicians to trouble them. But Steve knows that this situation cannot last long. As time goes by, many people will naturally jump out. These people have different purposes. But they will all cause trouble to the Avengers. What if we add another layer of Halo to the Avengers? Just like David did, choose a high-level civilization in the universe and affiliate the Avengers to a higher level civilization so that politicians on Earth will not dare to provoke at will. Like Asgard? No matter what the Earth's officials think. In the eyes of advanced civilizations in the universe, the Earth is an uncivilized aboriginal protected by Asgard. In fact, Steve felt that it would be interesting to be able to cleanse the Hydra men who followed him and transform into the Justice League. 
The idea is good. But how do you plan to make Asgard and the Justice League appear reasonably? Running to Clark's side can make the Avengers appear because it happened to be the time when the Kryptonians invaded the Earth. Although General Zod did not cause much damage to the Earth due to his own interference. The powerful Kryptonians clearly saw that these people wanted to occupy the Earth. And there was no resistance at all based on the combat effectiveness of the Earth's army. Ability. The Marvel Universe is in more trouble. Because Tony did not tinker with Ultron. And Hydra was not exposed. Making the entire world relatively peaceful. And nothing major happened recently. Steve thought about it, and finally decided to sacrifice his colleagues. It seems that other smugglers have to come out and sacrifice. David suddenly had a strange feeling that the Hydra captain in front of him was the real conspirator, and was about to overturn the entire world. Could this Steve he knew be a Hydra originally? You can decide these things yourself. After the matter was explained, David chatted with Tony for a while, and learned that Tony would go to Winter City in a few days, and was going to end the communication and return to Winter City. As soon as he stood up, Steve said that he still had something to do. So David had to sit back again. David filled up the already empty teacup, took a sip, and then put on a look of Speak if you need anything. S. Posture. Clint is thinking about retiring. Then, counting the time, Hawkeye has indeed been preparing to retire in the past few years, and has even made various preparations before retirement. But what does this have to do with David? As a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, Hawkeye's various benefits are not bad. His retirement should be arranged by Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right? Sure enough. The next sentence is the key. Natasha saw that her good friend was ready to retire. And she also had the idea of retiring. Oh. This time David understood that Natasha's situation was very special. And her desire to retire was not as simple as Hawkeye Clint Barton. Natasha is not very old and is at her peak as an agent. Is she retiring at this time? Can Fury agree? Thinking deeply, with Natasha's background, even if Fury agrees, there will be a lot of people who will not agree. So, Natasha found Steve here? Or maybe Black Widow has been eyeing Winter City for a long time? Just talking about this to yourself through Steve? Natasha retiring so early is a huge loss to the Avengers. Right. Actually, the current Avengers are a pure fighting team. Natasha here is more responsible for logistics, liaison and other work. In S.H.I.E.L.D., her role is to keep in touch with the Avengers. So she also does. It's boring. I see. David took another sip of tea and realized that Natasha's desire to retire was false and that leaving S.H.I.E.L.D. was her real intention. After the battle in New York, although I spent a lot of time with the Avengers, the intimacy between them was still incomparable to that in the original plot. The Black Widow in this world is only familiar with Hawkeye. Captain America has been staying at Kama Taj for a long time. In his free time, he also goes to Hydra to check on his subordinates' work, and only occasionally visits Avengers Tower. There is no original Insight Project incident, and the relationship with Black Widow is just an ordinary comrade in arms. Tony Stark runs to alien planets every day and is basically nowhere to be seen. Even if he meets this agent and a great inventor, there is still a lack of topics to talk about. Thor, the god of thunder, is addicted to Jane's gentle hometown. He stays with Jane Foster when he stays on Earth, and can only see her when he is on a mission. There is only one Bruce Banner left. Dr. Banner is the second person Natasha knows well after Hawkeye. She also learned from Banner that he wanted to move to Winter City, but Tony used various methods to the research work was delayed. It was at that time that Natasha had the idea that going to Winter City to live an ordinary life seemed like a good choice. The idea started to grow as Clint prepared to retire and is now starting to take shape. You know that I am adjusting and strengthening the intelligence department. Right? David thought for a few seconds and decided to explain it clearly to Steve to avoid misunderstandings in the future. Natasha, an excellent intelligence officer, really went to the cold winter. There is a high probability that I will let her join the intelligence department. No matter what. It's her choice. Steve believed that as long as David did not force Natasha to do something she didn't want to do, then Black Widow's future could not be worse than staying in this world. From what Steve knew about David, the Duke of Winter was not that kind of person. Make an appointment in Natasha, and I will talk face to face. Chapter 386 Packing Up the Avengers Black Widow wants to defect to Winter City, which is an unexpected gain. Although the other party wants to live an ordinary life in Winter City, can Natasha really tolerate that kind of ordinary life? She hasn't reached the age where she can't stand still. After a period of rest, even if David doesn't go to her, she will run to David to get more exciting tasks. 
By then, Winter City's intelligence department will include Ethan Hunt, the Van Cleese and their daughter, and the Black Widow Natasha Romanoff, plus the Little Brains and Confusion. There will be defense facilities that these people cannot penetrate, and they cannot steal. Did you get the information? Thinking of this, David suddenly felt very sorry. It would be great if someone from Macross came to Winter City. Although he and RC relied on the data parameters they memorized to set the flying vehicle mode as the VF fighter in Macross. But after all, it is simulated and copied based on parameter data and using similar technology. And it is not the original version. In addition, many technologies in the Macross world are very advanced. If we can obtain the original technology, it will undoubtedly enrich the technical reserves of Winter City. Of course, the premise is that the timeline is relatively late. If Lin Ming Mei or Ichijo Wei comes, it won't have much effect. In addition to Macross, David is also interested in the technology in Space Knight, which can directly absorb antimatter, store it, and launch it at will. It is very powerful in any world. The construction of the Eastern Seaport City is very fast. The bulldozer, digger member, responsible for the project has completed the infrastructure construction of the new city. He asked your lord, do you want him to continue to be responsible for building the city or start building the road to the Snowfield Forts Highway? Build the road first. After the highway is built, Winter City in the far west of the Northern Plains will be connected to the port city in the east on land. Because it was a leapfrog development, David did not consider building a railway system on the Northern Plains. And transportation was dominated by cars and airplanes. Has the name of this port city been decided yet? What do you think of Port Eva? It's not good. It doesn't sound good at all. Although he said so, his face was full of smiles. But Eva won't let her thoughts affect her work. Let's choose another name. How about Port Sophia? What? Who called me? Sophia walked out of the side lounge door and rubbed her eyes with her hands, then stretched herself greatly. By the time she figured out the situation, it was already ten minutes later. Name the new city? Sophia sat there obediently, letting Belfast help tidy up her messy hair, and seriously thinking about what name she should give her new city. How about calling it Port Thailand? David thought of the name when he saw Sophia. It is not appropriate to call the Port of Sophia directly, but there is no problem in the Port of Tehran, because for now, this is still the first port city of the Kingdom of Thailand, so there is no problem with calling it this name. As for after autumn, there is no need to change it to Winter Harbor. Just continue to use it like the Tehran Knights. Is there anything else? It's almost the time you and Steve agreed. Eva has been paying attention to the time. David made an appointment with Steve today to interview Black Widow Natasha in Glamorgan Castle in Winter City. Seeing that it was almost time, David walked directly to the reception room. What was a little surprising was that not only Natasha Romanoff appeared in the reception room, but also Hawkeye Clint Barton. Clint is also planning to come to Winter City? I think this is a good choice. Clint greeted David, and he followed him out of concern for his old comrades. As for himself, he has already arranged everything and will not change it unless necessary. However, he is not opposed to buying a vacation house in Winter City. It is also a good choice to come here for vacation and relaxation when he is free. Winter City is close to the forest and is a suitable place for hunting. There are more and more archery masters in Winter City. If Clint's hands are itchy, he can find someone to compete with although he did not understand mysterious powers such as holy light and arcane magic. He felt that he was not afraid of any opponent as long as he was talking about archery. David and Natasha also exchanged greetings. Neither Natasha nor Clint were particularly familiar with David. So in the beginning the conversation relied entirely on Steve's constant provocation of topics. Fortunately, Natasha is an elite agent herself. And socializing with people is something she is good at. So there is no chance of a cold moment. After a warm-up period, they seem to be quite familiar with each other. At this time, David got to the point at the right time. I heard that Natasha is planning to change her environment. I do have this idea, but I just don't have the right choice. What do you think of Winter City? David said clearly, without mentioning that Winter City welcomed you to settle here, and directly made it clear that he admired her professional abilities. The intelligence department of Winter City still has it as immature and requires senior professionals to take charge. Just sitting here? If you have any special ideas personally, I won't object. In a few sentences, David had made his request clear. He wanted Natasha to join the Winter City Intelligence Department as a high-level management position and not be limited to clerical work. As for remuneration and benefits, he didn't mention anything about it. 
it wasn't that David turned into an unscrupulous boss and couldn't even bear to eat the cake, but that everyone present was considered his own people. There was no need to talk about those things. David would never treat them badly. Sounds good. Natasha made a decision immediately without thinking at all. I may need some time to deal with my personal affairs before officially taking office. Even after you officially take office, it will not delay you from dealing with those things. David did not object to these subordinates recruited from other worlds frequently traveling to and from his own world. As long as they can complete the tasks they assigned, they can do anything at other times. Even you don't have to quit S.H.I.E.L.D. If things develop according to the plan Steve mentioned earlier, S.H.I.E.L.D. itself will not exist for long. Once Hydra is revealed, S.H.I.E.L.D. will definitely die. As for how Captain America, the smuggler, will escape and clear his name, it depends on how he operates it. If it doesn't work, just leave the Earth? Whether it is other planets in the Marvel Universe or here in Winter City, they can provide Steve with a place to stand. Speaking of which, Steve didn't send Natasha to Winter City in advance because he saw that Natasha's future was not good after his plan was completed. Right? Come to think of it, a former Soviet agent who later joined S.H.I.E.L.D. was revealed to be Hydra. Even if Natasha has the aura of an Avenger, she will still be targeted by many people. She is not like Tony Stark, who is a rich man with technology and weapons group, nor is she like Thor, who is the prince of a higher civilization, nor is she like Steve, who now has huge power hidden in the dark. Natasha is just an ordinary female agent, and she will definitely not be able to live a quiet life by then. Glancing at Steve, the current Supreme Mage didn't know who he learned from. He had a confused expression on his face, and sat there smiling without saying a word. From this point of view, Steve can be regarded as a competent leader of the Avengers. At least he has arranged a good escape route for his comrades. Welcome to Winter City. Not the Winter Kingdom? Not yet. Almost at the same time that David used the communicator to summon Eva, the door to the reception room was pushed open, and Eva walked directly in with something in her hand and placed it in front of Natasha. This is Basic Process Personal Information Registration Form Used to make identity documents A list of houses where Natasha can choose the house of her choice as her residence. If you are not satisfied, you can also choose an address yourself. Put forward your own opinions. And then the construction team of Winter City will be responsible for the construction. A multifunctional tool in the shape of a ring. Oh, this is very convenient. After Natasha knew the specific effects of the multifunctional tool, she began to complain about Tony Stark. Why don't you make such a convenient prop for us Avengers? It involves some of Winter City's unique technologies. This kind of multifunctional tool with storage space certainly cannot be taken out casually. But in the future, the civilian version will be sold normally in the Marvel Universe after some of Winter City's unique technologies are removed. This thing will no longer be available in the Marvel Universe. Even if it is not a rare thing, it can make some money on the Earth. After watching Natasha figure out how to use the multifunction tool and fill out the personal information registration form, David also signed and sealed the appointment letter. From this moment on, Natasha officially became an instructor of the Winter Intelligence Department. Her main job at present is to train newcomers with Ethan. In the future, whether she will continue to focus on internal affairs or work in the field depends on her personal thoughts. Seeing that Natasha's future has been determined, Clint was also very happy and joked directly. The treatment is so good. I am tempted. How about I also work part-time? Is there a shortage of archery instructors in Winter City? Lack. Winter City is really short of archery instructors. If Hawkeye had this idea, David would have Eva put various documents in front of Clint within a minute. Well, I'll go back and discuss it with my wife. Instead of dealing with David, Clint was indeed tempted. It's just an instructor. There's no risk. You can make some extra money in Winter City. And you can bring your wife and kids over for vacation from time to time. Considering that there are so many magical things in Winter City, even if you can't learn them yourself, maybe your children can learn them? He doesn't want his children to become superheroes, but to live on an increasingly strange and strange earth, learn more skills, and have more ways to deal with troubles in the future. If they can't handle it, many will run away. Place. Looking at Clint who obviously wanted to agree, David realized that he had packed up the Avengers without any special operation. Chapter 387 What Embarrassing Newcomer Captain America Steve was one of the first people to come to Winter City. He and Winter City have already established an inseparable connection. Later, Iron Man Tony Stark also came to Winter City and became the chief consultant of Winter City. He also had his own research laboratory and a large number of production equipment in Winter City. 
Currently, he is also preparing to build several factories in the industrial zone. Stark has become one of the most important members of Winter City. He also likes this place very much and is even happier than he was on Earth. Although Bruce Banner has no direct contact with David, Banner has actually been indirectly bound to Winter City. Because Tony Stark would discuss many projects with Bruce Banner, Bruce Banner had actually been helping Winter City without knowing it. Of course, David and Tony are not bullying honest people. Banner can come to Winter City at any time to receive his due reward. Not long ago, he had a cordial and friendly interaction with Thor. And David also helped Odin heal his health. The relationship between Winter City and Asgard was instantly strengthened. And the two sides are now very close allies. Odin not long ago asked Thor to convey his gratitude and invited David to visit Asgard when he was free. Plus Black Widow Natasha Romanoff, who has officially joined the Winter Intelligence Department. And Hawkeye Clint Barton, who is extremely excited and will most likely come to Winter City to serve as an archery instructor in the near future. He has already killed all the members of the first generation of Avengers. As for the second batch, the Scarlet which is studying the Holy Light in the Cathedral of the Holy Light, and her progress is astonishingly fast. Moreover, Wanda Maximoff is not only fast in learning the Holy Light, but also absorbs the arcane knowledge mastered by Jaina and Ronan very quickly. In Jaina's words, this child is simply a born mage. Learning the Holy Light is a waste of talent. She should learn more advanced and mysterious magic knowledge and become a great great magician. One of War Machine and Falcon is a good friend of Iron Man. And the other is Captain America's most loyal follower. It is not difficult for David to recruit these two. Except for Vision, who was not born due to major changes in the plot. And Ant-Man, who has not yet entered the Avengers circle. The Avengers are about to become a team that belongs to Winter City. I wonder what Nick Fury's expression would be like if he knew about this situation. The super team that was painstakingly built was inexplicably picked off by others. The King of Agents would definitely use a passionate speech with a lot of emotion to cordially greet David's ancestors. David and Steve took Natasha and Clint to visit the newly selected house. And then took the two around the city. People came to join him sincerely. So it was normal for David to show a little more attention. Winter City has changed a lot. The last time I came here, Winter City could only be considered to have just begun to take shape. Although several main roads had been repaired. The buildings were sparse. No matter where you stood in the city, you could see large tracts of open space. Those with good eyesight can see the large farmland in the agricultural area south of the city from the north of the city. But that won't happen now. The densely packed houses around you cover your sight well. No matter which direction you look, your line of sight will be blocked by the houses. There are many pedestrians coming and going on the streets. Which is completely different from the sparse and sparse feeling of being in a ghost town at night. I heard that you have started to develop the entire northern plains? Steve was also very curious about the surrounding scene. He now spends most of his time in the Marvel Universe and has not visited Winter City for a long time. Taking this opportunity, he could just take a look at the changes in Winter City. Yes, the eastern seaport city has completed the construction of infrastructure and named it Thailand Port. It is the first seaport city in the Kingdom of Thailand. It will take some time to completely complete all the construction work. From construction of the highway from Winter City to Snowfield Castle and then to Tehran Port has also begun. And this highway will be completed soon. After the completion of this highway across the northern plains, it will initially cover the entire northern plains. The next step is to continuously develop those wastelands that have not yet been utilized. As for whether to reclaim farmland or build factories, it depends on the specific needs at the time. Your territory is getting bigger and bigger, and it's developing better and better. Steve looked at the various pedestrians on the street. He couldn't see happiness on everyone's face, but he could see it from from the looks and clothes of these people. It can be seen that these people have a good life. And after looking around, there were no ragged homeless people or beggars in Winter City. Natasha and Clint also discovered this. And they were a little suspicious. Did the Duke of Winter do something secretly? For example, there were intelligence agents, secret agents, etc. secretly expelling those homeless people in advance? After all, it is the Lord who personally shows people around. So it is not surprising to do some superficial work. Just as they were speculating, David seemed to have read through their thoughts and directly revealed the mystery. Winter City does not support idlers. My place is not Lighthouse America. There are not so many troublesome taxes and expenses that can make the middle class bankrupt in an instant. The entire Winter City provides various conveniences for civilians. There is no reason why they cannot guarantee their own basic life. 
Anyone who insists on being a homeless man despite so many discounts is either a pure lazy man or a gangster or spy with evil intentions. No matter what it is, David has no reason to get used to it. Therefore, the reorganized patrol department of Winter City has a special task to arrest such tramps. That's right. Not deportation but arrest. The captured homeless people will receive the friendly education from Winter City so that the lazy people can learn to work hard to get rich and the gangsters can understand what it means to be a good person. If they don't want to be human, then Winter City does not recommend continuing the advanced course so that they can't be human. Thankfully, whether they are natives of Bratia or people from other worlds, there are always very few such people. After this order is carried out, only a few spies have learned the last lesson. Ordinary lazy people are quickly taught to cry bitterly and vow to change themselves. People like gangsters and gangsters, after being forced to work for a period of time, also said that they would become good people honestly. These guys are actually easy to deal with, especially in this world where the words of the Lord are the highest law. So, the security in Winter City is very good? It's okay so far. At most, there are some civil disputes and no serious criminal cases. David can't guarantee that it will always be this good. Public security is now easy to manage. Most of the residents of Winter City are new to the city. At this time, most of them, the idea of people is to ensure basic life. Winter City was able to provide this condition. And most people's demands were met. So no major conflicts occurred. When Winter City reaches a certain stage of development, the population continues to grow. And the needs of more and more people cannot be met. A big contradiction will arise. However, it will take a long time to develop to that stage. And David does not have to worry about problems that may occur decades later. If you consider that David also dreams of extending Winter City's development tentacles to other worlds and space, perhaps Winter City can ensure that it will be in a state of rapid development for a long time. In that case, the huge internal conflicts can be transferred out, and David will be tired of being the king, and no big conflicts will break out until the day he abdicates. After chatting for a while about the security and law of Winter City, several people came to the house Natasha had chosen. This is an independent house located north of Glamorgan Castle. Compared to the south of Winter City, the houses on the north side are relatively loose and the distance between the houses is wider. Each house is large enough. Front yard and backyard. Coupled with the winter forest not far away, the environment and air in this area are very good. Relatively speaking, the price of such a house is higher. So it is not the first choice for ordinary people. This house is really nice. If I serve as an instructor, can I also get a house like this? Clint looked around. The environment here is beautiful, and the air is fresh. Although it is colder in winter, it is still a different style. Shoveling snow, it was also a good activity. He was thinking about whether to choose a house near Natasha's new home. Several of the houses around here are new and unoccupied. So you can pick one up now if you want. Really? Then I'm welcome. David made a gesture of please and after Natasha had seen her new home and figured out how to decorate the house. Everyone began to return. Next, she has plenty of time to slowly visit every corner of Winter City, and there is no need to rush. What's more, the current Winter City is no longer a small town that can be visited in a short time. Next, she will keep going back and forth between the two worlds, handling personal matters in the Marvel world while buying some daily necessities she needs. Then, when she waits for the right time, she can completely abandon the past and start a new life in Winter City. Really looking forward to it. Clint, like Natasha, was also looking forward to it. But he found that a shadow seemed to appear in front of him. And soon the shadow turned into a person and fell to the ground neatly. This person looks very embarrassed. He is covered with an old white robe. His exposed hands and back are so thin that there is almost no flesh at all. Even if you can't see this person's face, Everyone can tell the state of this person at this time. How bad. David and Steve were stunned for half a second. They both saw the way this man appeared. It was obvious that he was a newcomer. However, it is rare to see such a miserable newcomer. Chapter 388 Kara and Alt The only one who could compare with the newcomer was Hood, who was sunk by the Bismarck and hit by Norrington and his men. Even the remaining Eva and Clarice, who were being hunted just fell down and were not hurt at all. Is she okay? There were four people present, except David, a supreme mage, and two elite agents. Everyone had good eyesight and knowledge, and they could tell the gender of this newcomer immediately. She's doing well and, I should say, better than ever. After taking a few glances, 
David knew who the person in front of him was. Especially since there was plenty of sunshine in Winter City today. The energy in this girl lying on the ground basking in the sun was growing at an alarming rate. With the holy light released by Steve, the girl who fell to the ground has regained consciousness. And her body is also recovering at a speed visible to the naked eye. Steve, your healing skills are getting better and better. This is not my credit. Steve just released the most basic holy light for treatment. The recovery speed of the other party's body was far beyond his expectation. From the state of the other party's body being in the sun, the energy in the body continued to increase. Steve, my husband, immediately guessed the correct answer. Kryptonian? Steve was not asking the girl opposite, but David next to him. But his question aroused the vigilance of the girl opposite. She completely ignored the comfortable feeling of being soaked in warm water just now and looked at the people opposite with a wary look. Who are you? Then she also noticed the changes in the surrounding environment, looked at both sides with a question mark on her face, and then carefully turned around to observe the surrounding environment. Where is this? This is Winter City. David showed his hands to show that he meant no harm. I am David. And these are Steve, Clint, and Natasha. He quickly introduced the situation in the simplest and most straightforward language. David was already very skilled at doing this kind of thing. Then he saw the familiar reaction again. The person listening to the introduction looked confused. Generally speaking, the next reaction is disbelief and doubt. Most of the time, David has to wait for the other person to try it for himself a few times and toss back and forth between the two worlds for a few times before he really believes what he says. Is this the basic process of Winter City? Natasha and Clint watched the whole process. This was the first time for both of them to see such a situation. After all, the two of them did not live in Winter City before and had no chance to see the sudden appearance of aliens. They had always been led here by Steve when they came to Winter City. That's right. Steve thought of himself back then. At that time, he didn't believe David's words either. And he accepted this magical thing only after trying it himself. It's such a pity that I wasn't there to witness it. The look of disbelief on your face must have been interesting. If you live in Winter City for a long time, you will often see similar expressions. Natasha believes Steve's words, and she would definitely see similar scenes many times in the future. No, his new boss, Duke David Glamorgan, was still explaining the current situation to the girl who was suspected of being a Kryptonian, when another shadow suddenly appeared next to him. Oh, will there be multiple visitors from other worlds appearing at the same time? Yes, I came to Winter City with Sharon and Peggy. Steve just wanted to explain the current situation, but it caused another problem. Peggy? Sharon? Natasha glanced at Steve beside her. It seems that I will have a lot of fun in Winter City next. Steve has not revealed too much information about his personal life to his fellow Avengers. But as Natasha comes to Winter City, his private affairs will be known to these people. So, whatever. Stare at the shadow that appears again to see who appears this time. While David had the same idea as Steve, he was still introducing the Kryptonian in front of him. This is how you appear just now. Watching the phantom that appeared out of thin air gradually turn into a real person. The disheveled short-haired woman finally believed what the other person said. She had inexplicably arrived in another world. This place called Winter City. At the same time, she can travel back and forth between here and her original world as she pleases. Thinking of the world she was in, she had no idea of going back. She carefully looked at the handsome young man in front of her. There was a wave of comfort in his body, which made her want to get close. This feeling made her feel inexplicable. She had never seen this person before. Kara Zor-El. Unconsciously saying her name, Kara frowned and took a few steps to the side to put some distance between herself and the new person. The experiences she had experienced over the years made her feel wary. Remembering the words Kryptonian she had just heard from the man not far away. If this was another world, why would that man know about Kryptonians? The slightly raised trust immediately fell back, and Kara still stared at the surroundings warily. She suspected that everything in front of her was actually some kind of new experiment. David looked at the vigilant Kara. Although he guessed the other party's identity, he did not rush to establish a relationship with the other party and carry Kalil out. After Kara took the initiative to say his name, he said, Welcome to Winter City. Kara. Then he turned his attention to another newcomer. After a while, the newcomer had shown his true appearance. David looked at the man in front of him with long blue hair and a face as delicate and beautiful as a princess. The other party was also looking at the surrounding environment curiously and slightly different from the others. The newcomer also raised his head and looked at the sky seriously. 
Hello. I'm David. This is Winter City. It was a fixed process and introduction again. And the newcomer on the opposite side also looked in disbelief. And his reaction was much greater than Carla's reaction. After hearing David mention that he could travel between the two worlds by himself, he immediately turned around and started testing. Kara just watched the new person turn into a shadow and disappear. She watched the whole process very carefully and couldn't understand how it was done. Just when she wanted to take a closer look, a lot of noise suddenly sounded in her ears. Those sounds echoed in her mind, and her head seemed to explode under the bombardment of countless noises. At this time, a voice came into her ears, suppressing all sounds, allowing her to hear it very clearly. Focus! Ignore the noise! And focus on what you need to focus on! Kara was very talented and quickly got the hang of it. The noise that almost made her head explode gradually disappeared. But she still felt a little uncomfortable in her eyes. After closing her eyes and relaxing for a long time, Kara finally returned to normal. At this time, she felt better than ever. And even her breathing became much stronger. She raised her head and looked at the sky. The sun here gave her great strength. She gradually discovered that not only that, she seemed to gain strength from the man named David. Illusion? Just as she was thinking this, the man with long blue hair who had left earlier appeared again. The shock on that man's face did not fade away, but instead made him even more shocked because all of this was true. Oh, this scene is really interesting. Natasha and Clint, who continued to watch the excitement, suddenly understood why Steve and Tony both like Winter City. Not only because there are magic, elves, etc. in Winter City, but also because this city is full of unknowns. And at the same time, it is the best place for special people like them. After David comforted Kara, he looked at the blue-haired man who appeared again. After confirming that his experience was real, the man took the initiative to walk up to David. Hello. I am Alt Sautom. Welcome to Winter City. Do I need to report this? Go through some procedures or something? Art Sautom learned from the other party's reaction that her situation should be very common here. Which means that in this place called Winter City, there are many people like her just like people from other worlds. So, does he need to meet with the city manager? Or dealing with officials like customs? Although this seemed to be a very backward city, he never thought of challenging the local order. You need to fill out a form and apply for ID. Who do I need to contact to handle it? Just come with me. David looked back at the people watching the excitement, and then waved to Kara on the side. You can come with me too. It was only then that Art Sato noticed Kara standing not far away. She was wearing a shabby robe and standing there barefoot. Considering the temperature at this time, she seemed to be in a bad situation. His first reaction was homeless? It was only then that he realized that the other person was an alien who had just arrived in this place. Just like himself. As a result, as soon as he took a look, he was glared at by the other party with a sharp look. Sautom Art immediately withdrew his gaze, and then looked around curiously. Here it is! Fort Glamorgan. David led the two of them into the living room and contacted Eva through the communicator, asking her to send two registration forms, a Brunian common language learning device, and some clothes. Please wait a moment. Wait a moment. Because David did not avoid the two of them when using the communicator. Both Art Sautom and Kara saw the holographic image in David's hand. The two realized that this seemingly backward town was not as backward as they thought. David looked at the two newcomers and was thinking about another question. Such a coincidence? The new person happens to be highly compatible with my ideas? Is this a new feature after the upgrade? Chapter 389 All Brings a Galaxy Eva quickly delivered what David asked for. He did not rush for the two of them to fill out the forms, but taught them how to use the Brainian Common Language Learning Device. Kara is a Kryptonian, and her body has returned to a healthy state after basking in the sun for a while. The yellow sun also inspired her superpowers. Kara, who also has a super brain, completed the Brenia Universal in a short time after wearing it. Language learning. The learning speed of this device depends on the user's condition. Generally speaking, people with high IQ and strong mental strength can complete the learning in a short time, while ordinary people will need to spend a few more days if they want to apply it in practice. It will still take more time. More time. For example, Art Sautong couldn't digest a new language in such a short period of time. At this time, he realized that the embarrassed-looking woman sitting next to him had qualities far beyond ordinary people. He could also know from the previous conversation that this woman named Kara was not from Earth, but a race called Kryptonians. After Kara quickly learned the common language of Brenia, 
She continued to look at the learning device in front of her curiously. From this thing, it can be known that the technological level of this winter city is not low. The group of people who stopped conducting experiments. The wariness in her heart dissipated a little. And Kara asked David directly, Why do you know about Kryptonians? Because there are Kryptonians living in Winter City. David knew that it was time to summon Clark. But this guy was not in Winter City now. So he had to send a message. Unreceived messages will be stored in the server. And ask him to come over after receiving the message. There are Kryptonians here? Kara was shocked by David's answer and stood up directly. If she hadn't reacted in time and controlled herself, a hole would have been knocked out of the ceiling of the living room. How is this possible? Kara had doubts about David's words. But she quickly realized that David had introduced her before that there were many people from other worlds in Winter City. Maybe there were others who came here before her. She has not yet considered the multiverse and parallel time and space. And thinks that the Kryptonians in Winter City are all compatriots from her own world but they just came here earlier than she did. David was not in a hurry to explain the specific situation. He raised his hand to reassure Kara not to get excited and continued to describe various situations to the two people in front of him. At the same time, this way of chatting was also used to understand the situation of the two people. Kara's situation is easy to explain. Her home planet Krypton exploded. And she boarded an escape ship to Earth like her cousin kal -El. It's just that after she arrived on Earth, her treatment was not very good. She was directly captured and subjected to various experiments. And she almost spent so many years in torture. So Kara doesn't have the slightest fondness for people on Earth. And she doesn't have a strong desire to return to her own world. If she goes back now, she will go back to the cage specially made for her. Maybe when her strength becomes stronger. She I will consider going back, because there are some things I need to give back. As for whether she should make those bastards pay something. It depends on what she thinks at that time. Because of Kara's description. Everyone present was a little embarrassed. Because except for David, everyone present including Natasha, Clint, Steve, and Eva were all from Earth. Even Artsatome is considered an Earthling. Even though he was born in an immigration ship and has never really set foot on the Earth. Anyway, in a slightly awkward atmosphere, Kara finished telling her story. Maybe it was to relieve the embarrassment. Or maybe Eva felt that Kara was really not good the way she was now. So after Kara finished speaking, she called Belfast to help Kara find a suitable set of clothes to change into. Kara went to change clothes. The atmosphere at the scene became a little more normal. And Art Sotom briefly introduced herself. In fact, his real name is Sotomrin. And he was born into a Kabuki family. He already performed on stage and became famous when he was very young. At the age of 15, he even became famous for playing Princess Sekuraheim. But as he grew older... Sotom no longer wanted to follow the established direction arranged for him by his family. He yearned more for the sky. Freedom and flying. As a result, Sotom ran away from home and changed her name to Alto, changing Aruto from Aruto to Alto. Determined to become an excellent fighter pilot. These contents were what David recalled. The Sotom art in front of him simply said his name, age, and the general situation of the world in which he lived. Currently, he is learning to fly fighter planes at Meishing Academy in the 25th Immigration Fleet, and occasionally finds odd jobs to earn some living expenses. As for his family situation, he didn't mention a word. However, these contents were enough to arouse strong interest in several people present. The young school student Art Satom is not a big deal. The key is the world he lives in. Immigration ships? Humans spread across almost the entire galaxy? Sounds amazing! Anyone who knows something about astronomy and here's Art Saitom's description, will know how powerful it is to allow humans to nearly colonize the entire galaxy. From this, it can be seen that the world where Art Saitom lives has a very high technological level, not to mention anything else. Just an immigrant fleet that allows humans to live normally in the universe. Just like living on a planet. Has an amazing technological content. Gravity technology is just the foundation among foundations. Creating a nearly perfect natural ecological environment on a spaceship is not as simple as digging a hole and filling it with some soil. Although Natasha and Clint were not scientists, they knew what an incredible achievement this was. I really want to see for myself what it's like. Actually, it's not good at all. It can't be compared with a real planet. The sky in the immigration ship group is all simulated. And even if it is realistic, it cannot compare with the real sky. Art has always wanted to fly freely in the real sky. After he came to Winter City, and confirmed that he could really travel through another world. He acted so cooperatively, which actually meant that he fell in love with the environment here. 
There is a real sky here. When you want to fly to your heart's content in the future, you can come here. As for what Natasha said about being curious about the immigrant fleet, he couldn't understand it at all. Having grown up in that narrow environment since he was a child, he doesn't miss the life there at all. After chatting for a while, Eva also filled out the personal information registration form of Satom Arte during these chats. Kara, who had changed her clothes, also came back at this time. Neither of the two people's forms were taken away, but were still placed in front of them. David then introduced the situation in Winter City to the two of them in more detail. Winter City is located on the northern plains of Brendia Continent. It is currently a principality subordinate to the Kingdom of Tyran, and its ruler is Duke David Glamorgan. Art Sautome and Kara were stunned at the same time. They remembered that the young man in front of them introduced themselves as David. Could it be that they had the same name? Yes. The person in front of you is Duke David Glamorgan, the ruler of the Principality of Winter. Eva spoke up at the right time, confirming their guesses. The castle you are currently in is Glamorgan Castle, which is the residence of the Duke. Without waiting for the two people to ask, David continued to introduce the situation in Winter City. For example, Winter City is currently peaceful internally, but it is not without enemies externally. Winter City is inhabited by different races from many worlds. In addition to the Kryptonians, there are Cybertronians who are completely different from humans. High elves from Azeroth, and the orcs who started working for Winter City not long ago. Winter City is in the development stage, so there are many jobs that can make money. If you too want to earn money in Winter City that can be used in this world, you can choose the job you like. Of course, as visitors from another world, the two have some privileges. For example, if they work directly for David Glamorgan, Duke of Winter, in addition to receiving a fixed salary, there will also be many additional benefits. Specific situations can be discussed individually. After the general introduction, David spread his hands and asked the two newcomers if they had any ideas about their future in Winter City. Can I look around at this? Sure. Alt didn't want to hastily decide who to work for. He was interested in the environment of this planet. If he could, he wouldn't even live here and just come here when he wanted to fly. David didn't expect a young man he had just met to immediately bow his head and bow to him after seeing him. After all, he didn't have a tiger body, and he didn't turn on the vibration mode. In addition, it was not so much Art Satom that he was thinking about at the beginning, but the world in which he lived. As long as Alt comes to Winter City and establishes a connection between Winter City and his world, David's goal has actually been achieved. Next, find an opportunity and send the right people to get the technical information you are interested in. David glanced at Natasha unconsciously. There was a ready-made spy here. He is not in a hurry. Now Natasha can't do anything in that world. She needs to receive some training in Winter City to improve her strength. And then change into high-end equipment before she is suitable to go to that world. Task? Just when Art was about to leave first and David wanted to ask Kara what her plans were. Clark texted back. Can you ask me for help? Clark! Come to the drawing room of Fort Glamorgan. Your cousin is here. My cousin? Clark was stunned for two seconds before he realized who David was talking about. Kara? Of course. Do you have other friends? Before he finished speaking, a strong wind blew by, and Clark was already standing beside him. Chapter 390 Kara brought a tights. Kara? Carl? The two Kryptonians faced each other and looked at each other. Everyone around them said nothing and watched the excitement quietly. Art, who originally wanted to leave, sat back in his original position and looked curiously at the man who suddenly appeared. How did he show up? Is it some special device? There seem to be many novel things here in Winter City. I wonder if there are any airplanes here. Alt was thinking about everything in his mind, and his eyes looked around curiously. Clark didn't pay attention to the eyes of the people around him. He just looked curiously at this cousin he had never seen before. If the person in front of him was really his cousin, she was his only blood relative living in the world. That, when Kara and Clark understood each other's situation, David emphasized his existence aloud, and then reminded Clark, This Kara comes from the parallel universe of your world. So although she is related to you by blood, but I'm not sure whether she's your cousin or not. I don't know if it's because of the Flash, but someone in the parallel world is not necessarily the same person as the original one. This is different from the situation on Steve's side. In Steve and Peggy's parallel world, Steve is still Steve, but because of different experiences, he may become the Hydra Destroyer or Captain America. Peggy is still the same Peggy, but she will become Captain Carter or Director Carter depending on her experience. Clark is facing a different situation now. 
the person in front of him is Kara, and his experience is basically consistent with it. But it is hard to say whether the Kara in front of him is the Kara from his world. At the very least, there is a huge difference between the Batman Bruce Wayne in Kara's world and the Bruce Wayne in Clark's world. After David briefly explained, Kara realized that the Clark in front of her was not from the same world as herself. The world the two of them live in are parallel universes, but they have a strange intersection with the help of Winter City, a special place. As for how David knew this, Clark could guess it. So he didn't ask. So amazing! Kara has completely let down her guard. No matter how complicated the situation is, the Kryptonian blood of Carl in front of her cannot be faked. Even a cousin from the parallel world is enough to make Kara, who has lost everything, happy. It's incredible! I thought so at the beginning! After Clark learned about Kara's experience, he understood why she had such a reaction. He comforted her softly and joked. But you will find out after living in Winter City for a long time. There are so many magical things happening here that this is nothing at the moment. I am looking forward. In just a few words, Kara has already made a decision. She wants to stay in Winter City. There are her relatives here. Even if they are from another world, there are other compatriots. Who knows who they will be? She was certainly more comfortable here than on Earth, which had left a bad impression on her. If I could, I really wanted to take it back right away and never go back. What? Clark thought it was the spaceship Kara was on. But Kara said it was just a piece of clothing. But after hearing that it was the only thing Kara had from Krypton, Clark immediately understood why Kara valued that dress so much. Let me get it back for you. Is it possible to do such a thing? Kara looked at Clark in surprise, then looked at David and a few others. She thought she could only get her clothes back after she became stronger. Can you also take people to your own world? Let your cousin Carl go over there to help. Of course. Do you want to help? Before David could finish speaking, he was stopped by Clark. It's just a very simple matter. So there's no need to trouble the Duke to take action. I can just go there alone. After speaking, he turned around and winked at Kara and walked outside of Fort Glamorgan with a cousin he had just met. Until he walked out of the gate of Fort Glamorgan, David found that Clark seemed to be reminding him of something. But because due to the distance and the biological force field, David heard nothing. Withdrawing his gaze, David looked at Art. Art saw Tom finished watching the excitement and was ready to leave. He originally wanted to take a walk around Winter City. But he just ignored the climate of Winter City. Compared to the 25th Immigration Ship Group, the climate in Winter City was too cold. He had to go back and buy some warm clothes before he could consider wandering around in Winter City. Also, it would take him some time to learn Brain in common. And until then, he was in no hurry to wander around. After agreeing to come over in a few days to pick up his identity document, Art Sautom also said goodbye to David, left Fort Glamorgan, and trotted back to his own world. It's time for me to go back. After watching the excitement, Clint was ready to leave after seeing the two newcomers leaving. Although the Kryptonian named Kara will come back, he is not prepared to wait here. With this free time, he might as well go back early and discuss with his wife about coming to Winter City to work part-time as an archery instructor. Natasha also has to go back, and she still has a lot of finishing work to do. By the way, this is for you. David took two golden apples from his storage items and handed them to Natasha and Clint respectively. Golden apple? Natasha thought it was a decoration at first, given to her as a new employee as a souvenir or something. But when she got it, she found that it felt wrong. It seemed to be an apple. Can it be eaten? It's a little bonus. Then I'm not welcome. Natasha heard that it was an employee benefit. So she happily took a bite. And then asked, What is the use of this thing? What is currently known includes improving physical conditions, such as making your skin more elastic, white, tender, hydrated, etc. Oh, this is really a good thing. Natasha swallowed the apple in a few bites. For a woman, these effects are even more tempting than doubling her combat power. Clint looked embarrassed. He didn't know if he should accept it. If you accept it, it means that you have to come to Winter City to report. Data didn't say anything to persuade him. But Natasha directly picked up the golden apple and put it into Clint's hand. What's the trouble? You will definitely come over anyway. After Natasha said this, Clint became rude. After saying goodbye to David with a smile, he took the golden apple and left with Natasha. You're not leaving? Natasha can now travel back and forth between the two worlds freely. She can just take Clint back with her. Steve was not ready to leave now. He felt that there would be fun to watch next. In addition, 
He also wanted to walk around Winter City more and see this brand new Winter City. I have been busy in the Marvel Universe for such a long time. So it doesn't matter if I take a day or two off. How is Wanda doing in Winterfell? Very good. She learns things very quickly. In addition to Holy Light spells, she also learns arcane knowledge with Jaina and Ronan. Because Wanda learned so quickly, David raised the question. Arcane spells seem to be easy to learn. He was thinking about asking Jaina to borrow some magic books and try to learn them. Maybe I can also work part-time as a mage? Or borrow some spell books from Karma Taj with Steve? Change the interesting spells yourself? And write a spell book with Holy Light as the core? Just call it the Book of Holy Light. Whether there is a fee or not is another matter. But it's not too much to grab the copyright first. Right? David suddenly felt that this matter was quite promising. And it would be quite boring if he didn't wait in Fort Glamorgan every day for various development plans to progress. You can't stay in your room all day long and indulge in gentleness without coming out. Right? David didn't think it was a big deal. He was just afraid that those few people wouldn't be able to bear it. After a brief chat, Clark came back with Kara. The two of them didn't leave for long in total. Which was about the same time it took them to go out for breakfast in the morning. In such a short period of time, Clark did a lot. Not only did he take Kara back to that world to retrieve the Kryptonian suit, but he also completely destroyed the cell where Kara was imprisoned and took Kara out of the Secret Research Institute. During the entire process, Clark did not kill anyone. However, a lesson is still inevitable. Anyone who attacks Clark and Kara and attempts to stop them will have their limbs broken by Clark. Kara, who got back the clothes that were most important to her and escaped from the cage, felt a lot more relaxed. Although she didn't understand why her cousin, whose pseudonym was Clark, repeatedly emphasized. David is a good person, but you should be cautious when contacting him, but still nodded and agreed. However, after returning to Fort Glamorgan again, Kara forgot about it and put on the Krypton tights she had just retrieved and ran to thank David. Clark felt that his reminder just now was in vain. His cousin in the parallel world didn't seem to realize the seriousness of the matter. Oh, here comes the interesting thing. Steve who was not too concerned about the excitement, directly took the snack platter on the table into his arms and watched the excitement with a smile. David looked up and down at Kara, who was wearing a Krypton suit in front of her. This tight-fitting suit perfectly displayed her excellent model-like figure. Really not bad. After briefly admiring it, David congratulated Carla for getting back her important belongings and truly being free. Now, even if she goes back to that world, she won't be trapped in a cage. As for the crisis that will occur in that world soon, David doubts that Kara in front of her has no idea of saving the Earth. Will that world be directly destroyed by Zod? Are you going to live in Winter City for a long time? Yes. I don't plan to go back, Kara said, and suddenly remembered. I may have to go back from time to time to look for news about Carl, but most of the time I will stay here. What is suitable for me here in Winter City? Job? Chapter 391 Snowflakes Are Falling there are many jobs to choose from in Winter City. And Kara doesn't have to rush to decide what job to do. Currently, she can live in Clark's home, help Clark look after the house, and take advantage of this time to get familiar with Winter City. The day after Kara and Art arrived in Winter City, Winter City finally received its first heavy snowfall of the year. I thought it wouldn't snow this year. David sat in his comfortable office chair, looking at the heavy snow falling like goose feathers outside the window. He put the Interesting little tricks. He borrowed from Gianna on the table and took a cup of hot tea. Took a few sips. Does it always snow so much here in Winter City? Holding a few books. Wanda, who had just asked David for some knowledge about the holy light, looked out the window curiously. It's not like she's never seen snow before. Her hometown, Sokovia, isn't a warm place either. You can see snow everywhere in winter. This kind of snow scene even reminds her of her hometown. However, the snow in front of me seemed to be too heavy, and it showed no sign of stopping. The northern plains are almost a land of snow in winter. In fact, the snow fell very late this year. In previous years, it would snow as soon as winter began, and the snow would remain there throughout the winter and not melt away until the following year. The melting of the snow means that the new year has truly arrived for Winter City. Farmers in Winter City will also start preparing for farming in the new year when the snow melts. However, with the development of Winter City. This situation may change, and some farmers seem to have begun to consider using greenhouses for cultivation. In this way, even in winter, 
the residents of Winter City can eat fresh vegetables and fruits. These fresh fruits and vegetables are no longer a privilege that only a few people can enjoy. David took another sip of tea and reminded Wanda when she was about to return to the Cathedral of the Holy Light. Remember to wear thick clothes. The winter in Winter City is not so friendly. I see. Wanda smiled and agreed. It felt good to be cared for. She also made new friends such as Jaina, Ronan, and Verisa in Winter City. She no longer wanted to return to Earth. After David reminded Wanda and watched her leave the office, he put the teacup in his hand on the table. Then he raised his hand and waved lightly. And a golden-edged portal appeared in front of him. As David stepped through after entering it, the portal closes and disappears. David, who passed through the portal, came to midair, suspended there, and waited for the figure below to approach. David? It's me! Kara, who was flying high at high speed, looked at David in front of her in surprise. If she saw it right, the flying method used by him was the same as hers. Could it be that the Duke of Glamorgan also has Kryptonian blood? But this is not the point. The point is why does the Duke appear here? Thinking of what her cousin had repeatedly told her, Kara regretted flying out wearing her own suit. She should have worn that down jacket. What are you? Has Clark explained to you the external situation in Winter City? I told you. Did I ever remind you not to fly too high? This. Kara suddenly understood why David suddenly appeared. Clark had indeed reminded herself not to fly too high. Especially not to fly out of this planet. Because there is a group of powerful beings watching this planet from outside. If they fly out rashly, they will be easily attacked. Kara didn't know the specific situation. But she wasn't ready to try it herself. So she didn't plan to fly too high. She just wanted to bask in the sun above the clouds. There was no way. It suddenly started snowing heavily. And she had no choice but to fly into the air if she wanted to bask in the sun. I just want to fly above the clouds. That's good. Currently, many people in Winter City have the ability to fly alone. But most people don't need his special instructions. Whether it is the Decepticons or the Kryptonians led by Zod. They are all soldiers who are willing to obey orders. And they will carry out the orders once they are given. In addition, only Superman Clark and Iron Man Tony Stark have the ability to fly out of the planet alone. Clark didn't have to worry. After Tony saw the fate of Pretender Number 1 with his own eyes, he wouldn't commit suicide again until he was confident enough. So David didn't have to worry about them. It was just that Carla's situation was uncertain. So David specifically stopped the other party and gave a key reminder. After talking about the business, David opened the portal again and returned to his office but did not continue chatting with Kara. Looking at David who had left, Carla scratched her hair and felt that her cousin might have thought too much. The Duke of Glamorgan seemed to have no idea about him. He turned around and continued flying high into the sky. After passing through the clouds and feeling the sunlight shining on his body, Kara stopped, comfortably suspended in the air and enjoying the sunbath. When David returned to the office, he picked up the magic book again and practiced small tricks such as clean. Dry and Mage's hand which were not magic at all according to the method introduced above. For him, the attraction of these little tricks is even greater than those forbidden spells that destroy the world. He found that it was very easy for him to learn these little tricks. And he could learn them with just a little practice. Even if the holy light, as a magic power, was not as malleable and versatile as arcane energy, it would not affect the effects of these tricks. Even if there are occasional constraints, he can quickly come up with solutions. David doesn't know that he is really talented? Or is it that you are standing high enough? Anyway, he felt that magic was really not difficult. He would ask Jaina to borrow a book that was a bit difficult to read next time. Just when David was happily learning various little magics. It snowed intermittently in Winter City, making the winter atmosphere more intense. Kara and Alt also gradually became familiar with the situation in Winter City. Compared to Kara, who settled directly in Winter City and had a cousin by his side, who could ask questions and answer questions at any time. Art could only explore on his own. After learning the common language of Brenia, Art would come over from time to time and practice his speaking skills by talking to vendors. Although his accent is a bit strange. It is not a big deal to the residents of Winter City. Because there are so many people in Winter City with strange accents that everyone is used to it. The vast majority of ordinary people would not worry about why these people's accents are so strange. After all, the residents of Winter City come from different places. And there are people who don't even know where they are from. So no one would be surprised by Art's accent or ask where he came from. Which made Art breathe a little sigh of relief. He was worried about that situation. 
because it would make him not know how to answer. After getting his own ID, Art wandered around Winter City more relaxedly. With a contact, he had forgotten his original idea. He just wanted to come here when he was flying. I began to want to know more about this city. Especially when I learned that Winter City has an air force and recruits talented young people to become fighter pilots all year round. The excited Art went directly to the Winter Military Camp to visit, wanting to inspect the aircraft in Winter City. As a result, he was very disappointed. The Air Force in Winter City was a little different from what he thought. There were not so many fighter jets here, because almost all of the fighter jets in the Winter Air Force were transformed from silicon-based life forms from Cybertron. Even most of the transports were transformed by these Cybertronians known as Transformers. Winter City's air operations are basically taken care of by the Cybertronians. Winter City recruits pilots, mainly to fly the few Quinjet fighters, actually small transport aircraft, and those helicopters. He sighed helplessly. His action was nothing. But it aroused the curiosity of the other person next to him. You look disappointed? Can you ask why? All turned his head and looked over. A tall woman happened to be standing next to him, looking at him with a smile. Hello. My name is R.C. Hello. I'm Alt Sautom. Although he didn't know why the other party was talking to him, he introduced himself politely. I just didn't see the plane I wanted to see here. Oh. R.C. looked at Art in front of her. He had an outstanding appearance. From his body shape and muscles, it could be seen that he had received training. But he was obviously not old. He was still a teenager. What do you want to see? Airplane? Fighter! When Art Sautom said this answer, his eyes were shining. It was obvious how strong his longing for fighter jets was. Unfortunately, there were no real fighter jets in Winter City. The Quinjet was simply not worth mentioning in his eyes. Considered a fighter. Actually, there are fighter jets here in Winter City. When R.C. heard the boy talking about fighter jets, she guessed the other person's situation. After accessing Art's information through the server, she understood why he was so obsessed with fighter jets. According to according to the registration information of Winter City, this young man is a fighter pilot in training and can be regarded as a reserve fighter pilot. Well, I'm not talking about the fighter plane transformed by Cybertronians, but the fighter plane controlled by the pilot. I know what kind of fighter you're referring to. Alt looked at the woman in front of him in surprise, feeling a little curious about this person's identity. At the same time, he was also a little strange in his heart. Since there are fighter jets, why don't we see any trace of them? There is a serious shortage of fighter pilots here in Winter City, so those fighter planes that need pilots are parked in the warehouse. R.C. waved and motioned for Art to follow her. Art wanted to ask the other person first who he was but his expectations for the fighter jets made him decide to shut up and watch the plane first. Chapter 392 The Mutants Who Began to Integrate into Winter City Not long after Art Sautom followed R.C., she was sure that the woman in front of her must have a high status in Winter City. The soldiers patrolling on guard would not stop her at all. Even when the two came to a huge machine, when they were in front of the hangar, the nearby soldiers took the initiative to help the two people open the hangar door, holding back the questions she wanted to ask. Art Sautom focused her attention on the gradually unfolding hangar. As the door opened and the lights turned on, several aircraft parked in the hangar came into his sight one after another. These are. The aircraft in front of me have different appearances. Some of them are somewhat similar to the aircraft I have seen in the history of aviation development. But they are also very different. In addition, he caught a glimpse of a few old-fashioned planes at the very end. And those planes were exactly the same as what he had seen in the book. This seemed to mean that these aircraft were products of the Earth Age and were considered antiques to him. He was a little worried. Weren't all the planes here old antiques? Fortunately, with R.C.'s introduction, he realized that several of the planes in front of him were newly built prototypes in Winter City. They were the idlers from the Winter Alchemy Workshop. Of course, mainly Tony Starr. Ku, the chief consultant of Winter City, tinkered with it in his spare time and also to test the technology. In addition to verifying the technology, this is also to ensure that when needed, a fighter aircraft design that meets current needs can be immediately produced and put into production in the shortest possible time. Therefore, although Winter City currently does not have a real air force, the accumulation of technology has never stopped. These aircraft all have the ability to enter and exit the atmosphere on their own and are equipped with the latest energy shields and space compression technology. It can be said that the outermost aircraft already have combat effectiveness comparable to that of the Decepticons. But whether they can be used to their full potential depends on it depends on the driver's ability. After listening to some parameters about the fighters, 
Art knew that these fighters have very strong combat effectiveness. Judging from the parameters RC said, the combat effectiveness of these fighters can be comparable to the legendary VF-25. But it also brings a very embarrassing question. He can't fly these planes because of the powerful maneuverability of these fighters. The pilots who fly these fighters must withstand very terrifying G-forces. The fighters in front of us do not have the newly developed miniaturized ISC system, inertial buffer, which stores the inertial vector in the fold space to reduce the pilot's burden, newly developed on the VF-25. In other words, it must be done by the pilot himself. It is basically impossible to withstand the terrifying G-force caused by high maneuverability. Art seriously doubted whether Winter City had any misunderstanding about the fighter pilot, or is it that the humans in Winter City are physically extremely strong? They don't need to develop a device like ISC at all? With such questions, Art went to visit the training of Winter City soldiers. Well, the answer is out. The humans in Winter City are indeed very strong. It is so naive for me to even dream of becoming a pilot in a place full of monsters. At the same time, Art began to be more curious about Winter City. He saw many magical abilities here especially when he heard from R.C. that he also had the opportunity to learn those abilities. And after learning them, people's qualities could become stronger. At that time, he suddenly understood the direction in which he should work hard. The young man named Art is visiting the winter military camp. Yes. David did not pay special attention to the young reserve pilot. But after R.C. looked up the information, she used the communication to get in touch with him, which made David aware of Art's movements. It seems that he really, I really like flying fighter planes glancing at the bald old man chatting with him. David was not surprised that the old man knew that Art was at the winter military camp. As the mutant with the most powerful brain, Charles Xavier can accurately locate everyone in Winter City without even having to look for them. After all, Winter City is so big, Charles doesn't even need to actively search. It's a completely passive skill, and he will pay attention to Art Sothom, because this is a newcomer who has just arrived in Winter City. And the situation of these mutants who have just arrived in Winter City is somewhat similar. The old professor was very curious. What kind of story could such an ordinary human boy write in Winter City? From the experience of Sautom Alt, we can also understand more clearly the man in front of us, Duke David Glamorgan. A powerful being who is definitely not as young and harmless as he appears on the surface. Looking at the past through his mental power, Charles Xavier always felt that he was looking directly at the light. And Charles, who had super mental power, did not see it as plainly as an ordinary person. He could sense the turbulent waves hidden under that warm, sacred light. It is precisely because he can perceive things that others cannot see that Charles is worried about the future of mutants. He hopes to know more about Duke David Glamorgan to prevent mutants from being led to a worse path by him. Superior. Judging from current observations, the Duke is still trustworthy. At least the Duke is consistent with his words and takes great care of mutants. Even though the mutants have been in Winter City for some time, they have been busy with their own things and have not provided much help to the development of Winter City. Even if the existence of mutants itself increases the population of Winter City and continues to attract human survivors from their world to Winter City, real careerists will not be satisfied with such a small benefit and will definitely want it. More. David did not behave like this. Especially not forcing mutants to join the army or become an armed force that only obeyed his orders even when a powerful Kryptonian like Kara came to Winter City not long ago. David, as the Lord, did not ask Kara to join the army, but allowed the powerful female Kryptonian to choose what she wanted to do. From this point alone, he won the favor of Charles. And Charles, who knew how to respect each other at a young age, was also willing to give enough reward to Duke David Glamorgan, who saved the survivors of their world. The old professor understood that by helping the Duke of Glamorgan, they were actually helping themselves. After learning that there were many enemies around Winter City, and that there were even more terrifying enemies outside the planet, the old professor came over specifically and expressed his desire to join the Winter Alchemy Workshop and contribute the knowledge he had accumulated over the years. In addition, he also implicitly stated that if there are any difficult combat tasks, the immortal Logan should be able to help a lot, Logan? The rescue operation in your world is over? It's almost over. Charles sighed. The Earth in his world was not completely devoid of humans. But the remaining human beings were not the same as them. I wonder if the sentry robot that has lost its target will turn around and lock its target on this group of people. Every time he thought about this, he was thinking, maybe it would be a better choice to eliminate this bad world line according to the original plan, as if his thoughts had been seen through. He had just come up with this idea when the Duke of Glamorgan across from him suddenly said, 
there will be a world line where the sentinel robot failed to succeed. If someone else said that, I would just take it as comfort. But Charles will believe the words of the Lord of Winter City because there are real examples of the existence of parallel universes in Winter City and there are many people or things that have impacted his three views. Perhaps you will have the opportunity to meet yourself in another world line or other acquaintances in the future. I wish that day would come sooner. Back to business. David thought about it and realized that there was indeed a task suitable for an experienced warrior like Logan, who was not afraid of death. The Knights of Winter are planning to conduct a search and reconnaissance in the waters east of Thailand Port to find the original home of the orcs. David felt that some clues should be found on that island. But the risks are unknown. And no one knows what will happen. He was originally worried that Crossbones Rumlow would bring a few ordinary winter nights. And they might never come back. He considered asking Peggy to go. And even considered taking action himself. Of course, he would definitely call Clark. The best bodyguard. If Logan is responsible for this investigation, the insurance factor will be greatly improved. He does not need to make a special trip and can continue to stay in Winter City as his leader. After chatting with Charles for a long time, the mutant leader left Glamorgan Castle accompanied by Storm. And Charles ran in just after leaving Mark. I think Storm might have a crush on me. While Charles and David were chatting, Storm stayed outside. It seemed that Storm was not bored while waiting. Aren't you afraid that Black Panther will cause trouble for you? This Storm doesn't know Black Panther. After chatting for a while, Mark started to talk about the real thing. As the surveillance on him was removed, he has regained his freedom. Next, he will maintain his identity as a scientist in his own world and occasionally publish papers. What? Make a speech. The focus of life will gradually shift to Winter City. And his first job after taking over as Minister of Sanitation is to check whether the land in the Northern Plains has been contaminated by evil energy. If there is any, it should be dealt with and resolved as soon as possible. What if not? If not, you just need to ensure that the development of Winter City will not seriously damage the natural environment. The construction and development of the city will definitely have an unavoidable impact on the natural world. The key is to grasp the scale. As a shaman who can communicate with the spirits of the earth, Mark should be able to determine this scale. Besides, can you see if you can train a few more shamans in Winter City? Chapter 393 Strengthening Potion Winterfell now has the arcane spells of Azeroth, the skills and knowledge of rogue assassins, and the complete heritage of alchemists, light priests, and paladins. After Sylvanas joined Winter City, she got a mentor who was truly proficient in ranger knowledge. This meant that ranger, hunter and other knowledge had a complete system and could be cultivated in large quantities. In terms of career diversity, Winter City is not bad. But who would dislike having too much extraordinary power at their disposal? In particular, the profession of shaman is able to communicate with the spirits of the elements and its significance is far more than simply adding another extraordinary profession. It's a pity that there are only two people in Winter City who can become shamans. One of them works part-time as the Supreme Mage, and is so used to using the Holy Light that he almost forgets that he is still a shaman. Another was away from home for a long time, and had only recently returned. Then do you want me to be responsible for environmental management? Or do you want to teach and train more shamans? It's not a conflict. When there is a need to control the environment, we should control it. We usually teach the shamans to protect the nature and ensure the balance and stability of the elements. This is the job of your shamans. Right? Mark found that what David said made sense. And he couldn't refute it. In this case, he did not refute and accepted his task obediently. He doesn't think there's anything wrong with this. It means that he is not a dawdling person in Winter City. And he has a big role. He could also ask for benefits from David with greater peace of mind. By the way, you said you were testing your ability before. Did you get the results? No. Because of the arrival of Kara and Sautal Mark, David suspected that his golden finger had the ability to lock on specific targets after being upgraded. He wanted to test it and verify whether his speculation was correct. But now there was a problem that gave him a headache. I kind of don't know who to ask over here. Because he didn't have a clear goal in his mind. Even if a new person appeared, he couldn't be sure whether it was the goal he chose under his influence. There are too many targets, and you don't know how to choose? Mark raised his eyebrows and said, I understand what you are thinking. Who hasn't thought about interacting with the male and female characters when watching movies or playing games? It's just that everyone can only fantasize in their minds. But David has the possibility of real contact with him, and even deeper communication. 
it is completely normal for him to get entangled. If it were Mark, he would have to hesitate for a long time. He would even make a table, write down the names of his favorite characters, sort out the priorities, and finally make a list with a clear order. This is what he thought and suggested, and he wanted to help David make such a form on the spot. Think about priorities, like which worlds have irresistibly beautiful women and so on. David looked at Mark speechlessly. What did he take himself for? I just have a few confidants around me. Isn't this normal? There is Tony Stark and Sutton Stewart in Winterfell. So such an evaluation cannot be attributed to me. Why do you get this kind of evaluation? It's so baffling. The priority should be to help the development of Winter City. He has been thinking about this question recently. What other worlds can promote the development and construction of Winter City? Currently, Winter City does not lack resources for development and survival. The population is steadily increasing. Winter Alchemy Workshop and Tony Stark also have enough advanced technologies in their hands. For a moment, he really couldn't think of what Winter City lacked. So his mind froze. Star Wars? Mark casually mentioned Star Wars. A brand with huge influence in North America. The level of scientific and technological civilization in Star Wars is very high. After all, it is a civilization level where you can jump around the ship in the universe. Where? Technology should be useful to Winter City. Right? In addition to technology, the Star Wars world also has magical power like the Force. I wonder if Winter City can have an inheritance system of Jedi Knights from now on. Thinking of this, Mark was extremely excited. He felt that it would be good for him to learn the Force. What a cool piece of equipment the lightsaber was. And he wanted one too. It's indeed a good choice. Adding Star Wars to the list. David also thought about who would be suitable for Winterfell. After much deliberation, David felt that Master Yoda, Kagan Jin and Obi-Wan Kenobi were all good choices. As for Queen Amidala, he had no intention of thinking about it. In David's heart, she was still a good choice. Not as valuable as Skywalker and his son. Any other suggestions? Mark was happy to hear that David was seriously considering Star Wars. But when he started thinking about other worlds, he suddenly fell into David's tangled state of not knowing what to choose. He scratched his head and face, suddenly excited, and then felt it was inappropriate to give up. After performing it repeatedly for a while, Mark understood why David couldn't choose the right world. When he was asked to choose, he really didn't know how to make a decision. Lord of the Rings? Is that world of any use to Winter City? Thinking about it carefully, even if Gandalf or Legolas came to Winter City, it would not be of much help to Winter City. At most, Will Turner and Eric Lynchair would find them. They're long-lost half-brothers. I suddenly discovered that the effect you obtain from this ability upgrade is a bit useless. It doesn't count. If it is confirmed that it has this effect, it will be very useful if there is a world that you are particularly eager to contact. When there is no world that you particularly want to contact, it is good to appear randomly like this, and you can get unexpected surprises from time to time. Maybe you could ask someone else. Like Laura? I will. After chatting about all the business and other things, Mark said goodbye and left. He had a lot of work to do next, so he probably wouldn't come to David often to chat with him during this time. Although Mark has left, David has no shortage of people to chat with. Charles has talked. Mark has talked. And David has to talk to Zod to care about the Kryptonian general and ask about the situation of the Kryptonians. He called Edwin Van Cleef again and made sure that the Kryptonians had gradually integrated into Winter City before he left to find Tony Stark. Tony came to Winter City again a few days ago. And this time, he will stay in Winter City for a while. The main purpose is to complete the strengthening of oneself. Is this what it is? David looked at the tube of liquid in front of him that exuded a faint blue light. He really couldn't see that such a small tube of medicine could bring about huge changes in people. This is it. Tony was very satisfied with the result and couldn't wait to introduce the power of this strengthening potion to David. Don't underestimate this small tube of potion. This is the pharmaceutical that Cordell has concentrated on for many years. Experience. Sovereign's genetic modification and enhancement. Kryptonian genetic editing. Super Soldier Serum, Gamma Ray Experiments, and a lot of other technologies. And even some Golden Apples were incorporated. Golden Apple? Can that thing still be used here? Don't underestimate the Golden Apples. If it weren't for the Golden Apples, I wouldn't be able to make this strengthening potion. Tony pointed to the Horadric Cube next to him. This thing also helped a lot. The compression and fusion ability of the Horadric Cube is very powerful. If it weren't for this prop, even if Tony successfully produced the finished product, 
it would not be in the state of such a small tube of potion in front of him, but a giant reinforced equipment plus a large stack of potions. After listening to Tony's introduction, David realized that this seemingly inconspicuous small tube of potion was so difficult to make. Does this mean that the era of universal strengthening of Winter City will not come so easily? It's definitely not that easy to come by. Prioritize strengthening for a few people. Then the military. Students. And finally, it will be extended to all residents. This solution is a very normal choice. And even because the student group is listed as a priority group to use enhancement, it will lead to a situation where ordinary people are almost dead before they can enjoy the benefits of enhancement. The young people who had received the reinforcement just grew up and filled this gap. Thus completing the nationwide reinforcement. There is another way, which is not to strengthen the civilians at all. Or if civilians want to be strengthened, they must either join the army or obtain strengthening opportunities through other means. In this way, the lower class civilians will continue to change blood to remain active. There is an insurmountable gap in strength between the upper class and the lower class people. This should be a better plan for David as the ruler. But Tony didn't mention it. He believed that David would definitely be able to think of this. But the future king of winter seemed not to be prepared to use this method. Anyway, now is the time to witness the miracle. After Tony finished introducing everything that should be introduced, he directly took the syringe, filled it with the medicine, and applied it to his arm. Then nothing happens. That's it. The strengthening has already begun. It will not be completed in an instant, but will be completed slowly over the next year. Just like the golden apple in Winter City, although it starts to take effect immediately after eating it, the change is completed unconsciously. Compared with golden apples, this strengthening potion will cause greater changes to the user and will take longer. The advantage of this is that it helps the user adapt to the increasing power and will not cause loss of control or poor control, causing damage to people or things around him. Of course, if you want to do it in an instant, you can use specific instruments to accelerate it. While introducing David to the equipment in front of him, Tony lay down in it. Please help me close the lid and start the machine again. Chapter 394 Several People Who Use Strengthening Potions after finding the button to close the lid, and then pressing the option to start accelerating the enhancement, David looked at the blue light emitting from the glass window of the reinforced lid lying in front of him, and felt as if he was witnessing the birth of Captain America. But the person lying in front of him in the reinforced warehouse was Tony Stark. And Tony didn't scream as heartbreakingly as Steve did. From the oh yeah. Coming from the reinforced warehouse. We can tell that this guy is not in pain at all now, and seems to feel quite good. The light only lasted a short time and disappeared completely after about five minutes. At the same time, the panel on the side of the reinforced compartment prompts that the reinforcement is completed, and the compartment lid also opens automatically. When Tony appeared in front of David again, his appearance had not changed much. After all, he had been optimized after eating the golden apple, but his body has undergone obvious changes. The most obvious thing is his height. At this time, Tony seems to be almost as tall as Steve. This feeling. Tony stood barefoot in front of David, with a smile on his face. It's great. After letting Tony ramble for a while, David asked him how he felt and was doing now, and whether there were any side effects of this accelerated strengthening. The side effect is that it takes me some time to get used to my current strength. This is also the reason why Tony decided to live in Winter City for a while. He is not suitable for conducting various precise experiments now. It would be better for him to continue his research work after he adapts to his current body. What about the degree of enhancement? Will you gain any superpowers? This is a standard strengthening potion. What's the meaning? It means that this potion only enhances physical fitness. Of course, the actual effect is not that simple. This kind of enhancement is all around. Not to mention the improvement of physical fitness. Stronger mental strength. Greatly increased lifespan. Etc. This kind of enhancement is not only effective for life, but can also be perfectly passed on to the next generation. This is the common genetic enhancement technology among advanced civilizations in the universe. It is similar to Sovereign and the Kree Empire. After the enhancement is completed, the quality of the citizens will always be maintained at a high level. The powerful countries in the universe also have stronger enhancement technology in their hands, which can enhance specific people to a higher level or give them some special abilities, etc. Tony also has this level of enhancement technology, but this level of enhancement is not universal. It needs to be fine-tuned according to the user situation. It is basically a private customized version of the enhancement technology. 
So how effective is the universal version of the strengthening potion you are using now? I forgot to ask just now. So it's not too late to ask again now. The answer Tony gave also surprised David. After using this universal version of the strengthening potion, his physical fitness will be stronger than Captain America, who used the super soldier potion. This refers to Captain America, who has not learned the knowledge of the holy light. Shaman and Kama Taj. After Steve in Winter City mastered the holy light, his physical fitness has been improving and has long been far stronger than that of the past. By myself, it can be said that after using the strengthening potion, his physical fitness is almost the same as that of the Asgardians and he has entered the ranks of advanced civilizations in the Marvel Universe. Then what will be the effect of using this thing for people who are already strong because they have learned some mysterious power? Or will it become stronger if used by people who are already strong physically? I don't know. You can find someone to try. Isn't it useful, Steve? The first person to use this potion is myself. Tony is still adapting to his new body, and he will have to undergo a series of exercises next. Now he has to be careful even when holding a water glass so he doesn't dare to touch the row of strengthening potions next to him. You can take the strengthening potion back and remember to transport this strengthening warehouse to Fort Glamorgan. The energy source used in the enhanced warehouse is crystal ore. Every time it is used, a basketball-sized crystal ore will be completely consumed. However, Winter City now has a very high crystal ore reserve, so this loss is nothing at all. After hearing this, David directly put the row of strengthening potions and strengthening warehouses on the table into the storage space. His storage space is now as big as a small warehouse. And it is nothing to bring these things. However, David still feels that his storage space is not big enough. He will continue to expand the storage space until he can put his body that can be transformed into a Mustang sports car and a Durandal fighter jet in the storage space. Then, he wouldn't have to transform into a Cybertronian body every time he wanted to use a sports car or a plane. Leave a tube of strengthening potion. I have only made so many of them so far. It will take some time for the next batch to be completed. Oh. David glanced at Pepper next to him. This tube of potion was obviously prepared for Pepper. Taking out a tube of strengthening potion and placing it on the table. David still had eight tubes of potion left in his hand. And he counted them in his mind. Laura. Eva. Helen. Gwen. And Sophia. That's five people. How should the remaining three tubes be divided? To Fording? Mark? Steve? Or for Gareth? Floyd and Elias? Do you want Addis to give it a tube first? Or wait for the next batch? Or let Gwen? Sophia and the others wait for the next batch? Would you like to use a tube yourself to see the effect? Suddenly I feel a little headache. Distributing benefits is not an easy task. How soon can the next batch be completed? What about the quantity? There won't still be only a few tubes. Right. How can it be? Although the production of strengthening agents is more troublesome. Once the production process is determined, the subsequent output and production speed are still guaranteed. Although the strengthening of all the people of Winter City cannot be completed in a short time, and it will take some time to strengthen the army, it is not difficult to ensure that those close to David are strengthened. Therefore, even if the people around David can't get the strengthening potion today, they will be able to get their own one soon. Then there's no problem. After leaving Stark Manor, David returned to Glamorgan Castle just in time for dinner. Today everyone was here, including Gwen. David talked about the strengthening potion at the dinner table. Strengthening potion? Give it to Sophia first. I shouldn't be in a hurry to use it. After listening to David's introduction, Laura felt that she, who was already considered a transcendent existence, seemed to have no need for this thing. Sophia was not polite. She looked at the potion in her hand happily. She didn't even want to eat. She wanted to complete the strengthening immediately. She felt that if her physical fitness could get better, she wouldn't have to suffer from backache, leg weakness, and foot cramps from time to time. If Laura knew what Sophia was thinking, she would just smile and tell her, stop wishing for anything. If Sophia's physical condition gets better, those symptoms will not only not disappear, but will even become more serious, with a certain probability unlock new skills like Gwen. Looking at the other people on the table, Gwen and Helen had weird expressions when they got the potion. Eva also secretly rolled her eyes at David. Although she thought she was doing it very covertly. How could she escape Laura? The holy light? Hunter's observation? But no matter how weird their faces were, everyone quickly decided to use the strengthening potion. Because David has been getting stronger. And if this trend continues, David will soon become much stronger than he is now. 
even if we don't take into account the various minor life problems caused by the physical difference between the two parties. We just have to keep up with David in terms of lifespan. Not only do we want to be with David forever, but we also want to have a longer youth. None of these people here hope that decades later, David will still be in his prime. But they themselves will be old and one. If that happens, no matter how deep the relationship is, it will be difficult to maintain it. Although several people here have eaten golden apples, adding another method also adds a layer of guarantee. Right? After eating, several women completed the injection of strengthening medicine one after another and each of them had different reactions based on their own circumstances. For example, Sophia, as Tony said, has no feeling. Without using the strengthening chamber to accelerate, her strengthening will be completed slowly and unconsciously. Eva, who has mastered the holy light, is different. After the strengthening potion enters her body, it seems to react with the holy light in her body. Eva can clearly feel that her body is rapidly strengthening under the influence of the holy light. After the strengthening of her body ended, the consumed holy light in her body began to recover quickly and even improved to a higher level. After carefully observing Eva's condition, David realized that people like Eva who have mastered some kind of mysterious power, after using the strengthening potion, it is like having their own strengthening chamber. They can use the power in their body to stimulate the effect of the potion. Strengthening is completed in a short time. The situation of Helen and Gwen is different. Although these two have been learning, they have never mastered some extraordinary power. But as the strengthening potion was injected, their potential seemed to be stimulated, allowing the two of them to master extraordinary powers. Among them, Helen mastered arcane magic, while Gwen mastered both holy light and shadow. It's not surprising that Helen masters arcane magic. In fact, she has been swinging between arcane magic and holy light for a long time. This time she made the decision that she still prefers the convenience of arcane magic. Gwyn mastered the opposing powers of light and shadow at the same time, which was more magical. This made David nervous for a while, because in the real world, the opposition between holy light and shadow is very clear. And shadow magic is not just an energy that can be used casually by players like in the game. The harm of this power is not much weaker than evil energy. Why can Gwyn master the power of shadow, which comes from the void? Is it because she learned to use the power of shadow to stealth? plus long-term use of that Black Venom Queen suit that has some H, Lish powers, coupled with long-term exposure to the Holy Light. She has this unique talent of possessing two opposing energies of Holy Light and Shadow at the same time. And coexisting in her body? Don't go back during the next period of time. Stay in Winter City for a while so that I can observe your situation closely. Um. Chapter 395 The Orc's Hometown is Gone. Holy Light and Shadow are two forces that are opposed to each other but interdependent. Although many people know that light and shadow are two sides of the same coin. Everyone knows that in theory. There are too many difficulties in actual operation. Due to the nature of shadow magic, using this power alone is faced with a lot of problems. There are countless examples of people who thought they had conquered the power of shadow and were carelessly affected by the backlash and lost their lives. Even for assassins who only use a little bit of the shadow qualities. When practicing the skill of stealth, MI7 alone has a large number of assassins who have accidents every year. Either they die suddenly, or they get stuck in the gap between reality and the shadow plane. Never come out again. Therefore, when Gwen actually realized this power, David could not be too careful. But after half a month of observation, David noticed that the holy light and shadow in Gwen's body formed a very good coexistence relationship, and magically promoted the growth of each other, and could transform into each other without loss. This situation made David feel very miraculous and he couldn't help but study more. The result was that Gwen was a little dehydrated and had to recuperate for a few days before going back. After sending Gwen off, David looked at the conditions of the other people. Laura still used the strengthening potion. The holy light in her body was very powerful, and her physical fitness had already reached a very high level. I thought that the strengthening potion would have no effect on her, but it turned out that her physical fitness was still slightly improved. The holy light has also been enhanced. Through the verification of Laura, Eva, Helen, and Gwen, David also had a clearer understanding of the effect of strengthening potions. Even those who are already very strong physically and have mastered extraordinary strength will still get a certain strengthening effect after using the strengthening potion. Moreover, after using the strengthening potion, because it is optimized from the most basic aspects, Laura feels like she has opened a valve. She found that her strength was improving faster again. 
it can be understood that the potential has been greatly improved after strengthening. Eva, who has mastered a certain amount of extraordinary power, will quickly complete the strengthening, and the energy she masters will also be increased. And people like Gwen and Helen, who seem to be just short of getting there, may be able to break through that threshold and master some mysterious power due to the stimulation of strengthening potions. At the same time, the energy that has just entered the body will provide sufficient nutrients for strengthening, allowing it to complete strengthening in a short time like Laura and Eva, who already have certain powers. Only pure ordinary people or people who are stronger than ordinary people and are still far away from mastering some mysterious power will, like Tony, take longer to slowly complete the strengthening or use the strengthening chamber to speed up the process. After figuring out the specific effects and the differences when used by different people, David knew how to use the remaining tubes of potion. Let's give it to Addis first. The old hunter has been enjoying himself recently. Since the establishment of Winter City, he no longer has to carry his bow and arrows to the wild to look for prey, no matter the spring, summer, autumn, winter, scorching heat or cold, as he did in the past. After becoming the director of the education department of Winter City, he now only needs to stay in the office and read the reports and occasionally go to Winter Academy to make sure that the young people of the right age in Winter City have entered the school according to the orders of the Lord. Study. The courses studied meet the requirements. The students grow as required by the Lord. This amount of work is almost nothing to Addis. He even feels that this amount of work is not enough to kill time. You don't have to worry about food, clothing, or housing. Suddenly, Addis found himself living a happy retirement life. It's so unexpected. All this is just because I adopted a child in a daze. What was even more unexpected was that not only did he eat a strange golden apple, but he also learned the magical power called holy light. Although I have never really mastered it, but he has no place to consume the holy light. The holy light that David injected into his body has not been consumed at all. He is still enjoying the various benefits brought by this magical power. He thought this was already wonderful. But today David suddenly sent him a tube of potion. What is this? Strengthening Potion Produced by Tony Stark? In Addis's impression, any weird stuff that he couldn't figure out what it was after hearing it was all created by the consultant named Tony Stark. Right. How to use this thing? Addis looked at the potion in front of him that exuded a faint light. And after a few simple questions, he was ready to use it. He is not worried that David will harm him. And he has nothing worthy of being plotted. David is already a duke and will soon even become his majesty the king. Every time he thought about this, he felt magical. The boy who was always dissatisfied with anyone when he looked at him horizontally and vertically actually no longer has to look at anyone's face. There are indeed miracles in this world. After injecting the medicine into the body, the holy light that had not been used much began to be consumed rapidly. Addis felt the wonderful changes in his body. Before he could realize what was going on, he found that the holy light that was about to be completely consumed in the body suddenly began to grow. At the same time, some kind of realization appeared in his mind. And he knew that he had finally truly mastered the holy light. Hey! A miracle happened to me too? The strengthening process ended quickly. Addis felt the unprecedented strength and frowned slightly. It seemed that he had to take some time to adapt to the current state. However, compared to a strong and healthy body and the power that you truly have, what is this trouble? Anything for Alfie? There are still two tubes of the first batch of potion left and Alfie's bloodline may not be suitable for using this potion. Alfie is a half-elf. Whether he can use this strengthening potion with elf blood is still a question. However, his talent is pretty good. Even without strengthening potions, he should be able to become very strong just by relying on his own efforts. David originally wanted to arrange for him to join the Knights of Winter when he grew up. But Alfie was captured by Sylvanas not long ago and was admitted to the Knights of Tyran. Considering that with the guidance of Sylvanas, the elven ranger lord. Alfie might be able to become an excellent ranger faster. So he did not express any objection. He just reminded Alfie not to neglect the study of cultural classes. And then smiled. Admire Alfie's bitter face. After coming out of Addis' office, David was in no hurry to send out the last two tubes of strengthening potion. He really didn't know who he should give it to. And besides Tony and Pepper, the people currently using the potion were all the people closest to David. These people were the first to use the strengthening potion. So no one would think it was unreasonable. The remaining people will give strengthening potions to whomever. Even if David has no special ideas, there is no guarantee that his subordinates do not have any ideas. This problem is difficult to solve. 
rather than causing dissatisfaction among the subordinates. It is better to keep it until a large number of potions are produced, and then give one to important subordinates. Anyway, it won't take long. The principle of not worrying about scarcity, but worrying about inequality, applies to any era and any world. David did not want to deliberately create conflicts among his men. He has not yet reached the point where he needs to play balance to maintain his rule. Moreover, as his strength continues to improve, he does not seem to need to use this method. Coming out of the government building, David exhaled a breath of white mist. In the depth of winter, the winter city was filled with white snow. Even after the ground had been cleared, there was still a lot of snow piled up around it. David also saw two snowmen at the gate of Fort Glamorgan. After standing there and thinking for a while, David decided to go out for a walk. It didn't snow today, and there wasn't much wind. Although there was sunshine, I couldn't feel much warmth. The dry and cold climate was uncomfortable. So there were fewer people on the street. Even farmers who don't need to work in winter mostly hide in their residences, or in warm indoors, such as taverns to pass the time. David's identity makes it inconvenient for him to go to those places to have fun with the people. But the lack of people on the streets makes it easier for him to wander around. And his current physical fitness will not be frozen by the cold climate. As soon as I walked out of the main entrance of Winter Fortress, I saw Crossbones run low and Wolverine Logan arriving in a car. They got out of the car immediately after seeing him. My lord! This was Rumlo. Nodding and greeting was Wolverine Logan. Came back? These two men were previously sent out to investigate the Eastern Sea, looking for the Orcs' hometown of Asigos Island, and investigating various information about the Orcs and the god called Asigos. Did not find? If you came back so quickly, you either didn't find it, or you found it, but there was nothing on the island. So you didn't even need to search. So you just came back. Well, we flew over the Eastern Sea for a long time and almost all of that sea was covered. Not to mention the larger islands. We didn't even see the smaller rocks. It is definitely more appropriate for Rumlo to report this kind of thing. Logan just follows and supplements when necessary, or provides proof when David wants to ask for confirmation of the contents of Rumlo's report. According to Rumlo's description, they initially flew north along the coastline according to the orc's words, found the ice road that appeared in winter, turned east, and flew along the coastline but soon they found that they were flying further and further north, which direction was completely inconsistent with the information provided by the orcs. So they immediately turned south and looked for the big island described by the orcs near the ice road. The final result was that nothing was found, which made Rumlow seriously doubt how credible the information provided by the orcs was. According to the descriptions of the orcs, natural disasters have been erupting in their hometown over the years. Maybe the island has sunk to the bottom of the sea? Logan speculated that this was the most reasonable explanation at present. If it has really sunk to the bottom of the sea, it will be more troublesome to find it. And it may even be impossible to find it again. Chapter 396 The General Understanding of Marquis Morgan David did not continue to dwell on the issue of the orc's hometown. Maybe he would let the Transformer search again. And forget it if they couldn't find it at all. As time passed, the news that David was about to inherit the position of king from Abelson had spread throughout the kingdom of Tillan. Even the lords, who had not received the official notification, knew the news. Not to mention the nearby Iron Tree Fort. At this time, Lord Dudley Morgan, the Lord of Iron Tree Castle, felt a headache. The bonfire in the fireplace could not make the Lord feel warm. His heart became cold when he heard the news that Duke David Glamorgan was about to ascend the throne as king. What made him feel even more painful was that the only confidant he could discuss this matter with was the personal guard Knight Ismael Souza. The nobles at Iron Tree Castle do not care about this matter, as long as it does not affect their identity, status and current comfortable life. They do not care whether the king is Abel Tylan or David Glamorgan, nor do they care. Is this country called the Kingdom of Tylan or the Kingdom of Winter? In this case, Marquis Dudley Morgan had no way to discuss anything with him. Looking at Ismail Souza, who was standing respectfully opposite, Dudley Morgan asked his most trusted knight to sit down and asked his servant to pour him a cup of hot tea. It's a specialty of Winter City. I was a little uncomfortable when I first drank it. But gradually I started to feel the beauty of this thing. As the stock of tea in Winter City continues to increase, it is inevitable that it will become a trading commodity. In addition to tea, the goods flowing into Iron Tree Fort include a batch of Garin rifles. Although this new weapon has only been delivered not long ago, and even the soldiers who use it are still being trained, it has already helped Iron Tree Fort on the battlefield. 
Marquis Dudley Morgan and Ismail Souza could comfortably warm themselves by the fire in the office instead of freezing on the fortress wall. Not because the elves were unwilling to launch attacks in cold weather. In just half a month, the musketeers have helped Iron Tree Fort repel three attacks from the elves, allowing these evil neighbors to calm down for a while. Originally, Marquis Morgan thought that he could have a stable winter, and that the musketeers would also get a relatively stable gap period in which they could train well. If everything goes well, maybe next year we can teach those elves a big lesson so that they will never dare to step into Iron Tree Castle's sphere of influence again. If possible, he would like to fight the elves to move deeper into the Iron Tree Forest, so that Iron Tree Castle can exclusively enjoy the wood resources of the Iron Tree Forest. Unexpectedly, just when he thought everything was going in the right direction, such nonsense news suddenly came. That David Glamorgan is not satisfied with the position of Duke and actually wants to inherit the throne Ismail. What do you think of this matter? Ismail Souza took a sip of the hot tea. The taste did make him a little uncomfortable. But after a while, the fragrance left in his mouth made him understand why this drink called tea is loved by the Lord. After taking another sip, the steaming hot tea entered his stomach, driving away a lot of the cold air from his body, making Ismail feel a lot more comfortable. But he really didn't know how to answer the Lord's question. Inherit the throne. Is this such a big thing that he, a small bodyguard knight, can talk about? But it seemed inappropriate not to say anything. Ismail Souza thought for a long time before holding back half a sentence. This seems to be a good thing for adults? Marquis Morgan seriously doubted whether his personal knights understood his question as the lord of the former important border town of the kingdom of Tillan. Marquis Dudley Morgan can be regarded as one of the most important lords of the kingdom of Tillan and has a very important position in the kingdom of Tillan. But King Tiran is going to pass the throne to Duke David Glamorgan. Will he still be as valued as he was during the kingdom of Tehran? In fact, sitting in Iron Tree Castle and strangling the south passage of Winter City, he is likely to become a thorn in the side of Winter City. More importantly, should I swear allegiance to the new king? This is what he is most troubled about now. If he swore allegiance, he would still be the lord of Iron Tree Castle. He did not believe that a king who had just succeeded to the throne would immediately deprive the lord who had just sworn allegiance to him from his territory, even if he heard that the Duke of Winter did not infeff in his territory. In addition, what will happen to your Iron Tree Fort after you pledge allegiance to the new king? According to Marquis Morgan's speculation, there will not be a few lords in the entire kingdom of Tillan who will be loyal to the new king. And there will even be someone who launches an attack on Winter City under the banner of rescuing the royal family of Tillan. No matter how you look at it, this passing of the throne is weird. Some lords think it makes sense that His Majesty Abelson was held hostage by the Duke of Winter. Marquis Morgan knew that this was not the case because he was close enough to Winter City and had frequent interactions with each other. But he did not necessarily have to believe the truth. As long as he wants to, he could also declare war on Winter City under this banner. The question is, can Iron Tree Castle defeat Winter City? He didn't even need to ask his generals. Marquis Morgan could come up with a very accurate answer himself. Absolutely can't beat him. Through the information passed back many times by Maloney Mansfield. And the fact that Winter City did not deliberately hide its true strength. The people here in Iron Tree Castle are considered to be the group of people who know Winter City best in the entire Brennian continent. In the words of Maloney Mansfield, the real strength of Winter City is not terrible, but very terrifying. If Winter City wanted to capture Iron Tree Castle, one day would be enough from the launch of the attack to the end of the battle. In this day, we also need to hunt down the scattered remnants of soldiers, nobles, important officials, etc. If we simply defeat the defense force of Iron Tree Fort, it may not even take an hour. The Garen rifles that Winter City sold to Iron Tree Fort are all obsolete weapons. Now Winter City's main weapon is a new type of firearm called the Piccolo Assault Rifle. It is said that the bullets fired by that firearm can easily beating a heavily armed knight into blood mist. Even if this fully equipped knight wears enchanted armor made of special metal, it will only be a matter of taking a few more shots. In addition, there are also huge, giant-like Cybertronians in Winter City. This magical race that comes from unknown sources has strong combat power and can transform into various strange vehicles and even flying in the air at high speed and launching attacks. What a fart. Do you expect your archers to deal with the aircraft in Winter City? As a border lord, Marquis Morgan had sufficient military literacy. Just by thinking about the general situation of these enemies, he knew that there was no way to defeat them. Thinking of this, Marquis Morgan suddenly realized that he had no choice at all. Unlike the lords in other places, he knew nothing about the strength of Winter City. Because of his understanding, 
as long as he has a sound mind. He knows that offering his loyalty to the Great Majesty David Glamorgan is the most correct choice. After struggling for several days, Marquis Morgan suddenly figured it out. At the same time, he discovered that what Ismail Souza said was not unreasonable. If he was loyal to His Majesty Glamorgan, it would indeed be a good thing in some respects. When the time comes that I will be stationed at the southern thoroughfare of Winter City and defeat the rebels for His Majesty, will Your Majesty give me some reward? If nothing else, if you help yourself form a force similar to the Spartan Heavy Infantry Regiment, won't your position as Lord of Iron Tree Castle become more stable? When the time comes that the elves dare to harass Iron Tree Castle again, these elves will never come back. They will all be captured and sent to Winter City to be dedicated to the Great Majesty David Glamorgan. At this time, the Great David Glamorgan did not know that he had captured Iron Tree Castle. He was sitting in the recreation room playing video games with Laura. The game the two chose was Resident Evil 6. But Laura modded the game and changed the control character to herself. Both of them have extremely fast reaction and coordination skills. It is not difficult for two people to play any game. Therefore, the characters controlled by the two people on the screen are killing and killing wildly. The poor biochemical monsters are surrounded and suppressed by the two people. There was almost no resistance. The two people playing the game can also chat while distracted, without affecting the operations at hand. When you inherit the position of king, will the entire northern part of Brunia continent become lively? Probably. At that time, many lords will definitely declare independence, or they will regard me as a traitor who has held the Thailand royal family hostage and unite some lords to launch the northern expedition. The next thing to do is to clean up these rebellious lords one after another and take over all the territory of the kingdom of Thailand. Then what? Launch a revenge war against the holy kingdom of Gaunt. There is a high probability that it will be like this. If he could choose, David would like to clean up the orcs first but with the Sotoruma Empire in between. It would be very troublesome. It doesn't sound like a good king to feel like wars are going to keep breaking out as soon as you take the throne. With such frequent wars, aren't you worried that some people in Winter City will have bad thoughts about you? Having said so much, this sentence is actually the key. Of course David has thought of this. But as Winter City becomes more and more powerful, more and more people are joining David's ship, some things are bound to happen. And progress will not be stopped just because of what some people think. Moreover, David believed that those who truly regarded him as friends knew some of the situations on the Brennian continent and would understand his choice. Even Clark, the most saintly Superman, would not stand on the opposite side of David. Yes, if nothing else happens, you will have become his brother-in-law by then. Chapter 397 The Military Power of Winter City Snowflakes are falling and the north wind is blowing. In the blink of an eye, another year has passed. But for the northern plains, the new year still starts with a cold storm and snow. However, the people living in Winter City will not be affected by the cold wind and snow. When you stay in a heated house, you don't have to worry about falling asleep in a harsh environment. The people of Winter City, who do not have to worry about their living environment and have enough food, even regard shoveling and clearing snow as a recreational activity. From time to time, laughter can be heard everywhere in Winter City. In such an atmosphere, one can imagine the speed of development of Winter City. The industrial area is continuing to grow and develop, and several new factories have been built this month. Weatherby Swan will report to David on the situation in various parts of Winter City every once in a while. And today is the time for a routine report. Days, reducing clocks, pens and inks, compasses and rulers, and school uniforms. Aiming at Winter Academy? Yes. All learning tools used by students at Winter Academy are distributed by the school. In the past, the number of students was still small. You could ask Ethan to go back to your own world to purchase these things. Or even if you had to ask craftsmen in Winter City to customize them. It wouldn't be a big hassle. But since the population of Winter City has increased dramatically, the number of freshmen entering this year has also become particularly large. Winter Academy not only recruited many new teachers, but also ordered large quantities of various school supplies which also brought business opportunities to those nobles with sufficient capital. Some nobles have determined that Winter Academy will continue to operate, which means that Winter Academy will not collapse. As the population continues to increase, new students will enroll every year. In addition, ink, notebooks and the like are consumables, which means that Winter Academy will continue to operate. Winter College needs to purchase these things for a long time. So the nobles wanted to open workshops to monopolize this stable business. With the establishment of industrial zones, workshops became factories. 
in addition to the continuous addition of factories in the industrial zone. More jobs are provided for residents in the city because of the large number of job vacancies. Works are beginning to work in factories. With the completion of the construction of the East-West Highway, the civilian transportation industry has also begun to transport various rice, noodles, vegetables, fruits, and various clothing from Winter City to Snowfield Castle and Thailand Port for sale. It also stimulated the prosperity of the civilian vehicle production industry. What David faced now was not stagnant economic development or insufficient resources, but a shortage of labor force. The current number of 100,000 people in Winter City seems to be quite a lot, compared with the small population at the beginning. It has increased significantly. However, it was only when we started large-scale development that we discovered that 100,000 people were nothing at all. This is still a situation where Cybertronians help with construction. And Winter City has a lot of advanced machinery. If we relied purely on manpower for development, these 100,000 people might not even have built Winter City yet. What about the military industry? The production lines for new light cavalry armor. Heavy cavalry and super heavy cavalry systems have been established. And the first batch of equipment is expected to be produced before the weather gets warmer. Light cavalry armor. Heavy cavalry systems and super heavy cavalry are about to be mass produced. Among them, the heavy cavalry system has three postures, motorcycle, flying skateboard and heavy armor. While the super heavy cavalry currently only produces two types of armed off-road vehicles slash tank to form large battle armors. Whether other vehicles will be produced in the future depends on whether there is relevant demand in the future. The Ghost UV also has a separate production line, but it is not currently produced on a large scale, but only in small quantities. Depending on the actual use, it will be decided whether to distribute it on a large scale or to use it in small quantities as specific equipment. Warframe production is about to begin, and of course weapons must keep up. The new Flute multifunctional rifle has been finalized, and after testing, it very much meets the needs of the Tehran Knights. This Flute multifunctional rifle has semi-automatic and fully automatic modes, which can carry out precise shooting at ultra-long distances. In addition to firing live ammunition, it can also be switched to energy bullet firing mode. In addition to the fluid multifunctional rifle, a new mechanical bow has also been finalized. This mechanical bow is not inferior to the power of the fluid rifle, and is more friendly to rangers who have mastered arcane energy, because this mechanical bow has a high affinity for energy, and it also has a certain amplification and strengthening effect. In fact, it's an enchanted piece of equipment. As for the shortcomings, it is that the manufacturing cost is much higher than that of the flute rifle because of the troublesome production and special materials. Some materials have to be mined in dungeons. But David didn't care. Although Aiden and he didn't go to the dungeon very much anymore. There were so many people in Winter City. And there were always people who needed to go into the dungeon to check things out. For example, Gwen and the others still go in to exercise from time to time and Mark has recently been going into the dungeon to improve his strength and collect materials on the way, even if the dungeon still limits the number of people who can enter. As long as people keep entering, the materials with H, L power will only increase in number. Keeping those materials takes up space. Wouldn't it be better to use them to make equipment to improve the strength of your men? In this case, the Thailand Knights will be able to form a fighting force before summer. David set the time for his succession to the throne in the autumn. In the summer, the Knights of Tyran were in line with his expectations. Continue to listen to Weatherby's report for a while, and then listen to Elizabeth's report. Elizabeth is now the Minister of the Police Department of the Principality of Winter, responsible for internal security-related affairs across the country, and she has done a good job so far. Under her management, there have been no particularly bad cases in Winter City so far. The most serious ones are fights. There was no need to worry about security. So I finally asked about the military. After a period of reorganization, the Winter Knights still have not reached the standard of 100 people. According to the original standards, 100 people could be filled. But Gareth and Floyd have raised the requirements of the Knights of Winter. Those who cannot master the Holy Light and become a paladin in the future will not be recruited into the Knights of Winter. Knights of Winter. So far, less than one-third of the Knights of Winter have mastered the Holy Light and become paladins. But the trend of everyone's progress is good. If this pace continues, it is not far away that all members will become paladins. Speaking of which, Gareth also complained that Sylvanas poached Jack Krasa, the only ranger of the Knights of Winter, the Tehran Knights, who have been reorganized by Sylvanas, currently have 450 members. This number will not change in the short term. 
The next step will be reduction due to the inability to meet Sylvanas's requirements. Whether or not they were expanded to fill the 500 strong capacity because of their outstanding performance. That would depend on the actual performance of the Tyrone Knights. The reorganized Winter Legion has reached 2,000 people. How come the number has increased? Another group of new soldiers were recruited from the civilians of Winter City. The Winter Legion will be the largest standing corps in the future. And they will also take over most of the standing tasks such as garrisoning, patrolling, and guarding. Coupled with the 800-strong Spartan Heavy Infantry Regiment and the Cybertronians, who are almost all warriors. This is the entire standing military force of Winter City. With such military strength, it should be very simple to sweep away the Brania continent. What's more, David still has dozens of Kryptonians at his disposal for command. He has not yet decided whether to form a separate special forces team with the Kryptonians or let General Zod command the Spartan Heavy Infantry Regiment. After listening to the routine report, David was about to call Zod to the office and ask him what he meant when Clarice and Kara suddenly came over. What happened? Kara found some clues about the orc's hometown. Oh! At first, David sent Rumlow and Logan to the eastern sea to search for the orc's hometown of Asigo's island, but found nothing. Later, he originally wanted the Cybertronians to go to the sea for a look, but Kara and Clarice, who had been relatively free recently, took over the job and flew to the eastern sea in a quinjet. After Kara found some clues, the two directly used the blinking teleportation ability to return to Winter City, and then ran directly to report to David. There are technological products disguised as Reese on the seabed? Um, Kara said that she found more than one place and saw several technological artifacts with the same structure in a certain area. According to her observations, this thing seemed to be an interface used to connect to large facilities. Oh, David immediately thought of a possibility. The so-called Asigo's Island was actually a large ship disguised as an island? Or something like that? This is really not difficult to guess especially after knowing that orcs are a race specially thrown by the gods, and that there have been many examples of humans and dark elves before. Are there other facilities below the interface? Could not find it. David nodded and said he understood. Now he started to think about another question. If this island is really some kind of large-scale facility, where will it go after completing the task of releasing new races? Fly off this planet? Or is it anchored somewhere else? If you fly away from this planet, you don't have to think about it anymore. But if you don't leave and anchor somewhere else, considering the water depth and other issues, does it mean that there is another continent to the east or further away? David didn't know if his guess was right. If he happened to be right, that continent should have a closer connection with the gods in the sky. Thank you for your hard work. You're welcome. It's just a small favor. Kara thought that what she had done was not worth mentioning. After living in Winter City for a while, she had fallen in love with this place. She hoped that Winter City's beauty can last for a long time. And she is willing to contribute to this. Are there any troubles that need to be solved? Temporarily unavailable. David wanted to ask Carla how she was doing during this time. Have you found a satisfying job? But Lydrin was waiting outside. So David had to end the conversation and let Lydrin come in to report on the situation of the elves in the Ironwood Forest. Chapter 398 Batman's Invitation A few months ago, David asked Lydrin and Sylvanas to contact the elves in the Ironwood Forest. After contacting them, it was discovered that these elves are a group of peace-loving people who do not want to conflict with others at all. They live here, and they migrated to this area where elves do not live because they do not like fighting with people or their own tribe. After discovering that this group of elves seemed to be no threat, Sylvanas returned to Winterfell and continued to train the Tyran Knights. Lydrin planned to stay in the elves' village for a while longer wanting to observe further to see if these elves were really harmless. By this time, she already had a clear answer. These elves were indeed true pacifists and belonged to the fringe group of elves in the Iron Tree Forest. Several of them were from the group of elves who were fighting against the Iron Tree Fort. Through this group of elves, Lydrin also learned that there were several elven tribes in the Iron Tree Forest. And the one at war with Iron Tree Fort was the most powerful one in the Iron Tree Forest. It is said that before the war with Iron Tree Castle, this tribe began to recruit the surrounding elven tribes because they received the oracle, which caused some elves who were unwilling to be included to flee. The rapid growth of this small village is also related to the changes in the elven tribe. In addition, there is an elf tribe on the west side of the Iron Tree Forest. The number of the tribe is not very large, but there are some dark elves from the lost land in the tribe. Generally speaking, this is the situation inside the Iron Tree Forest. The group of elves Lyadron came into contact which should be able to be absorbed into Winter City peacefully. 
The attitude of the group in the west is unclear. The large number of elves in the east of the forest must be defeated first. As David has made initial preparations to sweep across the Brennian continent, it is impossible for him to retain a force that does not belong to Winter City, so close to his hometown of Winter City. Therefore, these elves must either join Winter City or be eliminated. In the past, due to the poor relationship between humans and elves in Iron Tree Fort, it was almost impossible to attract the elves in Iron Tree Forest to join Winter City. But now there is a good breakthrough. David didn't know yet that Marquis Morgan of Iron Tree Castle had decided to be loyal to him. If he knew the news, he would be happier with the current situation. It is equivalent to directly taking over a large area of Iron Tree Castle and Iron Tree Forest, completely stabilizing the rule of the area around Winter City. Without worries, he can consider sending troops south. Of course, the actual situation is definitely not that simple. When the cold wind from the north became less strong and a hint of warmth began to appear on the northern plains, the elves who had been fighting Iron Tree Fort suddenly moved northward and shifted the focus of their attack from Iron Tree Fort to the northern plains. David didn't know why these elves suddenly came to trouble Winter City. Do they think Winter City is easier to bully than Iron Tree Castle? Or do you think that there is a wider territory in the northern plains and want to grab an area as a forward base? No matter what the elves thought, this attack by the elves was almost like a pure death. Even if they come up with more novel abilities, their swords and arrows are attached with strong energy. And there are more huge forest guardians, giant tree men, whose names were found by Lyadrin, participating in the battle. But the battle situation is still one-sided. The Spartan Heavy Infantry Regiment was currently in charge of patrolling and stationing. The Spartan Heavy Infantry, which had sufficient combat experience and weapons and equipment in a crushing state, directly killed them in a bloody manner. If they hadn't received the order to rush into the Iron Tree Forest to fight back, perhaps the Elven tribe in the central and eastern part of the Iron Tree Forest would have been completely wiped out today. However, for these Elves, they took the initiative to provoke Winter City, and it was not long before they were eliminated. David would not let go of such a good opportunity, and immediately ordered Gareth Stanton to mobilize the Winter Legion and the Tyrant Knights to launch a counterattack against the Elves in the Iron Tree Forest. A real war can allow the reorganization work to be completed earlier. While fighting, practicing and reorganizing, David directly regarded these elves as training targets. Sylvanas is also very happy. She feels that this kind of training is more effective for rangers than torturing these idiots on the training ground. How can it be possible to grow into a real ranger without going into the forest? She felt that her subordinates, after all, were all human knights. What they lacked was the experience of real combat in this kind of forest. This kind of real forest war was much more effective than training in a peaceful and quiet forest. Winter forest the beasts in it let out a sigh of relief. Just as the first batch of trainees from the Tehran Knights and the Winter Legion officially set off to launch a counterattack southward against the Elves, the first warm wind of the year finally blew across the northern land, causing the snow that had existed all winter to melt. It's starting to get warmer! David was not in Glamorgan Castle at this time. Not even in Winter City. He was suspended high in the air feeling the comfortable feeling of warm sunlight shining on his body. The holy light in his body seemed to respond, emitting a faint light through David's body. Kara, who was also basking in the sun not far away, felt like she was basking in two suns at the same time. Kara, who has been used to this situation, enjoys it happily. She feels that this is double happiness. Her strength grows very quickly in this state. Although she still can't figure out what kind of existence David is, Kara will not dwell on this issue. It is enough to know that David is a good person. As for the reminder from Clark, Kara had begun to get used to her cousin's name. She found that David had not done anything out of line or impolite to her. So she gradually didn't take it to heart. While two people were sunbathing together, a third person suddenly flew over. Judging from his appearance, he probably didn't come to join the two of them and enjoy high-altitude sunbathing together. Clark? Kara looked at Clark flying next to him in regular clothes, thinking he was looking for her. Turns out Clark came to see David. What happened? Clark will take the initiative to find him. And it is most likely related to the Avengers of the Multiverse that he casually mentioned. Someone wants to see you. Who? David turned around in his mind, thinking of all the names in the DC, and finally thought of one person. It can't be Bruce Wayne. Right. It's indeed him. This is not an unexpected answer. David didn't find it strange. With Bruce Wayne's character, it was strange that he didn't want to see him. In fact, with Batman's character and way of doing things, it is only appropriate to collect and investigate secretly. 
but Bruce Wayne must have been embarrassed to find that except for contacting through Superman. He could not find any clues about David at all. Therefore, he could only send messages through Superman. I would also like to meet this Batman. He has not met many superheroes in the DCU. Except for Clark in front of him. He has only met Martian Manhunter disguised as a human general and Wonder Woman Diana. And the meeting was not friendly. The rest, such as the Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, Batman, etc., have not been seen. In addition to these, David is also curious about one thing. Which version of Clark is he in front of? He knew that the person in front of him was the God of War in the toilet. But in fact there were different versions of Superman in the God of War in the toilet. Which direction would this relate to the subsequent plot development of that world? If nothing else, the upcoming Steppenwolf will be significantly different due to different versions. Mummy Wolf? Or the Homecoming Wolf? Let's make an appointment with Mr. Bruce Wayne! David agreed to meet Batman. After finding out that the other party was waiting for him, he decided to go over immediately. At the same time, he remembered one thing. Is Clark currently focusing on being Superman in his own world? Or found another job? Not looking for a new job. In addition to being Superman, Clark either goes back to his hometown to be with his mother or his girlfriend Lois and spends the rest of his time farming in Winter City. He has no more time to do other work. Are you going to try Tony's suggestion? Start a company? Yes. David felt that if Clark was willing to come up with various advanced technologies to help the development and progress of mankind on Earth, Batman would be the first to invest in Clark. You have just found the biggest financial backer now. I will think about it. The three of them landed at Fort Glamorgan together, and then David went to change into clothes more suitable for modern Earth cities. When he reappeared, he had put on sneakers, jeans, a blue plaid shirt, and a pair of glasses. Okay, let's go! Clark took a look at David's outfit. It was indeed a very common look. It seemed that David didn't have to attract countless people's attention every time he appeared. After thinking about it, Kara decided to go with two people. She had long abandoned her prejudices about the Earth. The kind-hearted Kara understood that people are different through Clark's explanation and actual contact in Winter City. Not everyone is so evil. And everyone cannot be placed in the same position just because some people are evil. She had already been to Clark's world in her free time met Lois, and went shopping together to buy a lot of things. While David was changing clothes, Kara also went back to change clothes. And then the three of them came to the DC universe where Clark was, and walked into a coffee shop under Clark's leadership. The coffee shop is not very large, but there is only one man with a strong build sitting in the shop that should be busy at this time. He is sitting alone in a booth next to the window. When a few people come to the front then he stood up. David. Bruce Wayne. After Clark saw the two shaking hands and greeting each other, he introduced his cousin Kara, and then they all sat in the booth together, with David and Bruce facing each other. So, what do you want from me? Chapter 399 Abelson's Expectations Ever since Superman, the Kryptonians, and the Avengers, who are known as the security managers of the universe, have appeared one after another, Batman has felt that his worldview has been severely impacted over the years in Gotham. I have only dealt with all kinds of criminals. And at most I have encountered a few lunatics. He never thought that one day, he would have to worry about threats from the universe. The seabed? And even gods. Through various investigations, Bruce Wayne found helplessly that the world seemed to have changed in an instant. And there were far more worries than these. Because he discovered the existence of more people with special abilities. And also discovered that some people with ulterior motives. Due to the appearance of David and the fact that Superman and Zod did not cause huge damage to the Earth, Batman Bruce Wayne did not go to find trouble with Superman at once. Instead, he conducted a careful investigation and found out Lake S. Luthor is the mastermind behind this. By the way, I also found a lot of information about superpowers from Lex Luthor. It is a pity that Luthor did not have any more information about the so-called Avenger. David, this Avenger who called himself David, and was suspected of being an angel seemed to have completely disappeared. And this person could not be found on the earth at all. After much deliberation, the only clue left was Superman. After all, Superman is now the official Avengers representative on earth. After tracking and observing for a period of time, Bruce was able to determine that the Avengers should have some kind of teleportation technology. David and Thor do not usually stay on earth. It seems that they will only appear when something like a Kryptonian invasion occurs. This is consistent with their original official statements. This seems like good news for Bruce. But for Batman, 
who is used to having everything in his hands. This is uncomfortable. Bruce Wayne, who tossed and turned every day and couldn't sleep well, finally made a decision, go directly to Superman, and then meet David through Superman Clark. He wanted to learn more about the Earth and the universe directly from the Avenger responsible for supervising the Earth. But he didn't know how to achieve his goal. Bruce Wayne kept deducing in his mind and rehearsed various words. However, the development of things was beyond his expectation. The contact with Superman was already very smooth. The Kryptonian who grew up on Earth had a surprisingly good attitude towards him, as if he had known him for a long time. This made Bruce's alarm bells ring loudly in his heart. He suspected that he had been targeted by the Avengers. But he didn't know it. When he expressed his desire to meet David, Superman's reaction seemed to confirm his suspicion. Until he met David at this time, Bruce had already determined that the other person not only knew him, but also knew his own style of behavior very well. This meeting was completely expected by the other person. Did he fall into a trap? 800 thoughts were running through his mind in an instant. And he answered David's question. I am very curious about the situation in the universe. Especially those forces that pose a threat to the earth. The universe is much more lively than most people imagine. And there are as many races as there are stars in the night sky. David did not answer clearly. But gave a slightly vague answer. But the universe is very big. And most races have a broad enough space for development. So you don't have to worry that one day. An alien fleet will park outside the Earth. The Earth's position in the DC universe is very special. From the perspective of its location in the universe. The Earth is located in a relatively desolate and remote area. There are no advanced civilizations around it, and the resources are not very rich. But anyone who knows a little bit about DC knows that the Earth is the center of the world. And countless big shots are paying attention to this place. This has led to a special situation in which weak civilizations cannot touch the Earth. Medium-sized civilizations with the ability to colonize the universe look down upon the Earth. And advanced beings, who know some inside information dare not touch the Earth. Of course, this does not mean that the Earth is completely safe. Not to mention, if this is the world line of Homecoming Wolf, then there is an anti-life equation on the Earth. In order to obtain the anti-life equation, Dark Sea will definitely attack the Earth. And this Dark Monarch will not care about anything. Center of the universe kind of thing. Bruce and David chatted for a few words. The other party seemed to say nothing, but seemed to say a lot. Bruce got some news from the other party's words. The Earth is still very safe most of the time. So, your job is easy. It's okay. In fact, I don't pay attention here most of the time. Bruce nodded, realizing that David's jurisdiction was not just the Earth. In this case, it would not be surprising that he could not be found on the Earth. By the way, who is your superior? After chatting for a while, Bruce suddenly asked such a question. He believed that it was not just him who wanted to know the answer. But countless people wanted to know a clear answer. He even noticed that the Superman sitting next to him looked at David with curious eyes. It seemed to David that this alien from Earth named Clark. I don't know much about David's background either. He had no idea that Clark was curious about what David would say. There is a saying that the world is unkind and treats all things as stupid dogs. You should understand what it means. Right. Chinese? Bruce knows a lot of knowledge. Including Chinese. And he does know the meaning of this sentence. You mean? Although the actual situation is somewhat different. It can be said that that person will not pay attention to such a small thing happening in your world. In that person's eyes. This world is no different from countless other worlds. Even if the whole world explodes. It may not be as emotional to that person as Bruce losing a penny. World. Bruce got a lot of information from David's few words. Not only the real existence, but also something even more incredible. The world he lived in was just one of countless worlds. Parallel universes actually exist. In just a few seconds, Bruce thought of many things. David's so-called jurisdiction may also involve multiple worlds. God is real but doesn't do anything. And the Avengers have no actual involvement with that being. After chatting for a while, Bruce slowly realized that he didn't actually need to be specific. Because most of his questions could be answered clearly. At this moment, he already knew more news than he had received in the previous hour. He learned that David currently lives in another world. A place called the continent of Brunia. Winter City is the base of these people. There are many people from various worlds living in Winter City. Thor, the god of thunder who had previously accompanied David to fight against the Kryptonians, came from another world and so on. When the conversation reached this level, Bruce simply asked if he could visit Winter City? Of course. You can ask Clark for specific details. David seemed to have thought of something and was very enthusiastic. 
and his performance made Bruce wonder if there was any conspiracy or trap. Suddenly, I don't want to go to Winter City anymore. In fact, David thought of another thing. Maggie from the world of The Walking Dead is now settled in Winter City. I wonder what Bruce's reaction will be when he sees Maggie. That scene must be interesting. At this point, the topics that can be discussed are almost over. Next, Clark will have more contact with Bruce. And at the appropriate time, he will absorb the old bat into the multiverse Avengers. According to David's idea, the members of the original Justice League are all worthy of recruitment. In the future, he can take this group of people to cause trouble in the Marvel Universe. It will definitely be a happy scene. David Baba, who returned to Winter City, was waiting to watch the excitement. As a result, Batman never came as a guest. But Megatron's new body was completed ahead of schedule. This aerospace carrier, which was manufactured using many advanced technologies, slowly rose to high altitudes driven by its anti-gravity engine. Starting from today, the space carrier Megatron will become the most important eyes of Winter City. The two Decepticons, Megatron and Soundwave, will be permanently stationed on the space carrier, monitoring all conditions in the Winter Kingdom and surrounding areas from high altitudes, and launching artillery support from high altitudes when necessary. The Megatron officially took off and the Tehran Knights gradually formed a fighting force. David suddenly wanted to advance the succession ceremony and take over all the territory of the Tehran Kingdom this year. Isn't it too tight on time? Indeed some. David and Abelson stood side by side, looking at Sophia who was experiencing the light and heavy cavalry systems in front of them. Sophia, the leader of the Tehran Knights, showed excellent driving skills. Driving a heavy motorcycle in a circle, race at top speed on a track with many obstacles. Just before it was about to rush into a big pit, the heavy motorcycle that Sophia was riding suddenly began to deform. In the blink of an eye, it turned from the motorcycle into a flying skateboard. It was stepped on by Sophia and flew over the big pit with Sophia on it. Sophia took out the flute multifunctional rifle and fired several shots at the target on the side while flying at high speed. The movements were all done in one go. But unfortunately, they all missed the target. The angry Sophia controlled the flying skateboard and flew directly in front of the target. She raised her rifle and fired at zero range. After completely smashing the target into pieces, she left with satisfaction and moved towards the next area. Abelson helplessly looked at his daughter, who was having a lot of fun. He found that Sophia became more out of touch after she followed David. Is this really good? Also, Abelson has always hoped that Sophia would be pregnant with David's child as soon as possible. It would be best if the good news could be spread before the succession ceremony. It's a pity that this silly girl doesn't know how to work hard. Your excessive energy should be used on David. Maybe he should ask his wife to mention this stupid girl more? Arrange some more female officials to give Sophia guidance? Chapter 400 Dusk in the Kingdom of Thailand Sophia, who had a great time, was called back to have a family dinner by Abelson. But when she returned to Fort Glamorgan from home, she looked confused. What's wrong? David looked at Sophia's embarrassed expression. As if the winter vacation was over today, but she hadn't done any homework. And she didn't know how to deal with the class teacher tomorrow. Seeing David asking, Sophia hesitated to speak. Hesitated to speak. Changed her expression several times. And finally did not say a word. Seeing her like this, David knew it was inappropriate for him to ask. Fortunately, there are many people around, whether it is Eva, Helen or Laura, who can ask Sophia on his behalf. About an hour later, David, who was drinking tea and reading a book in the office, got the answer from Laura. Sophia was pushed by her parents to have a baby. Aw? David was stunned for a moment before he realized that Sophia was being urged to have a baby. Wasn't it a disguised form of urging him to have a baby? This is normal. Sophia and you have special identities especially at this time when you are about to inherit the throne. If Sophia can get pregnant at this time, Abelson may feel that his pressure will be much less. No matter how many reasons he comforts himself in his heart and gives himself reasons, it is an indisputable fact that Abelson will become the subjugated king of Thailand Kingdom. If Sophia can give birth to an heir for David, then she can also tell herself that the kingdom of Thailand will still exist, but with a different name. I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint his majesty the king. David spread his hands although he could understand the other party's thoughts. He really couldn't solve this problem by himself. As his strength continued to improve, he became more and more aware of his body's condition. And David gradually understood why he could not successfully create offspring. But knowing what the problem is doesn't mean he has the ability to solve it. According to the information he currently has, 
it is quite difficult and troublesome for him to create real offspring. Explain my situation to Sophia. Indirectly tell Abelson not to worry about this matter anymore. David looked at Laura. Although they just glanced at each other. The two have developed enough tacit understanding over the years. And Laura immediately understood what David meant. I'll just go and talk to Sophia. Do you want to tell her the truth later? What do you want to do again? Because Sophia's mother came up with a good idea for her precious daughter after hearing that your majesty, the duke, is extremely talented and has amazing fighting power. And that Sophia simply couldn't bear it. Rosie learned from her daughter that it wasn't that Sophia didn't work hard, but that David was too beastly. If Sophia asked David to do those things every day, leaving aside whether she could get pregnant, Sophia would most likely be cold by now. After careful questioning and knowing that it was not Sophia's own poor fighting ability, Rosie finally understood why there were several women around the Duke of Glamorgan. But these women could get along very well without any conflicts. It turns out that everyone can eat well and there is no need to fight. After much deliberation, Queen Rosie came up with a clever plan for her daughter. Call on her friends to attack. Wait for the opportunity to seize the final blow. And strive to get the most results with the least consumption. This tactic is not unusual. It is safer to use a trusted maid than to find an outsider. However, ordinary maids must not be able to attract the duke. So Sophia can only be asked to win over other women around David. After listening to her mother's advice, Sophia was stunned. I deliberately objected that this method was ridiculous. But I couldn't think of a better solution. At least my mother's advice sounds sound. But as for being too shameful, what her mother said, With the qualities David has shown, this kind of thing will happen sooner or later. Maybe it has happened before you didn't know it. She couldn't even refute. So Sophia was wondering, Should I risk my life? Returned to Glamorgan Castle in a state of disbelief, and told the situation to Laura, Eva, and Helen who cared about him. This was also her mother's suggestion. Since everyone was not short of meat anyway, it was better to discuss it with those people. So Sophia made the situation clear and clear. She didn't even hide the idea from these people because it was her mother's idea. Don't say I don't think about you. You can hum first and then tell Sophia the truth. David looked at Laura speechlessly. You are so excited. It's hard for me to believe what you say. However, I have to admit that this suggestion is so attractive. Does this count as cheating on Sophia? Alas, my family members make little jokes to each other, which is also a way to increase their relationship. So from that day on, Sophia lived in David's room. And Sophia, who worked hard every day until her stomach was bloated, didn't realize until the day Gwen came over that she unexpectedly learned that all her hard work for so many days was in vain. Realizing that she had been cheated, Sophia said she wanted everyone to experience the suffering she had suffered. And David and Laura became happier. Time also passed in this chaos. By the time Sophia discovered that the so-called revenge would only make herself worse and chose to let go of her grudges, the northern plains had become green. The farmers started farming in the new year. And Mark Watney also began to walk around the northern plains to check the environment. The Tehran Knights and the Winter Legion fought with the elves in the Iron Tree Forest. As the war progressed, the members of the Tehran Knights have gradually mastered the know-how of fighting in the forest. Under the high-pressure training of Sylvanas, Hunters who have mastered arcane energy began to appear in the Tyran Knights. Although the number is not large yet, this is a good start. Coupled with the new equipment, which has been officially named Bayfong Light Armor and Bayfong Heavy Motorcycle, the Tylan Knights have begun to gradually penetrate into the Iron Tree Forest, and the battle situation has shifted from the initial stalemate stage to the counterattack stage. In the Knights of Winter, the number of paladins who have learned the Holy Light already exceeds half of the entire group. Everything was going in the right direction. What surprised David the most was the envoy sent by the Lord of Iron Tree Castle, Marquis Dudley Morgan, who expressed his attitude very directly. Marquis Dudley Morgan would tell the new King David Guerra His Majesty Morgan swears allegiance. At this time, there is still less than half a year before the autumn deadline. Marquis Dudley Morgan seems a little impatient, but as the time entered summer, more and more envoys from all over the kingdom of Tillang came to the northern plains and David discovered that Marquis Dudley Morgan was not too early. Strange. Are all the lords of Thailand Kingdom so aware of current affairs? Although these envoys from various places did not directly represent their lords and directly express their willingness to be loyal to David, their intention to please was still very obvious. When David officially succeeds to the throne and begins to take over various territories, there is a high probability that these lords will not make any resistance when facing the army of Winter City. Speculators are not uncommon in any age. Sutton Stewart didn't think there was anything strange. 
because he saw through the situation of these people at a glance. As a nobleman with high status and status in the kingdom of Talan, and also the younger brother of the queen, Earl Sutton Stewart is very suitable to serve as an envoy. He is responsible for sending notices to the entire kingdom of Thailand. Sutton also knew enough about the situation of the lords in various parts of the Thailand kingdom to see through that the envoys who came to the northern plains were sent by some weak and barren lords. There were even some down-and-out lords who had lost their territory after fighting with their neighbors and wanted to ask the new king for justice. Those lords who had vast, fertile territories, sufficient troops, or simply rebelled did not come to Winter City in person or by sending envoys. Even some lords with average strength but relatively far away did not take David, the Duke of Glamorgan, who was about to inherit the throne. Seriously? To put it simply, even if all the envoys or lords who came so far swore allegiance to David, their territories would be just a bunch of spots on the map. Not only would they have no practical value, the map would also become very ugly. The only lord of great value to the soon-to-be-established Winter Kingdom is Marquis Dudley Morgan of Irontree Castle. The most important lords during the Kingdom of Tillan were the Marquis of Dudley Morgan, the Marquis of Prior Otto, and the Marquis of Ingram Furble, who were responsible for guarding the border. These three marquises are respectively located in Iron Tree Castle in the north, White Rock City in the south, and Dragon Castle in the east. As for the western part of the Kingdom of Thailand, because there are no strong enemies and it is adjacent to the barren lost land, the land itself is not considered rich. So several earls and lords are in charge. In addition, there are several important earls and lords around the royal capital. These earls also did not send envoys to the northern plains. White Rock City in the south has been captured by the temple. Marquis Dudley Morgan of Iron Tree Castle in the north has made it clear that he will be loyal to him. On the other hand, the Marquis of Herbert, who is in the east, has never expressed his position. I wonder what he thinks. When Sutton Stewart delivered the letter, he could not even see the Marquis. It was said that he was a way to quell the rebellion in the surrounding areas. The rebellion that this Marquis of Fable wants to put down the most is actually me. Right. Sutton smiled and said nothing. Although he often gave people the impression of being unreliable. He knew when to joke and when to remain silent. His ability to survive to this day depends on more than just his birth and blood relatives. Of course, it would be great if, for Sophia's sake, he could rest for a while. Unfortunately, that is impossible. Although he is called the deputy leader and de facto commander of the Tehran Knights, all members of the Tehran Knights, who are currently in training have to listen to Sylvanas. Sudden Earl Stewart was no exception. Next, he will return to the military camp for training. Sudden was not going to be lazy, because the day was getting closer for Winter City to launch a counterattack on the temple, and he wanted to be the first to rush into White Rock City. Chapter 401 Bards from Various Places The Northern Plains have not been hot this year, at the usual hottest time. This year it was only about 24 degrees, accompanied by a cool breeze and drizzle falling from time to time. It can be said that people living on the northern plains do not know what hot summer is. But the atmosphere in Winter City is extremely warm. As the succession ceremony approaches and various preparations continue to advance, it is no longer a secret that the Lord of Winter City, Duke David Glamorgan, is about to inherit the throne. The residents of Winter City all know that their Lord is about to become the king. To ordinary people, this does not seem to have much to do with them. But as the day gradually approaches, Winter City is filled with an extremely warm atmosphere. It seems that a celebration that can let the whole people revel is gradually taking shape. In this atmosphere, even the people around David were affected. It's just a ceremony. This is the ceremony for inheriting the throne. As the ceremonial officer of Duke David Glamorgan, Elias is responsible for organizing the entire succession ceremony. From the venue, candidates, procedures, etc., Everything must be controlled by the etiquette officer Elias Parker. As a ceremonial officer, being able to take full charge of a throne succession ceremony in his lifetime can be said to be the pinnacle of his career. No one took this ceremony more seriously than Elias. Therefore, for Elias Parker, the biggest problem is not the various details of the ceremony, but how to get Lord David Glamorgan to cheer up and pay attention to the ceremony, because the Duke doesn't seem to care about this matter very much. This is related to the official establishment of the Winter Kingdom. This moment may become an epic legend that will be sung for thousands of years. You don't want to be the protagonist of a joke and be passed down to future generations. Right. It makes sense. Recently, a lot of people have come to Winter City. In addition to the civilians 
and nobles of the kingdom of Thailand who are fleeing the war, as well as some envoys from lords. There are also many adventurers, among whom bards are the most common. Bards like to travel and take risks, and compile stories and poems about what they see and hear, and then spread them around. This is their way of life, their source of income, and their source of strength. In the past, there were no bards on the northern plains. Even if the kingdom of Thailand moved its capital to Winter City, the bards had no interest in the remote Winter City. It wasn't until David released the news that he would inherit the throne of the kingdom of Thailand and even rename the kingdom of Thailand the kingdom of winter that this aroused the curiosity of this group. The changing of dynasties and changing of flags. Such a dramatic scene finally aroused the curiosity of the bards and they set off to the northern plains one after another. Among them were many bards who were in the New Ellen Federation, the Sudurinmar Empire and the Holy Kingdom of Gunter. Troubadours. There are even some from more distant places. So, the Duke of Glamorgan initially established the village with the support of Lara Croft, with the help of Helen. He established a powerful army such as the Spartan Heavy Infantry, with the help of the High Elf Lyadron. He built the Holy Light Cathedral with the help, now with the help of Princess Sophia's relationship. He will become the king. Edkin told the information he had compiled during this period to Shirley and Sansa, who he had met not long ago. It seems that the Duke of Glamorgan achieved his current status through women. Edkin said with a look of envy and jealousy. He seems to be a very charming guy. Shirley was speechless. While Sansa was dumbfounded, neither of them could understand how the bard in front of him, who was said to come from a distant place, came to such a conclusion. Any questions? Well, it sounds like there's nothing wrong with it. Edkin nodded, wrote something more in his notebook, put away the notebook and pen, and sighed twice. I have to say, the things in Winter City are really convenient to use. In addition, the environment and convenient daily facilities of Winter City also left a deep impression on him. After living here for a period of time, he felt that he would not be able to adapt when he returned to Farron. Condition. Ahem. In short, I already understand the general situation, and I should be able to write a very attractive story. Edkin thanked the two of them and left happily, looking at Edkin who had left. Sansa looked at Shirley next to her. I think he's a little weird. Yes. Shirley nodded. She knew that the bard named Edkin was planning something secretly. But she did not tell Sansa about it. Anyway, I have already reported the matter of Edkin. No matter what this man who calls himself a bard is going to do, it is a matter for the intelligence department to deal with. In comparison, Shirley is more curious about Sansa's recent situation. It is said that she followed her father to King's Landing. Edkin, who was separated from his new friend whom he had just met, was walking on the streets of Winter City with a cheerful face, as inconspicuous as countless ordinary people around him. From time to time, he would stop and enter a certain shop to stay for a while. After wandering around for a while, Edkin activated his magical shuttle ability and returned to his own world. Edkin, a bard from the continent of Farron, is a former harpist. Since his wife was killed, he has given up his oath and made money through stealing and other methods with several companions. Not long ago, Edkin accidentally came to Winter City and was immediately attracted by this majestic, spectacular, clean and beautiful city. He thought that there must be huge wealth in this beautiful city. What's even more perfect is that he is not from this world. So as long as he runs back to Farron after success, he doesn't even have to worry about anyone making trouble for him. After telling his discovery to his companions, Edkin began to make various preparations for the plan, including finding suitable targets investigating various situation information in Winter City, etc. During this period of time, he had a clear enough understanding of the environment of Winter City, but he had never really explored the most conspicuous Fort Glamorgan. It was too dangerous, and he didn't want to alert Winter City. After all, he just wanted to find a rich target and collect some money. There were enough suitable targets in Winter City, and those noble families had rich enough assets. Stealing from these people was much safer than provoking a city lord. What makes Edkin very happy is that because the Duke of Glamorgan, the Lord of Winter City, is about to succeed to the throne. This has led to the constant arrival of outsiders in Winter City during this period. So he feels that he and his companions can easily the good ones are hidden in them and not discovered. After Edkin's hard work for a period of time, things developed steadily according to plan, including his contact with Sansa, who also came to Winter City from other worlds. And then through Sansa, he gained the ability to quickly learn Brian common language. 
Props to make your investigation work smoother. Etc. Edkin, who returned to the continent of Farron, reunited with his companions. While sharing the information he had collected with his companions, he was formulating or modifying his plan. A young duke with several lovers, including a princess. Fosh Fitzwilliam looked at the various intelligence information compiled by Edkin and was dissatisfied with Edkin's targeting of ordinary nobles. How satisfied? Why don't we just target the duke? It's too dangerous. Edkin continued to write and draw. Not only did he investigate a lot of intelligence information, he even drew a simplified map of Winter City. The power of Winter City is beyond imagination. I feel like provoking this duke is more dangerous than provoking a giant dragon. Uh. After hearing Edkin's description, the warlock Simon raised his hand and said, If it is really so dangerous, why do we still go to Winter City? Even if the other nobles in the city are not as scary as the duke. But they can we also mobilize the soldiers of Winter City? No. The situation is different. Edkin simply explained to his partner, Although Winter City's army is powerful and has many magical weapons and equipment, Ordinary nobles cannot mobilize these soldiers. And their residences do not have these. Soldiers serve as guards. In addition, Winter City also has many magical races. These races have powerful strength. And they only obey the orders of the Duke of Glamorgan. A magical race? Yes. A Cybertronian who is 5 to 8 meters tall, and whose whole body is made of metal, and can transform into a vehicle or an airplane. Edkin briefly described, He has strong strength and physique and can do whatever he wants. Flying Kryptonians. He had witnessed Cybertronians transforming and Kryptonians flying overhead. And some of Sansa's descriptions led him to classify these two races as a huge threat. Fortunately, as long as he doesn't provoke the Duke, neither the Cybertronians nor the Kryptonians will come to trouble him. However, after listening to Edkin's description, Simon firmly believed that this was a very bad plan. Even the barbarian Holge, who was usually fearless, felt that Edkin's choice this time was not very wise. Maybe we should abandon this operation. No. How can we give up? Before Edkin could speak, Fudge was the first to object. Do you want to keep stealing like this? As long as we can get enough wealth from Winter City, we can definitely say goodbye to your identity as a thief and live a stable life. Edkin, who was a little hesitant at first, glanced at his daughter Kira after hearing Fudge's words and firmed up his wavering thoughts. This is the last time. As long as we can succeed, we can say goodbye to this wandering thief. Career. Chapter 402 Gotham Lord Batman. Edkin and his buddies were working on their pensions, unaware that his information had been put in front of David. Edkin Darvis, a bard, claims to be from a faraway place, and is good at communication, speaking skills, and intelligence gathering. David looked at the information in front of him, and did not list this bard, who seemed to be playing something as a high threat. He knew that the Bard and his team wanted to steal some property in Winter City at most, and they would never harm others before the Red Robe which joined them. After the Red Robe which joined this small team, Edkin fell into trouble and was arrested and imprisoned for two years. After escaping, a series of things happened immediately, plot. At that time, he had no time to be a thief. Edkin will focus on Winter City, which means that he has not experienced those things at this time. This is also in line with the rules of visitors from other worlds who all come to Winter City before the plot begins. The Continent of Farron. Regarding that magical world, David has seven or six skills. His understanding of the worldview of dungeons and dragons is limited to literal words. Various settings, rules, races, and professional characteristics are all unclear. Don't you know what the real world of Farron is like? He was not prepared to expel Edkin. The bard was not inherently bad, and he knew that Edkin valued his daughter very much as long as he provided Edkin's daughter with a stable place to live. He could make Edkin Kim works for herself. When the time comes to send Edkin to the DC Universe, I wonder what Diana's reaction will be when she sees him. It should be more interesting than when Bruce sees Maggie. Right? After such a long time, Bruce finally made up his mind to visit Winter City after being in contact with Clark long enough, from being a little wary at the beginning. But now he has gradually learned enough about Winter City and David. Bruce has indeed discovered Maggie's existence. At this time, Bruce suddenly understood why David had that expression when he invited him. The Lord of Winter City did not have any ill intentions towards him, nor did he arrange any traps for him. This duke was definitely not an angel. Simply want to watch the fun. But even if he knew the truth, Bruce couldn't control himself. Recently, he went to Winter City more and more frequently. 
every time. He would come to this small coffee shop that didn't even have a name, order a cup of coffee and be in a daze. Since Bruce does not have any property in Winter City, nor does he work for the Duke of Glamorgan in Winter City, he is an absolute poor man in Winter City. So he would call Clark every time he came, and Clark would pay for the coffee. Occasionally, he would go to Fort Glamorgan to drink tea from David. After figuring out David's character, Bruce gave up his original probing method and chose a more direct way of communication. What's the problem? I would ask David himself directly. For example, Now! When he saw the bard named Edkin, who looked exactly like someone in Diana's photo, he knew what the Duke was playing. I don't think that's a good idea. I didn't say it was a good idea. David was just watching the excitement and didn't think it was a big deal. Who made Diana look displeased with him? Thinking of this, David suspected that Edkin's appearance was because he wanted to cause trouble for Diana in his heart? Is that why this bard came to Winter City from the continent of Farron? However, compared to this matter, David was more concerned about another point. With the development of Winter City, it became increasingly difficult for visitors from other worlds to be discovered immediately. When Sansa appeared, he happened to be out. If Medivh hadn't said H, low, he wouldn't have known that Sansa was here. Clark wandered around Winter City alone for a long time. But David happened to bump into him. When Rick came, he didn't even know that he was met by Laura and the others. He didn't know when Ekin came this time. Fortunately, the intelligence department was quite reliable. When he realized that someone was constantly collecting information, he immediately put him on the watch list. Together with Shirley's report, Ekin became a key surveillance target. And only then did David realize that there was another new person from another world. Thinking of this, David began to think about whether he should simply post multilingual announcements in Winter City and let visitors from other worlds consciously go to a special place to register? It doesn't seem impossible. However, the situation is not mature yet. David believes that when multifunctional tools are fully implemented in Winter City and everyone uses multifunctional tools to store personal information and conduct payment transactions, this order will be easier to implement. Because new visitors from other worlds find that it is difficult to live without a multifunction tool in Winter City. And when it even becomes particularly conspicuous, they will consciously register and receive a multifunction tool with personal information. Thinking of personal information being enthroned. How have you considered it? Throwing Edkin's information aside, David looked at Bruce Wayne in front of him. This Batman has been coming to Winter City more and more frequently recently. He has been coming here every day recently. He must have made a decision in his heart. Right? Join Winter City? Or join the Avengers? In your wisdom, you should understand that there is no difference. When Winter City began to open to Bruce Wayne, David never thought about continuing to use any lies to deceive him. Playing that trick in front of Batman is just a trick. I think there is a difference. Bruce took a sip of tea. David's tea here was the best in Winter City. He wanted to pack some and go back. Joining the Avengers means that I only need to pay attention to my own world. Just like the Martian Manhunter you invited before. Martian Manhunter's identity has long been exposed by David. Even if he himself is very unhappy. There is nothing David can do about it. Bruce also learned from David and Clark that there was actually a Martian hiding in the top military hierarchy. He was surprised and at the same time thought it seemed reasonable. No one stipulated that only Clark, an alien, could be hidden on the earth. You are much stronger than him. With such powerful abilities, you should shoulder more responsibilities. David doesn't care much about Martian Manhunter in his heart. Although Martian Manhunter has strong physical fitness and multiple superpowers, his personality is too troublesome, and he won't give any reaction unless he is pushed to the extreme. What's even more annoying is that when you think he's completely calm, he still wants to get involved in everything. And then, he doesn't know how to get rid of it himself, and always deceives others to get ahead. So his recruitment of Martian Manhunter was just casual, and he didn't even invite Martian Manhunter to Winter City. Bruce looked at David in front of him. He was surprised that the other party had such a high opinion of him. I'm just an ordinary human being. You underestimate your abilities. I'm almost 50. So? You don't want the people you have worked so hard to recruit to die within a few years. Right. In Bruce's view, David's power is still in its infancy. And it is understandable that he wants to recruit more talents. But the target should be those who are young and middle-aged. An old bat like himself who is almost unable to fight will not be of much help to David and Winter City. After such a long period of observation, Batman knows more than just that David is not an angel. Things. You are only 50 years old. If you are willing, life has just begun. 
Bruce didn't answer and drank a few sips of tea quietly. The office became very quiet, with only the sound of the clinking of cups and saucers. After a long silence, Bruce did not answer David's question directly, but instead raised a question. The public security in Winter City is very good. If it weren't for the recent influx of a large number of outsiders, there would be no thefts or pickpockets. Bruce yearns for Winter City very much. In the past few months, there have not been a few crimes in Winter City. Winter City is simply the city of his dreams. Do you think Gotham can become like this? Can. How to do it? You will serve as Lord of Gotham, strictly enforcing every law with an armed force completely loyal to you. Bruce thought David was joking, but he could only tell from David's face that he was serious and was not telling a joke to fool him. Do you think this will completely eliminate crime? Cannot. The crime rate in Winter City is low because the Brainians in Winter City are relatively less knowledgeable and simple-minded. They are not like people in modern cities, who face all kinds of temptations at any time. But even if Winter City develops to a more advanced level in the future, it won't become as chaotic as Gotham. After all, Gotham is famous for its lack of order. The legal provisions are not much stronger than toilet paper. The credibility is about zero. The cost of crime is so low that it can be ignored. And crimes are naturally abundant. Winter City is different. Winter City's laws have been implemented perfectly so far and Elizabeth's men have also shown sufficient deterrence. Legal provisions have credibility and deterrence, and people are willing or forced to abide by the law. In addition, the residents of Winter City currently have a stable and beautiful life, or are about to have a stable and beautiful life. They do not want their beautiful future to suddenly disappear. Go by yourself. The combination of various elements is the real reason why Winter City has good public security. Bruce wants to turn Gotham into a second Winter City, which is much more difficult than the new city David built from the wilderness. Considering the intricate entanglements of interests within Gotham, the simplest and crudest way David can think of to end is to carry out a purge. David felt as if he had become a ninja master. Bruce Wayne wouldn't suddenly fall out with him and blow up Fort Glamorgan. Right? Chapter 403 Crowned as King Bruce didn't fall out with David. After all, he was an experienced old bat. Not the passionate young man full of naive ideas. In a way, David's solution can indeed solve Gotham's problems. Moreover, David is not so radical as a ninja master that he is ready to wipe the entire city of Gotham from the world regardless of good or bad. But just because the method is effective doesn't mean it can be implemented. And Bruce Wayne doesn't think he can become the lord of Gotham. He has always been hiding in the shadows instead of standing in the front. As for joining the Avengers, he decided to join after thinking about it because after he came to Winter City, David mentioned Darkseid to him. The Dark Lord will inevitably launch an attack on the Earth. Bruce Wayne doesn't think that he, just an ordinary human being, can single-handedly deal with such a powerful enemy. It is not his fault to leave the enemy to others and stay out of it. Character. Then the only option is to join. After joining the Avengers, Bruce Wayne started a series of preparations. First, he had to figure out the various powers, resources, connections to the world that Winter City had, and who could come if necessary. Support. Based on this information, make detailed plans to make all preparations for facing Darkseed in the future. Bruce Wayne started to be busy, and he couldn't even find anyone. The only reliable way was to go to the Batcave or his usual coffee shop in Winter City and wait for him to show up. But David hasn't been looking for Bruce recently. In fact, he hasn't been looking for anyone during this time. Summer is fading away and autumn is finally here. Winter City has ushered in the busiest period since its establishment. Countless people from all over the Brunia continent gathered in Winter City. Many outsiders expressed their amazement at this magical city. Some people were not even ready to leave and considered settling directly in Winter City. There are also many adventurers who are curious about the various novelties in Winter City, and they want to buy some weapons, armor, notebooks, pens, etc. The influx of a large population has further stimulated the economy of Winter City and new factories are being built in the industrial zone almost every day. Many small hotels, restaurants, pubs and other consumption places have also been opened. In addition, many races that have not been seen before have appeared in Winter City, such as Tauran, Centaurs and other races that are extremely rare in the Kingdom of Thailand. It's a pity that David doesn't have time to contact these tourists. He doesn't even have time to pay attention to the Bard Edkin, so he can only leave the job of monitoring the thief to his subordinates. As the day approached, David conducted several drills under the supervision of the Protocol Officer Elias and also received the Marquis Dudley Morgan, the Lord of Iron Tree Castle, 
Marquis Dudley Morgan had just arrived in Winter City a few days ago, accompanied by Maloney Mansfield. After a brief visit to Winter City, he waited for a private interview with Duke David Glamorgan. Opportunity. When Marquis Morgan saw young David, he could not help but feel some emotion in his heart. Just a few years ago, this young man was a civilian pioneer who wanted to take over the appointment letter from him. Who would have thought that in just a few years, David Glamorgan would grow from an ordinary young man to a point where even the Marquis himself would swear allegiance to him? It is simply impossible to say that there is no dissatisfaction in my heart. Marquis Morgan also fantasized more than once whether he could replace David Glamorgan and become the new king of the kingdom of Tillan? But his reason kept reminding him that he should just think about this delusion in his heart and never put it into actual action. Otherwise, what awaits him will definitely not be the throne, but the execution platform. Winter City is truly a beautiful city. No matter what, this compliment definitely comes from the heart. Although I have heard countless reports from Maloney, I am still amazed when I see it in person. Winter City is not divided into an inner city and an outer city. But the fact that the entire city can be so clean and beautiful is simply a miracle in the eyes of Marquis Morgan. If possible, he also hopes that his Iron Tree Fort can become so clean and beautiful. After all, no one likes to live in a place surrounded by large garbage dumps and public toilets. Even if there are various means to ensure that the air in the inner city is fresh enough, you still have to endure the bad environment every time you go out of the city. I heard that Snowfield Castle is undergoing renovation. And Thailand Port in the eastern part of the Northern Plains has also taken shape? David looked at Marquis Dudley Morgan and knew why he mentioned these two places. So he gave him a straightforward guarantee. As an important gateway town, Iron Tree Fort does need some reconstruction. With David's assurance, Marquis Dudley Morgan believed that his meeting today was meaningful. Show attitude? Allegiance? There is no need to talk about this kind of thing anymore. What we want to talk about now are benefits in a more practical sense. And David has enough good things in his hands to satisfy these people's requirements. And with the development of Winter City, David continues to connect to more worlds through Golden Finger. Even if David asks these lords to give up their territories in the future, he can still provide the bargaining chip to get these people to nod in agreement. There are enough cards and plenty of room for maneuver. So David is full of confidence in the future. However, David has missed a lot of things recently due to the constant reception of various messengers. For example, while David was preparing for the ceremony, the Alliance army from Azeroth had already headed to Northrend and launched an attack on the Lich King. Strive to eliminate this huge threat of the Lich King once and for all. Winter City mainly served as technical support in this war and sent a small number of people to help in the war. For example, Aiden, who has basically got rid of Diavolo's control, Lara, who has more free time and wants to see what good things Northrend has, General Zod and others, who want to ensure the combat power of themselves and their men. They would all go to Azeroth to do a small favor, fight the undead and so on. Even the Knights of Winter were brought to Northrend by Gareth Stanton for several expedition trainings in order to better complete the goal of turning the whole group into paladins. It must be said that fighting the undead seems to be beneficial to becoming a paladin. The paladins did help. After a few visits, the Knights of Winter were one step closer to becoming all paladins. David would never have imagined that Gareth was so anxious to turn his knights into paladins because he wanted to show off the Knights of Winter at the succession ceremony. As the Ace Knights of Winter City, the Winter Knights will serve as the escort and honor guard for the new King David. When the time comes, the whole group will be shining with golden light and surrounded by holy light. The reputation of the Winter Knights spread throughout the continent of Brunia. After all, a knighthood composed entirely of extraordinary beings who have mastered mysterious power has never appeared in the history of Brania continent. The Knights of Winter will become the first armed group whose entire group has mastered mysterious power. Recorded in the history of the Brannian continent, amid the anticipation of countless people, the day for the succession ceremony finally arrived. David greeted all his familiar friends in advance. Most of the people who received the invitation came to Winter City in advance. Fortunately, the ceremony was held in the square south of Winter Fortress. So there was no need to worry about too many people. Arrange. A high platform has been built there in advance. And a series of arrangements have been made around the high platform to reserve seats for the guests attending the ceremony. At the same time, the height of the altar-like platform is very suitable, making it easier for civilians watching from a distance to see the entire process. What if someone causes trouble? What if you even want to assassinate? David wasn't worried about that kind of thing. Maybe it would be more interesting if an assassin actually showed up. For him, 
This so-called succession ceremony was very boring. The only thing he was thankful for was that he didn't have to control eating and drinking before the ceremony like ordinary people. Even if he eats a big meal and then walks directly onto the stage of the ceremony, he doesn't have to worry about making a fool of himself due to physical factors. It's just too boring. Standing on the high platform, maintaining his image carefully, David used his peripheral vision to observe the guests watching the ceremony. There are Steve, Thor, Tony, Natasha and others from the Marvel Universe who may or may not have joined Winter City. There are also Clark, Bruce, etc. from the DC Universe. He also saw a large number of Pokemon, headed by Squirtle, staying in the viewing area reserved for Pokemon. In addition to Squirtle, Eevee and Bulbasaur, which were the largest in Winter City. There were many more. Katie Dog, Jigglypuff. In addition, Leon, Jill, Claire, Chris and others are also below. While Will, Elizabeth, Leonard and others are among the group of Winter City officials. Everyone with direct ties to Winterfell arrived. And many with indirect ties also came. David even saw Kaeldats, who had ascended the throne as the king of Quelthalas, and Queen Kalia of Lordaeron Minithil, Dalen Proudmore of Kultiras. It can be said that there are a lot of important people from several worlds gathered in the square at this moment. If someone can throw something like a focusing rainbow at this time, it will definitely be a super event that affects the multiverse. The group of people below never imagined that David, who was about to be crowned king on the stage, was thinking about this kind of thing. When Abelson finally finished his speech, took off the newly created crown from his head, and placed it on the tray in the hand of Elias, the ceremonial officer in front of him. The ceremony finally reached the most critical step, seeing Elias walking up to him, kneeling on one knee, holding a tray in his hand, and raising the shining crown in front of him. David retracted his wandering thoughts solemnly picked up the crown with both hands, and slowly slowly placed it on his head. Following David's movements, the originally clear sky without a single cloud suddenly became dark, and all the lights seemed to be concentrated together into a beam, enveloping David wearing the crown. At the same time, the fifty winter knights around the high platform raised their swords, and wings of holy light spread out behind their backs. Chapter 404 Not Found In a brief speech, it was announced that the Kingdom of Thailand was officially renamed the Kingdom of Winter, and its capital was Winter City, accepting allegiance, although only a few lords were present. The presence of Marquis Dudley Morgan, the lord of the northern important town of the Kingdom of Tillan, somewhat added some convincing to the ceremony. The Kingdom of Winter belongs to the Kingdom of Tillan, the legitimate heir. Then, there was the parade and inspection of the entire Winter City, showing off properly in front of the people in the city, different from his usual car rides. This time David paraded on a war horse, accompanied by the Winter Knights in blizzard power armor. This group of paladins are surrounded by holy light and shining golden light, and they look very imposing. With the singing of the bards in the crowd, the Winter Knights are not far away from becoming the number one idol group in the Brunia continent. After the Winter Kingdom's army moves south, as the battles progress, the Winter Knights will transform from an idol group into a powerful group. By that time, there may be many people dreaming of joining this knighthood. The slow, time-consuming procession around the city lasted until dusk. The entire process was strictly timed, and the time at which point one had to reach was carefully considered. Before the sun was about to set, David finally returned to his castle of Glamorgan. This is really excruciating. It was not physical fatigue, but mental torture. Fortunately, it was finally over. There will be a banquet next, which is not a very relaxing occasion. No. The banquet is nothing compared to what I experienced during the day. The banquet was mostly about socializing and entertaining. And David had to constantly communicate with all kinds of people. He basically had no free time. But it was better than sitting on a horse, like a rare object, and being watched by the whole city. Thanks to his amazing physical fitness now. Otherwise half of his life would have been lost even if he hadn't died at the end of the day. Would you like to eat something before going out? No need. Just drink some lemonade. The banquet was held in the back garden of Fort Glamorgan. It was spacious enough to entertain as many guests as possible. And people from Cybertron could also come and join in the fun. When David appeared, the banquet officially began. And there was an endless stream of people who came up to congratulate David. Among them, those with relatively special status. Such as King Kaeldatz, Queen Kalia, and Chief Dalen all received some preferential treatment. The etiquette officer Elias has already made clear the identities of everyone present. He will stand at the right distance from David to help him screen. If someone comes forward at an inappropriate time, 
and wants to find someone. When David was talking, he would be stopped by the etiquette officer. Then depending on the situation, it will be handed over to other officials, or Eva or Helen, and then brought to David at the right time. It can be said that this banquet tortured not only David, but also the people around David. He chatted with many people in a hurry. Even though David's mental power had been strengthened several times, he was still a little unsure of how many people he had talked to. As for Sophia next to her, she was completely confused. She felt that everyone who appeared in front of her was a stranger. In addition to maintaining her own smile, she just answered some simple questions mechanically. Fortunately, the protagonist today is not her. She only needs to make a vase to set off David. Moreover, after a certain period of time, this job can be handed over to Laura, and Sophia goes directly to her parents. With her back to the crowd, Sophia rubbed her cheeks vigorously with both hands. She felt that the flesh here had lost all feeling. Mind your appearance. Sophia, I've been paying attention. After Sophia felt her cheeks come to life again, she stopped her movements and then carefully arranged her appearance. He regained his smiling expression and then turned to face the everyone. His mother Rosie came over to check again and made sure there was nothing wrong before continuing to chat with Sophia. Are you going to go back and stay with David? Laura will accompany him next. Sophia explained. The next people who greeted and chatted with David were all David's old friends, who were more familiar with Laura. Then you shouldn't hide in a corner like this. Rosie was very speechless to her daughter. Didn't she know that this was the best time to expand her network? I see you and your father are so bored sitting in the corner. So I came here just to keep you company. After all, they were also the king and queen of the former Talan kingdom. As soon as the throne was passed to David, no one paid attention to the couple. At such a lively banquet, the place where the two of them were staying seemed to be isolated from the rest of the world. With almost no one taking the initiative to say H, low to them. It wouldn't be surprising if people from other worlds or other places behaved like this. After all, they didn't know the couple, but even the nobles of the former Thailand kingdom behaved like this, which made Sophia feel a little unhappy. But Abelson himself is not surprised by this, and he will not be angry or dissatisfied with this kind of thing. His own era is over, and the future belongs to David and his winter city. Others who had similar thoughts included Bruce Wayne, who stayed aside and looked at the lively garden, where there were all kinds of people from all over the world. The High Elf King of Azeroth, the Queen of the Human Kingdom, the leader of the island kingdom, and the representative of the mage kingdom. Another sorcerer supreme, super rich, as guardian with many superhero worlds. Kryptonian. Cybertronians. There are even Pokemon. Bruce knows that for his world. David and Winterfell are risks, but also opportunities. What troubled him the most was that part of the key to which direction it would develop was actually in his hands. This made Bruce feel a lot of pressure. For the first time in his life, he fell into a state where he didn't know what to make. Is it to make Winter City more closely connected to its own world and promote the upgrading of its own world in some way? Or should we continue to maintain the status quo and let people on Earth develop on their own? Compared to Bruce who didn't know how to make a decision, Steve had already started taking action. I am no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. Oh, congratulations. David felt very regretful. He had missed so many things in the past six months. He had completely missed the plot of Doctor Strange. Is Stephen Strange officially taking office? Yes. Steve said that the focus of his next work is to complete the cleansing work with his group of Hydras. It won't be long before they will stand in front of the stage openly and openly in the name of the Justice League. By the way, the instrument you asked Tony to make that can travel to parallel time and space has been completed. It seems that another Thanos is going to be unlucky. David said that he knew. In the past few days, he took the time to go over and stab a Thanos to death. After getting the Infinity Stones, he eliminated the Celestials, who were about to be born on the Earth. After that's done, nothing big happens in the Marvel Universe. Right? Of course, there will never be a shortage of strong men who can cause trouble in that world. Who knows what kind of villains will appear in the future? Regarding this kind of thing, David's expectations are far greater than his worries. Continuing to change people's chat. After greeting all the guests, the banquet came to an end. Some of the guests who had greeted them earlier had already left the banquet site one after another. And gradually those who remained in the garden were their own people. David roughly scanned the superheroes of the Marvel Universe, the superheroes of the DC Universe, the mutants from the Fox X-Men world, the protagonists of the Resident Evil world, the mages, priests, and paladins of Azeroth. 
plus Peter and Green Goblin Harry from the Amazing Spider-Man world. Otto Octavius from the Spider-Man world. Elizabeth. Will. James Norrington from the Caribbean world. And a whole bunch more. It's really diverse, and the troops are strong. Seeing so many strong men. David suddenly felt that helping Eva take back her world could be put on the agenda? Let's stabilize the situation on the Brania continent first. Eva wasn't in a hurry. A few years had passed anyway. And she didn't care to wait a little longer. Just wait until the continent of Brunia is completely brought under the rule of Winter City. And then deal with the Empire of the Rising Sun. Don't worry. You won't have to wait long. Although the order for the Winter Army to march south has not yet been officially issued. The army has already made all preparations for the southern expedition. As soon as David Glamorgan is crowned king, the army will head south immediately. At that time, anyone who dares to stand in front of the army will be regarded as enemies of the Winter Kingdom and be completely eliminated. This war is relatively cruel. So we won't let friends like Clark help. We will mainly rely on the legions of Winter City and the Decepticons. With the combat effectiveness of the Winter City army, David gave Gareth Stanton the goal. Before the end of next year, the entire kingdom of Tillan will be returned to the rule of the kingdom of Winter. Regarding this goal, everyone in Winter City believes that it can be easily accomplished. And Gareth Stanton has no pressure at all. Just waiting for the day when the army officially sets off. The only thing that gave Gareth a headache was Princess Sophia. Her Highness had made it clear that she would go out with the army and personally lead the Tehran Knights on the battlefield. I hope Her Royal Highness the Princess will not be too excited when she arrives on the battlefield and rush to the front. After entertaining the last guest, David looked at the garden, where only Belfast was left directing the maids to clean up the mess. He gently touched the crown on his head and picked up a glass of champagne, saying to himself from the bottom of his heart, Congratulations. Congratulations. You finally achieved a small goal. After drinking the champagne in one gulp, David looked back at his close friends who were waiting for him and decided to share the surging joy in his heart with him. Chapter 405 True Name A blue light door suddenly flashed, and then a purple-skinned giant appeared from it. There were hideous wounds on his body, and his entire left arm seemed to have been severely burned. The golden gloves on his hands were also obviously damaged, but he didn't care about all this, with a relaxed and joyful smile on his face, as if he had completed some important mission, just when the purple giant wanted to go out and look at the beautiful sunset. A spear penetrated his head directly. The purple giant with a smile on his face fell neatly to the wooden floor and let out a cry. There was a loud bang. Kill with one blow. David, who had been hiding in the dark for a while, swung his spear and cut off Thanos' gloved left arm. Although he was sure that Thanos, who was shot in the head by himself, was definitely dead. In order to avoid accidents, he still separated the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos. Then he gently picked up the Golden Poseidon spear in his hand picked up the infinity gauntlet on the ground, and reached out to hold it. Everything is going smooth! David looked at the huge infinity gauntlet in his hand. He had no interest in this glove. He directly used alchemy to transform the entire infinity gauntlet into a lump of alloy, and then put it into the storage space. The six infinity stones above were suspended in the air. After much deliberation, David decided to set all six infinity stones into his crown. David's crown was specially made by an alchemy workshop before the coronation ceremony. It was mixed with a variety of special metals and added many magical effects. It can prevent mind control, mental attacks, illusion attacks, etc., and has a good amplification effect on holy light spells. In addition, it reduces the weight and can be worn stably on the head without falling off. It can be regarded as an integrated attack and defense, and it will not fall off when worn a spell-casting tool that feels a bit uncomfortable. David's inlaying the Infinity Stones doesn't seem to have much effect. At most, it has some use in the Marvel Universe. These stones are pure decorations in other worlds. Putting the crown inlaid with six Infinity Stones on his head, David suddenly came up with a strange idea. If there was a weapons dealer wearing a robe and covering his face standing outside the house at this time, would he offer a high price for this crown? Looking at Thanos' body in front of him, David thought for a few seconds, then directly activated the power of the Power Stone, completely blasting Thanos' body into dust. Then he wrote some words on the wall of the wooden house to let the Avengers, who later found it, know that Thanos was dead and that the Infinity Stones had been taken away by him. After finishing these things, David remembered that the Avengers were able to find Thanos because Thanos once again used the power of the Infinity Stones to completely destroy the six Infinity Stones. 
because the same huge energy fluctuation was emitted when he snapped his fingers and wiped out half of the population. The location of Thanos's reclusive planet was revealed. Without this energy release, the Avengers would not be able to find Thanos. After thinking about it, David stood on the farmland and released a small amount of energy casually. It didn't matter whether this energy wave, which was much weaker than before, could be detected by Rocket Raccoon. Anyway, in the original plot, the Avengers came here in vain. And then, they were depressed for several years. After finally solving the problem of time travel, they saved half of the lives that had been reduced to ashes. After doing these things, David activated his quantum suit and returned to the Marvel Universe he was more familiar with through quantum space. Welcome back, Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, and the newly met Ant-Man Scott Lang and old Ant-Man Hank Pym. Janet Van Dyne who was rescued not long ago. Hulk Bruce Banner stood there staring at David. Although they have already conducted tests to confirm the effectiveness of this equipment and instruments. Traveling to a parallel universe still feels very magical. How do you feel? I don't feel anything. When using this device to travel, he is like a passenger riding a roller coaster. Positioning and transmission are all completed by the device. At most, he can look at the colorful quantum space passages while traveling. But he still doesn't understand what's useful. As things. Did things go well? After hearing Steve's question, David took out the crown he had put away before returning. Seeing David setting the infinity stones into his crown, Steve and Tony both said, Ah, as expected of you. Looked like they were not surprised at all that David would do such a thing. On the contrary, the Hulk, the old Ant-Man, and the new Ant-Man, plus the old Wasp, are like, Is this even okay? The look. What's next? As for why David asked Tony to make this set of equipment, why go to other parallel universes to get the Infinity Stones? Everyone present knows these things. Similarly, they also know that due to David's intervention, the Earth or the entire universe has avoided a catastrophe. But this has caused another crisis to break out in advance. A group of gods conceived in the Earth is about to be born. This is definitely not good news for life on Earth. The smooth birth of the celestial group means the destruction of the Earth. If you want to save the Earth, you must prevent the birth of the Celestials. David ran to another world to get the infinite stones for this purpose. Before the Celestial group was born, it had no entity. Therefore, although the Celestial group was conceived in the Earth, before its actual birth, there was no way to find traces of the Celestial group's existence anywhere on the Earth. They condense their bodies at the same time they are born. It can be said that the Celestial group at this time is just a group of energy. The way to prevent the birth of the Celestials is actually not that complicated. The energy that gave birth to the Celestial God group can be dispersed, destroyed, or transferred. David's method is in line with his character. How can you waste so much energy casually? Why don't you give me the advantage? His plan is to absorb the energy that gave birth to the Celestials, and then break up the energy that cannot be absorbed and return it to nature, opening his arms and clenching his fists in a vigorous gesture. The crown on David's head began to emit a dazzling light. Tony didn't even expect that David would just do what he said without making any preparations, and directly activate the Infinity Stones. Isn't this guy afraid of blowing up the Avengers base? Everyone is currently in the newly built Avengers base. It is located in a remote area with no civilians living around it. It is considered a standard wilderness area. But what about waiting for someone here? Isn't David afraid of accidentally affecting the spectators like them? Putting on the steel armor and activating the various protective functions on it, Tony watched David in front of him being surrounded by light flow and then looked at Steve next to him. Steve spread his hands and used holy light energy to condense a huge shield, while also protecting the old Ant-Man couple and the new Ant-Man Scott behind him. This scene seemed a bit dangerous, but no one wanted to leave. The old Ant-Man and his wife, the new Ant-Man and Banner were all staring ahead with curiosity, even though David's whole body turned into a ball of light and he couldn't see anything at all. Even after coming out, they had no intention of giving up. As a scientist, what is happening in front of me is really curious. Although they have heard all kinds of magical rumors about His Majesty David Glamorgan. After actually seeing him, the two generations of Ant-Man and the old Wasp will still be very curious. What kind of person is this David? Exist? Judging from the initial introduction, this David seems to be an ordinary human. Even though he lives in another world and another continent, the humans in Brunia are no different from humans on Earth. However, the other party's various magics reminded everyone that this His Majesty is definitely not a simple human being. Perhaps, we can get some clues from the other party's actions this time. 
Only a planet that can breed intelligent life can give birth to a celestial being. And it takes a long, long time to give birth to a celestial being. Coupled with the power of the legendary celestial being, we can see how much energy is needed to successfully birth a celestial being. The hugeness. This David actually wants to absorb such a huge amount of energy. Even if the other party had previously said that he could suck as much as he could and give it back to nature if he couldn't suck it out. This behavior was still too crazy in the eyes of the old Ant-Man. Ordinary people might just take the first bite. It will be blown to pieces by the huge energy. But a long time had passed. And the light group on the opposite side was bright and dazzling. And was extremely stable. Showing no signs of losing control. Steve's words also confirmed the old Ant-Man's judgment. It seems there will be no danger. David's condition is very stable. Absorbing the energy of this god group has not caused any burden on him. Those present were all highly intelligent people. And they all understood the meaning of this sentence. And came to the conclusion that His Majesty David Glamorgan was actually a more powerful life form than the Celestials. While several people were thinking this, the light group in front of them gradually shrank. And the stream of light that continued to pour out from the ground gradually became thinner and faded until it disappeared. David revealed his figure again and the light on his body slowly converged into his body. Huh? While taking a long breath, David shook his body slightly, and then large light spots were ejected from his body to the surroundings, like golden snowflakes, covering everyone's sight with a faint golden halo. But after blinking, these visions had disappeared, and the scene just now seemed to be a momentary hallucination. How do you feel? Same question, but this time got a completely different answer. It's never felt better. This was the first time that David felt this comfortable feeling of, well-fed, that emanated from the depths of his soul. He had no real sense of the powerful power that could easily destroy a planet. The power of the universe. Feelings. But I can be sure that after getting all the energy of time in, the god group, I finally became a real titan. And her real name is Brynia. Chapter 406. The Cancer on Brynia. David had already made some guesses about his situation. He had seen too many clues in the past few years. Azeroth's attitude towards him was enough to make him think about it. But guesses are just guesses after all. No matter how clear the clues are, there is still the possibility of a wrong guess before the answer is truly revealed. So he never told anyone the conclusion he had deduced. Until this moment. At this moment, David got the accurate answer. As for himself, it was Brunia who was reincarnated on the earth and then came back? Or did Brynia just find a template from the earth and transform it into it? Or maybe he was possessed by Brynia? He doesn't care about any of this. Why do you want it to be so complicated? I am who I am. In addition, after becoming a real titan, David can be sure that there is no other consciousness in his body. He does not have to worry about being suddenly seized after he grows to a certain level. Therefore, he no longer cares about the truth. The past is not important. Only the present is important. After happily returning to Winter City, David felt that his connection with the land beneath his feet had become even closer. He could even immerse his spirit deeper into the planet and perceive more of what was happening to him. Things. Huh? Not long after immersing his mind, David received a massive amount of information. It's not just this world that shares the same name as this continent. Called Brenia. He can also feel that there is very strong protection around him. And it is these protections that prevent those gods from directly entering this world. But these protections also use most of Brenia's power which was the fundamental reason why David received almost no power directly from this world. I see. But these are not the key points that can attract David's attention. David has already known or guessed these situations before. Among this massive amount of information, what concerned him the most was another continent located on the backside of Brunia. It was completely different from the feeling that the land under his feet gave him. That continent was like a cancer that was forcibly parasitic on his body. It felt so uncomfortable and uncomfortable. David couldn't help but tremble twice and used his hands. Scratched his back. Although it made no real sense. He just couldn't control his hands. This continent is full of strong energy. But it's obviously coming from the enemies outside. After enduring the discomfort and feeling it carefully for a moment, David felt countless different forces from this continent. And he could sense similar fluctuations in the powerful beings outside. Remembering that when Kara discovered a fixed interface on the seabed, she speculated that there might be another continent. And now David has proved it in this way. This continent should be the forward base of those guys in Brunia. What is depressing is that this continent is filled with the power of other gods. Making it impossible for David to perceive the specific situation above. As for the continent of Brunia. 
The western side is also unable to clearly perceive various details. The eastern part of the continent is slightly better. But only the northern plains can be sensed as finely as if they were actually there. Other areas are still disturbed by various forces. Especially the areas occupied by the temple forces. Of course, what this means is that when a thought arises, the spiritual consciousness will go to that place. If David consumes energy and uses spells such as astral projection, he can still send his spiritual consciousness to the area controlled by the temple. By this time, many things gradually became clear, and David also had a clearer plan for what he would do next. After unifying the kingdom of Tehran, annihilating the kingdom of Holy Gaunt, the Soderuma Empire, and the New Ellen Federation, and completely pacifying the eastern part of the Brinian continent, they marched westward and wiped out the Dark Elf's Evernight Empire. Then, go to another continent and completely wipe out that continent and everything on it. After all the enemies in the world of Brindia have been cleared, it's time to think about how to defeat the gods that surround them. We are heading directly towards the development of cosmic level civilization. I originally thought that my winter kingdom was developing very quickly. After all, I was driving forward in leaps and bounds and achieved such results in just a few years. At present, the army of the winter kingdom is ready to go south and will start to regain the homeland of Thailand. With the strength of the Winter City Army, there is basically no suspense in this southern expedition. Just push them all the way and kill everyone who refuses to accept. David likes this fighting method best. If there are no accidents, it will be the same situation when he destroys the temple, the Sotoruma Empire, and the New Ellen Federation. It shouldn't be difficult to deal with the Eternal Night Empire next. But I just don't know what the situation is like on the other continent. Do you want to send someone to investigate? Or focus on the battle at hand first? After the problems on the Brinian continent are solved, can we consider the next stage? David, who had regained his spiritual consciousness, was a little undecided for a moment. However, he doesn't need to be alone here and think hard behind closed doors. He can ask other people and listen to everyone's opinions. Before David started to take action, Sophia ran to him first. What's wrong? Come and say goodbye to you. I will go on an expedition with the army soon. Sophia is wearing the Northern Wind Light Armor the representative of the Tehran Knights. It is said to be light armor, but that is compared with the blizzard power armor and the heavy armor transformed from the northern wind heavy motorcycle. This set of northern wind light armor is worn on the body. It's not light compared to traditional knight armor. Therefore, Sophia's beautiful figure was completely covered up. David felt that Winter City's armor was not scientific at all. It was said that the more flesh was exposed, the higher the protection would be, how could the people at the alchemy workshop ignore such an important rule? Remember, don't be willful on the battlefield. David will not go out with the army this time. He has watched this kind of crushing battle several times. And he will not go this time. As for the Tehran Knights, leave the command to Sutton Stewart and leave the charge and pursuit to Sylvanas. Then what do I do? Just be a mascot. Her Royal Highness the Princess went out with the army in person. The gimmick was big enough. There was no need for Sophia to rush to the front like a real warrior and cut off a few heads with her own hands to boost morale. Although after a period of warming and nourishing, the strengthening potion used by Sophia has completed the improvement of her body. In her free time, Sophia herself is also familiar with the North Wind series equipment of the Thailand Knights. And she also goes to the dungeon from time to time to gain practical experience. But after all, she was a little girl who had never been on the battlefield. And she was still facing the same human beings. David was worried that Sophia wouldn't be able to bear such a cruel scene. Reaching out to make a bird's nest from Sophia's tied blonde hair. And watching Sophia leave with an angry expression while arranging her hair. David thought about it and used the multifunction tool to contact RC. What are your orders? You will also set out with the army for this expedition. Originally, David was not prepared to let RC and Ottawa join this southern expedition. Even though RC herself is a warrior with rich combat experience. But now he changed his mind. Just stay with Sophia. I see. Although the Winter Army is very powerful, David can be sure that his army can definitely sweep across several major human countries. But you can't go wrong with being careful. RC follows Sophia. Not only can she turn into a plane to take Sophia away from the battlefield when necessary, but she can also contact David immediately. By then, relying on the teleportation ability that he received from Blink and became more and more proficient. He can definitely ensure that nothing unexpected happens to Sophia. After ending the call, David was stunned for two seconds. And then, he was about to go find someone to discuss the matter. As a result, 
Eva informed him through internal communication. Kara came to find him. Kara? Kara has lived in Winter City for quite some time. In addition to helping Clark take care of the farmland. She also does a lot of chores. It's not that Kara doesn't know what kind of job she wants to do. But Kara has a kind personality. She will basically agree to anyone who asks her for help. Therefore, Laura and Eva often go to Kara for help with various things. And they become very familiar with Kara and the people who live in Glamorgan Castle after going back and forth. Of course, I also became familiar with David. Let her in! As soon as David finished speaking, the office door opened. Kara smiled and chatted with Eva, who helped open the door for a few more words before walking in. Ah! Uh, Kara, who originally smiled and wanted to say H, low, noticed the crown on David's head, and suddenly realized that the duke in front of her had been crowned king, and immediately changed the word she was about to say to. Your Majesty. Then she froze, maybe thinking whether she should kneel down on one knee and salute. Don't be so formal. Although David has officially become the king, the people around him are still the same. And no one pays too much attention to David's change in status. Just like old friends like Tony and Steve, they still get along with him as before. As for people like Elias and Gareth, they are subordinates who are loyal to him and have always been very respectful to him. Kara was the first person who seemed a little overwhelmed due to her change of status. She probably had to go out and walk around to see more similar situations. What do you want from me? When it came to business, Kara realized what she was here to do. I'm here to ask your majesty what should be done with the thieves who were arrested a few days ago. Thieves? David immediately realized that Kara was talking about the group led by Edkin from Faerun. He had forgotten about this group of people. Where are they now? In the holding cell of the police station. Chapter 407 Edkin Team's Atonement. How do you think we will be treated? Warlock Simon looked at Edkin, who was locked up in the cell together, hoping very much that Edkin would tell everyone that he had come up with an escape plan. According to the laws of Winter City, there is a high probability of being imprisoned for several years and forced labor. Edkin's investigation was very comprehensive. He not only collected the general situation of Winter City and the target information to be stolen, but also checked it by the way. The legal provisions of Winterfell as the team commander and plan maker, he not only has to consider how to formulate a plan to achieve the goal, but also consider what risks everyone will bear if it fails. Because they were just stealing, not injuring anyone, not killing anyone, and not causing any huge damage to Winter City. The crime was not serious, and was completely within the range they could bear. The only thing that bothered Edkin was that his daughter Kira was also arrested this time. Normally, his daughter Kira will follow the team but she will use magic props to hide herself and hide in the dark waiting for evacuation. In this way, even if something unexpected happens, his daughter will be fine. Unexpectedly, Winter City actually easily cracked the invisibility tool on Kira and captured him together. What made him feel a little more relieved was that Kira and Halgai were together. Halgai, who was Kira's mother, could definitely take good care of that girl. After thinking for a while, Edkin began to think about how to escape. Although he had not committed any serious crime and would not be subject to severe punishments such as beheading or hanging, Edkin was not prepared to serve his sentence in Winter City. Next, he has to observe carefully and look for opportunities to escape. His ability to shuttle is restricted. Is it because of the cell or other reasons? Just when Edkin ignored Simon's various complaints and Fudge's various inquiries and was seriously thinking about the next plan, they were suddenly led out of the detention room by the Winter City police. Although there are handcuffs on his hands, there are no restraints on his feet, and the small-looking handcuffs are not a deterrent. Fudge and Simon both winked at Edkin, but Edkin shook his head decisively and told him not to act rashly. At the same time, he talked to the policemen in front of him, but the policemen ignored them at all. He just took them out of the male prison area and handed them over to an acquaintance of his. Shirley! Shirley looked at Edkin speechlessly. She had already seen that Edkin seemed to have some plan but she didn't expect that it was to steal something during the coronation ceremony. When everyone in Winter City paid attention to the new king, he went to several noble houses to commit theft. If Ekin hadn't been on the intelligence agency's watch list, they might have been able to succeed. Shirley also found out not long ago that the intelligence agency had long since focused on this strange bard. Edkin, looking at Shirley's expression, Edkin knew that this new friend he had met not long ago was angry with him. He had nothing to argue with and he did take advantage of the kindness of the other party and Sansa towards him. I'm very sorry. Save this for Sansa. 
What Shirley is really angry about is that Edkin deceived an innocent and kind-hearted girl like Sansa. That is a very serious blow to a young child. And may even affect a lifetime. Edkin did not continue to say anything. But turned to look at Hawkeye and Kira, who followed Shirley. If the father and daughter were not handcuffed now, they would definitely hug happily. Continuing to follow Shirley forward, Edkin asked in a low voice about his daughter's condition. Kira said that everything was fine. The cell here was clean and tidy, and had no peculiar smell. The three meals a day were good in taste and portion. Even if Hawgai feels he is not full, he can ask for an extra portion. Edkin felt relieved when he heard this. Even the prisoners in the cells of Winter City were treated so well. It was like a city that only existed in dreams. But where is this taking them now? Where are we going now? Simon looked left and right, curiously asking the question Edkin was thinking about. He felt that if anyone knew the answer, it could only be Edkin, since he was the only one who knew enough about the city. Perhaps transfer to a real prison. They are in the detention room of the Winter City Police Station. This is just a temporary detention place, not a real prison. It is a normal operation to transfer them to a real prison. This is also the reason why Edkin doesn't pay too much attention to the situation in this place. They must be transferred to a real prison. And then, they can formulate an escape plan based on the situation. The location of the Winter City Prison is said to be deep in the Winter Forest to the north. And other details are unknown. After walking for a while, Edkin discovered that they were not taken out of the police station, but were taken from the underground detention room to a reception room on the second floor. When Edkin saw a young man in front of him smiling and saying to himself, Although it's a little late, welcome to Winter City. He knew that things were in trouble. Thank you. The companions beside him turned their attention to Edkin almost immediately. They were all curious about the identity of the young man in front of them. And judging from Edkin's reaction, the appearance of this young man was not a big deal for them. What a good thing. Edkin, who is this person? The king of the Winter Kingdom. In Edkin's plan, every effort was made to avoid meeting his majesty the king. So except for Edkin himself, no one else knew the appearance of the legendary majesty David Glamorgan. Wow, I believe what you said earlier now. Edkin once complained that David Glamorgan became king because of a woman. But everyone just took it as a joke. Until they met him. Several people who didn't believe it at first suddenly felt that Edkin's those words may not be complaints. But facts? Only Simon remained silent. Like Edkin, he had a serious face. Because he felt a very terrifying power from his majesty the king opposite him. The hidden coercion made him suspect that he was not facing a human being. But a god. Ahem. Your majesty the king. Edkin coughed twice to remind his companions to be timid when it's time to be timid. And took the lead in saluting David. David nodded and motioned to Shirley to open the handcuffs of these people. Seeing the handcuffs on his hands being opened. And Shirley walking out of the living room and closing the door. Edkin suddenly felt that the situation didn't seem that bad. Your majesty. Is there anything you can do for yourself? Don't think too much. I'm just interested in a few thieves from another world. In fact, David really wants these people to do things for him. The situation in Faerun is too complicated. Or the entire world of Toril is too complicated. He currently does not have that much free time to explore such a complicated world. In comparison, Edkin, a native of Faerun, can play a greater role. He raised his hand to signal a few people to sit down and talk. And they were free to enjoy the fruits pastries and juices. There are many people from other worlds, but you are still the first batch of visitors from other worlds who steal in Winter City. From this point of view, with the improvement of David's strength and the development of Winter City, the newcomers who come to Winter City in the future will become more and more diverse, considering that this ability will be affected by one's own thoughts. Some villains that one cannot accept, or characters whose views are seriously at odds, will still not appear. At most, it's a criminal with a sufficient bottom line, like Edkin in front of him. I can explain. Edkin noticed a lot from David's attitude. The other party was not particularly disgusted with him. And there must be something he wanted him to do. Regardless of the facts, this situation means that both parties have a basis for negotiation. Perhaps, he can use his outstanding eloquence to make the other party understand his difficulties and pardon his crimes. I'm listening. David poured himself a glass of juice. Guessing that Edkin was trying to gain sympathy, for what he had been through over the years. Although he knew what the other party would do, he still wanted to feel the strength of the bard for himself. Sure enough, Edkin Darvis was a very good talker and told a story that was neither bizarre nor touching in a very vivid way. David couldn't help but eat a lot of broad beans after listening to it. After Edkin finished telling his story, 
David put down the cup in his hand. Emotionally, I can understand your choice. Edkin smiled and breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that his speech had an effect. But that still doesn't change the fact that you committed the crime of theft. The smile on Edkin's face faltered. It seemed that the other party was not ready to let him go easily. He was probably going to impose conditions next. Right. Now you have two choices. David stretched out two fingers to attract the attention of everyone present. According to the laws of Winter City, you will be sentenced to one to three years in prison. Edkin will be sentenced to three years in prison as the first offender and one year for the others as accessories. Anything else? As a hired team of Winter City, help me collect things in your world. David does not limit the specific items. Anything that Edkin deems valuable can be sent to Winter City. And Winter City will evaluate is estimated for the item on a case-by-case -case basis. Edkin's team can choose to receive part of the estimated money to use for living expenses and outing activities. And the rest can be used to offset Edkin's crimes. They can also take it all. In which case, this trip the mission would not mitigate their crimes. However, if Edkin and others find items of great value that directly exceed the value of the property they stole, then just one mission can offset the entire crime. Sounds good. Chapter 408 The Supergirl Who Chooses Fighting Talents The choice given by David has a lot of room for maneuver. If you are lucky, you can avoid a few years of imprisonment. No matter how you look at it, you will not lose. More importantly, you can leave Winter City and return to Farron. Oh, to avoid you having unrealistic expectations, I think Kira should stay in Winter City. Edkin's expression changed instantly. He had been smiling and looking to Sonus before. But now, he turned into a standard cold-faced old father. David ignored Edkin's face. He knew that his words would cause dissatisfaction on the other side. But facing such a bard with a flexible moral bottom line, if he did not put some shackles on him, he would really run away with a bucket. Of, Kira is not young anymore. Don't you think it's a bad thing that she follows you all day long to steal and kidnap? David poured himself another glass of juice, then picked up a strawberry and took a bite. Not only do they not have a stable living environment, they also miss the most suitable period for education. David's few words made the face of Edkin in front of him become even more ugly. Why doesn't he know these things? As a father, would he want to see his daughter following him around and committing crimes every day? Even join it and grow into a female thief in the future? Edkin wants to make a big fortune in Winter City. Ultimately, he wants to provide a stable living environment for his daughter so that she can learn serious knowledge according to her preferences. No matter what career she pursues in the future, it will definitely be better than being a thief. Powerful. Therefore, even if he knew that David detained Kira to indirectly control him, he had to admit that David's words made sense. How are you going to settle Kira? As soon as Aiken said this, Kira and Haldad looked at him with shocked expressions. They couldn't believe it. Is Aiken really ready to agree to the other party's request? I originally thought that Edkin was deliberately delaying or fooling the young king in front of him. As soon as he left Winter City and returned to the continent of Farron, everyone immediately ran away. They felt that the people in Winter City, there was definitely no way to find this group of people in a strange world. What's more, whether the other party can go to Farron is a problem. The two of them didn't know that David already had the ability to travel to other worlds freely. Edkin guessed this through various information collected. However, according to his original idea, the continent of Farron is so vast that if it fails, he can still escape to Karatu, Maztec and other places. Now it seems that these ideas are of no use. If he reaches an agreement with his majesty the king in front of him, he can continue to live and take risks on the continent of Farron. Of course, the premise is that Kira's life can be guaranteed. She will live in Winter City and enter Winter Academy to learn various knowledge like an ordinary Winter City child. Not in a cell? I won't do that. That will only make you try to save your daughter instead of helping me collect valuable things seriously. David made this point clear directly. He believed that when facing smart people, it is enough to just lay out the interests and risks without repeated testing. Moreover, when Edkin sees that his daughter can live a stable and happy life in Winter City, and can also receive an education and grow into an outstanding person, will he still want to take his daughter away? If Kira doesn't leave, Edkin will have to stay in Winter City for a long time. If they want to live in Winter City, their father and daughter must make money. So, what better job than working for His Majesty the King? Keeping Kira behind actually means keeping Edkin. And also the adventuring team in front of him. David can continue to obtain rare items in Farron through this team. This was pure conspiracy. David didn't care that Edkin could guess his thoughts. 
he couldn't refuse anyway. Being a father who wants to be responsible for his daughter is a weakness that he can never make up for. Sure enough, after thinking for a few seconds, Ekin agreed to David's conditions. He would accept David's employment and return to the continent of Farron to collect various valuable things for Winter City. In order to avoid random pricing on the part of Winter City, Ekin will learn more about the city in Winter City during this period. Find out what types of items are lacking in Winter City. And then set off. At the same time, he also wanted to see how Winter City would settle his daughter Kira. He would only start working if his daughter's life was sufficiently guaranteed. Otherwise, he would rather go to jail and stay there for a few years. Edkin would never have imagined that even if he wanted to serve his sentence and go to jail, David would use. Kira is still a child. As an excuse to give him some special treatment. After Edkin is released from prison after serving his three-year sentence, he will find that his daughter has received three years of education in Winter City. If Kira shows a certain talent, she may have begun to learn some mysterious knowledge by then. At that time, did Edkin let his daughter give up her bright future and follow him back to continue being a thief? It can be said that from the moment he extended his sinful little hand to Winter City, he completely lost the initiative. If he was like other visitors from other worlds, he first met David and registered his personal information. And then he became a person in Winter City. A law-abiding civilian. That way, he would have more options. At least if Edkin really wanted to leave Winter City, he wouldn't face such an embarrassing situation. Surely we'll take you and your friends to register your personal information and arrange temporary accommodation for you. While David was talking, Shirley opened the door and walked in. By the way, Shirley is also Kira's in Winter City. As a temporary guardian, do you have any objections to this? No. This arrangement is very good. Because he had contact with Shirley and knew that Shirley was a kind girl. Edkin was very satisfied with the arrangement of Kira being handed over to Shirley's care. Moreover, Shirley and Sansa have a good relationship. And Sansa and Kira are about the same age. It is a joy to be able to give her daughter a playmate of a similar age. Judging from David's arrangement, the other party showed very sincerity. Edkin began to seriously think about what rare things could satisfy Winter City. In fact, David did think of something at this time. He was very interested in the resurrection card that appeared in the plot. By studying this prop, he wants to build a super large resurrection stone in Winter City and then bind all the active soldiers in Winter City to it. By then, Winter City's combat power will skyrocket. This unconventional method is of course not used to deal with other human nations, but is an advanced plan for the future. After finishing the second glass of juice, Edkin and his companions had already left. David stood up and was about to leave. As soon as he walked out of the living room, he found Kara still waiting here. You didn't leave with Edkin and the others? Shouldn't Shirley be responsible for Edkin's affairs? If Kara hadn't been involved in the operation to capture Edkin, she wouldn't have paid attention to this group of people. But it was precisely because Kara participated in the arrest and knew some of the inside information, and because Kira was still a child, that Kara would remind David and decide how to deal with these thieves as soon as possible. But before that, Kara didn't know David's thoughts. And she was still very happy that David was willing to give these people a chance to reform. Especially David's arrangements for Kira fully demonstrated the kindness of His Majesty the King of Winter Kingdom. I'm going to the military camp next. Is there anything you need to do? The military camp troops are about to go south for an expedition? Yes. Kara doesn't like war. But she understands that the next war is inevitable. David, who saw Kara's mood suddenly slipping from high, could only console him. Only when those forces are truly eliminated can all races on the Brania continent usher in a truly stable, peaceful, and happy life. Otherwise, all races on the continent of Brania are all pawns of the so-called gods. Now it seems that these so-called gods are just powerful life forms in the universe. Don't you know these guys are titans like me? Or is it some kind of high-level life that specifically opposes titans? Or something else? After walking out of the police station building, David took out his Mustang sports car, and Kara sat directly in the passenger seat. You are right. Only by completely eliminating those guys can we achieve true stability and peace. Compared to Kara in most universes, this Kara's character is relatively more resolute and after deciding to take action, she won't get entangled in those messy things. Do you think I should seriously study combat knowledge? And go south with the army to gain some practical experience? There is no way to gain any actual combat experience by following the army south. The Winter Army absolutely crushed the human nations on the Brennian continent. If Carla followed, he would have been crushed even more thoroughly. What experience could be gained in this case? 
if she really wants to improve her combat ability, Kara should stay in Winter City, practice with Clark, Zod, Fiora or herself, and spend more time in the sun. Only then can Kara's combat effectiveness be truly improved. But in this case, is Kara ready to concentrate on military combat? This is quite rare. Are there Supergirls specializing in military and combat in the multiverse? Just like Supergirl and Superman. They are both types with unlimited possibilities and full development. Although they are often abused in various plots. Thinking of this, David was suddenly curious. How strong can a Supergirl who seriously learns how to fight become? After training, can you beat up Clark? This is a subject worthy of serious exploration. Chapter 409 What do you think of David? David went to the winter military camp and did not do anything or make any speech. He just quietly watched several legions from Winter City board the transport vehicles one after another and then set off. Regarding the coming war, the soldiers of Winter City are as confident as their king. No one believes that the lords of the original kingdom of Thailand can slow down their march south. David looked at the Winter Legion, whose faces were full of confidence and who were wearing a full set of new equipment. He began to think about how long it would take to take all the territory of the former Thailand kingdom into his hands. Before spring next year? I don't know if more than one winter would be enough for the army to visit all the Lord's territories. It should be about the same. Right? The winter army is a purely mechanized force. Regardless of the power armor on their bodies. Even the most ordinary soldiers of the winter army can ride on troop transport trucks and do not need to march on their own feet. Not to mention that some soldiers will fly in quinjet aircraft. Watching the troops leaving the military camp one after another, David drove Kara back to Fort Glamorgan. Stay and have dinner together? Oh? Oh. No need. Kara hesitated for two seconds, then waved her hand to reject David's invitation, then lowered her head and quickly walked out of Glamorgan Castle, until she reached the gate of Winter Fortress before she remembered can fly by itself. What did you say to Kara? It seemed like you scared her. The scene where Kara left was happened to be seen by Gwen and Clarice. Gwen was curious about what David said to Kara. Did you tease her? Has David finally taken it upon himself to attack Kara? I don't know why. But Gwen, who used to be unhappy with David's philandering, didn't feel the slightest bit angry at this time, but instead felt a little excited. I just asked her if she wanted to stay and have dinner with her. That's all? What else can I say? David smiled and said H, low to Clarice next to him, asking the two of them if they were ready to go out. Yeah. I'm going to find Penny and go camping together in the forest. Gwen has a wide range of friends. She has a high IQ and is a top student. She can chat with Leonard, Sheldon, Howard and others. Gwen has an extra filter in the eyes of these people. And she worked as a model while doing odd jobs. And she is a girl who loves beauty. She also has many topics in common with Penny, who has been in the entertainment industry for a while. She has a lovable personality and is smart. So basically no one dislikes her. Twinkle when Clarice first came to Winter City. The first friend she made was Gwen. After the mutants finished dealing with matters in their own world. Clarice also got familiar with life in Winter City with Gwen's help. Gwen has been free recently. So Clarice made an appointment with Gwen to go out and go camping in the winter forest in the north. Gwen was about to call Penny. She still remembered that Penny had mentioned it when chatting with her before. Because she had no fighting ability. Although she had been in Winter City for a long time. She had not been to any place far away. She felt a bit regretful. Keeping friends' words in mind and helping them make up for these small regrets at the right time may not seem like a very important thing. But it is an important reason why Gwen is lovable. Clarice had met the owner of the fashion store. But they had little contact with each other. But she was not opposed to meeting new people. As long as they did not exclude her. After all, Clarice's appearance is obviously different from ordinary people. Petunia has been in Winter City for a long time. So naturally, she will not reject Clarice. Besides, Petunia has a carefree personality. Even if someone told her about the dangers of mutants, she would just turn around and forget about it. Air Jing. So she didn't take Clarice's situation seriously at all. Especially when there were Cybertronians. High elves. Works and other races in Winter City. Would you like to bring a fishing rod? Maybe we can go a little further and go fishing by the river or something? Take it with you. Petunia and Gwen discussed and started preparing things. While Clarice walked around Petunia's shop, most of the clothes sold in the store are styles from Earth and some are specially customized after incorporating the style of high elves. As Winter City gained a large number of residents of the Tehran capital, a batch of clothing with obvious Tehran style was produced. 
Now this not-so-large fashion store fully demonstrates the characteristics of Winter City, the perfect fusion of multiple styles and features. Is there anything you like? She was so absorbed in watching that Clarice didn't even notice that Petunia and Gwen had packed their things. It was Petunia's greeting that brought her back to reality. They all look beautiful. It will look more beautiful on you. Clarice was a little moved when she heard this. The years of evading pursuit for many years made her develop a practical dressing habit, even after living in Winter City for a period of time. Her habit did not change. The clothes are the type that are convenient for movement, resistant to dirt, and easy to wash. Petunia's clothes here are completely opposite to her clothes at home. The clothes here are beautiful, don't seem to be very practical, and are easy to get damaged and dirty. Let's go! Aren't we going to camp? Seeing that the topic suddenly turned into how to choose new clothes for herself, Clarice felt that this was a bit bad, and she couldn't let her affect the original camping plan. In the end, the two people opposite didn't care at all. They felt that camping was meant to relax and kill time. Now, helping Clarice choose clothes could also kill time. And both of them enjoyed this activity very much. So, in the next few hours, Clarice became a large Barbie doll for two people, and could only be manipulated by two people at will. Various clothes were changed around on her body, and sometimes looking at her figure in the full-length mirror. Clarice began to think that this activity was actually quite interesting. In this way, Due to the temporary increase in activities, it was already the next morning when the three women arrived at the original camping spot. However, none of these three people were ordinary people. Penny, who was originally an ordinary person, had also eaten golden apples. To them, staying up all night was nothing. After parking the car and taking out the prepared tents and various tools, the three women chatted while busy. In addition to what everyone is busy with recently, love life is also the focus of discussion. After setting up the tent, lighting up the bonfire, and throwing the baited hook into the winter river to start fishing, Penny curiously asked how Gwen and David got together. When she heard that Gwen took the initiative and David was quickly taken by Gwen, Penny suddenly realized, in fact, David is easy to win, as long as his figure and appearance are not bad. No matter how proactive he is, he seems neither will refuse. Penny, who suddenly felt as if she had missed out on billions, cursed secretly. Barley! Then she explained to the surprised Gwen and Clarice. My relationship with Leonard is very stable. Really? It's just that it's impossible not to feel pity in my heart when I think that I once had the opportunity to win a king. However, His Majesty the King is obviously a super playboy. Can he bear this? Penny was suddenly curious. Why could Gwen accept David's philandering? Never thought about being separated from David? I was a little dissatisfied at first. But now I'm gone. The longer they get along the less likely Gwen will be separated from David. Give up a young, handsome, strong king and find someone who is inferior to David in every aspect? This doesn't seem like a choice a smart person would make. David has the body of Cybertron, the hermit warrior and other abilities. There is no such thing as boring with him. What kind of experience do you want? David can do it. Taking David is equivalent to getting the most perfect partner Laura. Gwen was not prepared to say this reason. Not to mention that she had not actually experienced those functions like Laura. How is your relationship with Laura? Helen? Eva and Sophia? Penny sometimes really wonders. Will they really not fight when they stay in Glamorgan Castle together? What would that look like? More than once, she pictured these people tearing each other to pieces in her mind. We have a very good relationship. Especially after they were honest with each other not long ago. Gwen felt that the two of them had established a strong comradeship after they failed to fight the big devil together countless times. It's incredible! After the two veteran drivers chatted for a while, they found that Clarice next to them had not spoken for a while. This mutant with a unique appearance was sitting by the river as if he were a monk in trance, staring at the river. But her red ears, neck and cheeks revealed her true state. After asking Penny for a while, she realized Flicker has spent almost all her life in pursuit. Even when she was first in love, she was only surrounded by her comrades. Before she had time, no matter what deeper feelings were developed, these comrades were killed by the sentries one after another. The nightmare is over, and you can start a new life. Penny immediately comforted this new friend. Only then did she realize how miserable this new friend's life was before. You can if you want to find a boyfriend in Winter City. Gwen, and I can help you introduce him. Petunia said that she and Gwen know many good men. What kind of man does Clarice want? They can all help with introductions. You think so? Right. Gwen. Well, that's right. Gwen nodded. But after thinking for a while, 
she realized that the only suitable man she could think of was her own man. Introducing your man to a good friend? Why do you feel so weird? But thinking of the beautiful scenery I saw when I helped Clarice choose clothes earlier, I felt a little bit excited again. What do you think of David? Chapter 410 Red House What do you think of David? What? Varisa Windrunner was feeling the lightning speed brought by Bathing's heavy-duty locomotive. Unexpectedly, her sister's voice suddenly came to her ears, asking a question that made her a little confused. After being stunned for a while, Varisa came back to her senses and looked at her sister with disbelief. The king of Winter City already has a wife or lover by his side. Right. Varisa came to Winterfell with her husband Ronan. She was very happy to be able to live in the same city with her sister Sylvanas. The Windrunner sisters have always had a good relationship. And Varisa also supports Sylvanas in starting a new life in the Winter Kingdom. As a younger sister, Varisa is not opposed to her sister finding an excellent brother-in-law here in Winter City. But there are so many outstanding people in Winter City. Why did my second sister just fall in love with His Majesty? Because His Majesty the King did not have a particularly good reputation in this regard. Varisa never met His Majesty the King alone. Thankfully, the King had no interest in himself. What he didn't expect was that he would actually target his second sister. I'm just asking you what you think of His Majesty the King. Sylvanas didn't want to tell her sister that she had received several outrageous invitations from Laura during these times. If she hadn't been determined enough, Chong has already moved into Fort Glamorgan. Other than being a little fickle, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. In terms of personal ability, Varisa admired His Majesty David Glamorgan very much. After all, not everyone has the ability to build a city from scratch in a wilderness. What's more, after establishing the city, David also annexed the Tehran Kingdom in the north of the continent, becoming an emerging force on the continent. And he was crowned king. No matter how you look at it, this is a legendary hero, destined to become the protagonist of an epic that will be sung for countless years, coupled with his reputation as the incarnation of holy light. Varisa suddenly felt that David's carelessness was not incomprehensible at all. It is not incomprehensible that such an outstanding legendary figure would have more confidence around him. In many similar legends and stories, there is always a lack of all kinds of people of the opposite sex around the hero. Varisa's thoughts wandered further and further. And Sylvanas did not continue to question her sister. She really just asked casually. However, when her sister mentioned this, she remembered Laura's advice again. Occasionally it is also a good choice to solve personal needs. David, who didn't know that he was classified as a functional product, was listening to Natasha's report. Are you saying that Marquis Ingram Falbell has officially declared war on Winter City? Yes. And they raised the army with the slogan of rescuing the tyrant royal family and destroying the despicable Glamorgan who usurped the throne. After Natasha joined Winter City, she originally went back and forth between two worlds. But after Steve officially implemented the Justice League plan, S.H.I.E.L.D. completely collapsed. The resurgence of Hydra has completely disabled the S.H.I.E.L.D. vest. Natasha, whose main identity is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, also took the opportunity to break away from the constraints of that world and began to concentrate on working and living in Winter City. In addition, in order to avoid being affected, Clint Barton also began to travel more frequently. It is estimated that after a few years of completely cutting off all kinds of interpersonal relationships, he will take his whole family to settle in Winter City. The two of them did not join the Justice League with the Avengers. Clint is retired and hopes to spend more time with his family. Natasha's identity is simply too embarrassing. So she might as well escape early. After a stable period of time in Winter City, Natasha not only completed various teaching tasks well, but also took the time to learn many skills of thieves and assassins. Stealth, the signature skill of thieves, only cost her learned it in a short time. After enough strengthening potions were produced, Natasha also accepted the strengthening. Recently, she, like Tony Stark, is learning how to use arcane energy. But their learning focus is completely different. What Stark learned was mostly mage-related knowledge, while what Natasha learned was more like a hodgepodge of assassins, rangers, and hunters. In a way, her current development direction is a bit like the Wanderers in Farron. That Marquis must have won over many allies. Right. Yes. Including Earl A. Viscount A, Earl B, Baron A, and other powerful lords. Earl A? What is this name? Code name? No one has told me this. Your Majesty, don't you think that group of chickens and dogs are not worth paying attention to? So you use simple code names instead. Well, you're right. They're just a bunch of fish that aren't worth the trouble. The name Earl A suits these guys very well. 
However, as the leader, Marquis Ingram Burbert still needs to pay a little attention. Inform Gareth that after the army leaves Iron Tree Fort, they will give priority to destroying the Marquis of Verbell. I see. Natalie is not a fool, nor is she a novice who doesn't understand the art of language. From David's words, she understood what His Majesty the King was thinking. His Majesty the King didn't just want to eliminate Marquis Fable, the coalition forces, but to completely eliminate the entire family of Marquis Fable and all related people. Who said that His Majesty is a benevolent king? I didn't see him hesitate at all when it was time to be cruel. It should be said that His Majesty David Glamorgan has hidden his true temperament very well. Or does it mean that he knows what things are inappropriate to show when facing certain people? Many thoughts flashed through Natasha's mind. But there was no emotional change on the surface. As an elite veteran agent, she didn't think it was a bad thing for His Majesty the King to be cruel enough when facing the enemy. The intelligence department has made rapid progress during this time. With the addition of Natasha and Ethan, the new recruits in the intelligence department have indeed made rapid progress after receiving modern training. The most important thing is that after receiving training, a large number of newcomers can gradually understand the direction in which they are good at, no longer use it as extensively as before, and start arranging work according to each person's expertise. This greatly increased the work efficiency of the intelligence department. The Marquis of Verbert had just launched his army, and he had found out how many troops, weapons, and how long they had mobilized, so that he could know the current situation of the intelligence department. Are you planning to stay in Winter City? Oh! Does your majesty have any tasks for me? David did not tell the mission content immediately, but frowned and thought for a moment, and carefully looked at Natasha opposite. How? Natasha has nothing to be shy about. Your majesty can look at her if she wants to. He held his head high, as if he wanted his majesty to see more clearly. There are two tasks. You can choose which one to take, or you can choose not to take it. David thought for a few seconds and decided to tell Natasha about the Red House. The other party has already surrendered to his side. David has never been stingy about taking care of his own people. And he knows that Natasha values her mother and sister in her heart. The first mission is in your own world. Destroy the Red House and rescue the controlled agents. What? Black Widow, who had been calm and calm at first, suddenly changed and she suspected that she had heard wrongly. You mean the Red House? That's impossible. That damn place has been destroyed a long time ago. Unfortunately. No. David felt that there was no need to continue talking about the second task. It was obvious that Natasha would choose this task. You can confirm the specific situation with Steve. And he will tell you more details. I know. Natasha didn't leave in a hurry. She knew that David still had something to say. You are responsible for deciding how to act. You can also contact the teammates you want to find. What if I want to ask Clark for help? Of course. As long as Clark is free and willing to help. David hopes that Superman will get more involved in the affairs of Winter City. Forget it. That guy shouldn't be needed. To deal with a hidden secret service organization. Natasha felt that sending out Superman was too exaggerated. It would be enough for her to call on the former Supreme Mage. Captain Hydra. As for why you roped in Steve. Who made the guy not reveal any information to him before? Although she could understand why the other party did what she did. It didn't stop her from taking revenge on him. Has Crossbones Rumlow been on any combat missions recently? The Knights of Winter did not go south this time. The main force of this southern expedition was the Tehran Knights and the Spartan Heavy Infantry. The Winter Legion served as the second line army and was responsible for a series of chores. The Winter Knights will only dispatch support when encountering special circumstances. In other words, all members of the Winter Knights remain in the city at this time. Then can I take a few Winter Knights back? Of course. How many people do you want to take? Five is enough. Including Ronlo. David nodded. Took out a small crystal-like electronic authorization key. Entered the command and permission using his multifunction tool. And handed it to Natasha. Where's the mission objective? After receiving the electronic key handed over by David, Natasha did not ignore it. This was her own mission. And she was not simply asking herself to go back and solve personal problems. Recruit as many outstanding agents as you can from the Red Room. David didn't have to be polite to Natasha. Let alone say that he was just helping. Of course. It's not mandatory. Promise to complete the task. Natasha nodded to David and turned to leave the office. Watching Black Widow Natasha's round back leave. David called Eva in preparing to ask about Sato Marte's situation, while thinking about who he could send to steal technical information from the 25th Immigration Fleet. Chapter 411, 
go to the immigration ship group. Through Eva, David learned that Art Sotom received very rigorous military training in Winter City. With the magical power of the Holy Light, Art Sotom also learned to treat himself as an adult and then train to death. This will allow you to continuously improve your physical fitness. As a pilot, if your physical fitness is strong enough, you will have a huge advantage when operating a fighter jet. He always believed that he was always second in the piloting profession. The key reason was that the first place, Michael Brown, was a mixture of Zora and Jatrati, also called Zentradi. As we all know, the Jet Lottie people have very amazing physical fitness. So the guy relies on his better physical fitness to stabilize his head. Art Satan will never admit that her driving skills are inferior to others. So, that guy's goal is to successfully fly the latest fighter jets parked in the Winter Military Camp warehouse? Yes. Eva felt that the young men thought things were too simple. Those planes were not so easy to fly. She wanted to reach a point where she could bear it without using strengthening medicines or dungeons and other methods. The payloads of those fighter planes must learn some kind of mysterious power to move themselves beyond the mortal level and into the extraordinary level. If Winter City can get the newly developed miniaturized inertial buffer technology in the Macross world and install it on these fighter planes, then Sotom all can fly freely. Eva, do you want to go into space? Do you want to go to Art Sayatom's world? Yes. It's not like David has never been to space. He had gone to the universe before in the Marvel Universe. But he had never seen the giant ecological ship in Macross. And he was full of curiosity about that place. Don't you want to go? Eva was silent. How could she not want to go? David invited her several times to travel to other worlds to relax. But she refused. At that time, she felt that she could better demonstrate her own value by helping David with other things. But after you have been busy for a long time, you always want to take a rest. Unlike the others, she could go back to her own world to do other things at will. She was now focusing all her life and energy here just like a native Brunian. This time, she didn't want to refuse anymore and wanted to go out and play for a while. As for Winter City, it's not like something will happen if you leave yourself, with the official establishment of the Winter Kingdom. The originally relatively simple and crude management organization has also undergone more detailed adjustments. For example, Weatherby Swan, the Minister of the Interior of the Kingdom, is responsible for various political affairs of the Winter Kingdom and is also responsible for the political affairs of Winter City. The entire Ministry of Interior is divided into a large number of departments which correspond to various current affairs of the Winter Kingdom. It can be said that after the formal establishment of the Winter Kingdom, Eva's workload has become much less. She is more responsible for His Majesty the King. Secretary, by the way, please pay attention to the situation of the visitors from other worlds so that David can inquire. When to set off? Now that she had decided to go play together, Eva no longer hesitated and started thinking about what she should bring. It shouldn't be that fast. We still need to make some preparations before we officially set off. The immigration fleets in that world had a high degree of autonomy. In addition, the human government at that time sent immigrant fleets all over the galaxy like flowers. And the connections between them were not that close. So it was not difficult to create a false identity. The key is that David and Eva do not have the corresponding currency in their hands. No matter what the world is, it is difficult to move without money. I'll go find Art to discuss the preparations first. David stood up and prepared to go to the winter military camp to find Art Sotom instead of calling him over. After sitting in the office for a long time, he just went out to relax. Correct. What? Just the two of us? No one else. Who do you want to invite to go with you? It's not like David hasn't considered asking others. But he and several others have spent time alone together. And only Eva has never gone out together. So he deliberately didn't mention anyone else this time. People. But if Eva wanted to call her friends to join her, he would certainly not object. Let me ask someone else. After Eva said casually, she watched David leave. After thinking for a while, she decided to ask Helen first. After David came out of Fort Glamorgan, he drove leisurely to the winter military camp. Although he has become his majesty the king, his daily life and habits have not changed. I am now a king. So why don't I just do whatever I want? Why do you have to create a bunch of rules and regulations to trap yourself in them? After arriving at the military camp, which had become much deserted, David quickly found Art Sotom, who was training. After a period of training, this former Kabuki actress and current fighter pilot student, who was nicknamed the princess by her classmates in school, although her figure did not change much, she did develop some skills that only soldiers can possess. Chishin. 
David watched from the side and saw that Satong Art was doing more pure physical training and did not conduct any weapons or tactical training. In addition, David also met Jill Valentine here. After Chris completed a long period of training in Winter City and mastered the power of the Holy Light, he returned to his own world and continued to lead the BSA to fight against the biochemical incidents that continued to occur around the world. At the same time, Chris's most trusted partner Jill came to Winter City to start training. While Chris can only rely on his own efforts, Jill has caught up with the good times. Not only can she hone her physical fitness beyond the limits with the help of the Holy Light Priest's treatment, but she can also learn more and more comprehensive mysterious knowledge. There is even a chance to use strengthening potions to achieve the training effect that Chris took so long to achieve in a shorter time. But if he wants to use potions, Jill must at least have a position here in Winter City, or from his own world bring some special products back to exchange. Your Majesty the King! David's appearance naturally attracted everyone's attention. After they all came forward to salute, David asked everyone to continue busy with their own affairs, but only called Sautal Malt. You have something to do with me? Sautalmart felt very awkward with the king in front of him. He didn't know how to talk to a king at all. So he had been trying hard to avoid seeing David. However, his identity was quite special. And he was trained in the opponent's territory. So it was impossible to completely avoid them. So he still learned some local etiquette. Fortunately, Winter City does not need to kneel to his majesty the king. Even on one knee. Except for special circumstances. Art Sautalm who received military training from Winter City, can also perform a military salute. I want to ask you about the situation in that world. I plan to go there and have a look later. Ah, I'm still very interested in large ecological ships that can be built like cities on the planet. Sautom had no way of truly understanding what David said. For him, the environment of the eco-ship was not worthy of attention at all. That place was just too boring. The rising and setting of the sun and various climate changes are all simulated through various facilities after precise calculations. In addition to not having any fluctuations, the space of the ecoship itself is also very small, and the vast space is nothing more than it's just an image produced by a film screen. However, this is not the point. David suddenly found him, and said he wanted to see his own world. This was the point. Art Sautom immediately understood why David found him. You want me to help solve the identity problem? Not only that, but I also need your help to get some money. Sautom looked at David speechlessly. If he had spare money, would he still do odd jobs here and there? I'm not asking you to pay. I want to ask. Can jewelry, gold and silver and other things be sold at your place? Of course. But the gold and silver you brought out can't provide any kind of proof. Right. The immigration ship is actually no different from the cities on the planet. With all kinds of shops and needs. Of course, there are also jewelry stores and pawn shops. As long as I can exchange money, I don't care about the price. For Brinians who have alchemists, the value of various metals is not that high. Since alchemists can transform substances, Brinians' large-scale wars over mineral deposits rarely occur on the subcontinent. There is a possibility that small lords will fight over competition for certain resources. But with the pressure of the big lords, things will not get too big. Let me try. Sautom felt a little headache. This task was not difficult. If you had connections, you could solve it easily. The trouble is that Art Sautom is just a student and comes from an acting family. He has never been exposed to things and channels in this area. If it's done, I can provide you with a strengthening potion. A lot of strengthening potions have been produced in Winter City, and people close to David can use them. However, Art Sautom had not known everyone for a long time, and he had not officially joined Winter City. If he wanted to get the strengthening potion, the most reliable way was to help his majesty the king. Like now, he spent most of his time in the military camp in Winter City and knew the effects of strengthening potions. Art Sautom is not resistant to the use of enhancement techniques, especially the all-round improvement of quality in Winter City, which does not make people become enhancements of other strange things. Not only is she not repulsive, but she is also eager for it. In order to obtain the strengthening potion, Sautom Arte used her brain to think of all possible ways. After much thought, he decided that the most reliable way was to ask his classmates for help. Mikhail had a wide network of contacts and might know what to do. Did I ask someone for help? Sure. Chapter 412 Jill The biggest advantage of knowing the plot and characters is that David can predict the actions of these people. David understood Art Sayatom's situation and interpersonal relationships. He only had two friends around him. And the interpersonal relationships were very simple. 
when he was incapable, he could only ask those two friends for help, Michael Brown and Luca Angeloni. Both of them are employees of SMS, a private military company, and Luca Angeloni is also the son of LAI, a large company. Regardless of whether he is an employee of a private military company or the son of a large company, it is not difficult to help Art Satom solve that problem. Private military companies are inevitably involved in some gray areas. Ask around among colleagues in the company, and that matter will be solved. It would be even easier if Luca helped. It would not be difficult to directly purchase the various metal ores that David brought out at market prices. By the way, he could also help David solve his identity problem. No matter what, David can establish a relationship with SMS and LAI, and the subsequent development depends on how he operates. Although it is difficult to recruit people from SMS, it is not impossible. The benefits that Winter City can provide to these people are quite attractive. If he does it well, maybe David doesn't need to steal the technical information he wants at all, and can get what he wants by conducting cross-dimensional trade with LAI Company. But I don't know if LAI Company is interested in doing so. Business development coming to Brinia? In short, through Sothome Alt, David can better connect with key figures in that world to facilitate his next move. After finishing the business talk with Art Sothome, David did not leave in a hurry. He continued to stay here and watched everyone's training for a while. Both Art Sotom and Gil are people with somewhat special backgrounds. Therefore, the training of both of them was taken care of by the Knights of Winter. Although Floyd, the deputy leader, was not personally watching. It was enough to show the importance he attached to the two of them. Thaddeus is a very outstanding young man. And he successfully comprehended the Holy Light some time ago and became a paladin. Thaddeus was an outstanding young man promoted from the Spartan Heavy Infantry, and he was considered a relatively new member of the Winter Knights. However, his speed in truly mastering the Holy Light can be ranked in the middle. Although it is slightly behind the middle, he still shows good potential. According to this situation, with the completion of the Knights of Winter becoming all paladins, new members will begin to be added again. Thaddeus should be able to be promoted to a certain extent and become the leader of the temporary team formation. How many people in the Knights of Winter have not mastered the Holy Light? Thirteen more. It seems that the goal will be achieved soon. David looked at Floyd beside him and congratulated the Knight. The Knights of Winter can further expand by then. Yes. Floyd must want to recruit more recruits. After all, the Knights of Winter are the real trump card of the Kingdom of Winter. However, they were overwhelmed by the Knights of Tyrann. What kind of thing is this? Even if the actual combat power is not based on scale. It cannot be too different. How many people do you hope the Knights of Winter will eventually have? This, Floyd hoped to lead and command a group of thousands of knights. But he felt that his idea was too exaggerated. 300 to 500 knights should be about the same. 500 people? David shook his head. 500 people were too few. In David's opinion, even if the Knights of Winter had 3,000 people, it would still be an insignificant number in the universe. Of course, it was still a long time before the Kingdom of Winter entered the universe. So he did not rush to say anything about 3,000 Winter Knights. But encouraged his personal knight. Then work hard towards this goal. Bar! With the development of Winter City, it will definitely become easier and easier for the Winter Army to train new recruits in the future. Especially after various strengthening methods are used. A considerable number of combat-ready soldiers can be produced in a short period of time. The basic number has increased and it is easier for outstanding warriors to emerge. It will not be as difficult for the Winter Knights to absorb outstanding talents as it has been in recent years. After chatting with Floyd for a while, Jill over there had completed today's training program. Sawtome Art had not finished it because she had been chatting with herself for a while. At this moment, she was still struggling with the weight-bearing armor on her body in pain. It was purely for increased burden of armor without any power structure. Looking at Jill who was sweating profusely but laughing and joking like a group of rough guys around him, David took a few extra glances, which also aroused Jill's attention. After hesitating for a moment, the former stars and current BSA member came over and greeted David, the king of the Winter Kingdom. Again, no matter what, I arrived at someone else's territory and was taken care of, so it was appropriate to express my gratitude in person. When Floyd saw this, he said goodbye very simply and left. At the same time, he told the Winter Knights, who had just completed training to go take a shower and not watch the excitement here. It's been a while since I came to Winter City, and I haven't thanked you personally yet. When Gil came to Winter City, he was led to the Winter Military Camp by Chris. Although he greeted David, he did not take Gil to meet David. You're welcome. 
This can be considered helping each other. Although David has not yet received anything in return from Chris and Jill. He needs to take a long-term view. There are many weird viruses in the world of Resident Evil. These can be used as materials for strengthening potions. Further enhancing the effects of the potions. Even if the improvement in physical fitness remains unchanged. But only provides stronger physical recovery. David and Winter City will not lose. In the original plot, Shirley and Jill both gained extraordinary recovery after being infected with the virus. Shirley won't talk about it. In the plot, a huge fragment was inserted into her back. After pulling it out, the wound healed in the blink of an eye. After Jill was caught by Wesker, she accidentally discovered that the virus had remained in her body, giving Jill strong resilience and strong virus resistance. Of course, these characteristics also made Jill become Wesker's experimental material. After countless anesthesia-free vivisections and various experiments, Jill was not tortured crazy during that time. Once this spiritual will learns the holy light, it will be powerful. SK's end will definitely be quite miserable. Jill didn't know what was going on in David's head. Seeing him staring at her intensely made her feel a little uneasy. Didn't he say that his majesty the king likes blonde hair? You should be safe. Right? At the same time, I am also a little happy in my heart. After all, as a woman, being noticed by an outstanding and handsome man, it is impossible to say that I am not happy at all. But that was all. Jill was not prepared to develop any personal relationship with the ruler of Winter City because she could not accept his majesty's chaotic private life. Cough. He coughed lightly to remind the other party that Gil was kind enough to provide his majesty the king with a new topic as a step forward. Your majesty, is there anything you need me or be saved to do? Jill has learned a lot about Winter City. She knows that Winter City's rapid development is related to David's efforts to recruit talents and various technical resources from all over the world. So she thinks that David is willing to let his subordinates train Chris and herself with a similar idea. But after thinking about it, my world is not very advanced compared to other worlds that Winter City can go to. The only thing that can be considered a specialty is biochemical viruses. Could it be that His Majesty the King is also thinking about biochemical viruses? Because of all the encounters, Jill, who hated biochemical viruses very much, immediately turned ugly when she thought of this. David also noticed the change in the other person's mood for the first time, knowing that Jill had guessed some of his thoughts. Viruses are not only used to cause disasters. Proper research and use can benefit humans and other intelligent life. When David saw that Jill's expression did not improve, he knew that this was because there were too many organizations in the world that carried similar banners, but did nothing. So Jill did not believe in such empty talk. Just like Shirley. In order to convince Jill, David chose to speak with facts. And you? Me? Jill was stunned for two seconds thinking that David was talking about the serum injection she once had. But if there was no biochemical virus, she would not have to suffer the crime at all. As a result, David gave an answer that shocked Jill extremely. Like Shirley, although you have cleared the virus on the surface, some of the virus actually remains in the body and has produced some positive effects. Jill opened her mouth wide, feeling unbelievable at what David said. She never thought that the biochemical virus still remained in her body. This is really bad, and it couldn't be worse. Are you telling the truth? Of course. David still looked in disbelief when he saw Jill and gave her a suggestion. Rebecca has established a laboratory in Winter City. If you don't believe it, you can go to her place. Do a thorough inspection. I will. The resolute Jill said goodbye to David immediately. She was going to Rebecca for a checkup to determine how much biochemical virus remained in her body. As for how David learned about the presence of the virus in his body. She didn't get too entangled. After all, he was honored as the incarnation of the Holy Light by Bishop Lydron of the Cathedral of the Holy Light. Holy Light is a miraculous power that can relieve pain. So in Jill's opinion, it is normal for David, as the incarnation of Holy Light, to be able to detect abnormalities in other people's bodies. What Jill cares about at this moment is how to get rid of the damn biochemical virus in his body. The serum failed to completely eliminate the virus. Ordinary holy light also failed to eliminate these viruses. I wonder if a stronger holy light can do it. Chapter 413 Justice Avengers Alliance With a worried look on her face, Jill went to find Rebecca to check herself out. David also drove away from the military camp and returned to Fort Glamorgan to see if there was anything else to deal with. In the end, there was something he needed to approve. Building a front hall? Yes. David looked at Elias in front of him and wondered what the purpose of building this so-called front hall was. Your Majesty, you are now the King of the Winter Kingdom. 
and your status is very different from before. Many times you need a place that can adequately display your majesty's majesty. And there is no suitable room in Glamorgan Castle. Is this necessary? Not only one of my subordinates thinks so. Everyone thinks it is necessary. According to Elias's description, this front hall should be regarded as an extension of Fort Glamorgan. It is built at the main entrance, south side, of Fort Glamorgan and is connected to the main body of the entire building. The entire front hall is a large and spacious hall. There is only one seat in the whole hall, which is the high throne. In the future, His Majesty the King will receive foreigners, envoys, reward meritorious ministers, judge criminals, and other matters in the front hall. If there was no suitable place in Glamorgan Castle, a separate one would not be built in the square for the coronation ceremony some time ago. High Tower. Listening to Elias' explanation, David also felt that it was indeed necessary to build such a front hall. In this case, just build one. Anyway, there is no shortage of labor or resources in Winter City now. Such a functional building can be completed in a short time. Considering that I may go out for a while in the future, the front hall may have been built when I come back. After all, the work efficiency of the diggers has always been amazingly fast. After talking about the matters in the front hall, Elias left to find someone to take charge of the specific work. Because of Elias's status as a ceremonial officer, he needs to be asked for some opinions when designing the structure of the front hall. So he must follow up on the entire process. Even if David goes out for some time, he will not be able to take a break. With the formal establishment of the Winter Kingdom, the etiquette officer Elias has been promoted to the minister of the etiquette department. He is now not only responsible for David's personal etiquette affairs, but also responsible for selecting and training a new batch of etiquette officers for the Winter Kingdom. Therefore, Elias can no longer stay by David's side every day like he used to. Of course, he would still come to report every day, and only after confirming that David did not need him to follow him in a short period of time, he would go about his work. It was the same today. After reporting on the business, I asked Eva about David's schedule for the rest of the day when he left. After making sure that he had nothing to do, he immediately went to find a designer to design the specific structure of the front hall. Eva watched Elias leave and walked into the office. Have you talked to Art Sautom? Well, he needs to take some time to find someone for help to solve the identity and money problems. The departure date may be a few days later, but David doesn't care. Have you asked other people? I've asked them all. Eva felt a little embarrassed thinking about everyone's reactions. Helen, Laura and Gwen couldn't say anything. The point wasn't that everyone didn't want to go, but that everyone had an expression of, I won't bother you to go to the world of two. And, you're dead. Which made Eva very speechless. Fortunately, Sophia left Winter City with the army. Otherwise, there would have been one more person watching the fun. How about I ask Kara? Wanda? David is a little speechless now. What's the matter with you looking so guilty and panicked? Am I a man-eating monster? As for finding Wanda? Kara? David didn't object. Eva could find whomever she wanted. In the next few days, Winter City was calm and nothing major happened. The Winter Army had arrived at the Iron Tree Fort. After a brief rest outside the Iron Tree Fort, it then advanced towards the east of the Tylan Kingdom, heading straight for the territory of the Marquis of Fabel. In addition, some soldiers of the Winter Legion stayed in the Iron Tree Castle because the elves in the Iron Tree Forest had not yet been completely eliminated. It's not that the Tyrann Knights couldn't completely clean out the elves, but after several rounds of attacks that almost completely crippled the elves' combat power, David didn't let the Tyrann Knights continue to train with the elves. After showing enough force, David began to use relatively soft methods, preparing to turn the remaining elves into people of Winter City. This was when Lydron realized that the number of elves in the Elven Village they had discovered had continued to increase after several attacks by the Tyrann Knights. Lydron realized that the elves' war weariness had reached a peak, so she took the initiative to persuade the elves to surrender. Currently Holy Light Bishop Lydron is leading several high elf priests in the Iron Tree Forest, trying to persuade the elves to give up their fight against humans and join Winter City to become the true people of Winter City. Especially after Iron Tree Fort has officially become the territory of the Kingdom of Winter. Any attack on Iron Tree Fort will be met with fierce retaliation from Winter City. Faced with this situation, the possibility of the elves finally surrendering is not small. Even if they cannot gather all of them, they can still bring most of the elves under their control. It will not be too late to kill the few remaining diehards when the time comes. According to the news that Lydron sends back from time to time, it seems to be only a matter of time before all the elves in the Ironwood Forest join Winter City. At present, 
These elves are mainly worried that they will not be able to live in this country ruled by humans after becoming the subjects of Winter City. Receive equal treatment. In this regard, Lydran directly promised that as long as she is willing to join Winter City, His Majesty the King will treat everyone equally. The elves don't have to worry about being inferiors with no status in the Winter Kingdom. They will receive the same treatment as other humans. Cybertronians, Orcs, High Elves, and Dark Elves. The elves are dubious about this. But they have already considered forming a team to go to Winter City for an on-the-spot investigation. I believe that after the elves see the situation in Winter City, they will accept Winter City's solicitation. As for the call of the Goddess of Nature, now that they can't defeat Winter City at all, the elves are very wise not to mention this matter at all. The recent good news is not only that the elves in the Ironwood Forest are preparing to surrender. Edkin spent some time in Winter City and made sure that David had followed his promise and allowed his daughter to live in Shirley's house and also arranged for her to enter the Winter City Academy where children of school age in Winter City receive education together. At the same time, I also figured out the more detailed situation of Winter City and began to make preliminary preparations for officially returning to the continent of Farron and helping Winter City collect rare items from the world of Toriel. But one thing made him very depressed. That is, the team had not yet completed half of the mission and got back any valuable items. And their debt had increased yet again. Because Edkin and his team members need to prepare money, weapons, equipment, etc. for this adventure. Especially for Hallguy. She saw that the weapons in Winter City were a bit immobile. So she decisively loaned a two-handed tomahawk. As well as storage props. Very convenient short-distance communication equipment. And an amazing defensive weapon. Light armor. Powerful and easy to use firearms. Etc. If the multifunction tool didn't need to be connected to the equipment in Winter City, they would also want everyone to buy one. In short, Team Edkin, who felt that they already had enough debt and didn't care about getting more, set out with more debt. Their target is the rare magic props, special minerals, herbs, magical beasts, etc. in Farron. They are no longer the original gang of thieves, but have become a normal adventure team. I don't know why. When Ekin thought of this, he always felt like a big stone fell to the ground in his heart. And even his breathing seemed to become easier. Set off! The Ekin team set off with great expectations for the future. Not far away. Diana, who was sitting in a cafe drinking coffee, frowned. She seemed to have seen a familiar person just now. But before she could take a closer look, the person disappeared, suspecting that her eyes were wrong. Diana didn't think too much and continued to look around curiously. This is Winter City, the territory of David Glamorgan. It is now the Kingdom of Winter, and David Glamorgan was officially crowned king not long ago. Oh, Diana didn't care whether David was a king or a duke. She was just curious about why Bruce Wayne brought him to this place. Although she was a little surprised when she first learned that David lived in another world. You are already a member of the Avengers, so of course you have to come to headquarters to see it. The multiverse Avengers that David made up nonsense are gradually developing into what David once imagined. After Bruce decided to join the Avengers, he recruited according to the list provided by David, and Wonder Woman Diana's name topped the list. After a period of communication, Bruce finally convinced Diana to join the Avengers, and then brought Diana to Winter City. Headquarters? Diana looked at Bruce Wayne who was drinking coffee in surprise. You mean here? Yes. Bruce had only revealed very little information to Diana before. He didn't say much about Winter City. It was only then that he began to introduce the daughter of Zeus and Hippolyta. Speaking of this magical city that can connect multiple universes. This is Winter City! The base of the Justice Avengers of the Multiverse. What kind of weird name is this? She can understand the multiverse. What the H? L is the Justice Avengers? Diana began to think seriously. Was it a mistake to join this team? You will soon understand why it is called this name. As he spoke, he waved to Steve, who had just walked into the coffee shop. Chapter 414, The 25th Immigration Fleet While Bruce Wayne was introducing more information to Diana, David was communicating with Art Sautom and Luca Angeloni, who he brought with him. As David expected, Art Sautom found Luca Angeloni for help. He did not go to another acquaintance, Mikhail, because Art Sautom did not know that Mikhail worked at SMS. On the surface, it seems that Luca the young master of LAI, is easier to help. For a large company, it is not difficult to help David get two identities. As for exchanging some specialties of Winter City for money, 
It is better to find a private pawn shop. For a similar place, you might as well look for LAI. According to Art Sautome, there are many special minerals and specialty products in Winter City, and LAI should be interested in these things. After discussing his ideas with David, David agreed with Sautome Arte's idea and extended an invitation to Sautome Arte's friend Luca Angeloni. Hence, this meeting took place. After the initial shock and curiosity, Luca finally met the legendary king of Winter Kingdom. Although he came from a wealthy family, Luca suddenly had to face a real king, which made Luca feel a little nervous. It wasn't until I met David himself and found out that he was also a young man that I relaxed a little. At first, the two sides just chatted briefly. David took Luca to visit Winter City, especially the Winter Alchemy Workshop, and showed the LAI son many Winter City products. Sure enough, there were many things among them that attracted the young man from LAI. Don't think that because Luca is so young, he cannot see the value of these things. Luca himself is quite talented and capable. He joined SMS just to observe the VF25 and Vidra that had just entered service, and to collect more data for his family's company. Among them, VF25 is jointly developed and manufactured by Shinching Industrial and LAI. LAI is mainly responsible for new materials and new inertial buffer technology. So Luca is very interested in various high-tech technologies, alloys and minerals that he has never been exposed to. After seeing the various novel technologies mastered by Winter City, Luca suddenly realized that he had arrived at a huge treasure house. If he could cooperate with Winter City, LAI would achieve further development. Especially the magical alchemy of Winter City made him see the possibility of artificially creating full crystals. If successful, LAI Corporation will become one of the most powerful technology companies in the galaxy and may even be eliminated. Although he can't understand what the so-called alchemy is, the magical abilities in Winter City made him feel magical, but he didn't know if he could use them in his own world. However, even if it can only be used in this world, as long as it can create what it wants, it is a huge opportunity for LAI. As for using force to rob, Luca didn't think about it at all. After visiting the Winter Military Camp and seeing the powerful fighting power of the Winter Knights and the people of Cybertron, he would not want to use force against Winter City. What's more, for the people in Luca's world, they cannot go to Winter City freely. Anyone who wants to use force under such circumstances is either a fool or a retard. That's why I went on a tour with your group. Leave it to me. Luca was particularly concerned about this matter and wanted to take David directly to their ship group. As for his identity, you can do it after you get there. However, he needs to go back and say H, low to his family first and report what he saw and heard in this place to his father. Although it's magical, as long as you bring some samples back, you can definitely convince your father. As for what to choose as a sample, Luca chose vibranium. He doesn't need a lot. Just a small piece as a sample to convince his family. David took a small piece of vibranium and gave it to Luca. After taking Luca around, he asked Sautom Marte to entertain his friend. Watching His Majesty King David leave, Art Sautom and Luca looked at each other. His Majesty the King looks very young and speaks very kindly. But for some reason, there is always an invisible pressure when he is around him. Art Sautom knew why, and simply explained to her friend, this king, who seemed young and very kind, was the Winter Kingdom built from scratch in the wilderness. The city below was a desolate wilderness just a few years ago. Such a person must have an unusual temperament. Not to mention that His Majesty David Glamorgan is also a very powerful user of the Holy Light. Sautom Art does not know David's actual situation, and has only heard of the name Incarnation of the Holy Light. Knowing that David is good at using the Holy Light, is the Holy Light the kind of power the Winter Knight uses? The priests in the Holy Light Cathedral also understand this power. But the priests and the paladins of the Knights of Winter have different emphasis when using it. After briefly introducing Holy Light to Luca, this friend gave a very pertinent evaluation. It sounds like a game setting. Art Sautom smiled. He felt the same way. Do you want to continue shopping? No. I plan to go back first. There should be more opportunities to visit here in the future. Luca still remembered the business. And there was nothing better than going home first. Once the cooperation is negotiated, he will definitely come here often in the future. By then, he will have enough time to visit every corner of Winter City. Then I'll take you back. After returning to the 25th Immigration Ship Group, Luca rushed home as quickly as possible, using vibranium, a magical metal, to prove the magical things he had just experienced, and persuaded his family to fight against Winter City. 
More collaboration. Of course. Before that, a small problem needs to be solved for David Glamorgan. The King of Winter City, creating an identity for David Glamorgan and Eva McKenna respectively, as well as complete entry and exit records. For a large company like LAI, this is really not a difficult task. The next day, Luca contacted Art Satom and handed him a series of identity documents and things he would need on the immigration ship. When Art Satom brought these things to Winter City and delivered them to David, David had just finished breakfast and sat down in the office, preparing to start today's work. Do anything. Luca is very efficient at doing things. In other words, LAI is very efficient. In just one night, it has already made a decision and prepared everything it needs. It is truly the power of capital. Art Sautone suddenly felt a little weird. He was a little confused whether David's words were a compliment or a mockery. I need some time to arrange some things. Will you wait for me in the lounge? Or make an appointment to meet up? Although David already has the ability to travel directly to other worlds. For the first time, David needs Art Sautone to help him orient himself. Otherwise, he would go directly and he was not sure whether he would land accurately in the 25th immigration ship group. If he accidentally ran to another ship group, or even to the Earth, wouldn't he be in trouble? I don't know if this ability has changed after I became the king, but to be on the safe side, let Art Sautone be my guide. I walked around and said H, low to Weatherby Swan, Elizabeth Swan, Elias and Floyd. Tony Stark was addicted to magic and couldn't extricate himself. David left a message directly. Others such as Steve also dealt with it the same way. After finishing these things, David called Eva, changed into a more modern casual clothes, and followed Art Satone to the world of Macross F, and came to the main place where the plot took place, the main island of the 25th Immigration Fleet. David looked at the surrounding environment. It seemed no different from an ordinary city, but his excellent eyesight allowed him to easily see through the distant sky. In fact, it was not far away. Those scenes were just pictures played on the screen. This is the immigration ship group? Why does it feel a bit familiar? The main island of the 25th immigration fleet is based on San Francisco. There is even the famous bridge here, which is really not very auspicious considering what this fleet is about to encounter. Where should we go first? Go to Luca first. David took a quick look and found that he seemed to be in a school. This should be the Maisei Academy where Art Sautom studied. Then let's go visit VF-25 together. When she heard that David was going to visit the latest fighter jets, Art Sautom, who originally wanted to do her own thing after contacting Luca, immediately changed her original plan. As a pilot, he is of course interested in this new type of fighter jet that has just been manufactured. It would be even better if he could fly it himself. Let's go to the front to meet Luca. This place is Sautom Alt's usual traveling point, and it is relatively remote. After walking forward for a while, a few people came to the front yard of Meishing Academy, which is the area between the main building and the academy gate. David and Eva looked up at the strange-shaped main building and also saw the plane on the top of the building. That's the VF-1 Valkyrie. Art Sautom noticed the two people's gaze and introduced this fighter of great significance to them. The first variable form fighter. David withdrew his gaze. Of course he knew it was VF-1. He even knew that the Valkyrie on the top floor of Meisei Academy was the aircraft. Appearance of the first-generation male protagonist Ichiki Teru. It's a pity that it's just a decoration and not a real Valkyrie fighter. Just as David was sighing, Luca walked up to several people. Welcome to the 25th Immigration Ship Group. Is there anything your majesty wants to see? There's no need to call me that. David didn't want to attract strange attention. Let's go take a look at the VF-25 first. I'm very interested in this new type of fighter jet. Chapter 415, Take a Fighter Jet and Go for a Ride. David wanted to see the VF-25 fighter jets. Of course, Luca had no objection and took David directly to SMS. Currently, all the newly built VF-25s are here at SMS. But there are none officially. When they arrived at the SMS station, Art Sautom learned that his friend Luca Angeloni actually worked part-time as a pilot at SMS. Luca has flown the VF-25 fighter jet that he has always wanted to experience countless times and he also owns a dedicated electronic warfare fighter RVF-25. At the same time, another friend, Michael Brown, is also working part-time at SMS. Like Luca, he is a member of the SMS skeleton team, because he is good at sniping. He drives the sniper model VF-25G. I feel a little unhappy for no reason. Although I have never thought about joining a private military contracting company like SMS, 
these two people working part-time here don't even tell me. Isn't it a bit too close to being friends? Then I thought about it. If David hadn't come over, I wouldn't have told these two people about the information about Winter City and about my training in Winter City. Everyone has their own little secrets. And thinking about this makes me feel balanced. At this time, David was looking at the VF-25 fighter jets in front of him. There were many VF-25 fighter jets parked in this hangar. In addition to the standard type, there were also four skeleton squadron aircraft. VF-25, codenamed Messiah, is jointly manufactured by Nova Industries and LAI. Using the latest composite materials, Luca followed David through the hangar, stopping from time to time to accompany David to carefully observe a certain fighter plane. And by the way, he introduced various data parameters of the VF-25 to David and Eva in detail. VF-25, codenamed Messiah, is 4.30 meters tall, 18.72 meters long, has a wingspan of 15.5 meters, and has an empty weight of 8.45 tons. The use of new composite materials makes the fighter's fuselage 60 times stronger than the previous generation VF. The fuselage can withstand temperatures of 2,500 degrees while reducing its weight by 35%. The composite material used in the nose of the machine is stronger, can withstand high temperatures of 3,200 degrees, and has better radio wave transmission characteristics. In addition, the new generation energy armor used by VF-25 has stronger defense strength and is also equipped with gasification armor. The invisible paint evaporates instantly when it is irradiated by high-energy laser, spreading the energy and reducing the output effect to less than 30%. In addition, the fighter plane is also equipped with a stealth stance that can absorb 85% of laser energy and electromagnetic waves. The VF-25's defense is quite powerful. VF-25 is equipped with two FF-3000 and one A Stage 2 thermonuclear engines jointly developed by Nova Industries and Royce with a single engine thrust of 1,620 knots. Others include a new generation of artificial intelligence system. The driver cannot feel the existence of artificial intelligence. A short-range full radar that can accurately detect the quality and quantity of objects escaped from space jumps within 100,000 to 300,000 kilometers. And a short-range full radar that can detect a distance of 50 light years. Long-range full radar, and so on. The VF-25 fuselage also has a polymer coating made of full crystal powder, which can absorb 100% of radar waves. David did not interrupt Luca's introduction. Although he had already known these data parameters, it was a special feeling to listen to these introductions in conjunction with the real objects in front of him. Unable to help but want to touch it, David looked at the color of the fighter plane in front of him. This red and white paint scheme should be that of Kyria, who received the lunchbox at the beginning and then inherited the fighter plane from Alt Satom. Mu's skeleton number four. He did not put his thoughts into action because he felt the knife-like gazes of those people not far away. Turning around, he saw that among them was Henry Killiam, the current pilot of Skull 4, smiling and nodding to say H, low to the extra who had received his lunch early. David looked at Osma Lee who was standing next to Killiam. If possible, he would like to bring this skeleton team member the Captain Doug to Winter City. Because, this man who looks a bit vicissitudes of life is a very terrifying flag-waving maniac. No matter how many flags are planted before the war, this guy can unceremoniously pull them all down. His ferocity can rival Hawkeye Clint Barton. As the captain of the skeleton team, after planting a lot of flags, he didn't die in battle. It can be seen from this that this person has very strong driving skills. And Winter City needs such talents. As for when to dig? How to dig? This can be studied slowly. After looking at various models of VF-25 for a while, David also scanned all these fighters without everyone knowing. Although he already knew the parameters of this fighter, the actual scan can also obtain more accurate structures and technologies. Data, if there is more advanced technology on it, can also strengthen itself. After scanning, as long as the fire is strong enough, even the technology that Cybertron, Winter City, has not yet mastered can be quickly mastered and turned into technical knowledge that is mastered by itself. However, as the technology of this world has developed to this day, folding crystal, fold crystal, cannot be bypassed in many places. This special product of this world has various magical functions. If you want to perfectly copy and use various technologies of this world, the folding crystal is the most critical item. I have to ask Luca for some crystal samples later. After visiting VF-25, David began to think about VF-27 again. But the plot has not started yet and he cannot get in touch with a fighter plane codenamed Lucifer for the time being. 
David wasn't in a hurry because he didn't have to wait long. On the way to SMS, he saw a lot of billboards promoting Cheryl Lou Noem's concerts. When the top singer of the new era came to the 25th immigration ship group, it meant that the plot officially began. At that time, the F-27, Vajra, etc. will all appear one after another. In fact, it doesn't matter if you don't skin the F-27. After acquiring the relevant technologies of this world, you have indirectly acquired various technologies of VF-27. The VF-27 itself is a fighter of the same generation as the VF-25. There is no absolute technological superiority. The real strength lies in the fact that the pilot must be a modified person. Through mental link control, the fighter can make more and faster reaction actions, as well as different movements, reasonable and stupid maneuvers. As for the Graviton Beam Cannon, Alei has this technology, and David can get it through Luca. However, leaving like this, David always felt that it was not enough fun. Can I actually drive it? Aww? Luca didn't expect David to suddenly make such a request, which made him a little confused about how to deal with it. This, Luca wanted to ask his senior, Art Sautom, whether the king of the Winter Kingdom knew how to fly a fighter plane. But when he turned around to find Art Sautom, he found that his senior was pulled aside by another senior, Michael Brown, who seemed to be chatting about something. In desperation, Luca had no choice but to ask David personally. Well, I don't know if you have received relevant training. Are you worried about this? Don't worry. I am the strongest pilot in the Winter Kingdom. David is not bragging. With his physical fitness and reaction speed, the VF-25 cannot bring any pressure to him. It can even be said that David is the chosen one who can truly unleash the full potential of the VF-25 fighter jet. Because even if the inertial buffer is miniaturized, the driver is still the biggest factor limiting the actual combat effectiveness of the new generation VF fighter. In this regard, the VF-27 chose to let the pilot not be a human being. The newer generation YF-29 tried to make up for the problem of the pilot's own endurance limit by spending crazy money and piling more black technology on the fighter plane. The final result is that neither VF-27 nor YF-29 has been mass-produced on a large scale. Among them, YF-29 can only exist as a technical verification machine and has not been truly listed at all. So it does not even have an official number. As for driving skills, David, who has a Cybertron body, can basically learn this knowledge in seconds. Even if he switches back to normal state, his strong mental power allows him to quickly digest this knowledge and his excellent physical coordination ability allows him to apply newly learned techniques. Therefore, David didn't think there was any excessive reason for him to want to fly this fighter plane. But in the eyes of outsiders, this request was a bit outrageous. Luca looked at David's expectant expression and really didn't know how to refuse. Especially now that he wanted to promote the cooperation between LAI and Winter City. I'll go discuss it with the captain. SMS is a private company. The takeoff and deployment of fighter aircraft are much simpler than that of the military. And it has great autonomy. Just complete a few simple processes and you're ready to take off. But no matter how simple it is, Lucas still thinks that this matter is not that simple to negotiate. Sure enough, after Osma Lee heard that the strange young man, who had no idea of his origins, actually wanted to drive the VF-25 himself, she decisively refused. Just kidding. Can just anyone fly their plane out? Captain. I'm afraid it's inappropriate to refuse directly. Right? I don't know when. Michael Brown, who had finished talking to Sato Mart, suddenly came over, looking at Luca's appearance. The man named David may have a lot of it such a big deal. If the other party directly contacts the company's upper management, it will be even more troublesome. Ozma had a constipated expression on her face. Michael's words made sense. This kind of thing was very likely to happen. This was also the reason why he was very unhappy. No matter how unhappy he was, he still had to find a way to deal with this young master who appeared out of nowhere. Why don't you just agree? You can let him sit in the back seat of me. Kill I am was ready to take over this chore and take the young man out for a flight to avoid getting into more trouble. Unfortunately, he obviously misunderstood the situation. Mr. Glamorgan should mean to fly a VF-25 himself rather than sit in the back seat. Seeing Ozma's face become even more ugly, Michael immediately came up with a new idea. In that case, let Mr. Glamorgan prove his skills on the simulator first. If he really knows how to driving, letting him fly around is nothing. If you can't even open the simulator, it should make this young man who appears out of nowhere give up his unrealistic idea. Right. Is the other party willing to undergo simulator testing? This is simpler. 
Some preparations need to be done before the fighter jet set off. I just use the simulator to kill time while waiting for the preparations to be completed and to warm up. Chapter 416 Digging 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 Simulator? You know. The VF-25 is the latest fighter aircraft. There are many new technologies applied to it. Use the simulator to let you get familiar with these new equipment first. Meher explained the situation to David enthusiastically. With a bright smile on his face. With a smile. As if he was really explaining the situation to David. In addition, the fighter plane needs some preparations to fly. Instead of waiting here, it is better to experience the simulator first. Sounds like a good suggestion. David also had a smile on his face. But anyone could see that the expression on his face revealed a hint of I just want to see how round you are, the taste of. This posture made Mikhail feel a lot of pressure. And he always felt as if he was being caught by his girlfriend when he was riding in many boats. Fortunately, although the other party saw through his thoughts, he did not refuse. It seems that this rich man with unknown origin is not difficult to deal with. Watching Michael leading the young man named David Glamorgan towards the simulation training room, Ozma also breathed a sigh of relief. As long as it's not confusing and unable to communicate, that's fine. Maybe, after seeing how difficult it is to fly a VF-25 through a simulator, this person will give up. This, through the external screen. Mihail, Luca, Eva, and Artsatom can clearly see the simulated flight conditions. David didn't need any additional guidance at all. After entering the simulator, he quickly took off the plane successfully and flew quite smoothly. From the smoothness and steady state of the fighter plane taking off, we can know that David really knows how to fly the aircraft. The simulator inside the SMS is not a game console. The operation is no different from driving a real VF-25. SMS pilots usually use simulators for training. So being able to successfully take off and land on a simulator means that they can also complete these operations when driving a real aircraft as long as their mentality is stable. Seeing this situation, Michael immediately went to greet the Captain Ozma and make various preparations for the plane to take off. It seems that we have all underestimated this guest. Although real flying is still risky, since the other party has proven that he knows how to drive and has a special status, they can only accompany him. Go prepare. Fill up the plane with propellant. Flying in space requires propellant. And don't carry ammunition. In order to prevent any accidents, Ozma planned to accompany him personally. When issuing a series of orders, he also asked the logistics personnel to prepare his fighter plane for takeoff. If the captain is going, Luca will definitely go with him. The remaining Kilayam and Mikhail feel that they should also accompany them. So when David came back, the entire skeleton team was ready to go. The one prepared for David was a standard VF-25A. That is, in the animation, the yellow-green painted VF-25 often moves with a fleet and flies in formation at every turn. Generally, this fighter plane has another name. Miscellaneous fighter plane. David didn't mind arranging a military aircraft for himself. Anyway, there was no difference in performance between the VF-25 standard version and the ones used by the skeleton team. But some of the equipment was different. At the same time, SMS did not install an external backpack on the aircraft he was flying. It doesn't matter. It's more flexible this way. He came here to race cars. Not to experience space battles. It wouldn't be possible without a super backpack. It flies faster this way. Eva and Art Sautone watched David put on his flight suit and sit in the cockpit. They were led by SMS staff to the SMS Combat Command Center, the bridge of Macross Quarter. Here, Eva met the captain of the battleship, Jeffrey Wilder, and the trio responsible for radar, communications, fire control, and battleship status monitoring, Monica Lang, Ram Hoa, and Mina Roseanne, through the screen on the bridge. Everyone can clearly see the situation of the skeleton team and the fighter plane driven by David. Welcome aboard Macross Quarter, Miss Eva McKenna and Mr. Art Sautnome. Captain Jeffrey Wilder was quite polite to the two guests and did not show an unhappy cold face. To be able to reach the position of captain, he has come into contact with too many people of all kinds, and his interpersonal skills are many levels higher than that of the dead sister controlling Ozma. At this time, David is not here. Otherwise, he would start thinking of poaching again. Nice to meet you. Captain Wilder. Art Sautom seemed a little reserved. But his good tutoring prevented him from being rude, and he greeted everyone politely. With Michael and Luca's status as friends and classmates, several people on the bridge treated him very well. More passionate than Eva. While several people were saying H, low. Skeleton team number one and two. Captains Ozma and Michael. 
had already taken off. Next is David. After David successfully takes off, it will be Skull 3 and 4, which are Luca and Killiam. Hopefully that Mr. Glamorgan won't be too nervous about flying a real airplane. The red-haired ram looked at the VF on the screen and made a casual comment, which immediately caused Monica to cough. At the same time, the purple-haired Mina also reminded her partner with her eyes not to talk nonsense. There are outsiders here. Realizing that he couldn't speak harshly today, Ram decisively shut up and watched the VF on the screen take off smoothly into space. David controlled the fighter plane to merge with the two fighters that had taken off previously, and soon the other two fighters also caught up. The five fighter planes protected him in a circling manner, ensuring that nothing unexpected would happen to his guest. Of course, they also prevented him from causing any problems. According to this formation, David does not need to observe the surrounding environment. If he flies behind Skeleton 1 honestly, there will be absolutely no accidents. Follow me, and we'll fly around the convoy. Ozma's smelly face appeared on the communication interface. David looked at the captain of the Skeleton team and said something that made his blood pressure soar. Okay, why don't we see who can complete this lap first? What? Before Ozma could object, David cut off communication. Then several members of the skeleton team saw the protected VF fighter jets rushing out from above the formation. And then rushed straight forward. The other three people all had expressions of I knew it wouldn't be that simple. And veins appeared on Ozma's forehead. At this moment, everyone on the bridge saw this situation and glanced at Eva in unison. Seeing the indifferent look on her face, they didn't know whether they should be worried about the safety of Mr. Glamorgan. Still complaining about these two guests' big heart. No matter what. There will be fun and fun to watch next. The angry Ozma wanted to blow up the disobedient guy into fireworks with a wild horse show. But even if he brought live ammunition, he couldn't do this. He could only chase after him in a fighter plane with a look of displeasure on his face. Until he suddenly realized something was wrong. Um, although the VF fighters in front were flying according to the established heading and did not deviate from the flight route they had set in advance, they did not fly in a straight line. This dangling posture seemed to be provocative and to avoid being locked by themselves. Ozma, an experienced veteran pilot, immediately judged the situation. It was definitely the first one. But he soon discovered that the maneuvering method of the VF fighter ahead was a bit outrageous. This kind of flight route was not like a manned aircraft being able to fly. How can this be? Ozma observed for a while. And after noticing that the VF fighter plane ahead was swaying toward him provocatively from time to time, he finally made a decision. Luca, Gilliam, you are responsible for recovering the backpack. Mikhail, drop the backpack and follow. Come up! At the same time as the order was given, the external backpack had detached from the fuselage. And then the fighter accelerated and chased the VF ahead. Well, things have gotten more troublesome, Mikhail complained. But his hands were not slow. Moreover, David Glamorgan really aroused his interest. As an excellent pilot, it was inevitable that he would want to compete with him. The external backpack was also released. And Mikhail chased after him in his skull too. The three lightly armed VFs disappeared from sight in the blink of an eye, leaving Luca and Kiliam responsible for recovering the external backpacks and bringing them back to the base. Luca, what's the matter? Senior Kiliam, who is this Glamorgan? Alei is discussing cooperation with that guy. As for why he has such good piloting skills, I don't know. Luca realized that David's phrase the strongest pilot in the Winter Kingdom was not bragging. His majesty his flying skills are indeed very powerful. And Luca thinks that he will never be able to catch up with the fighter plane piloted by David. I wonder who will win in the end. It should be the captain. Right. Although his majesty's skills were very powerful, Luca still felt that the winner in the end was Captain Ozma Lee. But when he and Gilliam flew back to the base with the recovered backpack and rushed to the bridge, they discovered through the screen that the fighter plane piloted by David Glamorgan was still in the lead. Ozma actually failed to catch up and overtake? This situation surprised both of them. Is the captain letting things slip? But when the two planes on the screen gradually flew away and left the shooting distance of Skeleton 2, everyone knew the answer. Ozma had tried his best, but still couldn't catch up with the VF driven by that person. What is the origin of this young man named David Glamorgan? Captain Wilder suspected that David Glamorgan was from the Galaxy Ship Group, which was famous for its biochemistry and human modification technology. Because the various flying movements David made while flying the fighter plane were obviously beyond the endurance of the human body. At this time, David, who was the first to fly the plane back to the base, 
was looking at the stinky Ozma with a smile, and threw out the first bait. Do you want to become as powerful as me? Chapter 417, In the Vast Galaxy Ozma ignored David's invitation. But David saw some surprise, and a hint of hesitation on the other person's face. It was obvious that he was tempted. Ozma is different from Art Sautom. Art Sautom simply wants to become a powerful fighter pilot, and enjoy the joy of flying. The captain of SMS's skeleton team is different. He knows a lot of inside information, including the development and birth of the new generation of VF fighters. It is all because the human government became aware of the existence of creatures like Vagula, in addition to large corporate groups including LI, in order to obtain more folding crystals, which were born in Vagula's body. They will also promote the collision between humans and creatures like Vagula behind the scenes. In short, humans and Vajura are destined to have a war. And Ozma, who has witnessed the horror of Vajra with his own eyes, certainly hopes to become stronger. The official entry of VF-25 once gave him some confidence. But he knew that even with new weapons and equipment, it was still not easy to defeat those bugs. If you accept transformation and become stronger. After competing with David, Ozma has determined in her heart that the other person is a modified enhanced person. In fact, in a certain respect, Ozma and Captain Jeffrey Wilder's judgment does not count. Wrong. However, these two people know nothing about the strengthening method of Winter City and the height it can reach. After visiting, scanning and actually driving a VF fighter, I also waved a hoe. David felt that this time was not in vain, and he basically did everything he wanted to do. In the next few days, David took Eva around in the 25th Immigration Ship Group. During the period, he also visited LAI's laboratory and saw more new technologies mastered by LAI. Among them, the technology of the Barabin Beam Cannon that David was concerned about was also seen by him. By this time, David's purpose of coming to this world had basically been achieved, and he began to enjoy the sightseeing tour with Eva. After visiting most of the main island, the two began to visit other areas. In addition to the circular main island, there are also many long eco-boats towed like trains behind large immigration ships like this. These islands, which are towed behind the main island, have various functions such as agricultural areas, livestock areas, etc., and even the living and commercial areas of the Jatraytai people. The multi-purpose ecological ship can ensure that the immigrant fleet is self-sufficient during the long voyage, and as much as possible, the residents living on the immigrant fleet can ignore the fact that they are actually living on a spaceship. In fact, from a technical point of view, the eco-ship technology in this world is quite mature. Eva follows David around, and if she ignores the connections and other structures in each island, she will often forget that she is on the honest spaceship. It feels no different than traveling to a certain city. I feel the same way. David was walking in the passage dedicated to ordinary humans, looking at the tall Jatray type people and the huge various commodities around him, and suddenly felt a strange feeling. Eva also felt special. The two of them visited most of the places in the boat group that could be visited. And in the end, they found the lives of the Jet Lottie people and the business district to be the most interesting, compared to Winter City or the world I lived in before. This is the most special place. Huge vegetables, fruits, and those huge races that are about 15 meters tall. When David came here, he realized that the Jet Lotti were taller than most Cybertronians. There is a mountain-like pressure beside the alien. Do you want to win over a group of Jatraytai people to return to Winter City? Eva watched David standing on the edge of the high platform, watching the Jet Lotti people coming and going around him and seriously doubted that the new Winter King wanted to increase the number of racial types in his kingdom. The Jet Lottie are a very good fighting race. They have tall bodies, strong bodies, and amazing fighting will and instincts. Most Jet Lottie pilots do not need advanced weapons and equipment. Even if they are only provided with old-fashioned combat capsules, they will not complain. It is determined to step onto the battlefield. However, I'm afraid it will be difficult to really win over these Jatray type people to live in Winter City. Why? because Winter City doesn't have their favorite culture dot. Having said this, David also realized that the entertainment life in Winter City was indeed too lacking. As a ruler, he was okay. He could do whatever he wanted, and even go to other worlds to have fun. People close to me can also receive similar treatment. But ordinary residents in Winter City do not have much entertainment life except work, chatting and making people. The arrival of the Tyrant Nobles has brought some more leisure and entertainment activities to Winter City. But these activities are only limited to the noble circle. It is because of the recent crowning of David as king that a group of bards have been attracted. 
giving the civilians of Winter City more entertainment. Should we arrange some entertainment projects for the people? As a man from the era of information explosion, David would not treat entertainment projects as pure entertainment. He knew how powerful these things contained. If it is done well, minor conflicts that may break out in Winter City can be nipped in the bud, for example, should dramas, stage plays, and other performances promote the concept of equality of all ethnic groups? To mix things up, that kind of life before was not lived by humans at all. But now such a generous life comes from the great majesty of Glamorgan and so on. When the time comes, we will arrange for some bards from out of town to talk about the miserable lives of civilians in other countries. Is it possible that national loyalty will not keep rising? Of course, it can't all be these things. Ordinary singing and dancing programs can also be arranged. It's just these two days when Sherry Lou Norm arrived. Right. Yes. Luca asked us before if we wanted to go to the singer's concert. Luca, Mihail and Art Sautone took a part-time job and performed the flying show at Shirley Lou's concert. Even without this incident, Luca could still get VIP tickets for the concert for David. It just depends on whether he is interested. Are you interested in that little girl? Shirley Lou Norm is only 17 years old. And in Eva's eyes, she is just a little girl. However, men seem to like little girls. Isn't that how Gwyn got David? And Sophia. Eva guessed wrong this time. And David didn't think about it at all. He suddenly mentioned Shirley. Actually because he wanted to determine the time when the plot started. By the way, I wonder if I should continue to stay here and wait for the plot to start. Or just go back and forget it. In his view, the conflict between humans and insects is inevitable. This war was originally deliberately promoted by some careerists behind the scenes. When the time comes, the entire immigrant fleet will be attacked by insects at any time. What if I stay and see the human beings being affected by the war and become soft-hearted? Bring the entire immigrant fleet back to Winterfell? Huh? It doesn't seem impossible. Isn't the goal of the immigration fleet to find a habitable planet? The continent of Brunia is a habitable planet. The only trouble is that the immigration fleet has its own government, bureaucracy, and army. There is a high probability that these people will not be obedient citizens of Winter City. So forget it. Just focus on poaching some talents according to the original plan. After shopping around for a while, Eva and I return to the hotel on the main island. After staying for so long, David has reached a secret cooperation agreement with LAI Company. Although no contract has been signed, neither party is prepared to renege on anything verbally agreed upon. According to the decision of both parties, LAI Company asked Luca Angeloni to serve as the liaison between the two parties to ensure smooth communication between the two parties. The first cooperation project between the two parties is the mass production of folding crystals. To this end, LAI will provide Winter City with crystal samples and various data currently in its possession. Once successful, the cooperation between the two parties will enter the second stage, jointly develop in-depth applications of folding crystals and sell related products to the entire galaxy. It seems that all the benefits have been taken up by LAI, but Winter City does not really get any benefits. As long as Winter City can artificially manufacture folding crystals, all LAI's technologies and resources will be open to Winter City, which means that David can obtain any resources in the world through LAI. Human beings in this world can already roam around the galaxy. And LAI, as a large enterprise, can easily mobilize various resources. If necessary, David can even get a ready-made Miraz directly to Winter City through LAI, as long as he has a suitable transportation method. LAI will also provide David with all operating personnel including the captain. This also means that if David wants to poach people in this world, he doesn't even need to show up in person. Well, as soon as his thoughts unfolded, David found that his vision did not need to be limited to the 25th immigration ship group. After setting his sights on the entire galaxy, David immediately thought of a powerful pilot. But he actually forgot about this guy, the once problematic ace pilot Young Dyson. At this time, Young was already in his 40s and had left the Tonga army to work in SMS. Data didn't know which branch he worked in. But this was not a problem for LAI. It was easy for such a famous person to find information. Thinking about that guy's character, as long as David can provide him with a way to become stronger and a better fighter, then the probability of him defecting to Winter City is higher than that of Ozma and Art Sautong. In addition, the brainwashed Major Brera Stan is also a worthy target. If I destroy the control device on Brela's head in advance and let him wake up early, will the plot still go on? Chapter 418. Give me one, two. David has achieved most of the goals of this trip and successfully established contact with LAI. 
in the future. He can keep in touch with the world through LAI, Sato Malt, Luca and others. Next, he can contact Young Dyson through LAI Company. If everything goes well, Winter City will soon have its own ace pilot. Although Young is a guy who gives the army an unusual headache, his problems are not a problem for Winter City. Young Dyson? Sure enough, when David and Luca mentioned this person, Luca had a surprised expression on his face. He did not ask David how he knew this person. Although some things about Young were classified as confidential, they should not be hidden from the king of Winter City. Luca always believed that after David came here this time, some Cybertronians must have followed him to help David collect various information. In fact, Luca guessed it right. David has always been carrying a robot dog with him. This robot pet that was robbed from Soundwave spends most of the time on David's body in a dormant state, which means that David can wake this guy up to work at any time, because there is no need to invade any secret facilities. The robot dog is qualified for this job, collecting useful information from public network information platforms, sorting it out, and giving it to David. It's just that David remembered Young Dyson based on his past memories, and has nothing to do with the information collected by the robot dog. Your Majesty wants to recruit this person to Winter City? Luca had visited the military camp in Winter City, and knew that Winter City was seriously short of pilots. He was not surprised that David wanted to recruit pilots. Just surprised David would target that madman. Yes, his skills are very good. Luca didn't know how to evaluate this matter. Young Dyson's flying skills were indeed very good. In the simulator battle currently used by the pilot, the enemy when selecting the high difficulty mode was simulated based on Young Dyson's data. Others. Before Luca could introduce Mr. Young Dyson's glorious deeds to David, David waved his hand to stop him and said that Winter City could bring Mr. Young Dyson's physical fitness back to its peak or even change it stronger and can build better special fighters for him. All he has to do is work for the Winter Kingdom and fly fighter planes when he is needed. Luca felt that the conditions proposed by David were very much in line with that person's preferences. It seemed that His Majesty the King made the decision to recruit Young Dyson after he had a thorough understanding of him. Leave this matter to us. Lie! LAI has many cooperations with SMS. It is not difficult for LAI to recruit a pilot who has passed his prime. There should be no dissatisfaction from SMS. After all, Young is already in his 40s. And there is nothing worth retaining for a pilot of this age. Even though he seems to be able to fly, age is always a hidden danger. He must have realized that his health was getting worse. Generally speaking, normal people will feel excited when they learn that there is a way to return the body to its peak. Not to mention Young Dyson. Luca was very moved. And he suddenly asked David a question. His Majesty, what do you want to ask? Just ask. Can I accept training at the Winter Military Camp? That's it? Yes. Sure. Luca was very happy. He learned about training at the Winter Military Camp through Satom Arte. Because he was under the care of the Holy Light Priests and Paladins. He could train beyond the limits of his body without worrying about damaging his body. Although this kind of self-harming training method is very painful, it can indeed make the body stronger. After a period of training, Art Satom's physical fitness has improved a lot. But he usually uses simulators in school, which cannot show his physical advantages. Because the data marked for the driver on the simulator are all values for normal people. There is no way to use unconventional extreme operations, like driving a rail fighter jet. When using the simulator to perform operations beyond the conventional limit, the driver will be judged as a black driver. Vision, coma, etc. And lost control of the aircraft and crashed. If Art were allowed to fly a real aircraft now, his performance would be even better than in the simulator. And he might even surpass Michael Brown, who has been steadily suppressing him. If you are interested... You can talk to the priests of the Holy Light Cathedral. Maybe you can also comprehend the Holy Light. David does not object to anyone learning the mysterious knowledge possessed by Winter City. People like Luca if he really learns Holy Light. Or other knowledge such as Arcana. He will only be more closely bound to Winter City. Considering that Luca is the son of LAI Company. It means that LAI and Winter City are completely on the same side. In other words. LAI will become the representative of the Winter Kingdom in a certain world like the Osborne group in The Amazing Spider-Man and the Stark group in the Marvel Universe. Can I take Michael Senpai with me? Can! Luca has a good relationship with Michael and Art Sotom. With such a good thing. Of course, he has to ask Senior Michael to go to Winter City for training together. I guess Senior Mihai also hopes that he can become more powerful. Right? As for Captain Ozma, 
Luca knew that His Majesty David Glamorgan was trying to recruit the captain. But it was unclear whether the captain would agree. After talking about business for a while and confirming David's next itinerary, Luca said goodbye and left. After talking for a while, David also made a decision in his heart. Stay and watch the concert before leaving. It wasn't that he was interested in Sherry, the new generation of galactic singer, but that he wanted to take a close look at a magical creature like Bajura. So when I just decided on the itinerary with Luca, in addition to asking LAI to prepare a VF-25 as painted with white background and black stripes for him, I also asked LAI to reserve two VIP seats for me. He could sit in the second chapter, in the VIP box on the first floor. Enjoy the performance of the new generation of Galaxy singer Cheryl Lou Noem. To be honest, David was looking forward to it because he had never been to a concert in his life. He was curious about what it would be like to watch a concert live. Can you only hear the various shouts from the fans? And you can't even hear clearly what song is being sung on the stage? When the actual concert began, David found that the acoustics were good and the singing was not drowned out by the cheers of the fans. Of course, it was also possible that he was sitting too far away from the crowd. And the fans cheering crazily were far away from him. There is some distance. As expected of the Galaxy Diva, she is even more beautiful in real life than on the billboard. Eva stared at Cheryl Noem, who was singing hard on the stage with wide eyes. She has a good figure, and her singing is also very good. No wonder he is famous all over the galaxy. He really has some abilities. But what really concerned David was not Shirley's performance but that when Satom Art was performing a flight demonstration, she quickly stabilized her posture after colliding with her teammates and did not lose control and almost hit Shirley, causing Shirley to fall off the stage. Without this accident, Shirley Lou's earrings would not have fallen on Art Satom's body, and Shirley Lou would not have gone to Art to get the earrings back, triggering a series of events. The reason for all this is simply that Art received rigorous training in Winter City, which gave him even better flying skills. Oh! Does this spoil the plot? How will it develop next? For some reason, David suddenly wanted to laugh. What's going on with that conspiratorial smile on your face? Have you done something? Eva glanced at David beside her. And then at Shirley Lou who was on the stage. Could it be that David has already taken action on this little girl? This is strange. David has been staying with me recently? When did he do it? Just when Eva wanted to ask further questions. The concert was suddenly interrupted without warning. The lights were bright and all the holographic images on the stage were turned off. Shirley, who was previously wearing as sexy and sexy clothes as possible, changed into a tightly wrapped tight-fitting outfit that was also projected. It can be seen from Shirley Lou's reaction that this situation also surprised her, and she didn't understand what happened. At this time, a female officer rushed onto the stage and dragged Shirley down. Seeing this scene, fans didn't realize what was going on. As a soldier, Eva already realized that something was wrong. I'm going to see those bugs. You go back to Winter City first. As David spoke, he greeted Luca who was staying in the dark above the stage and motioned for him to join him. Wait for me after meeting Wajula. We will return to Winter City. Are there any other activities? No. David waved his hand. I will go back soon. Eva nodded and waved goodbye to David. After she could no longer see David, she randomly chose a direction and walked over. The next second, her figure turned into a shadow and disappeared. David joined Luca, Michael, and Art sought home, and rushed to the SMS base together. It's an emergency attack order. Luca looked at his two friends and then at David. David knew what was going on. But there was no need for him to pretend to be a magician at this time. Anyway, the next few people would fly fighter planes to attack except Satom Alt. Art Satom was confused. But by following Mihail and Luca to the SMS, she should be able to figure out what happened. But why did David Glamorgan come along? The next second, he knew why. Is the VF fighter I want ready? Your Majesty, do you also want to attack together? Certainly. Otherwise, why would he stay? Is it possible that it's just to see Shirley lose concert? Several people looked at each other. Luca and Mikhail knew that they could not persuade this person. So they did not say anything. However, after Art Satom reacted, he expressed his opinion very excitedly. Prepare a VF for me too. Chapter 419 Always Too Soft-Hearted Although Art Satom wants to fly a fighter plane and attack with her friends, but no one paid heed to his request. Mihail and Luca are official employees of SMS. They are also members of the Skeleton Squad. It is work to receive orders to attack. David's fighter plane was prepared with the help of LAI. 
and it is regarded as David's personal asset to a certain extent. It is a personal act for him to fly the fighter plane together with SMS. In theory, the Army and the SMS company's team can expel or destroy it. Art Sautom didn't have his own plane, and no one authorized him to attack. So even if he thought about it in his heart, he could only stare from the sidelines. He watched helplessly as David put on his flight suit and got into the VF-25S, Captain Model Aircraft. The same model as the one Ozma flew, with black stripes on a white background and a wolf head pattern spray-painted on the vertical tail. Don't look envious. When you return to Winter City, you will have the opportunity to actually fly this fighter. The relevant technology has been obtained. David will take out the technology after he returns. Winter City can easily copy the VF-25 fighter. Moreover, with the resources that Winter City has, it is also possible to directly use this fighter as Winter City's standard fighter. No problem. Really? Of course. I would never lie about something like this. David made a casual promise. Closed the canopy. And then quietly waited for the order of attack. The communication image appeared at this time. And Ozma's smelly face appeared on it. This time you will be operating with our skeleton team. Temporarily designated skeleton number 5. Oh. I thought I had to act alone. This is a real battle. Not a joke. We have to face a very troublesome enemy. You'd better stop having fun. Skeleton 2 will be responsible for protecting you. Didn't you know about my skills? This time is different. It's a real battle. Ozma's expression was very serious. No longer an impatient face. But a serious reminder to David. Don't think that going to the battlefield is such an interesting experience. I don't want my team members to die on the battlefield. Even if they were forced in temporarily. Looking at Ozma in front of him. David stopped trying to fool this man like a joke. After all, he was concerned about his own safety. This was not the time to joke. Don't worry. I'm not a new recruit without actual combat experience. Opposite Ozma also realized something after seeing David's serious expression. That would be the best. After turning off the communication, David glanced at the extra super backpack installed on his fighter plane. This external equipment allows the VF fighter plane to carry more ammunition. But correspondingly, after installing a super backpack, even if a few more thrusters are added to the backpack, the fighter will still become heavier, and the flexibility cannot be compared with normal. Anyone who can fly a fighter plane extremely flexibly after adding a super backpack is an ace pilot. At the beginning of the plot, Art Sauton was almost embarrassed, and was so dumped by Ozma that she almost couldn't even see her, but after several battles, Art Sauton, who had tapped into his own potential, became an ace pilot. In the theater version, he can even fight against VF-27 and three drones on his own in the theater version. Even though he was flying a YF-29 at the time, it would be impossible to defeat such an opponent if his skills were not up to standard. Speaking of which, I still don't know how far I can bring out the combat effectiveness of this fighter plane. David didn't have to wait long. He soon had his answer. The VF-25 fighter plane was controlled by him to an infinite state, using all kinds of unpredictable and strange maneuvers to run rampant on the battlefield. Even a powerful creature like the Jura could not keep up with David. The rhythm can only turn into gorgeous fireworks in the missiles he launches. After watching the fighter plane driven by David destroy a few Vidra again, it stopped and turned into a human form. Raising its head to say H, low to him, provocation. His blood pressure, which had dropped during the battle, began to soar again. Ozma had the urge to lock onto David's fighter plane and throw all the missiles at it. Captain, is this guy named David really a human? Killiam, who worked with Ozma as a commando, felt that the maneuvers David made were too scary. He always thought that only drones could make such flying movements. Who knows? Ozma took a few deep breaths and told Gilliam to ignore the guy. Judging from the opponent's performance on the battlefield, this guy was indeed not a new recruit. Mikhail, just do your job well and stop paying attention to that guy. Although I really want to say that even if I want to pay attention, I can't keep up with that guy's movements. But you really don't need to worry about it. Mihai really wanted to ask Luca if David died on the battlefield. Would LAI will it be difficult? As a result, Luca didn't care about this at all. He was devoting himself to collecting various battlefield data. There were data related to VF-25 and data about the draw. David is actually doing something similar. He controls the fighter plane in his hands to shuttle back and forth on the battlefield. His body has switched to a Cybertronian body. His eyes are constantly scanning these things, which can fly in the universe and atmospheric environment. 
a magical creature that can form bullets, missiles, and folding crystals in its body. It can also ignore space faults and perform intergalactic space jumps. Oh, by the way, this creature also has an extremely outrageous ability to evolve when a group suffers a large-scale death due to some kind of injury. The remaining group will evolve accordingly and be directly immune to such damage. In the plot, human weapons can easily destroy these bugs at first, but gradually various weapons lose their effectiveness. Although various new warheads have been developed for Vagula, everyone knows that these new weapons will lose their effectiveness sooner or later if they continue for a long time. Fortunately, there are no irreconcilable conflicts between this type of Zerg called Vajura and humans. The outbreak of war is entirely due to the fueling of conspirators and some misunderstandings. Later, with the hard singing of Orchid Lee and Shirley Lu, the bugs and humans understood each other and gave up the planet they lived on so that the humans of the 25th immigration ship group could settle on this planet. It would be great if we could study the intergalactic level space jumping ability and the outrageous evolutionary ability. Thinking of this, David realized that his thoughts were the same as those of the primitive civilization that led to the whole story. It can be said that the technological source of the entire Macross series is Vagula, who was bombarded by himself. You won't be able to create something similar to the original demon because of research on related technologies in the future. Right. Because he had collected enough data. David started to ask. Winter Demon. Looking around, he could no longer see half of the bugs near him. But the battle in the distance was not over. David noticed one of the adult Vajira which was rushing towards the leader of the immigrant fleet at an alarming speed. Island. It has to be said that the fighting has been breaking out for a while. The military's fighter planes have been destroyed. The officials have already known that a war is going on here. As a result, they even refuse to close the outer cover of the main island. Just because I don't want the people to know that there is a war going on here. Such a stupid president deserves to die like Su Wenxiang. David adjusted his direction and rushed directly towards the Vajra. The adult Vajura has very powerful firepower. The huge needle-like part on their back can release powerful energy beams, which can destroy a space battleship with one shot. With such strong firepower, if it were to penetrate the main island, the harm it would cause could be imagined how terrifying it would be. Kilium! Give it to me! Ozma, who couldn't get away for the time being, immediately ordered Kilium to come back for help. But as soon as Kilium adjusted his direction, a VF fighter plane rushed past. Leave it to me. Raising the speed to the maximum. The VF fighter flew at the fastest speed since its birth. And soon caught up with the Vidra. I am the most soft-hearted person. And I don't want to see good people die. David did not say this to himself. He did not cut off the communication with Kilayam and Ozma. So both of them heard it. Tisk, Kilayam wanted to refute. He was also a very good pilot. But he was just fighting a big bug. Why did he have to sacrifice himself? But when he saw that the opponent was just chopping melons and vegetables, using a fighting dagger to cut Wajala into pieces, he thought it would be better for him to keep his mouth shut. The biggest crisis was relieved by David. SMS and the army finally defeated the invading Wajala. And everyone could finally breathe a sigh of relief. No matter what. Everyone around you is still alive and kicking after a victory. And everyone can have a good celebration after returning home. As for the military's losses? That has nothing to do with SMS. But for Ozma, this battle had a completely different meaning. He saw with his own eyes how terrifying David was on the battlefield. And that kind of strength made it impossible for him to ignore it. David looked at Ozma, who was standing beside his fighter plane in a daze. When the other party turned to look over and his eyes met, David knew that Ozma was shaken. Walking over, David extended an invitation to Ozma. If you have time, you can ask Luca to take me to visit. Maybe you won't be so entangled by then. Reaching out and patting Ozma, David finally added in a low voice. That is also a better choice for your sister. Varied, Ozma wanted to ask something. But when he turned around, he was surprised to find that David had disappeared. Looking around, there were many people in the hangar. But he believed that with his eyesight, he could easily distinguish David from the crowd. In the end, David could not be found. It was as if David had disappeared out of thin air after saying those words to himself. Chapter 420 Support from All Directions What the H, L? Ozma's head was full of questions, and she couldn't figure out how David disappeared. Puzzled, he finally found Luca and wanted to see if he could get more information from Luca. Moreover, David said that he could let Luca take him to his place for a visit. Could it be the guy's company he was talking about? Would you like to go take a look? 
When Ozma began to think about this question, the answer already emerged in his heart. Moreover, David also mentioned his sister, and he had to figure out the situation. With just a few words, Ozma was kicked into the pit. David sincerely hoped that future recruitment could be this simple. After playing in the Macross world for a while, when David returned to Winter City, Black Widow Natasha Romanoff had completely eliminated the Red Room and even completed the finishing work. This secret organization that had been thought to have been destroyed by him, but was actually hiding in the dark and doing things secretly, was completely destroyed this time. After all, Captain Steve Rogers has taken action. If it takes too long, the former Supreme Mage will be too embarrassed. Natasha wanted to complain about Steve when she found the opportunity, especially when she found out that her mother and sister were both under the control of the Red House. Her resentment towards Steve became even greater, even if you are not suitable to deal with this kind of thing when you are the Supreme Mage. Why don't you tell me? It wouldn't be too much trouble for Natasha to find some friends to solve this problem herself. But Steve didn't reveal a word, which made her very unhappy. Steve also knew that he was not very friendly in this matter. So he stayed there quietly and allowed Natasha to complain as she pleased. Maybe she complained enough and things were solved perfectly. So Natasha didn't have a more extreme reaction. Now she had to deal with the final bits of the aftermath. The Red House collapsed. But the countless agents controlled by the Red House are still there. Antonia, the master of imitation who escaped from control, is still there. What should I do with my father? Mother and sister? It's not a big deal for your family to move directly to Winter City. Right. The Black Widow family was originally a group of agents who got together temporarily to carry out tasks. But they developed a real family relationship. Now that we are reunited after so many years, maybe we can enjoy some family happiness in Winter City? As for the group of agents, they didn't run away directly after leaving the Red Room? With the abilities of that group of agents, they are fully capable of creating a new identity for themselves in a short period of time and starting a new life, as long as they don't want to be exposed. It's difficult for ordinary people to discover their true identities. Of course, his secret agent skills may be exposed due to some accident, triggering a series of events, but in that case, it would be another movie, and it would have nothing to do with David. They have been exposed to too many things and lack trust in most countries and organizations. If possible, most people would like to leave the earth and change. This was a completely impossible option before. But now it has become a feasible and real option. So all these female agents came to Winter City? Not all of them. There are a lot of female agents under the control of the Red Room. When there are more people, they will naturally have all kinds of ideas. Some people disappeared directly. And some decided to join the Justice League Hydra, which was whitewashed and disguised as the universe's law enforcement agency. And most of the rest came to Winter City. Currently, these female agents live in military camps and a temporary camp has been built for them. In order to ensure the safety of the camp, Fiora is responsible for guarding this area. Oh, it's quite safe, both for people inside the camp and people outside the camp. Looking at Natasha, who suddenly looked expectant in front of him, David smiled and said, Arrange it according to the previously agreed way. No matter what kind of training these female agents have received and how elite intelligence agents they are, David will not force these agents to work for him. Like countless people who come to Winter City, David will give them the same treatment, the freedom to decide what they want to do. If they don't want to continue to be agents, they can start an ordinary, an ordinary life here in Winter City. If they are willing to use the skills they have honed over the years to make a living, the Winter Intelligence Department will also welcome them. At the same time, they will receive careful guidance from Vanessa Van Cleef. Although these female agents, codenamed Widows, possess all the qualities that modern agents should have, they still lack sufficient understanding of the extraordinary and mysterious side. At the same time, I also want to see if we can tap relevant potential from these people. Apart from anything else, the skill of sneaking is very powerful and practical. When David finished these words, Natasha opposite him smiled and quietly breathed a sigh of relief. David fulfilled the promise he had made, and the women he rescued gained true freedom. Of course, maybe some people will continue to serve as tools of Winter City but they have the right to choose. Unlike when they had no choice at all in the Red Room. Those who want to live an ordinary life can be left to Weatherby to be responsible for resettlement and treated like other new residents. David is not worried that these female agents will use their abilities after deciding to become ordinary people. To do something bad. This is Winter City. A city that gathers all kinds of high-tech and mysterious powers. 
He also has subordinates, like Kryptonians and Cybertronians. If these people think they can become underworld overlords in Winter City, Dai Dai V will let them know how wrong they were. If you want to continue doing intelligence work, you will be responsible for placement, including personal information registration, accommodation allocation and subsequent training arrangements. All were left to Natasha. Natasha will be very busy after taking on a lot of tasks. But she is very happy. Natasha feels that she is doing something meaningful, rather than just being a machine that keeps stealing and killing. After Natasha left, David and Steve continued chatting for a while. After helping Natasha deal with the Red Room, Steve helped Bruce Wayne introduce to Diana the Justice Avengers of the Multiverse that David randomly made up. This name really has too many things to say about it. You should really let Tony say those things to you again. Ha ha. I won't give him such a chance. According to Steve's description, Diana officially joined the diverse Justice Avengers after figuring out what was going on in Winterfell. Currently, Bruce Wayne and Diana are looking for the Flash and Aquaman to include them. In this way, the DC Universe will form a permanent team consisting of Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, The Flash, and Aquaman. In an emergency, you can also recruit Martian Manhunter, Mara, Deathstroke and others. Plus support you can call from Winterfell at any time, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, Peter Parker, Harry Osborn, Kara zor -El. There are also Kryptonians led by General Zod, Cybertronian warriors led by Optimus Prime and Megatron, the Knights of Winter, and the Knights of Tyran, who can also assemble to help when necessary. Likewise, if the Marvel Universe is in trouble, these people are always available to provide support. Just like Aiden went to Azeroth to fight the Lich King. The main focus of Winter City in the future is to support one side when one is in trouble. When you are full and don't know what to do, you can also form a team and play in any world. Of course, the most important thing is still the gods outside Brenia. In the future, these people will become his help in dealing with those so-called gods. Will David worry that these people will not help him in the future after taking benefits from Winter City? He has never worried about this. Because the people he will recruit to Winter City are all people with guaranteed moral character like the superheroes of the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe. The biggest characteristics of these people are enthusiasm and kindness. Their own moral standards prevent them from doing that kind of thing. Not to mention examples like Steve, who almost settled in Winter City, and Natasha, who really brought her whole family to Winter City. After learning from Steve that everything was going well on Bruce's side, David asked several people one after another if anything happened in Winter City during this period. The answer I got from Helen was that everything was fine. Sophia sent a communication two days ago. Seeing that you were away, she handed over the reporting work to Gareth. Is it a battle report from the front line? I pulled up the report and checked it out, and found that the content above was very simple. Departed from Iron Tree Fort. All goes well with the march. All goes well with the march. Enemy attack. Annihilation of enemies. All goes well with the march. Encountered the coalition forces sent by Dragon Castle, and won a great victory. All goes well with the march. Comparing the time, David realized that the time when Sophia sent the message was the day the Winter Army met the coalition forces. Or it might be after the victory. It is difficult to judge this. From this report, we can know that the so-called coalition forces are vulnerable. It may only take less than half a day from the encounter to being defeated, and then to cleaning up the mess. The war was going so smoothly that Gareth had nothing to say. So he gave such a concise report. Turning off the report, David remembered that Helen had gone to help his father explore the Balkan Peninsula earlier. He didn't ask about the situation in detail. He wondered what the progress was like there. Very smooth. Helen said that after using terrifying force to intimidate, other kingdoms no longer dared to fight against the Spartan Kingdom's army, and obediently chose to surrender and became part of the increasingly powerful Spartan Kingdom. As the prestige of the Kingdom of Sparta spread further and further, more kingdoms began to take the initiative to join Sparta. At this rate, we can then go north to occupy Eastern Europe, or we can go west across the sea and land on the Apennine Peninsula.